One making an engraving upon the supernal light the Zohar discusses the primordial phase that ignited the process of creation this phase produced a vacated space a void into which our physical universe would eventually be born by this act of creation the infinite gave birth to the finite just as a seed contains all the stages that will produce a full grown tree including the final fruit the seed of our cosmos contains all the souls of mankind including our complete and final fulfillment. Recognizing this motivates us to complete our own spiritual work it accelerates our spiritual transformation by revealing our connection with the seed which is the cause of all causes one with the beginning of the manifestation of the king's will that is when the king desired to create the world the hard spark made an engraving upon the supernal light this hard spark which emanated from the most concealed of all concealed things from the secret divine soft endlessness and took a shapeless form. The spark was then inserted into the center of a circle that was neither white nor black nor red nor green nor any color at all when he began its measurements he created bright colors that shone into the empty space and the engraving from within the spark, this hard spark, a fountain spouted from which the shades down below received their colors too from the most concealed of all concealed things the secret divine soft endlessness emanated two faces one cleaved and the other did not cleave. Its atmosphere was unknown until forceful blows split attic and a concealed supernal point shown beyond this point nothing is noble and because of this he is called by the name beginning which means the first of the sayings to the brightness of the firmament when God created the world he knew that we the vessels could not receive his awesome blazing light in its totality this cabalistic notion can be likened to a trip circuit breaker caused by an overload of electric current it can. Also be compared to the light of sun which would incinerate the entire earth if it were to ever approach too close the creator in his infinite wisdom therefore concealed the greater portion of his light so as not to overwhelm that which he created the Zohar recounts the process of how this hidden light began to be revealed as we correct and transform our crude immoral nature we reveal a measure of hidden light in direct proportion to the degree of inner change we've undergone it is this spiritual change that expands our internal vessel allowing us to receive a greater portion of hidden light the Hebrew letters emanate this hidden light into our day-to-day -day existence 3 and they who are wise shall shine like the brightness of the firmament and they who turn many to righteousness like the stars forever and ever Daniel 123 and they who are wise alludes to the souls of the righteous the brightness of the firmament to the illumination of the upper three spirot, which are Revealed when combined with the attribute of mercy, the aura of the brightness that is most concealed of all concealed things united with this point and shown into it, then this beginning which I as Eric Enpin expanded into a head and body and made a temple for its honor and glory there inside the temple, Eric Enpin planted a holy seed to bring forth souls for the benefit of the world. This is the secret of so the holy seed is its immovable stump. Yeshua 613 for the brightness that he sowed. For his honor is similar to the purple seed of the silkworm, for the worm encases itself within its own silk within its own creation, and from that seed he prepares for himself a temple for his own glory and for the benefit of all. With this beginning, the concealed unknown one created the temple, and this temple is called by the name Elohim 5. This is the secret of the words in the beginning, Elohim created Beershe 11. This temple is the brightness from which all ten sayings were created. According to the secret meaning of the expansion of the point from that hidden brightness, thus if the word created applies to it, no wonder it is written, and Elohim created man in his own image. Beersheet 127 6 The brightness which is Eric Enpin is the secret of the beginning because its name is the first of all the holy name Yahiah is engraved upon the sides of Eric Enpin. The name Elohim is engraved on the crown, and this is the secret of Asher, which I as a concealed temple and is the beginning of the revelation of the secret of the beginning. The word Asher consists of the same letters as Rosh head, but in reverse order as the letter Rush, which I as the first letter in Rosh is the last letter in Asher. This shows that it is the Rosh that came out of Rashid beginning, which is Eric Enpin. Therefore it emerged from the aspect of the head and was formed as a headless body. Seven after the point and the temple were established as one Barashit, which I as Eric Enpin includes a Lofty beginning to the light of Chakma later the image of the temple changed and it was called the house Hebbayat and the supernal point was called the head Hebrosh they were included in each other through the secret of the beginning because combining the words Bayat and Rosh forms the term Bereshit this was so as long as Bayat and Rosh were as one as long as there was no matter of habitation in the house as long as Chakma was not clothed with Chesedim which reveals the four colors of the house but it was sown for the purpose of habitation and once it was inhabited it was called by the name Elohim hidden and concealed eight the brightness is concealed and hidden until the children of Israel came inside it in order to be and the house stood expanded to contain what was established through the holy seat as long as she had not conceived the expansion of the house to make it habitable had not occurred nor was it yet called by the name Elohim rather they both are still part a bear sheet in the beginning in other words before the expansion of the four amendments mentioned earlier it is not yet called by the name Elohim because it does not yet shine in full therefore everything is considered as if it is included within Eric Enpin that is the beginning after it became known by the name Elohim after the four amendments were completed it gave birth to the first of those generations that came from the seed sown within it he asked what is that seed he replied the seed is the engraved letters which are the secret of the Torah referring to Zeir Enpin which emanates from that point which is Eric Enpin 9 that supernal point which is Eric Enpin sowed inside the temple which is Yisrael Saba and Tevuna the secret of the three points vowels Kolam Shurak and Chirik so they are combined into one secret a voice that emerges from the joining of the three points when the voice came forth its female counterpart came with it she included all the letters as it is written the heavens bear sheet 11 that is the voice and its feminine principle this voice which is the secret of the heavens is the last name of the high which is the brightness that contains all the letters and colors in this matter 10 until this point this is the secret of Hashem or Elohim Hashem these three grades correspond to the supernal secret in the verse in the beginning Elohim created and so the term bear sheet is an ancient secret namely Chakma that is called beginning the term bara created alludes to a concealed secret from which everything else expands Elohim secret meaning is sustaining everything that exists below the term the heavens alludes to the union of the male and female and it is forbidden to separate them but rather combine them for they are the secret of the voice and the utterance while Yudhi Adonai which are united into one eleven the particle ET is created by combining the letters Aleph and Toph which are the first end Last letters of the alphabet thus ET includes all the letters from beginning to end afterwards the letter hey was added to ET so all the letters would be united with hey this form the word Adi which consists of the letters Allah Tafe thus the verse reads and you do preserve them all Nejmai 96 ET is the secret of Adonai and is so called heaven is Yudhe Bapay hey, which is superior to the name Adonai for Zeir and been called the heavens and also called voice is the secret of the name of Yudhe Bapay hey, and his feminine principle called ET and speech is the secret of the name Adonai 12 the word BET and the alludes to the establishment of male and female BET is the secret of Bab Yudhe Bapay hey, and both are as one the earth is the name Elohim equivalent to the supernal which is fit to issue fruit and offspring this name is included in three places and defined in many ways up until now it is the secret of the most secret of mysteries which was engraved built and established in a concealed manner according to the hidden meaning of one single verse 13 Bereshit is formed of the segments Barashit he created six because from one end of the heavens to the other there are six branches that extend from the secret of the sublime with the expansion of Barah created Barah expanded from within the first point which is Eric Enpin and here on this first point the secret of the name with the 42 letters was engraved three intonations vowels points and letters the relationship between the Hebrew letters vowels and intonations are explained in terms of their spiritual significance the Zohar tells us that the letters vowels and intonations are not merely the building the blocks of language they are the building blocks of the entire cosmos they are the sounds of creation the forces by which stars and planets are constructed and by which physical and metaphysical worlds are erected just as a human voice in song can shatter glass and evoke tears the Hebrew alphabet affects both physical and spiritual realities we can set these forces in motion by meditatively scanning the very letters that speak of the secrets of the letters themselves by so doing we can draw spiritual sustenance and light into our daily lives 14 and they who are wise shall shine Daniel 123 like the notes and
palanquin and the Huarwise are themselves the supernal pillars and sockets who observe intelligently to bestow on that palanquin and its sockets all that is needed to sustain it. The pillars are Shisid Bira and Tiferet. The sockets are Netzach and Yezid. The secret is hidden as it is written. Blessed is he that considers the poor head masculine. Tehillim 412 masculine Zeir and Pin and the poor is his feminine principle and he receives the brightness for the sake of the poor who needed it. Supernal six extremities of Zeir and Pin shall shine for if they do not shine or illuminate they will not be able to study the palanquin and determine what is necessary for its restoration were it not for the need of establishing that palanquin they would not have received any of that light of brightness. 16 and they shine like the brightness of the firmament that rests upon the Huarwise of whom it is written and over the heads of the living creature was the likeness of the firmament. Like the color of the terrible ice, Yashiskal 122, this is the brightness of the firmament which shines upon the entire Zeir Anpin, which is called the Torah. The brightness shines upon the heads of that living creature that is called the Palanquin. These heads, which are the pillars and sockets of Zeir Anpin, who are wise, shine constantly and look on that firmament to receive the light that emanates from there. This also is the light of Zeir Anpin in its entirety, which is called Torah. It shines forever and never stops. In other words, Zeir Anpin in its entirety does not receive the aspect of the brightness for itself, but for this light that constantly shines alone for. And the earth was without form. The creation process, the Zohar explains, began in a state of utter chaos. Out of this chaos emerged the concept of order. The Zohar reveals the process by which order emerges from chaos. The more furious and frenzied the initial chaos, the greater the order and the perfection that will eventually. Emerge we can attain the ability to remove chaos from our lives we can begin to grasp the hidden spiritual truth that chaos is really opportunity for bringing order and fulfillment 17 and the earth was without form and void Beersheet 12 the term was as exact in that it implies the earth's previous state during which snow was mixed inside water the act of the snow forming inside the water resulted in a foul substance and afterward a mighty fire beat upon it and refuse was formed inside. It then conceived and became without form the place where at first there was only filth has become now a nest of refuse that is described as tohu without form it went through four stages until it became tohu one light turned into water two water turned into snow three snow turned into refuse with the infliction of the fire and for the refuse over time became sufficiently distinguishable to be called tohu the words and void refer to the refined matter that emerged from the refuse and was set there. Darkness is the secret of the powerful fire and this darkness hovers above the tohu over that refuse and is based upon it. In other words darkness does not mean only the absence of light that is emptiness but rather the aspect that produces emptiness like a strong fire that burns and consumes everything it touches and leaves emptiness in its place. The reason why it is called darkness and not fire is that the burning force is not from the fire itself but from the refuse over which it hovers. Therefore this darkness is based upon the tohu from which it receives 18 and the wind also spirit of Elohim it alludes to the holy spirit Rash that proceeded from living Elohim and moved over the surface of the waters. This means that after this wind blew a thin layer from the refuse was refined just as the filth flies off and away in this manner it was refined covered and purified over and over again until the foulness was left without any filth 19 when this tohu was refined. And purified a great and strong wind rent the mountains and broke the rocks. I may 1911 and it emerged like the wind that Eliyahu saw the bow who was refined and purified and noise came from it as it is written and after the wind an earthquake also noise of it when the darkness was refined fire was then included in its secret as it is written and after the earthquake a fire of it twelve the wind was refined and a still small voice was included within it twenty tohu has neither color nor form and is not included within the secret of form at all although it may appear to have form when we look closely it loses all form everything has a garment to wear except tohu twenty one bohu already has an image and a form the stones immersed inside the engraving of tohu when the stones emerge from within the engraving in which they were immersed they draw down goodness into this world in the form of a garment they draw goodness down to the world that I a straight light and force the returning. Light up so that the straight light is enclosed. This is known as forming 22. These stones are hollow and viscous because they are suspended in the air. At times they are suspended in the air because they rise up and out of there from within the engraving of Tohu. At other times, such as cloudy days, they hide and raise water from the abyss to replenish Tohu. This is when there is joy and folly because Tohu has expanded all over the world. 23. Darkness is a black fire that is strong in color. Because no other color can change black, there is a red fire that is strong in its appearance. As red is the most noticeable color, there is a green fire which is solid in form as all forms reach perfection by the green color. And there is a white fire which is the basis of all other colors. Darkness is strong because it contains all kinds of fires and it attacks the Tohu. Darkness is a fire that consists of four colors and it is usually not a dark fire except when it attacks the Tohu. This is the Secret of the verse, his eyes were dim so that he could not see. He called Ezab Beershi 271. The face of evil is darkness, so it's hot who was kind to evil to Ezab. was then called darkness as it rested upon him so that it may strengthen him. 24. The wind that is mentioned in the verse and the wind from Elohim is a voice that rests upon Bohu and guides it in all where it is needed. This is the secret of the verses. The voice of Hashem is upon the waters. Tehillim 293. And, and the wind from Elohim moved over the surface of the waters. The stones are immersed deep inside the abyss from which waters flow. This is why they are called the surface of the waters. The wind guided and strengthened the faces called the surface of the deep. Each according to its requirements. 25. The name Shade dwells upon Tohu. The name Sevoti dwells upon Bohu. And the name Elohim dwells upon darkness because darkness is a result of Malchud rising up to Bina, which is called Elohim. The name wind. Dwells upon Yahabab A26 and a great and strong wind rent the mountains, but Hashem was not in the wind. I may 1911 the name Yud Yahabab was not in the wind because this strong wind comes from Tohu upon which the name Shade rests, hence it reads, but Hashem was not in the wind, and it explains that the earthquake came from Bohu as the verse continues, and after the wind an earthquake, but Hashem was not in the earthquake because only the name Sevoti rests upon it in the secret of Bohu, hence it is called Bohu as for the fire that comes out of darkness. The scripture reads, and after the earthquake a fire, but Hashem was not in the fire. I may 1912 because the name Elohim rests upon it from the aspect of darkness, and after the fire a still small voice which comes from the aspect of the wind of Elohim upon which the name Yud Yahabab rests, the verse reads, and when Eliyahu heard it and went out and stood in the entrance of the cave, and behold there came a Voice to him and said, What are you doing here, Eliyahu? I may 1913. He did not leave the cave at the first three aspects only when he heard a still small voice because the name Yahabah was there and he knew that Yud Yahabah was talking to him. 27. The name Yud Yahabah has four segments, namely four letters that signify the parts of the human body and certain members, namely the limbs, which are four that can become twelve. Here is the secret of the name that consists of twelve letters, which was given to Eliyahu while inside the cave. This alludes to the three names of Yud Yahabah. Each consists of four letters, which together add up to twelve. And this name with its twelve letters appears in the human body. The first appears in the head, Chakmabina, and at the second in the body from the top to the navel, Shisid, Bira, and Tifer, at the third from the navel downward, Netzach, and Yazid. Each part of the body is divided into four other parts, which add up to 12.5 And there was light. The Zohar reveals the elaborate process by which the light of the Creator was first revealed to the world. This section helps awaken our own desire to reveal the light above and beyond our own personal needs. 28 And Elohim said, Let there be light. And there was light. Bear sheet 13. From here, from the saying, we can begin to learn in detail the secrets of how the world was created in details because until now the creation was discussed only generally in the verse. In the beginning, Elohim created Ibn 1. After this, the description returns to the general, then the particular, and then the general again. 29 Until now, everything was suspended in the air that was bestowed from the secret of Einsof endlessness. As soon as the force expanded inside the supernal temple, which is the secret of Elohim, the word saying is applied to it as it is written. And Elohim said before that the word said is not written because said means it is in detail. Although the word
birth to the Mokin of Zeir and and his feminine principle while still in Bada, but as soon as it emerged from there from Bada, a sound was heard without 31. Let there be Hadya I light means that everything that comes forth and emanates in the world proceeds according to the secret of the words. Let there be light. Yeah, I alludes to the secret of Abba and I am a which are Yahya of Yahi Yudi Hay Yudi. The letter Yudi alludes to Abba and the Hayu I am a afterward the letters Yudi Hay return to the first point by adding another point, namely Yudi, just like the first one as it is written Yahi Yudi Hay Yudi to institute a beginning for an expansion of something else. 32. The terms light and let there be light do not refer to the renewal of the light, but rather to the returning of the light that Abba and I am a already had the expansion of this light that appears in the verse. Let there be light or Allah Babresh is a most hidden secret because it was the expansion that split according. To the secret of the concealment of the supernal and concealed air Hadaver, the word Aver consists of the letters Aleph Bab Yadresh and his Arak and it was split in such a way that there is nothing really renewed in the name Yud Hay Bab rather the perfection that was there before the splitting is now revealed. It first split and produced one concealed point vowel from within its own mystery. It revealed the point vowel yet as a result of this removal of the yet from Avir what is left of the original word Avir is or which is from the secret of the concealed air 33. When the first point or vowel which I as yet proceeded from Arak and its light shone upon it according to the sense of reaching yet not reaching once the point expanded the light was revealed and this is the secret of the or light that has remained from Avir. This refers to the light that has existed at first in Bada when it was in the head of Arak and it then disappeared when it came out of the head. Now it has returned to IT and remains there. The light has gone, it has disappeared and is now hidden, and one point remains in Bino where the light of Chakma always reaches into their vessels in a hidden manner. The reaching yet not reaching, which means that it reaches with the light of Shasadim, but not with the light of Chakma shines in the manner of the first point that has emerged from it. As a result, they are all linked to one another and illuminate one another. 34 when it ascends to the head of Eric Enpin, they all rise up and cling to it. Then it is as if reaching, which is the upper three Svirat, it is treasured in the place of the endless, which is Eric Enpin, and all becomes one. The point that was in the light and transformed it into air is now completely light as it turned into the upper three Svirat by the union and the light of Chisid, Bira, Typhoret, Netzach, Hadiazid, and Malchud of Abba and IMA expanded from this expansion, illuminated the seven layers of it. Alphabet, which were not yet solid but were still moist, later darkness came forth, and seven other letters of the alphabet came out. The firmament then came forth and stopped the dispute between the two sides. In it, there issued eight other letters, which added up to twenty-two. And all seven letters from the right side and seven letters from the left side jumped on the firmament and were all engraved on it. Where they remained moist as the firmament congealed, so did the letters they were engraved and assumed their intended shapes. And there, the Torah was inscribed, referring to Zeir and which is called the Torah to shine outward on the lower beings. Thirty-five. The phrase "Let there be light" alludes to the name Great El, according to the secret of He who issues from the primal air. Hence, it is written, "Let there be Hadwa Yehi," implying the sphere of Chesed of Zeir and called Great El. The phrase, and there was Hadwa He refers to the secret of the darkness that is called Elohim, and it is called. Light after the left was combined with the right because the name Elohim extends from the secret of the name El which is Chisa thus the name Elohim is the aspect of Chisa as well and the right was included within the left and the left within the right 36 the verse and Elohim saw the light that it was good. Beershi 14 implies the central column of Zeir Anpin which is the sphere of Tiferet in it the phrase that it was good said about Tiferet means that it shone up and down in all directions namely to all the Svirat Netzach Hadiazid and Malchud Tiferet of Zeir Anpin is the secret of the name Yahweh Bapay which includes all direction right and left front and back up and down the words and Elohim divided the light mean that he prevented the dispute between right and left so that everything may be perfect 37 and Elohim called Beershi 15 he asked what is the meaning of and Elohim called the light day he replied this means that he called and invited it to Bring forth from within that perfect light that stands in the middle, referring to Typhoret one light, and this light is the foundation of the world upon which all worlds are erected, and from where all the souls are born from this perfected light emerges the central column, the foundation of the life of the worlds, this being the day from the right side, the words, and the darkness he called night mean that he called and invited it, bringing forth one female from within the left side, the secret of darkness. This feminine principle is the secret of the moon that governs the night, for this reason it is called night, and this is the secret of the name Adonai, and the name master of all earth. 38 the right enters into that perfected pillar in the middle where it is included with the secret of the left, namely Chisit of Zeir Anpin, which also includes its Bura and enters its central column, which is Typhoret, and Zeir Anpin rises up to the primal point, which is Eric Anpin, and takes end. Possesses there in Eric Enpen Mokin, which I as a thing according to the secret of the three points Kolam Shurak and Shirak, which are called Holy Seed, for through the three sowings called Kolam Shirak and Shirak the Mokin of Chakma are revealed, which are called Holiness. The three points are therefore called Holy Seed, for no seed can be sown for the purpose of the Mokin except according to the secret, namely the secret of the three sowings of Kolam Shurak and Shirak, all referring to the illumination of the three points were united in the central column, which is Typhoret, and it emanated the foundation Yezid of the world because of this Yezid is called all because it holds onto all, namely the illumination of all three columns by the light of passion, in other words, because of the desire of the left for the light of the right Yezid reconciles the left with the right and unites them, and because the central column acquires them, that column attains both of them and bestows them. Both on Yezid 39 the left is set ablaze by the force of might and smells it exudes the odor throughout the grades and from the glow of this fire it emanates the feminine principle called moon this blazing eye is considered to be darkness because it extends from darkness and these two sides the right and the left produce these two grades one male and one female because Yezid which is male emanated from the rule of the right of Zeir and the feminine principle emanates from the left column of Zeir and 40 Yezid holds onto the central pillar and receives the additional light that was in it this refers to the light of Chakma which is an additional light for Zeir and the central column Zeir and is entirely complete by Chakma and by Shasadim because of the peace he brought to all sides thus it has received additional light looking from above namely from Eric and which is Chakma and from all sides namely from the right and left from its own central column it has Achieve Chesedim and Gvirat and the joy of all the worlds is in it. This is the secret of the illumination of Chakma that eliminates all the Klippot and from this adding of deity the foundation Yezid of the world issued and is called additional Hebmuzah from here Yezid. All the lower power spirits and holy souls of the righteous are emanated according to the secret of the sacred names Yadhev of Hatsev which means that he is a letter also assigned that appears in all his hosts. He is also called El the Elohim of the spirits from whom all the spirits and souls of the righteous emanate. 41 The night master of all earth is the feminine principle. She emanated from the left side from that darkness because the entire desire of that darkness was to be included within the right column and receive the light. Its power was weakened when night began to expand from the left before its structure was completed. The darkness, namely the left column, entered and merged with the right. Column and the right held onto it night and was left lacking at its end because its source which is the left column disappeared in the right column and did not help it reach completion so now there are two things lacking in the feminine principle one the aspect of the night meaning darkness instead of light and two her structure was not completed by the left 42 just as darkness which is the left desires to be included within the light of the right column so the feminine principle which is night desires to be included within day darkness which is the left column embedded its light because it had not yet completed the structure of the feminine principle because of this it produced the grade of the female with an incomplete structure and without light namely with the two aforementioned defects therefore the feminine principle required two reforms one to bring her light and free her from her darkness and two to complete her structure darkness the left column cannot illuminate unless it Merges with the light of the right, and the same applies to the night which is constructed in the left and emerges from it. It does not show any light unless it merges with the day. Is it the defect of the structure of the night is not completed until the muse of additional prayer, which is the additional light that Yezid has
Subtracted in the feminine principle the letters Vav and Yud from Vayikra and so it is written of her only he called Karanite here lies the secret of the name with the 72 letters that are inscribed in the supernal crown, referring to the secret of the letters Vav and Yud 6 let there be a firmament three distinct spiritual energy forces permeate all existence using the language of metaphor the Zohar identities these three forces as right left and central columns right correlates to the positive plus force which manifests physically as the proton left signifies the negative charge dash manifesting as the electron central is expressed through the neutron the force that bridges the positive and negative poles just as the filament in a light bulb creates the resistance that generates light the central column corresponds to the cosmic force of resistance the firmament whose resistance produces illumination even sunlight striking a physical object requires reflection in order. Generate luminous energy this model for arousing both spiritual and physical light is mirrored within ourselves our left side corresponds to the negative pole dash and to our desire to receive the right side signifies the positive pole plus the will to share that resides in our solar hearts and minds correspond to the central aspect this is our free will whereby we can choose to resist the desire to receive and nurture the desire to share this is the choice that arouses spiritual light this section of the Zohar fills us with the power to resist our selfish desires it strengthens our central column which is our own free will we are blessed with the ability to create unity between opposite forces in our lives we can become a bridge between opposing sides and by so doing we can help to resolve conflict and confrontation Kabbalah teaches that disunity among people is the source of all hatred and violence regardless of who is right or wrong 44 and Elohim said let there be a Firmament in the midst of the waters bare sheet 16 this phrase alludes to a detailed reform of the separation of the upper from the lower waters according to the secret of the left here the dispute according to the secret of the left occurred until this point referring to the first day reference is made to the right but on the second day reference is to the secret of the governing of the left because of this a great dispute broke out on the second day between the two sides the left wanted to cancel the governing power of the right entirely while the right wanted to cancel the governing power of the left entirely the right which is the secret of Chesed and the first day is the perfection of all because of this everything was written in the right on the first day this means that all the seven days which are the seven spirot are emerged in it and are alluded to in it because every perfection depends on the right side when the rule of the left was aroused its dispute with the right began and the fire of anger in that dispute became fierce from this dispute Gehenom was created so Gehenom was awakened and created by the left and cleaved to it which means that whoever wants to strengthen the left shall fall into Gehenom which originates from IT45 in his wisdom Moshe looked into this and learned about the work of creation in the work of creation there was a dispute between the left and the right and in that dispute which the left provoked Gehenom was created and Gehenom held onto the left the central pillar which is Typhra entered between them on the third day ending the dispute and bringing the two sides to an agreement so Gehenom removed itself from the left and descended below the left joined the right and there was peace everywhere 46 a similar dispute occurred between Korach and Agar on the left against the right Moshe studied the creation and said I am unable to eliminate the dispute between right and left Moshe tried his best to Reconcile them, but the left did not want to be reconciled, so Korach becomes stronger and overcame Agaron. 47 Moshe said assuredly because of the power of the disagreement of the left, Gehenom should cling to it just as it was in the works of creation. Korach did not wish to be attached above, namely to the amendment of holiness and join the right like the left on high, so assuredly he shall descend below down into Gehenom because of the fierceness of his anger as happened in the works of creation. Gehenom came out and cleaved to the left. Moshe knew that with the strength of Korach's anger, Korach would descend to Gehenom and be attached to IT48 because of this. Korach did not want Moshe to settle this dispute, it was not for heaven's sake with pure intentions. He had no respect for the above glory, which is the Shechina, and refused to acknowledge the work of creation. This means that he denied the amendment of the central column, settling the dispute between the right and left. In the work of creation he wanted only the left to govern as soon as Moshe realized that he was denying the work of creation and being rejected out of holiness Moshe was much angered Bimidbar 1615 49 and Moshe was much angered because Korach and his company refused to acknowledge him and did not allow him to settle the dispute IT is written much because they denied the acknowledgement of the work of creation so Korach denied everything above in Zeir and below in the souls as it is written when they strove against Hashem Bimidbar 269 which is the secret of Zeir and for the damage that he did reached both above to Zeir and and down to Moshe therefore Korach cleaved onto what he deserved he reached the Hanam is written they went down alive into SHOL Bimidbar 1633 50 another dispute was settled according to above a dispute that rose and did not come down and was based on decency was that between Shammai and Hillel Shammai was the aspect of the left on high. While Hillel was the aspect of the supernal right and the Holy One, blessed be he intervened between them and approved of them. This means that the differences and arguments between Shammai and Hillel reached them from the central column of above, which is the secret of the Holy One, blessed be he. This was a dispute for the sake name of heaven and the heavens and Zeir and been reconciled this dispute to establish both because of this their illuminations continue to exist. This dispute is like the work of creation. IT is similar to what the central column achieved for the sake of establishing the work of creation, but Korach denied the establishing of the work of creation and the dispute was toward the heavens, namely Zeir and that is the reconciling column and he wanted to deny the principles of the Torah, which is Zeir and Assuredly this dispute and denial was the result of the efforts of Gehenom and its power of judgment cleaved to Korach and he to it thus he fell into Gehenom 51. This Secret appears in the book of Adam when darkness was aroused to take control it emerged in all its might and created Gehenom and Gehenom cleaved to it in its dispute as the anger and the might of the Gehenom were calmed down the dispute was aroused in a different manner as a dispute of love 52 there were two kinds of disputes one at the beginning and one at the end this is the path of the righteous which is hard in the beginning because it is full of suffering but ends in peace courage being the left was the beginning of the dispute between the right and the left which was full of anger and fierceness each wanted to diminish the illumination of his neighbor from this Gehenom emerged and courage cleaved to Gehenom Shammai was also the aspect of the left but at the end of the dispute between the right and the left when anger was forgotten and the dispute of love was set in motion so as to receive approval from the heavens which is the column that settles the dispute 53 this is the secret of the verse let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters and let it divide bear sheet 16 this is the first dispute aroused by anger and force in which each wanted to overcome and annul his neighbor the holy one blessed be he wished to nullify the dispute and Gehenom was aroused until the anger and aggressiveness cooled down then it is written and Elohim made the firmament and divided bear sheet 17 this division is the dispute carried with love and friendship which supports the world according to the secret namely through the dispute of love is carried the dispute between Shammai and Hillel namely the dividing of and Elohim made the firmament at the end of the dispute on the other hand the dispute of courage was one of anger which is the dividing of let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters at the beginning of the dispute so the dispute of Shammai and Hillel was for the sake of the heavens in which the oral Torah which is the secret of the feminine Principle entered with love into the written Torah which is Zeir and called heavens and they were in perfect union 54 division applies to the left alone as is written in relation to the second day and let it divide of it 6 while of Korach it is written is it but a small thing to you that the Elohim of Israel has separated you Bimidbar 169 it is also written at that time Hashem separated the tribe of Levi Devarim 108 so assuredly the separation appears only in the second day in the place of the left 55 you may ask if division occurs definitely on the second day why then is the separation mentioned about Levi who is the third son of Yahikob it should have been associated with Shimon who is the second son of Yahikob the answer is that although Levi is the third son according to Yahikob's mind he is the second because Reuben is not considered the first son of Leah as at the time Yahikob thought she was racial so the separation is forever in the second because after the division has occurred in the second everything goes smoothly along the straight path in a perfect way as it should be this is because by the separation the lights enclose each other and are completed by each other 56 the have the operator of separation that is performed at the end of Shabbat is for the purpose
departs from them that side is lowered and enters into its place in SHOL in the place where Korach and his company are as it is written they and all that appertain to them went down alive into SHOL Bimidbar 1633 so Korach and his company did not go down to Gehenom until Israel separated from them as it is written separate yourselves from among this congregation Bimidbar 1621 here as well the other side does not go to Gehenom at the ending of Shabbat before Israel performs the Havdalah 58 So the Havdalah separation is always done on the second day which is the left column this refers to what has already been explained that even the Havdalah at the ending of Shabbat is intended to separate the other side that extends from the left column it was at the beginning of the dispute which was aroused by the aggressiveness and anger of the left before it was calmed down and quieted that Gehenom was created then were created all these angels that denounced before the Holy One blessed be. Either master above the secret of the central column they disagree with his reconciliation and deviate to the left therefore fire burns them up and they are consumed and the other angels all those who are annulled and have no support are burned in the fire all these have come from the power of the fire of the dispute in the beginning on the second day similarly Korach fell down into Gehenom and burned just like those angels who burned in the fire of the river of fire and everything follows. The same matter extending from the beginning of this dispute with the fire of anger 59 let there be a firmament tells us that an expansion has occurred between the two the lower waters expanded and were separated from the upper waters and the upper waters expanded and were separated from the lower waters by the firmament the letters L Allah claimed in the name Elohim Allah flamet hey yudmem from the firmament up are of the right part in other words L always alludes to the name of Jesus which is the right side the name great L has expanded from within the waters of Bina and is separated from them this means that because of the firmament the name great L has spread upward and has separated itself from the other waters namely the three letters hey yudmem this was to complete the name L and to include the upper and lower waters within each other through that expansion and the name L of Elohim expanded leaving only the three letters hey yudmem hey yudmem then expanded down below the firmament and became the lower waters. Yud Mem Hey, this is the expansion into the second one. That I Hey Yud Mem into Yud Mem Hey, the upper waters are Hey Yud Mem is written. So is this great and wide sea. Hey Yud Mem Tehillim 10,425. Thus Hey Yud Mem is the upper waters. If the letters Hey Yud Mem are in reverse order, that I Yud Mem Hey, this indicates they are lower waters. Once the letters Yud Mem Hey were restored, they ascended and rose above the firmament and joined the name Great L and returned to the combination of the Great Sea Hey Am, which was Hey Yud Mem. Then everyone L and Hey Yud Mem were united as one, resulting in one name Elohim. And this name Elohim reached into many places. Sixty the upper waters are males. The lower waters are females. At first, before they were firmly established, they were mixed, but were later separated to distinguish the upper waters from the lower waters and to differentiate them. One is called Elohim, which is by and other is called Adonai which is Malchut, one is the upper hay of the name Yudhi Havah which is Bun, and the other is the lower hay of the name Yudhi Havah which is Malchut, as it is written, and Elohim made the firmament. Bear sheet 17 This expansion assumed the name Elohim for the verse, and Elohim made indicates that the expansion of Hay Yudhemem returned back to El and merged into the name Elohim and the upper waters for the name Elohim is the upper waters and the name Adonai. The feminine principle of Zeir and Ben is the female waters, nevertheless, since the male waters or the letters Hay Yudhemem were completed only by the female waters, namely the feminine principle of Zeir and Ben, the name Elohim expanded everywhere, including the female waters 61. Although on the second day the upper and lower waters were divided, the dispute between the right and the left, which are the letters Allah Flamet and Hay Yudhemem, did not cease until the third day, which is Typhor at the third day. Settled the dispute between the right and the left as the two columns Allah Flamet and Hey Yudmem enclosed each other and both were established properly in their places because of this dispute even though the world exists upon it it is not written it was good about the second day because the work was not yet completed on that day so the upper and lower waters were mingled together as one and there was no offspring in the world until they were divided into and distinguished as separate from each other only then did they bring forth offspring 62 although the separation of the lower waters from the upper waters occurred on the second day the dispute between L which is the right and Hey Yudmem which is the left was unresolved only the third day reconciled between them both became one and joined them into the one name Elohim the third day which is Zeir and Benias the name upon which is engraved Hey Bob Hey to make the upper waters by equal to the lower waters Malchut. Because the letters Hey Bob Hey are the secret of the two HEIS with Bob between them, the upper HEIS Bina and the lower HEIS Malchut, the Bob in between IS EIR and Bina, and it completes and illuminates both sides above in Bina and below in Malchut. This was signified by the splitting of the waters of the yard in the Jordan River where the upper waters rose in a heap and did not descend into the Dead Sea. This is the secret of the upper Hey of the name Yud Hey Bob Hey, namely Bina on the other. And the lower waters, which are the secret of the lower Hey Malchut, flowed down into the Dead Sea, which IS the secret of the lower Hey Malchut, and Yisrael the secret of the letter Bob went in the middle between the upper waters and the lower waters of the yard, and thus Yisrael the secret of the Bob of Yud Hey Bob Hey received the abundance from the upper Hey and bestowed it upon the lower Hey 63 firmament is mentioned five times on the second day and the life of the worlds, which is Yisit. Of Zeir and Ben passes through them and guides the worlds through them. They all are comprised of each other. Had the central column not settled the dispute, neither would have included the other nor be harmonized. These five firmaments are equivalent to the five hundred years to which the tree of life, which is Zeir and Ben, is attached to produce offspring and fruits in the world. All the waters of Beersheet, namely the kinds of Mokin that flow out from Beersheet, which is Eric and Ben, are divided under it and through it into the upper waters and the lower waters. King David, who is the secret of the feminine principle, receives everything from Zeir and Ben. He then distributes it down to the lower worlds of Bria, Yitzra, and Asiyah, as it is written, and he distributed among all the people among the whole multitude. Two Shmuel 619. It is also written, You give it to them, they gather it. Tehillim 10428. And she rises also while it is yet night and gives food. Mishlei 3154. When disagreement was. Aroused through the fierceness of the left, the mist of fire increased and became overpowering. The spirits produced from within that mist immediately congealed, they became dry, and without any moisture, these spirits, which were male and female, produced a multitude of evil spirits from this. All the might of the impure spirit appeared in all those strong spirits. This is the secret of the clip of the foreskin. These spirits were strengthened in impurity through the violent demons. One is called a viper, and the other a serpent, and these two kinds became one. The viper bears offspring every seventy years, while the serpent only every seven years. But as they are joined together, everything returned to the seven years of the serpent. Therefore, the viper begets every seven years like the serpent, and they become as if one species. Sixty-five from herein lies the secret of Gehenom, which has seven names, and the evil inclination, which also has seven names, from here impurity expands and spreads out in many. Grades into the world and everything comes from the secret of the left which contains good and evil and thereby makes the world habitable from here is the secret of the holy name that is engraved by 18 letters and is responsible for the bountiful rains that feed the earth for human charity for all our blessings and for the general inhabitation of this world 7 let the waters be gathered here the Zohar speaks about the dimension or sphere called Yizid this is an immense reservoir that resides just above our physical dimension all the upper worlds or Sfirot fill Yizid with their unique spiritual forces where they are blended and prepared for transfer like a cosmic pipeline Yizid then funnels all this light into our world which is called Malchut we can arouse great lights in the upper worlds through our actions but unless the floodgates of Yizid are open the light can never reach our realm the Aramaic passages that illustrate this procedure strengthen our personal Connection to Yezid they help us to open the pipeline from the upper world 66 and Elohim said let the waters be gathered bear sheet 19 the words be gathered have you copy mean that the Mokin called the waters will travel in a straight line have cab on one level without spreading to the right or left everything flows mysteriously from the secret of that primal point which is Eric and Ben until the light reaches and is gathered in the supernal temple from there
The dry land of pure Beersheet 19. This is the lower Hay, namely Malchut, the feminine principle of Zeirn, and because only she was revealed as dry land, while all the other grades were hidden from within that last grade, referring to the lower Hay, Malchut, that light that was concealed was heard and revealed. 68. The phrase to one place I is called Yizid because there is a connection to the upper world. 3. Yizid, the verse Hashem shall be one, and his name one Zechariah 149. Inset 2. Unions one is the upper world that is unified in its own grades, which is the secret of Hashem is one, and the second is the lower world that is unified in its own grades according to the secret and his name one. The unification of the upper world by the secret of Hashem is one is up to Yizid, the life of the worlds, which is Yizid, is sweetened in Bina, and the upper world is connected to its unification because of this. It is called to one place as all the grades and all the parts of Sfirat. Of the parts of Zeir and can gather there and they become as one in it without any separation at all. No grade unites their holy save this grade in which all the lights are mysteriously covered in one desire up to this point, referring to the words and let the dry land appear. The revealed world, which I asked the secret of Rachel, is unified with the concealed world, which I asked Leah 69. The revealed world, which is Rachel, the feminine principle of Zeir and who is located from his chest downward, is similarly unified below the revealed world, is the lower world, as can be proven by reading the scriptures where it is described in the terms of seeing. I saw Hashem Yeshayah 61 and they saw the Elohim of Israel Shema 2410 and the glory of Hashem appeared. Lit was seen, Bibit bar 1410 and as the appearance of the rainbow, so was the appearance of the brightness round about this was the appearance of the likeness of the glory of Hashem Yeshayah 128 and it is known that the lower feminine. Principle who is called Rachel is described by the words glory of Hashem and by the term ET that this is the secret of the verse let the dry land appear let be seen because seeing applies only to the revealed world and not to the upper world 70 the verse as the appearance of the rainbow which is written about the divine chariot of Yeshua alludes to the life of the worlds namely Yezid of Zeir and therefore it is written in the portion of Noach I have set my rainbow in the cloud Beersheet 913 which also alludes to Yezid of Zeir and who is called the life of the worlds the phrase in the cloud refers to Malchut namely the lower feminine principle of Zeir and the revealed world of Rachel the words I have set mean that he has set his rainbow in the cloud ever since the day of creation that cloudy day which is described in the verse and it shall come to pass when I bring a cloud Beersheet 914 indicates that only then shall the rainbow be seen according to the secret of the appearance of the likeness of the glory of Hashem and not at any other time why is this so as the left is aroused Rachel emerges to her own aspect and she had hard labor Beersheet 3516 therefore it is said that three angels stay by her side Michael at one side the right side Revile at one side in the middle and Gabriel at one side the left side and from them she receives her strength to give birth these three aspects are the color seen in the form of the rainbow white red and green 71 the phrase so was the appearance of the brightness roundabout alludes to the illumination that was concealed and has disappeared within the pupil of the eye so the phrase this was the appearance of the likeness of the glory of Hashem applies to the colors in the appearance of the rainbow and not to the appearance of the brightness this is because the lower union of the three colors of the rainbow corresponds with the upper union 72 the three names Hashem are Elohim Hashem which appear in the verse Hero Yisrael Devarim 64 allude to the three colors white, red and green when they are concealed invisible and attached to one place this is the secret of the first union in the upper world that is called one place and the colors united in the rainbow below which are white, red and green correspond to the three concealed colors of the upper union Hashem are Elohim Hashem these colors of the rainbow belong to another union which I ask the secret of the verse and his name one the lower union it is the secret of the verse blessed be the name of the glory of his kingdom forever and ever that we respond after Hero Yisrael which I ask the lower union the upper union indicated by the verse Hero Yisrael Hashem are Elohim Hashem is one corresponds to the lower union blessed be the name of the glory of his kingdom forever and ever each verse contains six words 73 the words be gathered suggest measurement by the line and it Measuring measuring is from the hard spark that is in Bina as it is written who has measured the waters in the hollow of his hand Yeshayah 4012 in this verse who alludes to Bina this is what is meant by let the waters be gathered here in the verse let the waters be gathered is the extent of the entire mokin of he who forms the worlds namely Zeir and which is hinted at in the name Yudhi Hei fully spelled with Aleph says Yud Vavdalat Hei Vavdalat Vav Hei 74. Holy 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 Yeshayah 63 is the secret of the mokin of Bina which is also the secret of the verse let the waters be gathered the phrase Hashem Sevot Hei is the secret of the verse to one place is it of Zeir and that is called the life of the worlds to which the mokin from Bina is drawn according to the secret of the phrase to one place the phrase the whole earth is full of his glory if it is the secret of the verse and let the dry land appear this verse is the secret of the Lord he called the revealed world when comprised within the union of the upper world the words and let the dry land appear is the secret of the engraved name of the union of Kafbabzay and Babetami and Bakafsay Makzayan and Kafbabzay and Bab because the dry land which I asked the revealed world is included in the union of the supernal world which I asked the secret of Hashem our Elohim Hashem 8 let the earth bring forth grass the verse let the earth bring forth grass is a code which signifies the bringing down of souls into our physical world the Zohar discusses a vast system of angels which form a communication network through which positive and negative influences travel this network acts as an interface between the physical world and the upper worlds everything in the physical world is governed by angels including every blade of grass every creature in the sea and mankind as well because our powers of perception are severely limited the power of the angels is as Invisible as the force of gravity the influence of both however is quite real everything positive that occur in our lives is a direct result of positive angels likewise all blockages turmoil difficulties and distress are the result of the influence of negative angels our own behavior determines which angelic influences are aroused in the world by reading the section we are given access to the metaphysical network of angels we gain the ability to remove negative angels and to bring positive angels into our live 75 the verse let the earth bring forth grass bear sheet 111 is the secret of the lower union as it is now revealing its powers in these waters that have been gathered in one place the mokin are drawn down into it in a concealed and a hidden manner and from within it come forth supernal and concealed souls and holy hosts these are formed and drawn using the edifices of faith by the righteous the men of faith namely the female waters by worshiping their master 76 This is the secret of the verse who causes the grass to grow for the cattle Tehillim 10414 This is a beast that crouches on a thousand mountains and for whom grass is grown every day This grass refers to those angels who govern only for a specific time but then must vanish immediately because they were created on the second day Their dominion draws upon the left column that was created on the second day in their dominion they wish to annul the right they are destined to be food for this beast which means that nothing of their illumination is drawn down to the lower beings only the feminine principle enjoys it and then she burns and annuls them with it as there is fire that consumes fire which is the dominion of the left called fire 77 in the verse and plants for the service of man Tehillim 10414 The word plants refers to wheels holy beasts and cherubim the wheels have opening are the angels of Asia yeah, the holy beasts are the angels of Yitzhara and the cherubim are the Angels of Briah, all of these are firmly prepared and properly set by the Creator Himself. However, they are constantly renewed when human beings worship their master with sacrifices and prayer. This is what is meant by the service of man. The plants were predestined and prepared for the service of man and will be further perfected by that service as it should be. 78. When they are prepared by the service of man, sustenance and food come from them to the world as it is written that he may bring forth food out of the earth. Talim 10,414. This is also written, revealing seed. Beersheet 112, which is the secret of the Mokin. The grass he does not yield any seed but is intended to be consumed by the sacred fire of the feminine principle as explained above. Whereas the earth which yields seed is intended for the improvement of the world. 79. All this is to bring forth food out of the earth. Talim 10,414. Because all the improvements given to people are only for the purpose of Providing this herb out of the earth which is the
and he rippled there those that rise up in the smoke of the sacrifice and are become stronger because of the offering they are called columns of smoke. This is the secret of the verse who is this coming out of the wilderness like columns of smoke. Sure, Hashirim 36. So the cherubim are the secret of the herb that she receives from the male, and the columns of smoke are the grass. The cherubim and pillars exist for the service of man, but not the grass which is destined to be eaten as. It is written, Behold, now be not animals which I made with you. He eats grass like an oxio. 4000 and 1581. And the fruit tree yielding fruit alludes to the forms of the male and female, and the image of their faces is the face of man. The fruit tree is the feminine principle of Zeir and yielding fruit is of Zeir and The male that puts the fruit inside her, the male and female, are not like the cherubim which are hinted at in the phrase herb yielding seed. The male and female have large faces with beards, whereas the cherubim have small faces like those of babies. The face of man contains all the images, including the lion, the ox, and the eagle. Since they have large faces, the engraved images are imprinted on this large face, just as the engravings of the holy name are imprinted in the four directions of the world, east, west, north, and south. 82. Michael made a mark on the south side, and all three other faces gaze toward the face of man, the face of the lion, the face of the ox and the face of the eagle Michael is one of the four angels who serve the female of Zeir and therefore he prepares the place for the mating because since he is an angel of mercy Jesus he sketches the imprint to the south which is to the right man is male and female and he is not called man Adam unless both are included this means that Malchut on her own when she is not mating with Zeir and is not called man Adam only when they are united are they called man Adam this is the secret of the verse male and female he created them and blessed them and called their name man Bear she 52 so accordingly they were together called man Adam but each one alone is only half a body and cannot be called man the figures of the chariot of Elohim are formed according to his image namely from the face of man united on the south side as it is written the chariots of Elohim are twice 10000 thousand upon thousands Hebshin and Tehillim 6818 this is the secret of the lower chariot that is called the chariot of Elohim 83. The word Shinnan consists of the letters Shinnan Aleph, written in the scriptural verse. It includes all the images, all the living creatures, which include the ox, have sure the eagle, have Nesher, and the lion, have Ariah. For the initials of these words form the Shinnan Aleph of Shinnan, and the final none in the word Shinnan alludes to the face of the man that is included with them. This final none is the secret of the expansion of male and female that, united as one, everyone in the worlds of Briah, Yetzirah, and Asiyah emerges from these living creatures, which are the secret of Shinnan from them. The forms of Briah, Yetzirah, and Asiyah are born and separated, each befitting its aspect. 84. These living creatures are joined one to the other, so that each includes all the others. The ox, eagle, lion, and man are directed by the secret of the four engraved names, which are a great Elamite and a terrible Devarim 1017, to which they ascend to study. The 85 the ox ascended to be guided and gaze on the face of man with the ox rose one name that was crowned and engraved by the secret of the two colors which represent the name L after the ox was included in the name L it turned back in the throne which is the feminine principle of Zeir and been inscribed it engraved it and received its imprint so that it may be guided by the secret of the name L although the ox is of the left it was nevertheless marked to be guided by the aspect of Shasadim in the name L 86 the eagle ascended to be guided and gaze on the face of man another name rose up with it to be crowned and engraved according to the secret of the two faces the face of man and the face of the eagle and the two colors the color of the right which is white and the color of the eagle which is green so as to be guided and gaze on the crown above the name of it is great after this the eagle returned and the throne which is the feminine principle engraved and Etched it and the eagle was imprinted to be guided by the secret of this name that is for the attributes of the eagle are similar to those of the name grade 87 the lion ascended to be guided and gaze on the face of man above another name rose up with it to be crowned and engraved by the secret of the two faces and the two colors and to be strengthened and attached to viewer this is the name mighty then it returned and the throne which is the secret of the feminine principle of zeir and pen. engraved and etched it and it was imprinted so as to be guided by the secret of this name mighty so that the attributes of the lion which is to the right be like the attributes of the name mighty and the lion will be guided by the attribute of viewer 88 the face of man gazed on all of them on all the faces of the living creatures and they all rose up and gazed on it all have risen to the face of man above in the supernal chariot because it does not exist below then they were all drawn Together in an engraving according to the strong by the secret of a certain name which is terrible it is written about the living creatures as for the likeness of their faces they had the face of a man Yashiskel 110 because they were all included within this image of man and this image included them 89 according to the secret the holy one blessed be he is called the great almighty and terrible these names are engraved above by the secret of the upper chariot which comprises four letters of the name Yahavah which is a name that includes all the other names the combining of the lower ox within the upper line is equivalent to the letter Yud of Yud Yahavah and is the secret of the name L the combining of the lower line within the upper ox is equivalent to the letter He and is the secret of the name mighty the combining of the lower eagle within the upper line is equivalent to the letter Bob and is the secret of the name great and the face of man of above which includes all the living creatures from below that have ascended to it is equivalent to the lower hay of Yud Hay and is the secret of the name terrible these images have shin and are engraved and carved on the throne which is the feminine principle of Zeir and the throne is carved and decorated by them and these likenesses were embroidered on the throne one on the right one on the left one on the front and one on the back thus corresponding to the four directions of the world. The face of the lion is imprinted on the right which is the south wind the face of the ox on the left which is the north wind the face of the eagle on the front which is the east wind and the face of a man on the back which is the west wind this is the secret of the four letters of Yud Hay 90 when the throne which is the feminine principle of Zeir and ascends to unite with Zeir and it is imprinted with these four images have shin and these four supernal names carry the throne up. To unite with Zeir and and the throne, namely the feminine principle, becomes included within them during the union. This means that she is completed by and with these names. The throne collects and gleans by its union with Zeir and souls and delightful pleasures. When it has collected and gleaned these delights and pleasures, it descends full like a tree with branches on all sides and laden with fruit. 91 As the throne descends from the place of union to its own place, the images of the four living creatures come forth, each shaped in its own form and engraving, illuminating, shining, and radiating. They scatter seed over the world, thus they are called the building seed and herb alludes to the living creatures that sow the world with seed. 92 When the image of man, which includes all the other images, issues forth, it is described as fruit tree yielding fruit after its kind. Bear sheet 111 Because man is both male and female, the fruit tree is the female and yielding fruit. Applies to the male the phrase whose seed is in itself upon the earth, and it teaches us that he emitted his seed for the benefit of the earth alone. So the phrase whose seed is in itself is purposely said to teach us that man should not emit his seed in vain. 93 The herb which appears in the verse, let the earth bring forth grass or yielding seed, does not yield seed because of this, it has no permanency and does not last like the others. This is because it has no image to be shaped and engraved into any sort of likeness or form. Instead, they are seen and not seen. All those that have not been shaped into a form or an image have no permanency. They are created and last only for a certain time and are immediately consumed by the fire that devours fire, as already explained. And they are again created and are immediately consumed by the fire that consumes fire. This is repeated again and again every day. 94 A human being below in this world has an image and a form, but he does not. Last forever as do those of the angels above the form and image of the angels above are created in their shape without any other covering because of this they are everlasting the image of man in this world below referring to the nefesh rash and neshamah is shaped into its form only by a covering because of this man lasts only for a certain limited period 95 every night when a man sleeps his spirit removes the covering and ascends this fire that consumes fire namely the feminine principle of zeir and consumes and burns the spirit later the spirits are resurrected and reshaped in their coverings as before because of this the spirits have no permanent existence as do the images above which is a reference to the angels of the earth but are burned and then renewed as before about this it is written they are new every morning
This day the third day it is written twice that it was good. Bear sheet 110 to 12. This day is associated with two sides, the right column and the left column. It told each side that it was good, thereby reconciling the discord between them. This is why the phrase and set appears twice in it. Herein lies the secret of the name that is formed with the four letters Y U D A Bapay inscribed and engraved. These can add up to 12 letters that represent the four images on all four sides of the holy throne, which is the feminine principle of Z E I R N Benign. Let there be lights. According to the Zohar, it is at this point in the process of creation that the children's disease called Kruk was brought forth into existence. This disease is governed by Lilith, a particular negative female angel whose name we do not pronounce. She has the ability to remove children, heaven forbid, from our physical realm. If there is an opportunity to do so through the Hebrew letters, we draw the power of protection for. Our children 98 and Elohim said let there be lights have me or Bear sheet 114 the word me or I is written here with defective spelling without the letter Bob this means that the children's disease group diphtheria was created because without Bob me or means curses as in the verse the curse had me or out of Hashem is in the house of the wicked Mishle 333 for after the illumination of the primordial light was concealed the skull had clip of the brain was created this clip expanded and brought forth another clip as soon as the clip went forth it ascended and descended until it reached the small face it wanted to cleave to it and become part of its form it refused completely to be separated from it when the Holy One blessed be he created Adam he separated it from there and the clip ascended below to the level of Malchut only in order to amend it in this world on the level of Malchut alone and not above IT 99 when the clip saw Shabbat clinging to the side of Adam. Who represented the beauty of above and saw in them the complete form it flew up from its place at the level of Malchut and wanted to cling to the small faces of Adam and Shabbat as before however the guards at the gates did not allow the clipper to cling to them the Holy One blessed be he scolded it and cast it into the depths of the sea 100 the clipper sat there in the depth of the sea until Adam and his wife sinned and the Holy One blessed be he took the clipper out from the depths of it. See it took control over all those babies who are the small faces of people who deserve punishment for the sins of their fathers it wandered around the world approached the gates of the terrestrial garden of Eden saw the cherubim guarding the gates of the garden and sat down near the blade of the sword from which it had originally emerged 101 when the bright blade of the revolving sword changed to judgment the clipper fled and wandered around the world and found babies due to be punished it. Is called the bright blade of a revolving sword because it revolves and changes back and forth between mercy and judgment. The clip laughed with the babies and then killed them. It did this during the waning of the moon as its light diminished. This is why Mirat lights. I has written without the letter Bob, which means curses. When Cain was born, the clip was unable to cling to him, but later it approached him, cleaved to him, and manifested to him earthbound spirits and flying spirits. 102. Adam had intercourse with the female spirits for 130 years until Nama came because of her beauty. She led the sons of Elohim and Azal astray. She bore them all sorts of new kinds of clip. Evil spirits and demons spread out from her into the world. They wander around the world during the night, deriding human beings and causing nocturnal pollution. Wherever they find men sleeping alone in their own homes, they hover over them and cling to them, arousing lustful desires and having offspring. But then 103 when the moon is restored the letters M.E.M. Aleph in the word Mirat curses are turned into Aleph M.E.M. Rush Tafim This is according to the secret of the verse the word of Umrat Hashem is tried he is a shield to all those who trust in him Tehillim 1831 he is a shield for all those who hold fast to their faith in the Holy One blessed be he against all those evil spirits and prosecutors who wander through the world at the time the light of the moon is diminishing 104. King Solomon penetrated the depth of the secret of the nut as it is written I went down into the garden of nuts Sher Hashirim 611 he took hold of the shell clip of the nut and looked at all its layers he came to realize that the main pleasure of the spirits in the shell of the nut was just to cling to human beings and defile them as it is written and the delights of the sons of men women very many have Shadat Kahila 28 this means that the demons have Shadim take pleasure only in human. Beings 105 this verse also means that male and female demons are born from the pleasure human beings enjoy during their sleep at night it was necessary for the Holy One blessed be he to create and supply the world with everything including the clipot so everything can be compared to the nut just as the inner part of the nut is surrounded by many layers of shells the inner parts of all the worlds are similarly surrounded by many layers above and below in the supernal worlds and in this world as will be explained 106 from the beginning of the secret of the supernal point which is Eric and to the end of all grades they are all intertwined so each and everyone is a clipper to the other a clipper is like a covering or an outer layer just as a shell is a covering for a fruit 107 the primal point which is Eric and is the internal light whose purity translucency and cleanness are beyond comprehension when the expansion spreads beyond Eric and which is the point this expansion of that point becomes a temple for the purpose of covering that point. The light of that point is incomprehensible because of its great purity. 108 The temple, namely Abba and Ima, which covers the concealed point, which is Eric Enpin, is a light that has no limits. This means that the light of the temple is also unknown and inconceivable. Nevertheless, it is not as pure and subtle as the light of the primal point. Eric Enpin, which is hidden and concealed, this temple issues forth. An expansion of the primal light, as it is written, and Elohim said, Let there be light, and there was light. Bear sheet 13. This expansion, Yisrael, Saba and Tevuna, is a covering for that pure and subtle temple, namely Abba and Ima, which is more internal than Yisrael, Saba and Tevuna. 109 From here, Yisrael, Saba and Tevuna on each one expanded within the other and became enclosed by one another until all the grades enclosed one another. One was the inner part and the other the outer layer. Though one is a garment in relation to what is above it, it has also become the inner aspect of another grade, the grade that is below it. So Abba and Ima, which are considered a garment for Eric Enpin, became the inner part and internal aspect of Yisrael, Saba and Tevuna, thus Yisrael, Saba and Tevuna, which form a garment for Abba and Ima, became the inner part for Zeir Enpin, thus Zeir Enpin, which is a garment for Yisrael, Saba and Tevuna, became the inner part for his feminine principle. The same thing occurred below in the lower worlds of Bria, Yitzra, and Asiya. The feminine principle of Atzilut is enclosed within Bria and Bria within Yitzra and Yitzra within Asiya. Accordingly, the Neshama in a man is enclosed within the Ruash and the Ruash within the Nefesh and the physical body in this image. The human being exists in this world with an inner part and an outer shell, which corresponds to a spirit and the body. All this is for the perfection of the world. One hundred and ten. When the moon was united with the sun, the moon had its own light, but after the moon was separated from the sun, it descended to the world of Bria and was placed in charge of the host of Bria, it belittled itself and diminished its own light, so clipot upon clipot were created one above the other to conceal the inner part, all this occurred to complete the light of the inner part, because without a shell no fruit can be had, this is the reason why it is written, let there be lights me or rot without. Bob which means a curse because of the clipot that emerged due to the diminution of the light of the moon, all this was done for the perfection of the world, therefore it is written to give light upon the earth, bear sheet 115 as these clipot emerged in the secret of the shell that precedes the fruit and the two great lights, the Zohar discusses the creation of the sun and the moon which originally were of equal size and importance, but the moon was not content and she cast a jealous eye on her. Cosmic neighbor as a result of her envy of the sun's illumination the moon was eventually reduced in both size and significance henceforth the moon would have no light of her own instead she must reflect the light of the sun here the Zohar reveals a profound secret of human nature this is origin of the trait known as hatred for no reason sometimes we are envious of our neighbor's possessions even if we possess exactly the same things instead of appreciating our lot in life we begrudge a lot of others even though it in no way diminishes our own in Kabbalah the reduction of the moon symbolizes the separation between the male and female aspects of the creator this manifests as the separation of the spiritual dimensions here and or the upper world and the physical realm of Malchut or the lower world just as the moon's light is derived from the sun Malchut's light is drawn from the world of Zir and through positive deeds and actions and the removal of our jealous nature we can
Everything together which is mem zedek pe mem zedek pe zedek zeir and received his greatness from the right one his feminine principle from the left one in such a way they are referred to as the two great lights these are the most supernal names of the thirteen attributes of mercy the names mem zedek pe zedek mem zedek pe zedek are called great because they became great and ascended they are supernal and derived from the secret of above they benefit the world as the worlds. Existence depends on them. Similarly, the two lights that appear in the verse, which are Zeir and Pen, and his feminine principle, both rose as one to greatness. One hundred and thirteen. The moon was not at ease with the sun because it felt embarrassed before it. The moon said to the sun, "Where do you feed your flock? Why do you make your flock to rest at noon?" Sure, Hashirim seventeen. This is as if to say, "How can a tiny candle shine in the middle of the day? Why should I be like one who cloaks himself?" But that is, how can I remain in shame? And it lowered itself to be head of the lower beings, as it is written, "Go your way forth by the footsteps of the flock." But eight, thus the holy one blessed be he said to it, "Go forth and subjugate yourself." One hundred and fourteen. From then on, it had no light of its own. It had only the light it received from the sun. At first, they were united as one on the same level, but it later lowered itself from all of its grades. This means that it lost all its grades and emerged from the world of Atzilut. Although it is the head of the lower worlds of Bria, Yitzra, and Asiyah, it is nevertheless considered to have lost all its grades as in principle a woman has no significance unless she is together with her husband. In other words, because the feminine principle is separated from Zeir and her husband and has left the world of Atzilut to go to that of Bria, she has brought about the loss of all her grades even though she has become head in the world of Bria, she does not consider this to be significant because she is separated from her husband who is in the world of Atzilut. The phrase the greater light bear she 116 alludes to Zeir and who is called by the name Yahweh Bahay, the lesser light of it alludes to the feminine principle who is called by the name Elohim, the last of the grades and an end to thought, namely an end to the world of Atzilut that is called the thought. At first the feminine principle was inscribed above in Zeir and in the fourth letter of the holy name. Yet Hey because the female is the lower Hey, in other words, when she was on the same level with Zeir and she was the lower Hey of the name Yud Hey but afterward it lowered itself to be called by the name Elohim 115. In spite of all this, the feminine principle ascended on all sides and shone in all directions from above, that is, before she lowered herself, and when she was the lower Hey in the assembling of the letters of the holy name Yud Hey later when she belittled herself, the grades expanded out from all sides, which means that she shone from the aspect of being before the lower Hey of Yud Hey and also from the aspect of being now the name Elohim. The grades that expanded from the aspect of her being above from the lower Hey of Yud Hey are called the rule of the day. The grades that expanded from the aspect of her being below from the name Elohim are called the rule of the night. 116 The words of stars bear she 116 allude to. Countless hosts and groups of angels who are all suspended in that firmament of heaven that is Yezid of Zeir and is called life of the worlds as it is written and Elohim set them in the firmament of heaven to give light upon the earth. Bear sheet 117 117 The kingdom of the house of David was established on this day the fourth day which is the fourth leg that supports the throne. It happened on the fourth day because the letters were completed and fixed in their places properly in spite of all this Malchut kingdom was not fixed properly in its place before the sixth day because only then was the image of man completed and properly established on the sixth day the upper throne and the lower throne were established and all the world settled in their places all the letters were set in their spheres after adding and releasing the complicated tie that existed among the letters 118 the fourth day which is the kingdom of David was rejected by the builders as it is written the stone which the builders rejected Tehillim 11822 and also my mother's children were angry with me Sher Hashirim 16 for this light referring to Malchut lowered itself and diminished its own radiance while the clipot were established in their places this gave place to the emerging of the clipot and their rule thus she seemed loathsome in the eyes of the righteous that built it only later when she was completed and ready for union with Zeir and was it said she has become the head Stone of the corner, all those lights that shone during the six thousand years period were suspended in this firmament of heaven to establish with them the throne of David, namely the kingdom Malchut of David. One nineteen. These lights of the kingdom of David shape the form below in order to prepare the form of all those that pertain to the inner form of the face of man, because every inner form is so called, namely the face of man. From this, you should realize that every shape included in this expansion of the letter final none is called man, even though they do not actually have the face of man. Hence, it is written, but your menyash is called three thousand four hundred and thirty-one. You are called man, but not the rest of the idolatrous nations. One hundred and twenty. Every spirit is called man, which means that only the aspect of the light of the spirit that is enclosed within the body is called man. So the body of the spirit of the holy side is only a covering. In other words, the spirit is the actual essence of man, and the body is only its covering. But on the other side, the opposite applies. This is why it is written, You have clothed me with skin and flesh. Eof 1011. The flesh of man is only a garment covering the essence of man, which is the spirit everywhere. It is written, The flesh of man, it hints that the essence of man is inside. The flesh is only a vestment for man, a body for him, but the essence of man is the aspect of his spirit. 121. For the lower aspects were melted with the melting of the spirit of the face of man and other forms were fashioned and clothed in a different kind of garment, not by that of man, but of kosher animals. These include ox, sheep, goats, kids of the goats, rams, deer, fowl, deer, and so on. They would have preferred to be included in the vestment of the face of man, but were not. They became vestments for others, namely garments for the face of an ox, the face of an eagle, and the face of a lion. The inner spirit of the ox, sheep, and goat is called by the same name as the body of that spirit because the body. I a vestment for that name but does not own it the body is the flesh of the ox and the ox is the inner spirit of that body namely its flesh is its garment so it is with all animals their bodies are named after the inner spirit that is enclosed within them 122 it is similar with the other side which is not holy the spirit that spreads within the idolatrous nations issues from the side that is not holy and is not the aspect of man therefore it is not called by this name as has been written but your man the name of the spirit is defiled it is not called man and has no share in him because it extends from the wicked man lit man without elevation who does not want to ascend to the face of man above so his body the vestment of his spirit is impure and his flesh is defiled the impure part which is the spirit is on the inside and the flesh is his vestment as long as the spirit dwells within that body it is called impure as the spirit leaves that vestment namely the body neither the body nor the vestment is called impure any longer as the impure one that is the spirit has departed from it 123 from the lower aspects referring to animals beasts and birds that were molded into shape by that impure spirit forms namely private spirits were drawn out these were enclosed by other vestments such as the forms of the impure animals and the Torah said of them these shall be unclean to you they 1129 these forms include pigs and the birds and animals that belong to the other side the spirit is called by that name that I is impure and the body is its vestment the body is called the flesh of the pig because it is a pig in its inner being in its spirit while the flesh is a garment covering that spirit therefore both aspects those included within the secret of man and those included with the secret of the impure are separated from and oppose each other on the side of holiness are the spirit of man in general and the spirits of pure animals beasts and fowl which are the particular from the side of wicked man is the impure wicked man which are the general aspects and the spirits of impure animals beasts and fowl that are the particulars they oppose each other every kind of animal stays with its own kind and does not mix with the opposite kind even if it does it eventually returns to its own kind 124 all the upper shining lights shine within that firmament of heaven so that proper forms may be drawn down below as it is written and Elohim set them in the firmament of heaven to rule over the day and over the night bear sheet 117 for the dominion of the two lights is a noble dominion 125 the phrase the greater light namely zeir and rules the day and the lesser light which is his feminine principle rules the night the secret learned from here is that the male rules by day and fills up the house with all that is needed such as food and sustenance as soon as night falls and the female takes command everything in the house falls under her control because then it is time for her dominion as it is written she rises
becomes one and it says Hashem shall be one and his name one because the numerical value of Eshad one adds up to 13 thus the sun and the moon become one and the day and night also become one this is why it is written and there was evening and there was morning one day the secret of this union is only applicable on high 127 the verse and the stars means that after the female has attained order in her house and retired with her husband the maidens are left in charge of the house. The maidens who serve the female are called the stars and the secret of the phrase and the stars is that the female turns control of the house over to them to deal with all the requirements of the house that is to prepare her for mating with the sun and to bestow the abundance of the day this is during the darkness before dawn when the maidens, the stars, rule which is an inferior rule and darkness is doubled in the world this is the secret meaning of a portion to her maidens Mishle. 3115 afterward that is after the mating of the darkness of the morning before dawn breaks the household returns to the dominion of the male and everything is set properly in place this means that the female is included within the male according to the secret of the mating and is under his control she reveals the light of the morning to the world as it should be 11 the luminaries of the light and the luminaries of the fire on the sabbath an immense amount of spiritual light is revealed into the cosmos while during the week the light is extremely diminished the zohar explains how we can create a continuous connection to the shabbat through the closing rituals of the sabbath itself such as reflecting candle light off the enamel of the fingernails if we should ever fall into negativity heaven forbid no matter how deep that descent might be reading the section can establish a lifeline to the light of the creator 128 and elohim made the two great lights bear sheet 116 it. Sun is one and the moon is the other because of this the lights that ascend are called the luminaries of the light whereas those that descend are called luminaries of the fire these luminaries of the fire are the lower grades and rule over all the weekdays because of this a blessing is recited over the candle when Shabbat ends because at that point the luminaries of the fire are given permission to rule again 129 the fingers of men represent the most hidden of all grades and secrets of it. Supernal world and are divided into front and back the back of the fingers represents the external part in allusion to the fingernails as such man may look at his fingernails by candlelight as Shabbat ends as they shine by the candlelight and are bright from that fire that rules over the days of the week 130 the fingernails are visible but it is not permissible to see the inner aspect of the fingers by this candlelight because they shine only from above and the inner part of the fingers is Called the inner face this is the secret of the verse and you shall see my back but my face shall not be seen Shema 3323 which means that a person should not look at the inside of his fingers at the end of Shabbat as he recites the blessing creator of the luminaries of the fire bore me or Ahayash the phrase and you shall see my back refers to the external part of the fingers which is hinted at in the fingernails and shines as Shabbat ends but my face shall not be seen refers to the inside of the fingers which cannot receive from the luminaries of the fire the internal part of the fingers rules on Shabbat the external part of the fingers rules during the weekdays 131 on Shabbat day the Holy One blessed be he rules alone over this interface sitting upon his throne of glory all are included within him and the dominion is his this is why the Holy One blessed be he transmits calmness to all the worlds and the holy nation which is called the one nation on earth receives. The inheritance of this day the luminaries of the light originate from the side of the right which is the primal light that was on the first day of the seven days of creation this alludes to the light that is mentioned in the verse let there be light on the day of the Shabbat the luminaries of the light shine alone and govern illuminating all the worlds below at Salah 132 when Shabbat is over the luminaries of the light are hidden and the luminaries of the fire govern the worlds with each and everyone in its place that is the luminaries of light rule during Shabbat and the luminaries of fire during weekdays he asked when do they rule he replied from the end of Shabbat until Shabbat thus it is necessary to receive light from that candle as Shabbat ends 133 the verse and the living creatures ran and returned Yashiskal 14 means that the eye is not able to observe the unconcealed living creatures as they run to and from this refers to the lower living creatures of which it is written and you shall see my back although they are revealed they are running to and fro this is because of the will have opened that is stationed in their midst is Monotron who is far greater and more important than the rest of the living creatures EIS higher than they by 500 parsangs 134 the concealed living creatures are hidden beneath the upper concealed letters yet hey of the name yudhe hey which govern hey of the name yudhe hey the ones are a chariot for the others that is the letters Vav hey are a chariot for the letters yudhe hey this means that they reveal their illumination as a rider is seen in his chariot as a result by revealing their illumination the lower living creatures are a chariot for the upper living creatures and that which is most concealed which is completely unknown is the secret of soft endlessness which is hinted at by the tip of the letter yudhe of the name yudhe hey hey it controls everything and rides upon them all which means that all the grades manifest its dominion over the worlds the living creatures which are revealed are down below the upper and concealed living creatures their illumination comes from them and they travel according to them in other words the lower living creatures have no motivation of their own except for what they receive from the upper living creatures 135 the upper living creatures who are concealed are all included in the firmament of heaven as it is written of them let there be lights in the firmament of heaven bear sheet 115 the verse and let there be lights in the firmament of heaven informs us that all the lights are suspended from that firmament of heaven that is the firmament above the living creatures about which it is written and over the heads of the living creatures there was the likeness of the firmament as the color of the terrible eyes yashiskal 122 this is the primal firmament 136 from this point upward high above the primal firmament no Person can comprehend or grasp any thoughts because they are concealed according to the secret of the thought. The thought of the Holy One, blessed be He, is hidden and concealed above. Nobody can conceive and understand man's thought. Even more true is that nobody can understand anything originating in supernal thought. The actual divine thought itself is all the more beyond any person's ability to grasp more inner than thought, which I aspire who may form any idea of such a concept. There is no understanding at all, not enough to even ask a question, not to mention comprehending the answer. Twelve, the three lights, the complete and all embracing light, proceeds into our world through three stages. These three stages comprise the right, left, and central columns of spiritual energy. See, let there be a firmament. Page two fifty three. The three stages express themselves through the spiritual vessels of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. In the first phase, the light is unknowable and too unimaginably luminous for any. Single vessel to contain the second phase produces a diminishing of the light and the third phase brings a final diminution achieving a suitable level of light for all vessels to safely receive the Hebrew letters composing the section bring the appropriate measure of light to the areas of our lives where it is most needed 137 the endless cannot be known or be subject to any question or mental formulation from within this most concealed of all concealed things with the beginning of it. Descent of the endless for the purpose of being seen a thin almost imperceptible light shown it was concealed by a fragile imprint as delicate as a needle point thus although a tiny slit was opened it was insufficient for the light to be grasped this is the secret of the concealed thought it remained unknown until an illumination extended from it to the place on which the letters imprinted everything emerges from their 138 in the beginning the letter Aleph which is the beginning lit head. An end of all the grades was inscribed although it is the imprint on which the upper and lower worlds were imprinted it is still referred to in the singular as Eshad 1 which means that the Aleph is one in numerical value it teaches us that although it contains many forms and includes all the grades it remains only one thus all the grades are as one in it assuredly the letter Aleph is the letter upon which the upper and the lower beings depend 139 the upper tip head of the letter Aleph. Referring to the shape of the upper Yud represents the secret of the supernal thought the expansion of the upper firmament is still entirely concealed within the upper tip of the letter Aleph in its upper Yud so when the shape of the letter Aleph emerges from that firmament it will be in the image of the secret of the beginning head of thought within that central column of the letter Aleph there are six grades namely Chisid, Burit, Tiferet, Net, Sach, and Yezid these contain the secret of all. The supernal and concealed living creatures that are connected to the inside of thought which is by the 141 luminary that shone and was concealed is the light of the letter bed of Beersheet this is hinted at in the verse the heat of the day Beersheet 181 as Abraham was sitting in the tent door in the heat of the day this door leads from below to above and those down below ascend through it the heat of the day
The sun rose upon him to heal him from the darkness of the left from here onward that is after Yahikob drew down the light of the central column the verse continues and he limped upon his thigh his thigh is an allusion to the sphere of Netzach of Zeir and Pen which is called Yisrael because the two Sfarot Netzach and Hot are called the two thighs 143 note that it is written upon his thigh and not upon his thighs this means that this is the fourth grade namely Netzach from where no prophecies were issued until Shmuel arrived about it it is written and also the eternal one Netzach of Yisrael I Shmuel 1529 Netzach which had been weak ever since Yahikob the patriarch was endangered by the minister of Ezop was thus firmly re-established 144 he explained more fully the verse he touched the hollow of his thigh Verse 3226 when the minister of Ezop came upon Yahikob Yahikob derived strength from that even tied by the power of judgment thus Yahikob became included. Within it that is the left column and he was not able to overcome him and when he saw that he prevailed not against him he touched the hollow of his thigh hence Yaakov attained strength from there he explained the reason for this because the thigh is an extremity located away from the torso and because Yaakov is the sphere of Tiferet that is called the torso his body comprises the secret of two grades male and female according to the secret being called man as soon as Yaakov derived power which is located outside of his body the minister of Ezop struck and the hollow of Yaakov's thigh was out of joint 145 no man prophesied from there until Shmuel who firmly established the sphere of Netzach therefore it is written and also the eternal one of Yireel for he is not a man Yahashua received his prophecy from the sphere of Hot of Moshe as it is written and you shall put some of your honor head hot upon him Emid bar 2720 as Yahashua preceded Shmuel the prophet he could not receive his prophecy from Netzach because of the weakness caused by the touch of Esav's ministering angel. This is the reason why he received his prophecy from Had, which is the fifth grade. Netzach is the left eye of Yaakov. David came forth and combined it with the right, as it is written, At your right hand are pleasures forevermore. Had Netzach Tehillim 1611, it is not written your right, but rather at your right, which means that before the time of David, Netzach was not at the right. David brought the Netzach back to the aspect of the right, for from the time of Yaakov until Shmuel and David, Netzach was considered the aspect of the left. 146, he asked what weakened Yaakov's thigh. He replied, The side of impurity approached him and derived strength from him, revealing the defect of the lack of the face of man. Thus, the other side clings to every place where a lack appears in holiness, so the amending was delayed until Shmuel appeared. That is why Shmuel came to remind us that. This is the thigh of Israel as it is written and also the eternal one had Netzach of Israel I Shmuel 1529 this is also the reason why all Shmuel's words were according to judgment both in the beginning and in the end 147 furthermore the holy one blessed be he included him with the sphere of Hot he asked when was that he replied after he had anointed the king's shawl and David for the Shmuel is ranked as Moshe and Aharon just as Moshe and Aharon were separated on two sides above it. Right and the left so was Shmuel down below divided into two aspects right and left what are those two aspects there Netzach and Hot the same as Moshe and Aharon on high all the grades were included within one another by Shmuel and this is how he became ranked as Moshe and Aharon together as is written Moshe and Aharon among his priests and Shmuel among them that call upon his name Tehillim 996 the six aspects the six Farach Yisad Virat Tiferet Netzach Hot and Yisad were included. Within one another and combined thirteen Moshe and Yaakov Moses possessed masterful control over the supernal worlds far greater than the patriarch Jacob had achieved for this reason Moses became the leader of the generation of the desert and it is said that there will never be a generation as great as the generation of Moses the Kabbalists teach that in the end of days which is the current era the generation of Moses will return to finish the work of revealing the totality of light that emanates from the creator in fact we are that generation though the memories of the scorching heat of the desert and the radiant light of Sinai may be lost to our conscious minds it is vital for all of us to recognize who we really are therein lies power and truth of the Zohar's words each letter fills us with strength to accept our responsibility and to fulfill it through spiritual work and self-transformation 148 in the same manner that the right and the left above which are Moshe and Aharon are connected to the right and the left below, namely Shmuel, so is the central column above which I asked Tiferet and the aspect of Yaakov and Moshe connected to the central column below which I asked and the aspect of Yosef Yaakov was the owner of the house when Yaakov passed away. Moshe gained control over the house during his lifetime. Yosef was righteous because of Yaakov and Moshe 149. The proof that Yaakov took over the house, which is the feminine principle of Zeir and Through Yosef is in the verse, these are the generations of Yaakov Yosef. Bear 372 that shows that they were attached to each other. Moshe did not mate with her with the female until he attained the connection with Yosef when the Shechinah returned from the exile in Egypt. Moshe, who I asked the internal aspect of Zeir and was able to mate with the Shechinah only through Yosef as it is written, and Moshe took the bones of Yosef with him. Shemot 1319. Why is it written with him? Because it Aspect of the body is not fit for mating with the female unless it first unites with the covenant which is Yezid. This is why Moshe took Yosef with him because since Yosef was connected with him, Zeir and Pen could mate with this feminine principle in the proper manner. Thus it is considered that Yaakov, Moshe and Yosef go together as one as both Yaakov and Moshe have to join Yosef 150. When Yaakov died his body was buried in the Holy Land but when Yosef died only his bones were buried in the Holy Land for Moshe no part of his body was buried in the Holy Land as his body even his bones was buried outside the Holy Land. So he asked why did these differences exist because Yaakov was the first husband of the queen but after Yaakov died the feminine principle mated with the internal aspect of Zeir and Pen which is called Moshe as long as Moshe was enclosed in the body in this world he visited her as was proper because he had an affinity of form with her he became the second husband of it. Female 151 according to this they carried Yaakov to the Holy Land in his entire body because he is the body but for Yosef only his bones were taken to the Holy Land and not his body why because the bones are the hosts and legions of above and they all emerge from that righteous Yosef the righteous was called by the name hosts why because all the hosts and legions above emerge from him because of this the bones of Yosef which are the aspect of the hosts were taken to the Holy Land. 152 Moshe remained outside the Holy Land neither his body nor his bones entered the Holy Land instead the Shechinah entered the Holy Land after Moshe had died and she returned to her first husband who was Yaakov from this we learned that if a woman is married to two men in this world she shall return after her demise to her first husband in the world to come thus because Yaakov her first husband was in the Holy Land and the woman belongs only to her first husband Moshe was buried outside the Holy Land 153 Moshe married during this lifetime what Yaakov did not merit during his lifetime because Yaakov made it that I brought on the mating of Zeir and Pen and his feminine principle in the other supernal world only after his death on the other hand Moshe caused this mating to occur while he was still alive in this world but not after his death you might say that not bringing on the mating after his death was a disadvantage for Moshe but that is not so why because when the children of Israel left Egypt their redemption came from the aspect of Yobel the Jubilee which is by all the 600,000 people of the generation of the wilderness came from the supernal world by in that image of Bina they traveled through the wilderness and none of them entered the Holy Land only the children born to the generation of the wilderness entered the Holy Land as it should be because they belong to the completion of the moon which is the feminine principle they entered the land and ate. Of its fruit, hence all the workers of the land, all who farmed and cultivated the land, pertain to the building of the moon. 154 Moshe mated with the moon, that is Moshe caused the mating of Zeir and Pen with the moon while he was still enclosed in a body in this world. He had full control over her as he was considered the husband of the queen when he passed from this world. His sacred spirit ascended high and the spirit returned to the supernal level, namely by there in the world of Bina. Moshe cleaved to 600,000 souls of the generation of the wilderness which belonged to him, that is to his own aspect. This is something that did not happen to Yaakov because he did not ascend to Bina after his death as Moshe did after his instead. His spirit returned to the Shemitah, namely the feminine principle of Ze
Outside of it so that each receives illumination from the other this means that those who come from the feminine principle are supposed to receive their illumination from those who extend from by the light of body that requires the illumination of the spirit accordingly those who extend from the feminine principle referring to Yahya Kov and the dwellers of the holy land are within the feminine principle which is the holy land whereas those who extend from by referring to Moshe and the generation of the wilderness are outside the holy land so the latter shine and illuminate the souls within the holy land 156 all those who entered the holy land had only the image of the first ones from the generation of the wilderness but they did not reach that supernal level as the first ones did why because there will be no generation and there never was a generation such as those first ones of the generation of the wilderness to whom the brilliance of the glory of their master was Revealed face to face 157 Yaakov made it with his wives in his lifetime with his body after his death his spirit ascended and cleaved to the spirit of the feminine principle however Moshe separated himself from his wife Sipporah while still in this world and cleaved to the holy spirit namely the feminine principle of Zeir and while he was still enclosed in his body after his death his spirit cleaved to the concealed and supernal spirit namely Bina and all the grades were united and shown as one that is those from Bina that are considered of the spirit and those from the feminine principle considered of the body the spirit of Moshe came from the oval Bina and his body came from the Shemitah female the spirit of Yaakov cleaved to the Shemitah the feminine principle of Zeir and while his body belonged to his wives in this world therefore during his lifetime he could not cleave to the feminine principle of Zeir and he could only do so after his death Moshe was a Opposite because his body had the affinity of form with the feminine principle of Zeir and and he cleaved to it during his lifetime but not after his death why because his spirit cleaved to Bina and had not affinity of form with the feminine principle of Zeir and 158 all those supernal lights exist in their images below on earth they are all suspended from the firmament of heaven to shine on the earth below as it is written and Elohim set them in the firmament of heaven to give light. Upon the earth there she 117 the words the great lights contain the secret of the two names combined as one after a third name is added they become one again one opposite the other it is an inscribed and engraved name in which they are included according to the secret of the faith 14 let us make man part one when Rabbi Shimon hears a voice calling Shimon Shimon he realizes that it is the voice of God because no mortal would dare omit the designation of Rabbi when speaking his name. This is not heaven forbid a suggestion by the Zohar that Rabbi Shimon was prideful rather it gives evidence of the profound greatness of the sage and mystic who was recognized by all creation as the true light of the world a subsequent discussion concerns the origin of man and the great spiritual powers that were imbued into his essence by the creator from these passages we come to recognize the eminence and holiness of Rabbi Shimon without this recognition we cannot truly connect to the light of the Zohar we also gain recognition of our own spiritual worth this is crucially important because a lack of spiritual self-worth is our greatest hindrance in achieving lasting fulfillment and well-being failing to recognize the true spiritual essence of our being is to neglect all spiritual truths including the laws of cause and effect when such a failure occurs we become blind to the consequences of our intolerant and self-involved behavior 159 in the verse and Elohim said let us make man bear sheet 126 there lies a secret as described in the verse the secret of Hashem is with them that fear him Halim 2514 the most venerated elder opened the discussion saying Shimon Shimon who is he who said let us make man and of whom it is written and Elohim said who is this name of Elohim in the meantime that most respected of elders flew and he could not see him when Rabbi Shimon heard that he called him Shimon and not Rabbi Shimon he said to his friends this is indeed the holy one blessed be he of whom it is said and an ancient of days had him and did said Daniel 79 now is the time to reveal the secret which was previously forbidden to be revealed however permission has now been granted to reveal it the question is who said let us make man was it Elohim of Bina or Elohim of Malchut 160 Rabbi Shimon started by saying this is like a king who had many buildings to build and he had a craftsman that craftsman Hebamon did not do anything without it. Permission of the king as it is written then I was by him as a nursling have on Mishlei 830 the king is most certainly the supernal wisdom above which is Abba and the central column is the king down below namely Zeir and Elohim the craftsman above is the supernal IMA and Elohim the craftsman below is the Sheshana below 161 a wife is not permitted to do anything without the permission of her husband of all the buildings that were in the way of Atzalot that is in the world of Atzalot. Abba would say to IMA let it be so and so and it was immediately done by IMA it is written and Elohim said let there be light and there was light and said alludes to the owner of the building Abba who said to Elohim let there be light so Abba uttered the words and the craftsman IMA completed the task immediately and this was the same in every edifice namely the grades that came into being by way of Atzalot where Abba would say let there be a firmament or let there be lights and IMA would Complete everything in an instant 162 when he reached the grades of the world of separation which is the world of those divided that is to create the soul of man in the world of Bria the craftsman and said to the owner of the building let us make man in our image after our likeness bear sheet 126 this means different from the whole work of creation until the creation of man when the owner of the building uttered these words here the craftsman uttered the words the owner of the building said it is indeed good that man is made but he shall sin before you because he is foolish as it is written a wise son makes a glad father but a foolish son is the grief of his mother Mishlei 101 this means that Abba announced that the sin of man would not affect him it would affect only IMA for a foolish son is the grief of his mother 163 IMA said because his sins are related to IMA and not Abba I wish to create him in my own image as it is written so Elohim created man in his own image bear sheet 127 note that it is not written in our own image because she did not want Abba to have any share in his creation 164 when Adam sinned it was written and for your transgressions was your mother put away a Sheol 501 the king who is Abba said to Iamay the mother did I not tell you that he was going to sin why did you create him in that instance he exiled him and his mother therefore it is written a wise son makes a glad father but a foolish son is the grief of his mother a wise son alludes to man in the world of Atzalot namely Zeir and, and a foolish son alludes to man in the world of Bria namely Adam whose soul comes from the world of Bria 165 all the friends rose and said to Rabbi Shimon in astonishment Rabbi Rabbi could there be such separation between Abba and Iamay so much so that what emanated from the aspect of Abba shall be formed in the way of man of Atzalot and that which emanated from the aspect of Iamay shall be formed in the way of Man of Briah are not Abba and Iamay both of the great Abba of Atzalot Rabbi Shimon said to them friends friends this is not so because man of Atzalot is male and female male from the side of Abba and female from Iamay this is why it says and Elohim said let there be light and there was light let there be light is from the aspect of Abba and, and there was light is from the aspect of Iamay so man emanated double faces 166 but that man of Briah has neither the image nor likeness of Abba. And Iamay the supernal mother had one appellation light and darkness that adds to 86 which is the number for Elohim so this appellation namely within the feminine principle combines light and darkness because of the darkness in that appellation Abba said that man of Briah is destined to sin because he man of Briah represents the light of the supernal garment that is the light of this man is a superior garment being the feminine principle and because she combines light and darkness he was. Destined to sin 167, that light which man receives from the upper garment is the light that the Holy One blessed be he created on the first day of creation Adam was able to see through it from one end of the universe to the other but later he concealed it for the righteous alone about this light it is written let there be light that darkness which disappeared within the feminine principle was created on the first day for the wicked about this darkness it is written and the wicked shall be silent in darkness I shmuel 29 on account of that darkness which was destined to result in sin by that light in the soul of man Abba did not wish to partake in his creation this is a reference to the time when I am a said to him let us make man therefore I am a said let us make man in our image after our likeness the words in our image mean in that light of ours after our likeness means in that darkness of ours which is a garment for the light this darkness is different from the darkness that was created on the first day of creation about which is written and the wicked shall be silent in darkness since this darkness is not a garment for the light instead it caused Adam to
All of creation into existence our civilization includes many branches of knowledge though they appear to be separate and distinct areas of study we must never forget the penetrating unity of the creator for he is the root seat and source of all understanding without this realization a connection to the light of the creator is impossible no matter how many systems of knowledge we master scanning this section opens up our souls to this truth 168 Rabbi Shimon opened the discussion saying see now that I even I am he and there is no Elohim with me Devarim 3239 he said friends listen to ancient words that I wish to reveal after permission from above has been granted for them to be said he asked who is he who said see now that I even I am he he replied the cause high above all causes the one that is called the cause of causes I ask not high above all the supernal beings but instead is a cause among all the rest of the causes so every single one of these causes shall not do anything unless it receives permission from the cause above it as I have stated above in let us make man I am a could not do anything without the consent of Abba 169 in the phrase let us make man Bereshit 126 the use of us assuredly alludes to two grades as each lower grade said to the one above it let us make man the lower grade cannot do anything without permission from the one above it and the one above this one cannot do anything without permission from its higher neighbor but the one that is called the cause above all causes has no equal above nor below as it is written to whom then will you liken me that I should be as equal says the Holy One Yeshayah 4025 he said see now that I am he and there is no Elohim with me Devarim 3239 from whom to take counsel which is not like that about which it is written and Elohim said let us make man where every lower grade spoke to an upper grade 170 all the friends stood up and said to Rabbi Shimon Rabbi grant us permission to speak did you not state above that the cause of causes said to Keter let us make man Rabbi Shimon replied may your ears listen to what your mouth say did I not just now say that there is one who is called the causes of causes and that it is not the one that is called the cause high above all causes because the cause high above all causes has no equal from whom to take advice it is unique prior to all and cannot be joined with another 171 because of this it said see now that I even I am he and there is no Elohim with me from whom to take counsel because it has no equal or partner or number however there is one that designates a combination for example a combination of male and female about whom it is written for he was but one when I called him Yeshayah 512 but it is one without number and without combination therefore it said and there is no Elohim with me they all rose bowed before him and said happy is the man whose master gives him consent to reveal hidden secrets that were not even revealed to the holy angels 172 he said to them friends we should complete this verse because it contains many secrets I kill and make alive the 3239 means that I kill and I make alive by the spirot I make alive from the right side life ensues and from the left side death ensues but if both do not agree by mediation of the central column unless all three settle together judgment cannot be carried out 173 at times all three agree to execute judgment then an outstretched hand appears to accept those who repent that hand have yet is equivalent to 14 letters the four in the simple form of the yet hey and ten in the fully spelled name yet bab hey alaf bab alaf hey alaf the four letters allude to the sphere of keter the other ten to the sphere of chakma this is the shechina which is the right hand from the aspect of chesed and the left hand from the aspect of judgment it is also called the hand of yet hey hey from the aspect of the central column the aspect of mercy therefore when a person repents these 14 letters save him from judgment but when the cause high above all causes passes judgment the hand is not outstretched to accept the repentant on the contrary neither is there any that can deliver out of my hand devarim 3239 174 furthermore three times it has been said i have only spelled with the letters Allah, none yet eyes in this verse have three times Allah in their beginning and three Times yet in their ending the three yuds are hinted at in the combination of the name which adds up to 63 yud babdalat hey yud babdalat bab hey yud the three alephs are hinted at in yud hey bab hey which adds up to 45 yud babdalat hey alef babdalat bab hey alef the verse contains three babs and in and I make alive and I heal and and neither is this is also hinted by these two names 175 even with all the majesty in the verse the friends have explained it concerning other Elohim as it is written see now that I even I am he applies to the holy one blessed be he and his shechina namely z e i r and his feminine principle of his feminine principle it is said I am alef nunyad namely the shechina he namely the holy one blessed be he called bab hey bab the phrase and there is no Elohim with me alludes to some male and the serpent that is other Elohim then it would be known that some male and the serpent never came between the holy one blessed be he and his Shechina I kill and I make alive means that then it shall be known that I kill with my Shechina whoever is guilty and I make alive with her whoever is innocent the verse neither is there any that can deliver out of my hand Devarim 3239 refers to the hand Hebyad of Yadhebabhe which has a numerical value of 14 the four letters of Yadhebabhe simply spelled and the ten letters of the fully spelled name with Allah says Yadhebab Dalit Hayalat Babalat Babalat and it is also the fourteen letters in the names Kaf Babzay and Bab Betemi and Bab Kaf Samekzay and Kaf Babzay and Bab all the explanations are true the first explanation the second one and the one that the friends offered about the verse but what is said before is that it is the cause of causes which is the cause high above all other who said I, I am he Devarim 3239 the secret was not even revealed to all the sages and prophets it was revealed only to the chosen few among them 176 come and behold how many causes namely grades are concealed and not known they are enclosed and enveloped by the spirot which are chariots to them just as a chariot manifests the existence of its driver so the spirot make visible the grades that are enclosed with them these causes are hidden from the thoughts of man of them it is written for there is a high one that watches over him that is high Kahila 57 the lights become brighter American Samoa each higher light is brighter than its neighbor so the recipients are dimmer than those above them or because they are the recipients and that which is lower than its neighbor is dimmer than its neighbor no light can bear the presence of the cause of causes because all lights are darkened and are diminished before its 16 let us make man part 2 Rabbi Shimon shares a lesson with his students beginning with a question put forth to the creator by an angel why the angel asks did the creator bother to bring man into being when it is already known that he will Sin Rabbi Shimon explains that when the Creator foresaw the sins of man he in his infinite wisdom provided man with the power of repentance but the students then asked their teacher the next logical question why did the Creator go to the bother to create evil and repentance why not just eliminate evil altogether Rabbi Shimon explains that we were created with the ability to perfect ourselves through free will choosing not to respond to our evil urges this the only true way to fully evolve it. God like nature within our soul we must be responsible for our own elevation and growth during those times when we fail to use our free will and succumb to evil tendencies repentance allows us to restore the light we've lost this passage itself provides an opportunity to repent and change our ways these sacred Hebrew letters together with a genuine desire to change can cleanse us of all negative tendencies the only requirement is complete trust in the power of the Holy Zohar 177 another. Explanation of the verse Let us make man in our image after our likeness Bereshit 126 was given by the friends as referring to the ministering angels who spoke this phrase to the Holy One Blessed be Rabbi Shimon said to them since the angels already know the present and the future they already knew that man was destined to sin why then did they want to make man 178 not only that but the angels Uzzah and Azel also opposed the creation of man when the Shechina said to the Holy One Blessed be he let us make man they responded what is man that you take knowledge of him Tehillim 1443 why do you wish to create man when you know that he shall definitely sin before you with his wife who represents darkness because the light is the male and darkness is the feminine principle she is the left column which is considered the darkness of creation at that moment the Shechina said to them you are destined to fall by the same reasoning that you denounce as it is written that the Sons of Elohim saw that the daughters of man were fair. Bereshit 62 So they went astray after them, and the Shechina took away them from their holy state. 179 The friends said, Rabbi, Rabbi, Azza and Azel did not lie, and the Shechina should have answered their arguments because man Adam definitely was destined to sin by his feminine principle. As Azza and Azel said, As written, the woman whom you did give to be with me, she gave me of the tree, and I did eat. Bereshit 312 He replied, This is what the Shechina said. You, Azza and Azel, have laid
B. He had not created the evil and good inclinations which are light and darkness. There would not have been any precepts or transgressions for the man of Bria. So man was created with both light and darkness, as it is written, See, I have set before you this day life and good and death and evil. Devarim 3015. This is why precepts and transgressions apply to men and why men are presented with the choice between good and evil. They asked why all this better had he not created darkness than men would have no reward or punishment as opposed to being created and having to sin thereby causing much damage and destruction. 181. He answered, It was right to create him thus with light and darkness because the Torah was created for the sake of man, for it contains punishments for the sinful and rewards for righteous. Thus there can be no reward for the righteous or punishment for the sinful without the man of Bria who consists of light and darkness. It is written, He did not create a wasteland. Live formless, he created it to be inhabited. Yeshua 4518. The world was not created to be formless, to be in darkness because of the sinful, but to be inhabited, which means for the sake of rewarding the righteous. This reward is the conception of the Torah, as it is written, For the earth shall be full of the knowledge of Hashem. Yeshua 119. For the Torah and the Holy One, blessed be here, one and the same, had man not been created by light and darkness, which enable him to choose between good and evil and reward and punishment. Then there would have been no way to reveal this reward for the righteous. This reward refers to what is attained from the Torah that was created for his sake. The friend said, Indeed, we have certainly now heard what we had never heard before. It is now clear that the Holy One, blessed be he, did not create anything that he did not require. 182. Furthermore, the Torah of Briah, which consists of light and darkness and reward and punishment, is the clothing of it. Shechinah of man had not been created, the Shechinah would have remained without clothing like a pauper who has no clothes, therefore whoever sins acts as if he is stripping the Shechinah of her garments, this is the punishment for the man who sins. 183 Whoever performs the precepts of the Torah acts as if he is dressing the Shechinah in her garments, according to this the verse about the garment of the it reads, for that is his only covering, it is his raiment for his skin, in what shall he sleep? Shema 2226 This applies during the period in exile, because then the Shechinah due to the sins of Israel lost her garments, come and behold, darkness is the secret of black in the Torah, the black ink with which the letters are written, light is the white in the Torah, referring to the parchments on which the letters are written. 17 A prayer of the poor, the most important benefit of prayer is its ability to remove all negative and egocentric attributes from human nature, this power of a Prayer is activated when our consciousness is imbued with humility and a sense of spiritual poverty. We can attain these qualities by perusing the section with an open heart. 184. If the prayer is not complete, many angles of destruction pursue it. As it is written, all her prosecutors overtook her within the straits. Each of 13. This is why people pray, but he was full of compassion for giving iniquity. Tehillim 7838 against the fourth clipot. Iniquity refers to Samael, who is a serpent, and he did not destroy alludes to the destroyer. Often he turned away his anger, refers to the clipot called anger, and not stirring up all his wrath, refers to the clipot called wrath. And we pray that these four clipot do not pursue the prayer. As many angels of destruction are attached to these clipot, there are seven ministers who have 70 more attached to them, though 70 bring allegations in each and every firmament through which the prayer passes, and 700 million angels of destruction are attached to. Then 185 If the prayer sends in perfection with the precept of covering of talent and tefillin of the head and of the arm it is said of them all the peoples of the earth shall see that you are called by the name of Hashem and they shall be afraid of you. Devarim 2810 The phrase the name of Hashem has already been explained as the tefillin of the head whoever sees the name Yadhei Vavhei over the head in the prayer which is the name Adonai shall immediately flee as it is written a thousand shall fall at your side. Tehillim 917 186 Because Yaakov saw through the Holy Spirit the oppression of the last exile in the end of days it is said of him Yaakov was greatly afraid and distressed. Beersheet 328 As a result he divided the holy nation in exile into three parts as it is written and he put the handmaids and their children foremost. Beersheet 332 This means at first in the exile of Edom and Leah and her children after and Rachel and Yosef last of all because he Saw their eventual poverty and suffering, he prayed for them so that I come back to my father's house in peace. Bereshit 2821 So that they may have the merit to be redeemed and return to the temple, he said in prayer, and will give me bread to eat and clothing to wear, but that the clipot will not overcome them to stop their abundance. 187 Because of this exile, David described the Shechinah as hungry and weary and thirsty in the wilderness. 2 Samuel 1729 Because he saw the Shechinah desolate and withering and then joined in her sorrow after he saw that the children of Israel repented with joy, he composed ten types of psalms at the end of them all. He said, It is written, A prayer of the afflicted lip poor when he faints. Tehillim 1021 This prayer encompasses all other prayers and ascents before all other prayers. The other prayers sung with a melody are delayed in being presented before the king and did not enter until the prayer of the poor does. This is why the prayer of the poor comes before all the others. 188 he asked, which is the prayer of the poor. He answered, It is the evening prayer, which is the feminine principle when she is on her own without her husband. Since she is without her husband, she is poor and withered, lacking all abundance, and may be taken freely by anyone, meaning that anyone may enslave her for his own purposes. The righteous is withered and poor. This refers to the seed of Yaakov, which is under the rule of all nations of the world, that is. All nations enslave them and rule over them. This is similar to the evening prayer because it is the aspect of night in the exile, just as the feminine principle in the aspect of the evening prayer is free for the taking by all the descendants of Yaakov in exile are under the rule of the nations of the world. 189 The prayer of Shabbat is a charity given to the poor, as the sages of the mission explained that the sun during Shabbat is charity given to the poor, therefore on all weekdays. Person should make himself a pauper at the gate of the king during the prayer of Amida for the sake of the Shechinah, which means that he should participate in the sorrow of the Shechinah. As did David, he should cover himself with the proper vestments, namely talit, with tzitzit. As a poor man stands at the gate to the temple of the king who is Adonai, because the numerical value of Adonai adds up to that of Temple Hebhikal. This is why it is said, Adonai, open my lips. Tehillim 5117 190. When a person opens his lips during the weekdays at the evening prayer, an eagle descends to carry the prayer of the night upon its wings. The seagull is called Muriel. It is called Uriel from the aspect of Chesed and Muriel from the aspect of Bureau, which is a burning fire about which it is written. A fiery stream issued and came forth. Daniel 710 191. During the morning prayer, the lion descends to receive the prayer with its four arms and wings, as every living creature has four wings. This is the angel Michael during the afternoon prayer the ox descends to receive the prayer with its horns and wings and this is the angel Gabriel 192 on Shabbat the Holy One blessed be his E.I.R. and descends with the three patriarchs Jesus, Bura and Tiferet to receive his only daughter through them referring to the prayer which is the feminine principle this is the secret of the Shabbat which consists of Shin and Bat daughter the three lines of the letter Shin refer to the three patriarchs through them the Holy One blessed be he receives the prayer Shabbat his only daughter at that time the celestial living creatures that are called by the name of Hebab he say as it is written lift up your heads O you gates and lift them up you everlasting doors that the king of glory may come in Tehillim 249 193 at this time seven chambers are open the first chamber is the chamber of love the second is the chamber of all the third is the chamber of mercy the fourth is the Chamber of prophecy from the aspect of the shining mirror, the fifth is the chamber of prophecy from the aspect of the opaque mirror, the sixth is the chamber of justice, and the seventh chamber is in the chamber of judgment. These chambers correspond to the seventh fire. The chamber of love is Jesus, August, Bureau, Mercy is Typhoret, the shining mirror is Netzach, the opaque mirror is Hot, Justice is Yezid, and Judgment is Malchut. 194 about them it is written, Bereshit, which consists of Barashit. Lit created six, alluding to the creation of the six chambers, and Elohim is in the seventh chamber. There are seven chambers below, and seven chambers above the seven voices that correspond to them appear in the psalm ascribed to Hashem Tehillim 291, which includes 18 mentions of the name Yudhi Hebab. By these mentions, the Holy One blessed be he glides through 18 worlds according to the secret of
positive precepts. So here in the name Yudha Bapa, there are 365 negative precepts and 248 positive precepts, namely 365 from the letters Yudha and 248 from the letters Bapa. Hence, all 613 precepts extend from the name Yudha Bapa. 196. There are the 248 words in Kriyatshva that were given in love and awe and that are contained in the letter He of the name Yudha Bapa. Therefore, the blessing He who chooses His nation Israel with love is recited before the SHMA prayer too. Indicate that we draw solely the aspect of love, which is the secret of the 248 positive precepts. These 248 positive precepts are included within Abraham because the numerical value of Abraham equals 248, and he is the aspect of love. It is written of him, the seed of Abraham, my friend. Yeshua 418, 197. Note this paragraph starts in the middle of the issue. file and symbolize strength as they were given from the aspect of all, which is the left. This is the name, the fear of its hot, because all the prosecutors ascend to demand all the judgments throughout the worlds. Thus, it is written, and by the arm of his strength, Yeshua 628, which refers to the Tfilin, because Yahweh is the aspect of Avraham, is the aspect of love. This is why it is written, Love Hashem, all his pious ones. Tehillim 3124, but Tiferet of Yahweh comprises all as it is the central column, which includes the other two columns, Avraham, who is Avraham, and its hot, who is Yahweh. Hence, it says of Yahweh, and Behold, Hashem stood above it. Bereshit 2813. This was not mentioned in relation to Avraham or its hot, because Yahweh is the aspect of Tiferet, which is all inclusive, since it is the central column when called by the name Yahweh. He includes the attribute of Avraham, Vavhe, and the 248 positive precepts. Later, when he was called Yisrael, he was elevated through Yadav Dalat Hayalat Vavalat Vavhealat. The secret of Yudhi Hayav Hayfully spelled with Aleph appears in the expression that Yisrael was thought of to be created because thought had Machshava consists of the letters Sheshav Ma. He thought of Mem Hayam Hayam Hay refers to Yudhi Hayav Hayfully spelled with Aleph, in which the holy name lies because of Yaakov, who is called Yisrael. It is written so Elohim created man in his own image. Bereshit 127. After the likeness of his master, 198 children, longevity, and sustenance are drawn down to the lower beings only through the aspect of the central column about which it is. Written Yisrael is my son, my firstborn Shema 422. This is the tree of life as it is written, it is a tree with food for all. Daniel 49 and for the Shechinah which dwells among the lower beings, only the children of Yisrael below are considered her life, the Torah, her sustenance, and prayer and offering which offers the Shechinah for a union with Zeir and during the exile it is said that the Shechinah said to her husband Zeir and give me children or else I die. Bereshit 301 199. Shechinah is an offering for the Holy One, blessed be he which he receives with both the right and the left arm and with the body his mating with her is accomplished by the righteous who is Yezid that is called the sign. This is the sign of the Tifilin of Shabbat and of the holidays. So when prayer which is the Shechinah sends to Zeir and she should be joined with him with all ten Tzvirat because there can be no holiness with fewer than ten which is his own holiness, his blessing and unity. Therefore, when a person wishes his prayer to ascend, he should raise it with all the vowels, namely the vowels of the cantillation marks and the dots, because the letters are the horses, the vowels, the horsemen, and the cantillation marks, the weapons. If the serpent plans on disrupting the prayer, one should prepare a slingshot against it, and the secret behind its issue lies in search maker Shofar Holexi Baltad in the following article 18. The slingshot, the higher spiritual atmospheres are teeming with negative angels and other entities. These create obstructions to prevent our prayers from reaching their intended destinations. As a result, our prayers may go unanswered. The Zohar reveals a complex process that propels our prayers onto their designated target. Simply by scanning these verses, we can provide our prayers with the necessary assistance to penetrate all the upper worlds and to reach our creator, the true source of all blessings. 200 Rabbi Shimon opened the discussion. Saying, listen, all you celestial beings, gather all you earthly beings, the masters of the yeshiva above and below Aliyah, who upon an oath ask permission from the Holy One, blessed be he to come down here, because a great battle awaits you. Come down, Shadok, monitor on you and all the masters of the yeshiva under your supervision. I did not do this for my glory, but for the glory of the Sheshana 201. Rabbi Shimon began again explaining Zarkamakov and so on, saying assuredly by the cantillation mark. Zarka the prayer should be elevated to that known place just as one aims the stone in a slingshot, just as one aims the stone carefully so as not to miss the target, so should thought be elevated with devotional prayer to that crown which is the crown and all inclusive stone of this the feminine principle. It is said that whoever stands upright should stand upright with the mention of the name. This means that the feminine principle should be elevated to that place from which she was taken. 202. In that place where he elevates her to her husband, referring to the level equal to the crown of her husband, one should not stop praying even though a snake is wound around his feet, and even though it is written, and you shall bruise his heel. Bereshit 315. Nevertheless, the stone is hinted at by the letter Yud in Yaakov, which is composed of Yud and Akev heel, as it is written from hence from the shepherd, the stone of Israel. Bereshit 4924. One should not stop elevating her to that place. From where she was taken, one should elevate her from the central column to the endless. When he brings her down from the endless, it is said of him, whoever kneels kneels with the mention of Barak, may he be blessed because he should bring her up to the infinite endlessly and not cause any separation between her and Zeir and above or below 203. Sometimes he is her husband according to the secret of the letter Bob that alludes to Yezid the righteous who includes six parts of the two legs. Netzach and Hod and she the feminine principle descends toward him for the purpose of mating according to the secret of the two legs Netzach and Hod but at other times he is her husband according to the secret of the letter Bob that alludes to Tiferet which includes six parts of the two arms the beginning middle and end of Chisa and Bure then the feminine principle grows and ascends through the two arms at other times Zeir and Ben is her husband and stands between Abba and Iamah this is when he is called the son of Yudhe and the feminine principle should be elevated there to him for mating at other times her husband is Keter with the letter Bob inserted between the two letters Yud like this Aleph and the feminine principle should be elevated to him as she grows with him and reaches exactly the same level as he does namely the level of Keter when the feminine principle ascends to Keter it is written of her the stone which the builders rejected has become the headstone of it. Corner Tehillim 11822 204 When she rises up to the head of all heads, namely the unknown head, the secret of the endless the angels ask where is the place of his glory to admire him. And when the feminine principle rises to Zeir and when she is in the form of Aleph, she becomes Keter crowned on the head of the Aleph. When she descends from wherever she was, namely in the Aleph, she becomes a point underneath the letter Bob within the Aleph. So when the feminine principle rises, she is called a crown according to the secret of the intonations. And when she descends, she is called a point when she mates with Zeir and it is in the form of the vowel Shuruk. When she is a crown on the head of Zeir and she is named after the letter Zayin as the form of Bob is Zeir and and the feminine principle in the crown on his head is Zayin, the sign of the covenant which is Yezid of Zeir and consists of this letter Zayin because it is the seventh letter in all 205 indeed the stone namely. Malchut, which is the secret of the feminine principle, is a construction for all the worlds because of this it is written of her. But you shall have a perfect and just weightless stone. Devarim 2515. She is a measurement between each and every sphere, and every sphere amounts with her to ten spirot. Her size is a letter Bob through her. Every cubit between each and every sphere becomes ten cubits. This is the secret of the verse. Ten cubits shall be the length of a board. Shema 2616. And between them all she adds up to one hundred spirot. She is ten between every sphere and ten multiplied by ten totals one hundred. And when the word Mia one hundred is reversed, it becomes Amma one cubit two hundred and six each. And every measurement that Malchut measures is called the world that is a grade of its own. Every one is a yet and a Bob that shows size and a measurement. The Bob is the weight of the light and the yet is a measurement of it. The size of the measurement is five cubits long and five cubits. Why this corresponds to the size of every firmament which is 500 parsangs long and 500 
Firmament Yudab Yudi Hebab Hais the secret of Malchud which becomes the seventh firmament and seven plus seven total fourteen here are those lands seven upon seven lands that cover each other like rings of an onion which surround each other on all sides and the two eyes are their hints because the three colors white red and green are equivalent to Chisid Bure and Typharet its white color is Chisid its red streaks are Bure and its green hue is Typharet the two eyelids are net sash and hot. The eye itself is Yizid and the black dot is Malchud 208 the Yud in the name Yudi Hebab is called the small or short world of Abin Yudi Hebab which is Typharet is the long world whoever wishes that his desires be fulfilled by the long world should pray at length and whoever prays to the short world should pray quickly therefore it has been explained that in a place where they are told to make it short referring to the letter Yudi a person should not pray at length to pray quickly. Is like the prayer of Moshe who recited the following short prayer. You'll hear now, I pray you, Bimidbar 1213, as he addressed the letter Yud, which is the small or short world 209, the place where it was recommended that one should pray at length during times when one is not allowed to curtail the prayer stems from an aspect of the letter Bob as in to fall down as Moshe did the verse, and I fell down via at Naple before Hashem as at the first Devarim 918 is related to the letter P. Because 40 days and 40 nights add up to 80, which is the numerical value of P, so all this relates to the secret of the letters P and Bob, which appear in the Hebrew word via at Naple. Everything appears in the two mems, one open mem and one closed mem, with the Yud as a point in the middle, which forms the word main water from the aspect of Chesed. One should pray at length 210 in the holy name Yud Hebab, ascends to the fourth tune of the intonations, and one should prolong this. Intonation, which is the fourth one over the name of Yudi Hebab, which is the secret of the Teki, along blowing of the Shofar, the place to make it short is at the aspect of Bure at the intonations of Shabarim. Short blowings of the Shofar, this is called the Tepper break of the intonations, the middle, which is neither prolonged nor shortened, is the secret of Teruah, a succession of tremulous notes of the Shofar, this is the central column, and IS, the secret of the intonation called Shulshalit Lit Chain, which chains both the right and left columns as it intertwines them according to the secret of the Holy Shekel 211, corresponding to the fourth intonation, which ascends by the intonation, there is the Kolam among the points vowels, which is also related to Chisa, the Shabarim, or the Tepper of the intonation is equivalent to the point of Shiva in pronouncing this, the fourth tune, one should raise his voice and in pronouncing the other, referring to the Tepper, which is Bira one should lower his voice because of this it is called Shabarim derived from the head for break as the voice should be lowered lip broken this is done in secret as it is written of the lower Sheshanah but her voice was not heard Ishmael 113 Terawad is the secret of the central column which is called Shulshalit this is also the secret of the Yud located between the two mems of 40 days and 40 nights this is the secret of Sigalta among the intonations 212 Rabbi Shimon said Zarka Makaf Shofar Holek Sigalta the point of the right which is the secret of the point of Kolam and Shisit is Hashem reigns the point of the left which is the secret of the Shurak or Shiva and Bira is Hashem reign the point of the middle which is the secret of the point of Shirek Tiferet is Hashem shall reign Rabbi Acha said Hashem reigns is the supernal world Hashem reigns is Tiferet and Hashem shall reign is the Ark of the Covenant 213 the Rabbi fourth of it. Cantillation marks is for raising the voice the terror of the cantillation marks is for lowering the pitch shulshalit holds to the two columns like a chain and joins them to each other it is like the rabii with which one prolongs the word with melody it is a point like the kolam there is no point among the points that does not have a corresponding cantillation mark for example the vowel seagull corresponds to the seagull tie intonation the vowel sheba corresponds to the intonations of kefgat there is always a vowel corresponding to a cantillation mark for all those who know the hidden secrets 19 he creates worlds and destroys them the students ask rabbi shimon why god created so many thousands of worlds only to destroy them all the master explains that worlds is a code word that refers to all the souls of creation destroying the worlds refers to those souls who fail to walk a spiritual path and instead choose evil these souls are the worlds who are eventually destroyed by their own impure actions though many worthy spiritual paths have existed throughout history they will eventually converge into the single path presented to humanity during the revelation on Mount Sinai this realization is awakened in us by the spiritual truth that emanates from these passages 214 these are the generations of the heavens and the earth Bear sheet 24 it has been established that wherever it is written these heavily it cancels everything that was mentioned before so the use of the word these conceals the generations of Tohu without form which alludes to Malchut of the aspect of judgment hinted at in the verse and the earth was without form Bear sheet 12 in reference to those generations of Tohu it is said that the Holy One blessed be he created worlds and destroyed them meaning that it was without form because he destroyed them thus it is written the earth was without form and void but the generations of these which is the secret of Malchut sweetened by mercy Survived 215 he asked why did the Holy One bless be he create the worlds in the first place if he intended to destroy them it would have been better had he not created them at all but there certainly must be a secret here what is the meaning of he destroyed them it cannot be that the Holy One bless be he destroyed the makings of his own hands furthermore these are the heavens about which it is said for the heavens shall vanish away like smoke Yeshua 516 if it is so then the Holy One bless be he first created and then destroyed what he had created which is possible for human beings but not for the Holy One bless be he 216 the secret is that the Holy One bless be he created the world by the Torah as it is written in the beginning Bereshit 11 which is the Torah about which is written Hashem created me as the beginning of his way Mishlei 822 so the Torah calls itself beginning and by this beginning namely the Torah he created the heavens and the earth Referring to the supernal heavens and earth, which are the upper six fire of Bino, which are hinted at in the phrase Barashit, he created six, he supported them by the Torah for the covenant is included in Bereshit in the beginning, as Bereshit is composed of covenant of fire, Hebrit, as it is written, if my covenant were not day and night, it is as if I have not established the ordinances of heaven and earth. Yermea 3325, accordingly, the heavens and the earth are supported by the Torah. And their existence depends on the preservation of the covenant of Bereshit, which is the Torah. These heavens that were created and are supported by the Torah are described in the verse, the heavens are the heavens of Hashem, Tehillim 11516, and the earth that was created and supported by the Torah is called the land of the living. It comprises seven lands about which King David said, I will walk before Hashem in the lands of the living, Tehillim 1169, they are called the lands of the living too. Indicate that they are related to Bino which is called living Elohim as these heavens and earth originate in Bino 217 after them he created the heavens and the earth upon form without any foundation Yezid which is the covenant to support them this refers to the lower heavens and the earth which symbolize the male and the female before Malchud was sweetened with Bino as it is written and the earth was without form because of this situation the Holy One blessed be he wanted to give the Torah which represents the covenant of circumcision to the nations of the world because adherence to the covenant of circumcision would have sweetened Malchud by Bino so the Mokin which is called the Torah would have been revealed upon them but because they did not want to receive it the land remained parched and dry 218 this is why it is written let the waters under the heaven be gathered together to one place and let the dry land appear Bear sheet 19 the waters alludes to it. Torah to one place means Yisrael because the souls of Yisrael come from that place about which it is written Blessed be the glory of Hashem from his place Yashiskel 312 The glory of Hashem is the lower Shechanah namely Malchut and from his place is the upper Shechanah namely Bina accordingly Bina is called place and since their souls come from there from Bina then certainly the name Yad Hebab rests on them it is written about them for Hashem's portion is his people Devarim 329 This is the meaning of the verse let the waters be gathered together to one place water refers to the Torah and one place to Yisrael the recipients of the Torah as described above this excludes those nations in the world that did not wish to receive the Torah because of whom the land remained desolate and dry 219 The Torah symbolizes the settling of the world because the world was created by it and exists upon it the nations of the world who did not accept it have remained wasted and destroyed this is the meaning
The fifth millennium which is hey this fifth millennium is wasted and dried up as described in the verse and the river shall be wasted and dried up. Yeshaya 195 wasted refers to the first temple and, and dried up to the second temple 221. Moshe wanted to bring the proselytes under the wings of the Shechina and presumed that they also were drawn down from Malchut that is sweetened by the attribute of mercy which I asked the small hay thus he drew down the mokin of the small hay of Abraham. The proselytes brought upon him descent as it is written go get you down for your people have become corrupt. Shema 327 which means that they caused the nation of Israel to sin with the golden calf they did not receive the mokin of the small hay and of the letter yet of Yud Hei and with love of the letter hay so he descended from his grade which is the letter of 222 so the letter of Yud Hei came down together with Moshe to guard him so he does not perish among them because according to the secret of reincarnation he was destined to mingle among the mixed multitude in exile whose souls originated from the aspect of those of whom it is written for the heavens shall vanish away like smoke. Yeshua 516 these are the ones for whom Moshe did not plead for mercy about them it is written they were destroyed from the earth. Beersheet 723 because they came from those of whom it is said you shall blot out the remembrance of Amalek. Devarim 2519 Moshe did not protect himself from them and drop the small hay among them for this reason he shall not enter the land of Israel until he brings the hay back to its place this is also why he fell from his grade and the letter of Abba Yudhi Hay descended with him because of this the letter hay fell down and the letter of Abba Moshe shall raise it up 223 it was through the small hay the hay of Abraham which is the letter hay in Bihai Baram that Moshe received assistance and it is written of him that caused his glorious arm to go at the right hand of Moshe Yeshua 6312 he took it from there from among the clipot by the power of the letter of Abba and brought it with him immediately the letters yet hay rested on it on the lower hay and the vow was fulfilled according to the secret of the verse for Yah has sworn by his throne had Kes Kaf Samek that Hashem will have war Shemad 1716 until this happened the name was incomplete lacking the Bab hay and the throne Kais Kaf Samek Aleph was Incomplete because it lacked the letter Aleph, but now the name has achieved perfection and is completed by the letters Vav Hay and the throne is also completed with the letter Aleph. He asked what is the meaning of from generation to generation in the verse Hashem will have war with Amalek from generation to generation. He replied this is Moshe about whom it is written one generation passes away and another generation comes. Kahila 14 it has already been explained that one generation contains no fewer than 600,000. It is said that one woman gave birth in Egypt, Egypt to 600,000 in one belly. This means Moshe for Moshe is equated with 600,000 souls. 20 the five types of the mixed multitude. The Zohar describes five different types of negative people whose sole purpose is to prevent the dissemination of spiritual wisdom to others. The Zohar states these people build synagogues and schools of religious study that house the scroll of the Torah complete with a crown upon its Top, they do it for their own sake and for the love of themselves, not the for the sake and love of the Creator. Scanning the section reinforces our strength of character and spiritual integrity. It enables us to stand strong against those who oppose the betterment of mankind through the dissemination of Kabbalah, which is the soul of the Torah. 224. There are five races of mixed multitude. These are the Nephilim, Fallen, the Jabari, Mighty, the Anakim, Giants, the Rephaim, Shades, and the Amalekim. Because of them, the small hay fell from its place, namely from Bina Bilam and Balak, come from the side of Amalek. Because if you remove the letters AM from Bilam and the letters Lind Kaf from Balak, Betlin Kaf, you are left with Babel, Betlin, which is Babylon. Therefore, is the name of it called Babel, because Hashem did there confound the language of all the earth. Beersheet 119, 225. These are the ones who remained of those of whom it was said at the time of the flood, and he. Destroyed every living substance. Bereshit 723. Those who survived the clipah of Amalek from the time of the fourth exile, namely the exile of Edom, became the leaders, lit heads of the world, men of great power. This is because this clipah is considered the head and keeper of the clipah. They became a means of violence toward the children of Israel and of them. It is written at the time of the flood, for the earth is filled with violence through them. Bereshit 613. These are the Amalekim 226. About the Nephilim, the fallen ones, it is written that the sons of the Elohim saw that the daughters of men were fair. Bereshit 62. These are the second group of the mixed multitude, which is equivalent to the Chachma of the clipah. They come from the fallen ones from above, from Azza and Azel, who were angels above, and the Holy One blessed be. He dropped them out of the heavens when the Holy One blessed be. He desired to create man. He said to the angels, Let us make man in our image. Bereshit 126. He wanted to make him a leader over all the angels above so that he might govern all the angels and they would be under his rule as is written about Yosef and let him appoint officers over the land. Bereshit 4134 227 This is why those angels wanted to denounce him. They asked the Holy One, Blessed be he, what is man that you are mindful of him? Tehillim 85 For he is bound to sin before you. Why therefore do you want us to be under him? The Holy One, Blessed be he, replied, If you were down below on earth like he, you would sin more than he does immediately. The sons of the Elohim saw the daughters of man. They were filled with passion for them. So the Holy One, Blessed be he, dropped them down in chains. 228 These sons of Elohim are Azza and Azel from whom descended the souls of the second group in the mixed multitude which are the Nephilim. They made themselves fall from their holiness and they fornicated with women who were fair because of this. The Holy One, Blessed be he, also. Eliminated them from the world to come so that they may not have a portion there, and he gave them their reward in this world as it is written, and repays them that hate them to their face to destroy them. Devarim 710, the second group in the mixed multitude is equivalent to Chakma of the Clipa 229 of the Jabari Mighty Ones, the third group of the mixed multitude that was mixed with Israel. It is written, the same were mighty men of old men of renown, lit men with the name Bereshit 64. These descend from the side of those about whom it is written, Let us build us a city and a tower, and let us make us a name. Bereshit 114, that is the generation of separation, they built synagogues and yeshivas, putting the scroll of the Torah and a crown upon its top, as described in the verse, Let us build us a city and a tower whose top may reach to heaven, but I has not done in the name of Hashem, instead it is done to make themselves a name as it is written, and let us make us a name from it. Other side they overcame Israel who are blessed to be like the dust of the earth they robbed them shattering and wasting their work the synagogues and yeshivas that they had built of them it is written and the waters prevailed exceedingly upon the earth Bereshit 719 which means that the clipot and the other side which are called waters destroyed the earth as they expanded this third group in the mixed multitude is equivalent to the sphere of Bina of the clip 230 the Rephaim shades are the fourth group of the mixed multitude that mixed with Israel if they notice a time of distress coming upon the children of Israel they abandon them even if they have the power to save them they do not want to do so they abandon the Torah and avoid those who study it instead they do favors to those who worship idols of them it is written the shades of the dead had Rephaim shall not rise Yeshua 2614 meaning that they shall not rise at the resurrection of the dead when the children of Israel are visited to be redeemed from their distress it is written about them and made all their memory to perish. Yeshua 2614 because they are the offspring of darkness they shall perish as the light reaches Israel. This fourth group is equivalent to Zeir and of the clip of 231 Anakim giants are the fifth group of the mixed multitude they belittle the value of those about whom it is written and chains have Anakim about your neck. Mishlei 19 alluding to Israel who observe the Torah. About them it is written who also were considered refam as the Anakim to 211 so they are on a level with each other these are the ones who bring the world back to a condition of without form and void. The secret of this matter is the destruction of the temple which is described by the words and the earth was without form and void because the temple is the essence of the world and the settling thereof so the two groups in the mixed multitude that mix with Israel caused it. Destruction of the temple as quickly as the light which is the Holy One blessed be he appears to Israel they shall be wiped out of the world and destroyed nevertheless the redemption of Israel does not depend on the destruction of the Rephaim but on the destruction of Amalek that is until he who was referred to in the oath is destroyed as it is written because Yah has sworn by his throne that Hashem will have war with Amalek which has
Thus on the day when the Holy One blessed be he shall exterminate these referring to the sin of the Kafid will be as if on the day the Holy One blessed be he created the heaven and the earth as it is written in the day that Hashem Elohim made the earth and the heavens bear she 24 at that time the Holy One blessed be he will be together with his Chechenah and the world will be renewed as it is written for as the new heavens and the new earth which I will make Yeshua 6622 this is the meaning of in the day made in the day when the world shall be renewed 233 at that time out of the ground Hashem Elohim made to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight bear she 29 however before that time and not until the sin of the golden calf is erased the rain of the Torah which is Zeir and does not come down to water the seeds of the souls of Israel therefore the children of Israel who are similar to the herbs and trees are not able to grow the secret of this matter is as Written and no plant of the field was yet in the earth and no herb of the field had yet grown and there was not a man to till the ground. Bear she 25 a man alludes to Israel the ground is the temple and to till is to offer sacrifices 234. Another explanation of the phrase plant of the field is that it alludes to the first Mashiach Mashiach ben the son of David who was not yet on earth whereas herb of the field is the second Mashiach Mashiach ben Yosef he asked why were they not in the earth he replied because Moshe was not there with them to serve the Sheshana of him it is written and there was not a man to till the ground the secret is given in the verse the staff shall not depart from Yehuda. Bear she 4910 which refers to Mashiach ben David nor the scepter from between his feet which refers to Mashiach ben Yosef until Shiloh come is an allusion to Moshe as the numerical value of Moshe is the same as that of Shiloh and the obedience of the people be his. Hadvelo Yik Had is a phrase whose letters also form the Hebrew words Levi Kahat, which means that the correction shall reach from Moshe to Kahat and from Levi his ancestors. 235. Another explanation of the verse plant Hepsiak of the field is that it refers to the souls of the righteous who come from Yezid of Zeir and which is called the righteous the life of the worlds because Syaxin Yachet consists of the letters Chachet and Shinshin by itself alludes to the three branches of the tree which symbolize the three patriarchs Jesus, Bura, and Tiferet of Zeir and who is called tree. The letter Sin in Syaxin is not derived directly from Zeir and but from the life Chai of the worlds which is Yezid of Zeir and 236. Another explanation about the souls of the righteous appears in the verse and Norb Hepsiak of the field in which Yezid consists of the letters I and Bet and Shin. The letter Shin is an allusion to the three leaves which are Yadalat He. Dale Bob Nunheya, namely the combining of Yud Hey Bob Hey, which is Zeir and Ben and Adonai, which is his feminine principle, they have a numerical value of Ayn Bet 72. That Is Yud Hey Bob Hey, when fully spelled out with Yud S, amounts to 72. The branches, namely Chesed, Bura, and Tiferet, are the three leaves from which Net Sachat and Yezid are suspended. They all add up to 72, as each one of the three branches equals 72. They do not reach the place which is the Shechinah until the appearance of He, who is called Man, who is Yud Hey Bob Hey, fully spelled with Allah, says Yud Bob Dalat Hey Allah, Bob Allah, Bob Allah. This alludes to Moshe, and this is why it is written, and there was not a man to till the ground, alluding to Moshe, who had not yet corrected the Shechinah properly. 237. For this reason, it is written of Moshe, and no herb of the field had yet grown. This means that the righteous Moshe was not yet grown. Moshe, who validates the verse, truth shall spring grow out of the earth. Tehillim 8512 as the truth is described in the verse and it cast down the truth to the ground. Daniel 812 it refers to the students of the Torah who are like the plants that grow and spring out of the earth but they do not grow or spring forth from the Shechinah in exile until the time when the words truth shall spring out of the earth are fulfilled. This truth is Moshe about whom it is written the law of truth was in his mouth. Malachi 26 because no man relates to the Shechinah as well as he. This is why the scripture says about him and there is not a man to till the ground where the ground alludes to the Shechinah before Moshe there was no one to correct the Shechinah. 238 as soon as Moshe appears the words but there went up a mist Aleph Dalet from the earth. Bear she 26 were realized this refers to the letters Aleph Dalet in the name Adonai the letter Bob ascends to it and becomes through it the master Hebadon of the entire earth immediately it watered the whole face of the ground did, but this means that Israel below will be watered as a result they shall receive the Mokin which is called the 70 aspects of the Torah from the Shechinah 239 another explanation of the verse but there went up a mist from the earth the Aramaic translation says but there went up a cloud from the earth this refers to the Shechinah which it is written for the cloud of Hashem was upon the tabernacle Shema 4038 because at the end of times when Moshe will appear the Shechinah will rise up and the students of the Torah on earth will be watered by her and receive from her Mokin 240 at that time it is said and Hashem Elohim formed man Bershi 27 which refers to the children of Israel whom the Holy One blessed be he formed in the images of this world and of the world to come the word formed Hebei Yitzur is spelled with two Yuds which means that at that time the Holy One blessed be he shall put them Israel into his name by putting the letter Vav. In between the two yuds together they have the same numerical value as yud hey namely 26 the two yuds will be formed on his face and on the faces of Israel upon their cheekbones and the letter Vav is their nose 241 for this reason it is written for from the top of the rocks Hepsurim I see him Imidbar 239 the word Hepsurim implies these two forms of the holy name these shall appear as drawings upon their faces which are formed according to the secret of the two precious tablets which are yud and yud and the letter Vav is inscribed on them 242 furthermore he drew the images of all the generations by his supernal spouse who is yud hey they were symbolized by the letter Vav which unites them both and he formed them and poured bounty upon them with those images of above the secret of Zeir and which is called Israel is the central column that comprises the upper and lower Sheshana these are the reciting of Shema in the evening prayer and the recital of Shema. In the morning prayer of them it is written this is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh Bereshit 223 243 as soon as Moshe appears at the end of times he will plant the children of Israel in the holy garden of Eden as it is written and Hashem Elohim Abba and Ima planted a garden the lower Shechinah in Eden the supernal Ima and there he put the man the central column Israel then the Shechinah will become his planting his female counterpart and shall never leave his side. She will be his delight forever and the Holy One blessed be he planted Israel at that time to be a sacred plant in the world this means that when Israel receive their Mokin they shall become a sacred plant in the world as it is written the branch of my planting the work of my hands that I may be glorified Yeshua 6021 244 of that time it says and out of the ground Hashem Elohim made to grow alludes to Abba and Ima every tree that is pleasant to the sight alludes to the righteous. The secret of Yezid of Zeir and Ben called tree and, and good for food alludes to the central column where food is available to all meaning that it bestows mokin to all lower beings everything exists in Zeir and Ben and the righteous Yezid of Zeir and Ben is nourished only by Zeir and Ben the Shechinah is nourished by the righteous so they are not in need of the lower beings to elevate female waters instead the lower beings are nourished by Yezid and the Shechinah without the need to elevate female waters in exile there is no food for the Shechinah and the life of the world namely Yezid of Zeir and Ben who nourishes the Shechinah except by elevating female waters through the 18 blessings of the Amidah prayer but at that time Yezid will give sustenance to all to the Shechinah and to the lower beings without needing any awakening from below 245 the tree of life which is Zeir and Ben that is called the tree of life will be planted in the midst of the garden which is the Shechinah it is written of it and take also of the tree of life and eat and live forever. Bear she 322 the Shechinah will not be governed by the tree of the other side which is a mixed multitude who are called the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Bear she 29 and she will no longer accept the impure she will not nourish impurity anymore thus impurity will be annulled from the world as it is written concerning those times so Hashem alone did leave him and there was no strange L with him. Devarim 3212 as all evil and impurity will be wiped off of the face of earth for this reason no proselytes will be accepted during the epoch of Mashiach and the Shechinah will be like a vine that accepts no grafting
The first temple which is the upper Shechina and at the second temple which is the lower Shechina as it is written and the river shall be wasted and dried up Yeshua 195 and the river Bob namely Zeir and shall be wasted in the lower Hay referring to his own feminine principle because the fountain of Yud which flows into the upper Hay has risen up to Einsoft the endless world 247 immediately after the children of Israel shall come out of exile as a holy nation on its own after. The mixed multitude has been separated from them. The river that wasted and dried up during exile will become a river flowing out of Eden, which is the Bab of Yud Hay to water the garden, which is the lower Hay. This river, the central column, namely Zeir Anpin, went out of Eden, which is the supernal Ayame called Eden, from whom Zeir Anpin receives plenty to water the garden. I to bring forth the abundance to the lower Shechina, which is called a garden 248 at that time it is. Written of Moshe and of Israel, then shall you delight yourself in Hashem Yeshua 5814. Delight in Hebrew is one egg, which is also the initials of Ayan of Eden, none of Nahor River and Gimel of Gan Garden. Then the phrase, then sang Moshe Shema 151 will be fulfilled. It does not say sang, but literally shall sing in the future tense. This alludes to the time when Israel will come out of exile, the time when Moshe will sing a new song, then the one egg will change into infliction and for the Mixed multitude and all the idol worshipping nations, just as a pox was inflicted on Paro and the Egypt Egyptians who broke out in blisters, but one of the Mokin of Eden Nahur and Gan shall bring delight to the children of Israel who will inflict great plagues on the mixed multitude and the idol worshipping nations. 249 This is the meaning of the verse, and a river went out of Eden to water the garden, and from thence it was parted and branched into four streams, Bershi 210 the streams. Correspond to the four Sfirat Chisit, Burin Netzach, and Hod that correspond to the four banners of the tribes. Chisit is the right arm at that time. He who seeks wisdom should turn south. Whoever seeks wisdom should meditate in his prayers toward the sphere of Chisit, which is to the south, and draw the sphere of Chakmah toward himself. The camp of the angel Michael will be watered by it and shall receive its abundance from Chisit together with the camp of Yehuda and two tribes. Bure is the Left arm and it is written of that time he who seeks riches should turn north whoever seeks to become rich should meditate in his prayers to the sphere of Bureau which is to the north and the camp of the angel Gabriel is watered by it together with the camp of Dan and two tribes Netzach is the right leg and the camp of Muriel is watered by it together with the camp of Reuben and two tribes with it hot is the left leg of which it is said in reference to Yaakov and he limped upon his thigh. Bear she 32 32 the camp of Revile who is responsible for the healing during exile is watered by it together with the camp of Ephraim and two tribes 250 another explanation of the verse and from hence it was parted and branched into four streams I ask that it is the secret of the four sages Ben Azai Ben Zoma the other one and Rabbi Kiva who entered the parts orchard the Hebrew word parts consists of the initials of the words Peshit the literal meaning of the Torah remains and Allusions trash the homiletical interpretation and sod secret one of the four sages entered the river of Pishon which alludes to the Peshit literal meaning of the Torah that shines in the orchard as Pishon is composed of Pishon alit my mouth repeats Halacha which is the literal meaning the second entered the river of Jishan where is buried the one of which it is written whatever goes on the belly had Gashan Vayikra 1142 this refers to Moshe who is the secret of the letter Vav of Gashan which is big and is the letter in the middle of the Torah this is also the aspect of Gabriel that consists of the letters Gabar al Gabura of Elohim it is written to a man whose way is hidden and from whom Aloha has screened himself Eo 323 meaning that the reason for him hiding his ways and not revealing himself in full is because Aloha has screened himself and not because of Moshe's deficiency this is why no man knew the place of his burial nor will until the very day when he will be revealed there this is because the place of the defect is the place of burial and because there was no defect in him nobody knew where he was buried only at the end of correction after Moshe's prefection is revealed will the deficiency be distinguished by the perfection that will be revealed this is the secret of the place of his burial this is the part of Remei hints of the Torah and wise men are informed by hints 251 the third of the four sages entered the Chittakel which consists of the letters Chet Dalek Kofland which alludes to a sharp Hep Chad Faultless Tongue that is quick Hep Kal and giving homiletical explanations the fourth of the four sages entered the Prat Euphrates which is the innermost stream where procreation Hep Priya occurs as the seed is drawn out of the innermost brain so Ben Zoma and Ben Azai who entered the shells of the Torah were affected by them but Rabbi Akiva who entered the inner part of the Torah is said to have entered and come out. In piece 22 the pure marble stones this is one of the most profound sections of the Zohar Rabbi Lazar asks his father Rabbi Shimon to explain a statement made by the great sage Rabbi Akiva the actual statement reads when you reach the pure marble stones do not say water water or you may endanger yourselves couched in metaphor and concealed in cryptic language the statement delves into many complex spiritual truths the most important of these is the fact that all the evil we witness with our own eyes is really an illusion if we accept and believe in this illusion it becomes part of our reality hidden within these ideas our mystery so deep and great that only a few righteous souls in every generation can truly grasp them in our everyday lives these concepts help us differentiate reality from illusion 252 Rabbi Lazar said father one day when we were in the Torah academy the friends asked why Rabbi Akiva said to his disciples when you reach the pure marble stones do not say Water, water, or you may endanger yourselves as it is written, he that tells lies shall not remain in my sight. Tehillim 1017 In the meantime, the most ancient among the old came down, Chakma and Bina are called ancient, and Keter, which is above Chakma and Bina, is called most ancient among ancient, and this is the secret of the soul of Yashida that shall be revealed in the world at the end of correction. He asked them, Sirs, what issues are you studying? They replied, Indeed, we are. Discussing what Rabbi Akiva said to his disciples about the pure marble stones, he said to them, Most certainly, here is a sublime secret, for it has been explained in the celestial Yeshiva in order for you not to misunderstand the secret. I have come down to clarify it. The reason is that the secret which is concealed from the people of your generation is already known to you. In other words, because the secret has been revealed to you that is hidden from the other people of your generation, it is. Not possible to explain it to you in full 253 these are surely the pure marble stones from which pure water flows they are alluded to by the two YUDS that appear at the top and bottom of the letter Aleph the letter Vav which is placed in a diagonal between the two YUDS is the tree of life whomever eats from the tree shall lie forever these two yuds in the Aleph are hinted at in Vayetzer and form Bershi 27 which is spelled with two YUDS the two forming one of the upper beings and the other of the lower beings are symbolized by the two YUDS that appear at the beginning and end of the name YUD Aleph Hey Aleph Vav Nanhe YUD and represent Chakma at the beginning and Chakma at the end of the name they are called the mysteries of wisdom because they are concealed from the supernal Chakma which is below the supernal Keter 254 these are comparable to the two eyes from which two teardrops fell into the great sea Chakma is called eyes and the right eye is the Upper Chakma and the left eye is the lower Chakma. Why did the teardrops fall? Because from these two tablets Moshe gave the Torah to Israel, namely Bina and Malchut. The right tablet is Bina and the left is Malchut, corresponding to the two eyes because the children of Israel were not worthy of receiving them. They broke and fell at the sin of the calf as it is written and broke them at the foot of the mountain. Shema 3219 This caused the destruction of the first and second temples as they are also related to the two tablets. The first temple is derived from the right tablet which is the secret of the upper Chakma Bina and the second temple is derived from the left tablet which is the secret of the lower Chakma Malchut. And this is why two teardrops fell into the great sea. Why did they fall and break? Because the letter Bob flew out of them which is the Bob of Bayitzer. He gave them two other tablets from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. From there the Torah was given in. A matter of permitting and forbidding from the aspect of the right IT gives life but from the left it gives death 255 because of this Rabbi Akiva said to his disciples when you reach the pure marble stones do not say water water this means that you should not compare the pure marble stones to the other stones that represent life
Eden Bershi 210 is that there are no strange clipot in the tree of life above, namely Zeir and Ben of Atzalut, as it is written, nor shall evil dwell with you. Talim 55 Why? Because the clipot first appear in the world of Bria below the world of Atzalut, but in the tree below in the world of Bria does indeed have strange clipot. This tree is planted in the garden of Eden of the lower Zer and Ben, namely Zeir and Ben of Bria, and this tree is called Chanak or Matatron because in the upper garden of Eden of the Holy One, blessed be he, namely in the garden of Eden of Atzalut, there are no devious or stubborn clipot. For this reason, it is written, and a river went out of Eden, the river Matatron went out of Eden, meaning that it left its pleasures had Eden, which consisted of the Mokin of Ima as Bina is called Eden, and to water the garden means his garden of Matatron at Ias is orchard, namely Malchut of the world of Bria, into which Ben Azai, Ben Zoma, and Alicia entered. Matatron's clipot are good from one side and evil from the other. This is why the Torah lists the permissible and the prohibited because there are both kosher and unfit and pure and pure. 257 An old man stood up and said to Rabbi Shimon, Rabbi, Rabbi, it is indeed so there are no clipot in Atzalut but only in Bria. But Matatron is not called the tree of life. The old man wonders if Rabbi Shimon interprets the verse as applying to the garden of Eden in Bria, then how could he interpret the verse? The tree of life also in the midst of the garden, for there is no tree of life in the garden of Bria, and Matatron is not the tree of life because there is good and evil in him. The secret of the matter is that Vayitzer and formed, which is spelled with two Yuds, alludes to the two acts of forming. One is the forming of good and the other is the forming of evil. This is the tree of knowledge of good and evil, which includes these two forms. The tree of knowledge is the small man from which derived. Death and life, which represent the forbidden and the permissible. In other words, the forbidden is death and the permissible life of such a man. It is written, and Hashem Elohim formed man of the dust of the ground. Bereshit 27, 258. The verse continues, and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. But this is from the upper Shechinah, which is called Eden, and repentance of him. It is written, the tree of life also in the midst of the garden, which is the lower Shechinah, and there were three bonds connected to him. Nesham, Ruash, and Nefesh. Nesham extended to him from the upper Shechinah. Ruash extended to him from Zeir and Ben of Atzalut, and Nefesh extended from the garden, which is the lower Shechinah, also called Malchut. With them, Nesham, Ruash, and Nefesh. Man became a living soul. Had Nefesh. It was from his mouth, indeed, that he was named after the Shechinah, which is the breath. Had Nesham of life. It is as if he breathed with his own mouth into the mouth of Adam for the. Breath of life is the light of the supernal Shechinah. Immediately after completing these words, he rose and disappeared. Rabbi Shimon said, My friends, he surely must have been an angel. In any case, we surely have confirmations. 24 And Hashem Elohim put him into the Garden of Eden. This section uses a story to expand upon the previous section. God elevates Adam from the lower worlds with their evil and negativity to upper worlds where Adam is placed in the Garden of Eden. This story mirrors our own spiritual work. The spiritual forces of the Zohar give us the strength to draw the light of the Creator to assist us in our elevation above the negative influences of our physical existence. Through the power of this section, we gain a deeper connection to the upper worlds. 259 After the old man finished speaking, Rabbi Shimon explained the verse, and Hashem Elohim took the man and put him into the Garden of Eden. Bereshit 215 He asked, From where did he take him? Where was he before the Garden? Of Eden he replied he took him from the four elements of separation as it is written and from thence it was parted and branched into four streams of the ten which is an allusion to the four elements so the Holy One blessed be he detached Adam from the four elements and put him into the Garden of Eden in Atzala 260 just as the Holy One blessed be he elevated Adam from the worlds of Bria Yetzirah and Asiyah of separation to the Garden of Eden so the Holy One blessed be he shall do to a man created from these four elements when he repents and studies the Torah then the Holy One blessed be he shall take the repentant from Bria Yetzirah and Asiyah of separation about the elements of separation it is written and from thence it was parted as he detached him from their lusts and put him in his own garden which is the Shechinah namely Malchut to till it to serve the Shechinah by means of the positive precepts and to keep it Bereshit 216 by means of negative precepts if a Person has the merit to keep the Shechinah, he shall become master of the four elements of his body, and he becomes a river from which they are watered and not watered by any other, referring to the other side, and they recognize him as their master and ruler. 261 If he transgresses the precepts of the Torah, the four elements of his body shall be watered by the bitterness of the tree of evil, which is the evil inclination. It is written about all the parts of the body that are made of the four elements in him, and they made their lives bitter with hard bondage. Shemot 114 They made them bitter by the bitterness of the gallbladder, Hebmerah, of the sacred parts of the body, which are from the side of good. It is written, and when they came to Merah, bitter, they could not drink of the waters of Merah, for they were bitter. Shemot 1523 Similarly, the sages of the Mishnah said that the verse, and they made their lives bitter in hard bondage, refers to hard questions in mortar, Hebkamer. And in brick Lebanon, in clarifying Lebanon, the Halacha, and in all manner of bondage in the field, allude to the buried all their bondage, namely the mission because of their sins and transgression. The other side cleave to all the parts of their study of the Torah, as our sages of blessed memory said, if a man is not worthy, the Torah becomes to him a deadly poison. 262 If they repented, it is said of them, and Hashem showed him a tree of the 25, the tree of life by which the waters were made. Sweet as the bitterness and the deadly poison were removed from the Torah, the sweetness of it, which is the elixir of life, was revealed to them, and this tree of life is Moshe, the Mashiach, Messiah, the soul of Moshe, shall be revealed at the coming of Mashiach, as it is written of him before the coming of Mashiach, the rod of the Elohim is in my hand. Shemot 179 The rod of the Elohim is Matatron, who has life on one side and death on the other, as he changes from a serpent to a rod and from a rod. To a serpent when he changed into a rod he was helpful to Moshe from the side of good and life issued from IT but when he changed into a serpent he worked against him because death was on his side so immediately Moshe fled from it. Shema 43 263 The Holy One blessed be he delivered Monotron into the hands of Moshe so that he might use him by the secret of the rod of the Elohim as long as it is in the hands of Moshe it becomes a rod and not a serpent. Monotron is the secret of the oral Torah which prescribes what is forbidden and what is permitted namely the sides of good and evil. This is similar to Monotron who is the secret of the Torah of Bria but in Atzalut it is written nor shall evil dwell with you. Talim 55 and the entire Torah consists of the holy names of the Holy One blessed be he as soon as Moshe smote the rock with the rod the Holy One blessed be he removed it from Moshe's hand as it is written went down to him with a staff too small 2321 to smite him with. If the staff is the evil inclination, the serpent and everything, all the troubles in exile are because of the serpent. In other words, the serpent is the cause of all the suffering and punishments of exile. 264 more may be said about the verse, and from hence it was parted. Happy is the man who is occupied in the study of the Torah when the Holy One blessed be he takes him away from his body, from its four elements of separation, he is detached from them and becomes head of the four living creatures of the chariot. It is written about them, they shall bear you up in their hands. Tehillim 9112 By delving into the study of the Torah instead of being ruled over by the four elements of separation, the Holy One blessed be he did a him from the lust of the elements of the body and elevates him to become head of the four holy living creatures of the chariot, and they shall bear him up and carry him in accordance with the secret of the verse, they shall bear you up in their hands lest. You dash your foot against a stone 25 idolatry, bloodshed, incest. These three negative actions are the primary cause of all the world's negativity in a lengthy discussion. The Zohar expounds upon their metaphysical source. The Kabbalists teach us that idolatry does not only pertain to man-made statues and icons. An idol is defined as any material possession or external situation that controls our emotions, our behavior, or our motivation when any such circumstance determines or influences our experience of life. We have surrendered control and severed our connection to the light, which is the true source of fulfillment. Often our negative tendencies lead us to become worshippers of wealth or disciples of our own ego.
Heavy, there are three transgressions pertaining to the tree of knowledge which are idol worshipping incest and bloodshed and this namely the clip of idolatry dwells in the liver have lit heavy as a result their work became heavy such as idol worship because of idolatry the liver becomes angry by becoming angry the liver is passed on as a dwelling for the clip of idol worshipping it has been said that whoever is angry acts as if he worships idols and it is written and command to teach us about the transgression of idol worshipping which is included within the tree of knowledge 266 the phrase the man alludes to the prohibition of bloodshed which is included with the tree of knowledge as it is written who so sheds man's blood by man shall his blood be shed bear sheet 96 from here we need to draw an analogy here it says the man and their man is mentioned in connection with bloodshed just as there the word man is connected with bloodshed so here bear sheet 216 man is connected with bloodshed therefore both issues deal with bloodshed the clip of bloodshed resides within the gall hebmerah it is the sword of the angel of death by which he kills human beings as it says that a drop of bitterness hebmerah hangs from the sword of the angel of death by which one dies the verse also says but her end is bitter as worm which sharp as a two-edged sword michelay 54 the word saying bear she 216 in this verse alludes to the prohibition of incest which is part of the tree of knowledge the clip of incest resides in the spleen about which it is written she eats and wipes her mouth michelay 3020 because the spleen has neither mouth nor arteries through which it can suck blood therefore it sucks black blood from the liver even though it has no mouth this is why it is written she eats and wipes her mouth all those who shed blood come from the clip that resides in the gall so the arteries in the heart avoid the bile and immediately flee from it 267 Those who commit incest hide in the dark as it is written that I also of the adulterer waits for the twilight saying no I shall see me IYOB 2415 This is an allusion to the black blood of the spleen where the clip of incest resides as black blood is similar to darkness the soul of whoever commits bloodshed idolatry or incest shall be reincarnated inside the three forms of clip of the liver the gall and the spleen and it is sentenced in Gehenom by three evil rulers called the destroyer. Anger and wrath 268 There are 15 forms of incest sexual misconduct which are equivalent to the numerical value of Yudhe of the name Yudhe Vavhe and the other six are equivalent to the Bab of the name Yudhe Vavhe even before the children of Israel were exiled and the Shechinah was still with them the Holy One blessed be he commanded Israel the nakedness of your mother shall you not uncover Vayakra 187 They should not harm the Shechinah which is the mother of Israel so. This exile is considered the uncovering of the nakedness of the Shechinah as it is written for your transgressions was your mother put away in Shea 501 therefore because of the transgressions of incest the children of Israel were banished and the Shechinah was condemned to exile this is the uncovering of the nakedness of the Shechinah because the going of the Shechinah into exile is considered to be her nakedness as it is written all that honored her despise her because they have seen her nakedness each 18 the nakedness of the Shechinah is Lilith the mother of the mixed multitude it is considered nakedness because the rule of the Shechinah the mother of Israel and her bounty passed to Lilith the mother of the mixed multitude the mixed multitude which has control over Israel in exile represents the nakedness of the Shechinah and the nakedness of supernal Israel who is Zeir and the husband of the Shechinah and of the supernal Israel it is written the nakedness of your Father shall you not uncover Vayikra 187 because when the Shechinah is in exile Lilith and the mixed multitude receive his abundance which was supposed to be given to the Shechinah for this reason the exile is considered the nakedness of supernal Israel 269 those who commit incest separate the upper hay of Yudhi Hay from the lower hay of Yudhi Hay so that the Bab of Yudhi Hay may not come between them as it is written you shall not uncover the nakedness of a woman and her daughter of it 17 the upper hay is the mother and the lower hay is her daughter because the Bab cannot come between them and allow the abundance from the mother to reach the daughter they are both harmed and dejected because the acts of blocking and preventing this abundance from reaching the lower hay is considered to be her nakedness as well and the mother and the daughter are the upper Shechinah namely mother and the lower Shechinah namely her daughter during exile the reason why the Bab Cannot come between the upper and lower haze that the mixed multitude which are the Nephilim, the Jabarim, the Amalekim, the Rephaim, and the Anakim, whose initial spell N-E-G-A-R-A which means evil infliction might come forth and receive abundance from that Bob. Thus the Holy One, blessed be he who is the Bob, is not permitted to come between them. The secret of this issue lies in the verse, and the river shall be wasted and dried up. Yeshayah 195, the abundance of the upper hay which is called the river shall be wasted, and the lower hay which does not receive the abundance shall dry up. And all this is for the purpose of not allowing the mixed multitude to nourish themselves from the Bob, which is the tree of life. Therefore the Bob is not permitted between the upper hay and the lower hay at the time when the mixed multitude is between them during exile at time of exile when they might come and draw sustenance from them. 270, there is no permission for the letter yet of the name of Yud Hey Bob, hey to approach the lower hay because then the mixed multitude might draw its sustenance from it. So it is written, You shall not uncover the nakedness of your daughter in law. Vayikra 18 15 as the lower hay is considered to be the daughter in law of Yud, for Yud is the father hay, the mother and Bob is the son of Yud, and the husband of lower hay. Thus, lower hay is a daughter to the upper hay and is the daughter in law to Yud, being Bob's wife. Yud's son, if Yud will pour its abundance to the daughter in law, when lower hay is in exile, the mixed multitudes will receive the abundance and the nakedness of the daughter in law as revealed. They separate the Bob and the upper hay as it is written, The nakedness of your father's wife shall you not uncover it, because the Yud is the father, the hay is the mother, the Bob is the son, and the lower hay is the daughter. For this reason, he commanded him in regard to the upper hay, the nakedness of your father's wife shall you not uncover as it. Upper hay is his father's wife, thus if Bob approached hay in exile, the mixed multitude would replenish itself from the abundance, causing the nakedness of the father's wife to be revealed as this abundance is hers. The nakedness of your sister, the daughter of your father, Ibid 9 is the lower hay about which it is written, neither shall you take her son's daughter or her daughter's daughter to uncover her nakedness. Ibid 17, these are the two fully spelled letters, Hayalaf, Hayalaf, which are the offspring of the lower hay. You shall not uncover the nakedness of your father's brother. Ibid 14 is the outstretched form of the letter Yud as in Yud Vavdala, which is the offspring of the letter Yud of Yud Hay Vavhe, and so the brother of Bob 271. Consequently, as long as the mixed multitude is mixed among Israel, there can be no unity among the members and no joining of the letters of the name Yud Hay Vavhe. As soon as the mixed multitude is annihilated from the world, it is said of the letters of the name of the Holy One, blessed be he that on that day Hashem shall be one and his name one. Zechariah 149. Therefore, when the mixed multitude is not mixed among Israel, men that is Israel shall be one with the Torah about which it is said, She is a tree of life to those who lay on her. Mishlei 318. And she, the Torah, is an aspect of the Queen Balchu, from whose aspect the children of Israel are called the king's children, that is, they are called the Torah of Atzala, which is composed entirely of the names of the Holy One, blessed be he. 272. For this reason, the Holy One, blessed be he, said, It is not good that the man should be alone, I will make him a help to match him. Bereshit 218. The phrase, a help to match him, I as a deputy mission to the queen, the wife of that youth, namely Monotron. In other words, this means it is not good for man to be alone in the Torah of Atzala, so I will make him a help to match him by the Torah of Bria, who is the wife of Monotron. And is not the aspect of Malchut the queen, but indeed she is called Mishnah Torah, being second to the Torah of Atzalam, which is the queen. She is a maidservant of the Shechinah because sometimes she helps the Shechinah, and other times she is matched against her. If the children of Israel are meritorious, then she helps them while in exile from the aspect of the permissible, the pure, and the fit in the Torah. But if they are not, she is a match against the Shechinah from the aspect of the impure, the unfit, and the forbidden in the Torah. The sections of the Torah that deal with what is pure, permitted, and kosher are related to the good inclination, while the sections of the Torah that deal with what is unfit, impure, and forbidden are related to the evil inclination. So had there not been an evil inclination in the world, these sections would not
Alluding to Malchut, the feminine principle of Zeir and been called the earth the phrase for a slave when he becomes king. Ibid 22 alludes to the specific servant who is Monotron and a handmaid that is heir to her mistress. Ibid 23 alludes to the deputy Monotron's wife and a fool when he is filled with meat is a mixed multitude whose members are called foolish people and unwise. Devarim 326 26 and out of the ground Hashem Elohim formed every beast of the field here Rabbi Shimon lashes. Out at all those whose hearts and minds remain close to the spiritual secrets and the soul of the Torah, which is the Kabbalah, the Zohar, and proceeds to explain that Moses never died to this very day, he is among us trying to bring about the final redemption. The purpose of humanity and especially of our generation is to assist Moses in this critical spiritual mission. Those who remain ignorant of this purpose deny the essential meaning of their existence and inner awakening to our purpose in life is being aroused. This purpose should not be forgotten the moment we step back into the real world through these passages. We draw a light that reminds us of our purpose and inspires us to awaken it in the rest of the world. 274 Rabbi Shimon continued the discussion, saying, And out of the ground Hashem Elohim formed every beast of the field and every bird of the air. Bear she 219 Woe to the people of the world whose hearts are closed, whose eyes are shut, and who do not look into the Secrets of the Torah and perceive that the living creatures of the field and the bird of the air allude to the ignorant, even those who have achieved the living nefesh but have not yet reached the level of living Rash are of no service to the Shechanah in exile or to Moshe who is with her for all the time that the Shechanah is in exile. Moshe did not move away from her. 275 Rabbi Lazar asked who has connected the doings of Adam to the activities of Israel and Moshe. In other words, he questioned the interpretation of his father by asking if the scriptures are talking about Adam. How can you apply those facts to Moshe and Israel? Rabbi Shimon replied, My son, how can you ask such a thing? Have you not learned the meaning of the phrase declaring the end from the beginning? Yeshayah 46 10 that in the beginning of creation, the end of days referring to the end of correction was implicit. Rabbi Lazar said to him, It is indeed so acknowledging his father. 276 Rabbi Shimon. Continued accordingly, Moshe did not die as he was always with the Shechanah in exile, and so he is called Adam of him. It is written in the final exile, but for the man had Adam there was not found to help. Bear she 220 as all were matched against him, so this verse, but for the man there was not found to help to match him, was said about the central column, which is Zeir and as there was nobody to help Moshe to bring the Shechanah out of exile. This is why it is written, and he looked this way and that, and when he saw that there was no man had Adam, Shema 212 as Moshe is actually of his own aspect, like the central column, it is said of him, but for the man there was not found to help to match him. The same was said of the central column, as will be explained shortly. 277 at the time that there was not found to help, Hashem Elohim caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, Shema 221, Yahweh hey, Elohim alludes to Abba and Iamah, and a deep sleep is the exile, as it is written of the exile. A deep sleep fell upon Abram. Bereshit 1512 Year 2 Deep sleep alludes to exile. He caused a deep sleep to fall upon Moshe and he slept and sleep is an allusion to exile in the phrase and he took one of his sides from whose ribs did he take. He replied Abba and Iamah took one out of one of the maidens of the queen. She is the aspect of white and is described as fair as the moon and closed up the flesh in its place. Bereshit 221 refers to the flesh of Moshe about whom it is said for that he also had Bishagam his flesh. Bereshit 63 because the numerical value of Bishagam is equivalent to that of Moshe. Therefore in this context the term flesh alludes to Moshe's flesh. The flesh of Moshe is red and it is said of him the face of Moshe is as the face of the sun. This means that just as the color of the sun is red so is the color of the flesh of Moshe and it is an aspect of the upper bureau of Iamah. This is the reason why the verse is written fair as the moon clear as the sun sure. Hashirim 610 The right column which is from the aspect of the maiden is considered the white aspect and clear as the sun is from the aspect of the left column and is considered the flesh of Moshe 278 Another explanation of the verse and closed up the flesh Bereshit 221 is that they wanted to protect her from the external forces as close up means to protect it is written and Hashem shut him and lit closed up after him Bereshit 716 because by the holy bureau of the red flesh of Moshe the external forces are made to flee Another explanation of the phrase and closed up is that it means to actually close and put within a limit as it is written over against the border Shema 2527 So a frame is established by the red flesh of Moshe wherein the queen namely Malchut shall be shut for six working days Yashis 461 to be open on Shabbat alone 27 and of the side made a woman the first soul made union occurred between Adam and Eve soulmates are in effect two halves of one soul who have separated upon entering the physical realm eventually all people will be worthy to discover their true soulmate learning from this section helps to accelerate the process 279 the phrase and of the side which Hashem Elohim had taken from man he made a woman bear she 222 hints at the secret of Levi right marriage it is said of the deceased husband's brother that once he did not build he shall never build again as it is written that will not build up his brother's house Devarim 259 in reference to the holy one blessed be he though it is written Hashem Elohim built even though he did not build the Shechanah while in exile he is still able to redeem her because Hashem Elohim namely Abba and I may build her for him since he did not build her the verse once he did not build he shall never build again does not apply to him thus it is written Hashem builds Jerusalem Tehillim 1472 Jerusalem being the Shechanah is built using the four letters of Yud the letter Vav which alludes to Zeir and Ben is the son of Yudhei of Yudhei Vav which alludes to Abba and Iamah about them it is written and of the side which Hashem Elohim had taken from man from the central column and brought her to the man means that he brought him to the rib which he had taken from the lower Hei of Yudhei Vav which is his maiden who is Malchut of Zeir and Ben himself not Malchut of Malchut 280 and of Malchut of Malchut it is written for I says Hashem will be to her a wall of fire round about Zechariah 29 so it is said of her for it will be to her a wall of fire meaning that she has become a wall of fire around Jerusalem to protect it from the mixed multitude at the end of the correction the Holy One blessed be he shall bring her down from above built according to the secret of the phrase O Jerusalem built Elim 12:23 therefore on this mountain Malchut of Malchut the temple shall be built by the Holy One blessed be he and shall exist for Generation after generation eternally of it, it is written the glory of this latter house shall be greater than that of the former Chagai 29 because the first temple was built by men referring to King Solomon whereas the latter shall be built by the Holy One blessed be he thus it is written unless Hashem builds a house they who build it labor in vain Tehillim 1271 because the first and second temples which were not built by the Holy One blessed be he had no eternal existence and they who built it labor in vain 281 thus it is said of the future correction by Moshe and the two Mashakim Messiahs and of the side which Hashem Elohim had taken from man he made which I is comparable to and for the second side of the tabernacle Shema 2620 the side comes from the aspect of Chesed which is the aspect of white because of this it is called the moonlit white after the light of Chesed which is white the phrase and closed up the flesh in its place refers to the flesh that is Red and comes from the aspect of Bura for the supernal Bura but is considered red. The feminine principle consists of both of them of both red and white which are also Chesed and Bura. At that time it is written of Malchut his left hand is under my head and his right hand embraces me. Sure Hashirim 26 the left hand alludes to the red flesh Bura and his right hand to the light of Chesed which is white and called side 282. This is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. Bear she 223 this is said of the Shechanah the betrothed maiden to the central column which is Zeir and it is said of her this is now in other words I know that she is a bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh and so she shall be called woman indeed as she is built by the aspect of the high one that is I am the upper hay of Yudhi Hay hey, because she was taken out of man that is from the aspect of Abba which is the letter Yud of Yudhi Hay hey, and so the phrase is concerning Moshe are clarified as he is in the image of the central column from the aspect of the souls below in Bria Yitzra and Asiya 283 at that time
shall be removed from the world. 28 Abel Moshe the Zohar reveals a secret pertaining to Cain and Abel Moses is the reincarnated soul of Abel and Jethro Moses' father-in-law is the reincarnation of Cain but Psychosis reincarnation is an integral part of Kabbalah and is secretly interwoven through all the stories of the Torah in this connection Kabbalah teaches that many of the crises that confront us in life are spiritual baggage from misdeeds in previous incarnations spiritual. Corrections not achieved in one life are carried over into the next. This process is called to or correction. As we make our visual connections to the ancient text of the Zohar, we can connect to our previous incarnations and make some spiritual correction simply by meditating with that intention. 285 of the mixed multitude. It is written now the serpent was craftier than any beast of the field. Bear 31 year craftier means to do evil more than all the other animals which are the other idolatrous nations of the world. The members of the mixed multitude are the children of the primordial serpent that seduced Chava by the tree of knowledge. So the mixed multitude is indeed the impurity that the serpent injected into Chava from this impurity, which is considered the mixed multitude. Kind came forth and slew Hebel, the shepherd of whom it is written for that he also is Hebel. Shagam flesh. Bear 63 Bishagam is Hebel and is definitely Moshe because their numerical values. Are equal to each other and as is known Moshe is the reincarnated soul of Hebel and he was the firstborn of Adam 286 in spite of all this because Moshe wanted to cover the nakedness of his father he took the daughter of Yitro to be his wife of Yitro it is written and the children of the Kani Moshe's father-in-law Shoftim 116 this has already been explained why was he called Kani because he detached himself from Kain as it is written now Shepherd the had severed himself from Kain. Shoftim 411 after he separated the mixed multitude from the soul of Kain he sought to bring them to repent to cover the nakedness of his father who is Adam because the Holy One blessed be he attached a good thought to an action the Holy One blessed be he said to Moshe beware of them of that evil stock but all the same I shall couple your good thought of wanting to cause them to repent with action the mixed multitude is the force of separation lying in the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Which brought the sin upon Adam and of the multitude it is said to him, but of the tree of knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat of it. Bereshit 217 These also brought the sin upon Moshe and Yisrael 287 because of the mixed multitude the children of Israel were driven from their land and sent into exile as it is written so he drove out the man Adam. Bereshit 324 In which the man is certainly an allusion to Yisrael Moshe was also driven from his place why because he did not protect himself from them as the Holy One blessed be he warned him instead he tried to bring them close to the holiness he therefore was not worthy of entering the Holy Land he was buried outside of it because of them he disobeyed the command of the Holy One blessed be he and sent in striking the rock even though he told him and speak to the rock Bar 208 Moshe struck it instead this was brought about by the mixed multitude in spite of all this the Holy One blessed be he attaches a good. Thought to an action and knew that Moshe would not have welcomed the mixed multitude to offer them the sign of the covenant, but solely to cover the nakedness of his father. Thus the Holy One blessed be he said to him and will make of you a greater nation and mightier than they be. Midbar 1412 As for the mixed multitude he said whosoever has sinned against me him will I blot out of my book. Shema 3233 They are the seed of Amalek of whom it is written you shall blot out the remembrance of Amalek. Bar 2519 And they also brought the sin of the calf upon Israel, causing two tablets of the Torah to shatter 288 immediately it is written and the eyes of them both were opened and they knew that they were naked. Bereshit 37 As Israel knew in the exile of Egypt Egypt that they were naked without the Torah it is written of them at the last exile yet you were naked and bare 167 because Israel received garments for their souls from the Torah and its precepts. Therefore while they were in exile in Egypt, Egypt and during the last exile their souls were perforce naked without the Torah because of the Seof said twice of the two exiles naked came I out of my mother's womb and naked shall I return there. Eof 121 the first time he said naked alluded to the exile in Egypt, Egypt whereas the second time alluded to the last exile so the name Moshe changed for the mixed multitude into desolation Hebshama and an object of scorn and this is related to what Iyob said and naked shall I return there Hebshama alluding to the fact that he Moshe shall change into Shama among the mixed multitude in the last exile and he shall walk among them and return there Hebshama this is why Iyob said Hashem gave and Hashem has taken away blessed be the name of Hashem but meaning Hashem gave the Torah and he has taken it away in the last exile from Israel blessed be the name of Hashem 289 when the two tablets of the Torah were broken and it Oral Torah was concealed, it was written of Israel, and they sewed fig leaves together. Bereshit 37, meaning that they were covered by many layers of clipot of the mixed multitude. This was because they were naked without the Torah, therefore they were covered in order not to reveal their nakedness, which is the place onto which the clipot cling their covering is the fringes of the tzitzit and the straps of the tefillin about which it is said, Did Hashem make coats of skins and clothe them? Bereshit 321, but of the tzitzit it is written, and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves loincloths. The phrase and made themselves loincloths is comparable to gird your sword upon your thigh, Almighty Warrior. Tehillim 454, which is an allusion to the recital of the Shema, because this prayer is like a sword against the clipot which is girded at the hip of the recital of the Shema. It is written, The high praises of El are in their mouth, and a two-edged sword in their hand, Tehillim. 1496 Therefore it is said of this prayer and made themselves loincloths. 29 evil admixtures Many types of negative forces are discussed in this section of the Zohar. These include the nation of Amalek which is identified as the snake and the evil angel Samael. A name we do not utter all these negative forces including the force of death will be removed from the face of the earth at the end of time and this section helps us remove the force of death and evil form our own lives. 290 And they heard the voice of Hashem Elohim. Bereshit 38 This alludes to the time when the children of Israel approached Mount Sinai to receive the Torah as it is written. Did ever people hear the voice of Elohim speaking out of the midst of the fire as you have heard and lived? Barim 433 We have learned that there is a similarity in the verse derived from the use of the word here while the mixed multitude which could not bear to hear the voice of Elohim perished those from among the mixed multitude. Who remained alive said afterwards to Moshe, but let not Elohim speak with us lest we die. Shema 2016 They then caused the Torah to be forgotten by bringing the sin of the golden calf upon Israel. The mixed multitude consists of ignorant people about whom it is written, Cursed be he that lies with any manner of beast. Devarim 2721 Because they come from the side of that serpent of which it is written, You are cursed above all cattle and above every beast of the field. Bear sheet 314 291. There are many evil kinds among Israel that are called cattle and beasts. One is from the side of the serpent and another from the side of the idolatrous nations who are like the animals and wild beasts. There is also mixed multitude from the side of the evil spirits which are the souls of the wicked. These are the actual evildoers in the world and there is a mixture of demon spirits and night spirits as well. These are all mixed among Israel, but none of them is cursed as Amalek who is the evil. Serpent the strange all the one who uncovers all nakedness in the world this means that it is the root of the clipper which causes incest in the world it is the murderer from it all murders in the world originate and its spouse is the potion of death of idol worship so the three transgressions of idol worship incest and bloodshed derive from the clipper of Amalek who is the serpent and another L they are all related to the aspect of Samael who has many different aspects but they are not the same. Samael who is from the side of the serpent is the most cursed of them all 292 and Hashem Elohim called to Adam and said to him where are you have I have 39 the holy one blessed be he hinted to Adam here that the temple would be destroyed in the future and people shall wail in lamentation for it and cry Aisha where are you which is spelled Aleph Yad Caf it is written how each does the city sit solitary each 11 which contains Ei Aleph meaning where is Enko. Cafa the name of the Shechinah that resides within the temple in the future the Holy One blessed be he shall eliminate all kinds of evil from the world as it is written he will destroy death forever Yeshayah 258 because death is the source of all evil then everything shall return to its place as it was before the sin of Adam from which death and all sorts of evil
principle is not called the house without receiving chakma. It is also written, King Solomon made himself a palanquin of the timbers of Levan on Shirhashirim 39. The palanquin is the improvement of the lower world, which is a feminine principle by the upper world, which is by the 294. Before the Holy One, blessed be he created the world, his name remained concealed within himself. So he and his name concealed within himself were one. His name alluded to Malchud, which was included before the creation within Einsaf, the endless world, and concealed there without being revealed or recognized. Nothing was revealed until his desire was aroused to create the world. So he formed and built the worlds, but they did not last until the Holy One, blessed be he who has unwrapped himself up with a covering of radiance and created the world. 295. He produced imposing and great cedars from that supernal covered radiance, and he laid his chariot upon the 22 engraved letters, which are male and Female they were carved into ten sayings and firmly established this is why it is written of the timbers wood of Levanon it is also written the cedars of Levanon which he has planted Tehillim 10,416, 296 in King Solomon made himself himself is redundant and is explained as for himself for his own sake which means that King Solomon who is Zeir and built with the mokin of Bina the palanquin for himself for his own advantage he first perfected himself with the palanquin himself. That is to show his supernal glory so that he may bestow his mokin from the supernal glory bind upon the palanquin Malchut for himself the action was to proclaim that he is one and his name one to hasten the end of the correction as it is written Hashem shall be one and his name one it is also written that men may know that you alone whose name is Hashem Tehillim 8,319, 297 upon mating by striking reaching Malchut of Bina the chambers that his mokin are conceived and thought it. Trips upwards to the right to the left and goes downwards and extends Mokin to the four corners. His kingdom Malchut of Bina spreads out above and below into the four corners to become one supernal river. 298 Zeir Anpin, who is the secret of the supernal river, comes down and bestows the Mokin upon Malchut and turns her into a great sea as it is written. All the rivers run into the sea at the sea is not full. Kahilat 17 She Malchut gathers everything and absorbs it inside herself as it is written. I am the tulip of the Sharon, the lily of the valleys. Sher Hashirim 21. Only the place closed by the great sea is called Sharon as it absorbs all the waters of the world which discharges and absorbs them and one shines by the other in well known ways. It is then written of them through wisdom is a house had bathed built. Thus the derivation of the letter bed in Bereshit. Nevertheless, the great upper house is the habitation of the world, both the supernal house Bina and the lower house. Which is Malchut were built through Chakma. The unattributed king alludes to Malchut, the lower house 299. But the king Dash Yas Malchut shall rejoice in Elohim. Tehillim 6312. The upper Elohim who is bound by embracing him below his head and drawing him closer in joy so that they become one. But the king shall rejoice in Elohim by the gladness of the light that he brought forth. And this caused gladness because it namely Malchut came forth through a hidden and concealed path and introduced in it namely by the two paths that are one. So was the world namely Malchut firmly established with whole Mokin in its existence 300. But the king shall rejoice in Elohim means that the lower world shall rejoice in the concealed upper world. That world which gives life to all and which is called the life of the king namely the Mokin of Chakma. This is the mainstay of the house. This house builds the house of the world referring to male and female and builds the world as the Mokin are completed as fully required. This is the meaning of in the beginning. Bereshit Elohim created Bereshit 11, where Bereshit is composed of Bereshit. Bereshit beginning is Chakma, alluding to the time when Malchut gathers all the Mokin into herself and becomes the Great Sea in order to absorb all the Mokin. 301 The waters of the frozen sea, namely Malchut, absorb the water of all the seas of the world and it gathers them all into it. The waters go forth, moving back and forth inside it and are absorbed into it. This issues from above from Bina and settles in Malchut. The proof of the secret is in the verse out of whose head me womb came the ICO 3829, which alludes to Bina that is called MI, who and is where the ice that reached Malchut originated. It turned into a frozen sea whose waters are frozen so that it can absorb other waters. This means that the frozen waters which are ice have become full of empty holes. If water is poured on them, the ice absorbs it by. The waters turning into ice they have become a vessel to receive additional waters 302 the waters of this ice that belongs to the frozen sea shall only flow when the mighty force of the south which is the right reaches it and draws it to itself the waters that were frozen by the aspect of the north which is the left and melt and flow by the aspect of the south and are bestowed on the lower beings to water all the animals of the field this is a reference to the grades that are outside of Atzala and are in Bria Yitzra and Asiyah as it is written they give drink to every wild beast Tehillim 10411 these grades are called mountains of separation as it is written of Bria Yitzra and Asiyah and from hence it was parted Bershi 210 these are all watered when the aspect of the south starts to approach it and then the waters are drawn because of the supernal force which originates in the south all shall be in splendor and joy 303 when the thought rises and desire Emerges from within the most concealed of all, namely Eric and a certain river originates from within that thought when they approach each other through a certain path which is not known above nor below it becomes the beginning of everything. Bereshit is composed of the letter Bet and Rashid beginning the letter Bet alludes to the general working which refers to Malchut as was completed and firmly established by this beginning which is Bina and is called thought Malchut and Bina resemble each other. This is why they both appear in the word Bereshit as the letter Bet is Malchut and Rashid is Bina 304. Elohim created the heaven means that he produced a sound from within himself. In other words Elohim which is Bina emanated and produced the heaven which is Zeir Anpin and is called a sound. This is called the sound of the shofar or in other words Elohim created the heaven which is Zeir Anpin that is called the sound of the shofar the heaven which is Zeir Anpin governs. The earth by the power of the Mokin called the life of the supernal king upon the earth. The proof is in the verse that reads, For as long as the son of Yishai lives on the ground, Ishmael 2031, illumination of Chakma that is called life derives from the son of Yishai, namely Malchut, kingdom of David, through which he ruled over all, and the earth which is Malchut receives everything from heaven. Thus it is written, and the earth above and is added to the word in and the earth for the purpose of ruling and bestowing sustenance on the earth. 305 The term ET, the I is mentioned before in and the heaven, it is the power of the entire 22 letters which are hinted at in ET Alatov, which is the Alatov which Elohim Bina has issued and passed on to the heavens. EIR and it is written with the crown with which his mother crowned him on the day of his wedding. Sure, Hashirim 311, because this feminine principle is the secret of the crown with which his mother who is. By the crown him thus it is written to heaven alluding to the male and female to unite one with the other so that they may exist together and be sustained by the smoke in that are called the life of the king the king unqualified who is malchut is nourished from heaven which is zeir and the phrase and the earth refers to the union of the male and female on whom were engraved and printed letters the life of the king the mokin of the illumination of chakma drawn from heaven zeir and draw solely to sustain the earth and its multitudes 306 the secret of the supernal elohim namely by made the heaven and earth by the mokin of existence which is the life of the king he brought them forth as one by the sublime power of the upper three spirot of Bina, which are the supernal abba and ima and are referred to as the beginning of everything in this matter the secret of the supernal one namely Bina, descended to the aspect of the lower seven spirot which then made the lower Heaven and earth 307 The secret of all this lies in the letter bed of the word Bereshit which alludes to Bina it is called Bet which has a numerical value of two because there are two worlds in Bina and I am a called the upper world and Yisrael, Saba and Tavuna called the lower world they created two worlds the upper world of Bina which created the upper world of Zeir and Bina and its feminine principle and the lower world of Bina which created the lower world one corresponds to the other one created heaven and earth and one created heaven and earth this is why the letter Bet signifies that there are two worlds in Bina the one produced two worlds and the other produced two worlds they all came forth by the power of the supernal beginning which is Bina returned to the head of Eric and Bina, which is called the supernal beginning 308 at this point the Zohar explains the difference between the union of the upper world and that of the lower world of Bina and so he says the upper world
Male and female, these are the heaven and the earth, similar to the upper world of by the 390 earth is nourished by the waters of the heaven as its waters are poured down into it, meaning that the waters are the food that sustain the earth, which is the female. They are male waters that bring forth souls as they are shot according to the secret of the sperm shot like a procreating arrow. The upper waters that earth received from heaven, which is Zeir and Pen, are male, while the lower waters, which are in the earth itself, are female. The lower waters are fed by the male waters, referring to the upper waters that earth receives from the heaven. These lower waters in the earth call to the upper waters in heaven to fulfill their need, just like a female who is open to receive from a male. She pours out lower waters to receive the upper waters of the male to procreate souls. The female is fed by the male because she has nothing of her own, thus it is written and bob the earth with it. Addition of the letter Bob, as has been explained, 310 it is written, lift up your eyes on high and behold who has created these things. Yeshayah 4026, these letters were inscribed throughout the entire works of the creation, the work of the upper which is Bind and the work of the lower which is Malchut. The letters were later impressed and their form completed and they were engraved in the phrase in the beginning, Bereshit Elohim created Bara by the two initials of the letter Bet which allude to the engraving made in Bind Elohim PT by the two initials of the letter Aleph which is an aspect of the impression and the completion of the letters of Bet of Bereshit certainly created through supernal power. The letter Bet is female and the letter Aleph is male just as the letter Bet of Bereshit created by the power above namely Bind so the letter Aleph of the word Elohim brought forth and emanated letters referring to the ET including the 22 letters from Aleph to Tafin. The great of Bina in the phrase the Hey Heaven the letter Hey which is the completed Bina emanated Zeir Anpin which is called Heaven to give him life and allow him to establish himself by growing roots 311 in the phrase and Bob the earth the Bob Zeir Anpin brought forth the earth which is the feminine principle to give her food establish her and to supply all her needs the phrase and the earth indicates that Bob Zeir Anpin took the word ET the which includes all 22 letters from Aleph to Tav and poured them onto the earth which is the feminine principle so the earth the female gathered them into itself as it is written all the rivers run into the sea Kahilat 17 this refers to the secret of and the earth because the earth gathered everything into it and received them and the VET earth means that the earth took the mokin that is hinted at in the particle VET which alludes to the heaven and the earth together also the heaven alludes to the heaven and it Earth together 312 so the earth received the BET in order to feed on them therefore it must certainly comprise male and female as the letter Bob is a male because the reception of anything is the result of striking the male there is a fortress of smoke upon the earth which is the feminine principle when the burning fire is drawn and aroused from the left it clings to the feminine principle and she fumes as it is written and Mount Sinai smoked in every part because Hashem descended upon it in fire Shema 1918 there is fire and there is smoke if it descends from above it is a fire and the lower grade that receives it becomes smoke it is also written and the mountain smoking Shema 2015 because when the fire descends the smoke and fire cling to each other everything is then under the rule of the left according to the secret of the verse my hand also Yeshua 4813 the left hand which is the secret of fire and smoke has laid the foundation of the earth of it which is the feminine principle and my right hand which is the light of Shesedim has spanned the heavens namely Zeir Anpin by the power of the right above that is by the power of the right of Bina for Zeir Anpin who is called the heavens receives Shesedim from Bina in this manner the heavens which are the male namely Zeir Anpin were made the male comes from the right side of Bina and the feminine principle from the left 313 the phrase lift up your eyes on high and behold who has created these things Yeshayah 4026 alludes to Bina called on high because until now up to Bina the words ascended up in such a manner that no further question was necessary by question it refers to elevating female waters for the purpose of uniting just like the phrase to ask for rain this starts with Bina as it is an aspect of the noble but beyond it in Chakma it is not noble because Chakma was produced from nothing as Hebayan or Keter and like these it is not subject. To any question being concealed deeply hidden nobody is able to conceive of it when the deeply hidden light referring to Bina is expanded by the secret of the verse and exceedingly deep who have M I can find it out Kahilat 724 its light can be subject to questioning as it became noble although it remained more concealed than everyone below namely the lower beings below it it is named after the interrogative according to the phrase who has created these 314 this is a reference to the secret we have mentioned in the verse out of whose have me womb came the ICO 3829 it is certainly from the womb of me which is Bina in other words that which is subjected to questioning but one should not ask what is above or below one can only ask about that starting place in order to know it may not be known because this is impossible it may be inquired of but not known 315 Bereshit this is analyzed as Bereshit so he inquired about the conclusion that Bereshit is one of the sayings of creation and asked does this mean that Rashid is a saying of creation without the letter bet or is Bereshit together with the letter bet a saying of creation he replied before she Malchut emerged from Bina and her powers were expanded everything was hidden and concealed inside her it is Bereshit and this is one of the sayings when Malchut emerged from Bina and the powers of Bina were expanded and Bina was called Rashid which is saying without bet which is Malchut so now it is called me which subjects the one who created these things to questioning afterward when Bina expanded and was established it turned into a seed and Bina created below in the feminine principle made everything in her exactly as in the manner above one as against the other and one as the other these both appear in the letter bet of Bereshit 316 it is written while the king sits at his table Sher Hashirim 112 in this phrase sits at his table means he sits at the lower kingdom and Bestows on it the secret of that special union and conviviality of the upper Eden, which is the supernal Abba and IMA. So it receives from the supernal Abba and IMA through that concealed and hidden path that is unknowable. It is filled by it, and the abundance flows out through certain rivers. The phrase Manard sent forth its fragrance. It refers to the lower Malchut, for he created the world below, namely Malchut, in the same manner as the world above, which is the world of Bina with what they received from the upper garden of Eden. Thus the fragrance ascends upward from the lower world to govern and take action, and Malchut may govern as it shines by the supernal light. 317 The world was created in two aspects, which are male and female, namely with the right and the left of the six supernal days, which are Chesed, Burit, Tiferet, Net, Sachat, and Yezid of IMA. So these six days were made so as to shine on male and female from the aspect of their right side, as it is written for in six. Days Hashem made heaven and earth Shema 3117 meaning that in six days she said Burit Tiferet Net Sashat and Yezid of Iamei Hashem made heaven and earth which are male and female by this male and female received the right side these six supernal days dug up paths and made sixty holes in the great abyss which is Yezid of Iamei and the aspect of the left of the six days where each one comprises another ten so these sixty holes were to conduct the waters of the streams into the abyss into Yezid of it. Feminine principle of Zeir and that is called an abyss plainly thus it is said that these sixty holes in the abyss were created by the six days of creation, the six supernal days of Iamei, and became the peace of the world 31 and the earth was without form the Zohar speaks of 42 unique letter sequences that were created to aid in the revelation of light in all the worlds these 42 letters are one of the most powerful names of God in existence the Kabbalists revealed these sequences through. Anabikoch a simple prayer recited daily that conveys enormous blessing, prosperity, healing, and well being. This text on the power of the Anabikoch helps amplify the effect of the 42 letters in our lives through Rotator Imanchik, Gilat Bikoch, Adonor, Tahar, and Sakbanu, Amsharina, Kabbal, Shamram, Babad, Yushat, Jadorsh, Ajib, Rene, Gamlam, Tamit, Sitkash, Rash, Amay, Tahar, and Barkam, Adidak, and Ahel, Tuch, Shabiro, Kadash, Chase, and Kadash, Hadak, is a great pina, Alam, Shaji, Ea, Yashat, Tayal, Yamad, Yode. Zakatan, Yushma, Kabbal, Shabat, and Viet, El, Alam, Malchut, Okabi, Oti, Shamberic, silently scanning direction 318, and the earth was without form and void, Bereshit 12, because the bitterness of the secretion of the fruit which did not ripen in the tree remained within the fruit except when absorbed by the earth because the earth already existed but had not yet
and the world was established 320 these letters struck the rod of the great serpent and traveled 1500 cubits inside the chasms of the dust which is an aspect of the feminine principle afterward the great deep arose in darkness darkness covered everything until light emerged to break through the darkness and shine in all its perfection as it is written he uncovers deep things out of darkness and brings out to light the shadow of death he of 1222 321 because of this the waters of Mokin were put on the scales and they weighed 1,500 with the fingers three drops were put on the scales half for preservation and half entered below the first rose up while the latter descended as they rose up by the raising of the hand the scales stood evenly this is according to what is written who has measured the waters in the hollow of his hand Yeshua 4,012 322 everything was concealed in the earth and nothing was revealed in it its force and mud together with its lights that are called waters were frozen inside it they did not flow or expand until the light from above namely by the shone upon it this light struck its receptor and all its powers were released as it is written and Elohim said let there be light and there was light bear sheet 13 the phrase let there be means that the supernal primordial light referring to the light of Chakma that already existed in IT before before being frozen and enclosed returned to shine and the light does not freeze it. Because it is now enclosed in Chesedim 323 from here from this shining light the entire force and strength of Malchut came forth the earth namely Malchut was made sweet and then on the third day all its powers were brought forth because this light shone on Malchut as it descended and shone on the world its radiance spread from one end of the world to the other but when the Holy One blessed be he saw the sinners of the world those who were about to sin using this light he concealed it. Light and it only came forth through secret paths that are not revealed 32 the three letters of Tov Good the three letters composing the word Tov Good were not arbitrarily chosen each letter is a spiritual component that comprises the force called Good in contrast the word Good in English is built of four letters Good by itself the letter G conveys no meaning or energy associated with the concept of Good in Hebrew however each letter is a direct spiritual element that produces it. Force that it describes, therefore, we can bring goodness into our lives merely by speaking a word or by seeing it printed on a page 324. And Elohim saw the light that it was good. Bear sheet 14. We have learned that every dream that is interpreted according to that is good presages peace above and below for him. This person is free of any accusation above and below because each single person sees letters in his dream according to the merit of his conduct and deeds. If he sees the letter Tet in his dream, it is good for him. And for his dream, for the Torah mentions the letter Tet for the first time in the phrase that is good. Tov spelled Tet Vabet. Before this, there is no mention of the letter Tet which alludes to the light that shone from one end of the world to the other. Therefore, the letter Tet signifies Tov and good means an illumination shining in complete perfection. 325. The letter Tet is the ninth, namely Yizid, which is the ninth of the tenth spirot. It is the letter that shines from a supernal being that is called beginning namely Arakanpin and is included with it and by the power of concealment that lies within the point vowel the secret of the letter Yud is formed which is one point the letter Vav namely Zeirnpin comes forth by the power of the letter Tet and so the heaven Zeirnpin is formed by it when it was completed it was formed by a point which was then hidden inside it afterward the second point which extends from the letter Tet shown within it two females an upper one and a lower one emerged from it from Zeirnpin the upper one is concealed and the lower one is revealed by the secret of the two points but still exists only due to the power of the upper point 326 and this is Tovgood the three letters Tet Vav and Bet are later included within the righteous the everlasting foundation who combines everything from above and below in himself as it is written say to the righteous that it shall be well good with him Yeshua 310 because the three aspects of the supernal light which are hinted at in the letters Tetvav and Bet are included with him as it is written Hashem is good to all and his tender mercies are over all his works Tehillim 1459 it is written to all without specifying to whom he is good so as to shine upon a particular day that will illuminate all others this is a reference to Yezid which is the sixth day and includes the previous five days therefore Yezid is called all and it is written Hashem is good to all meaning that the goodness shines into Yezid up to here the words are general further on they shall be explained in detail 33 the face-to-face -face correction of the male and female the Zohar begins a discussion concerning the secrets of generating light through unification of the spiritual realms of Zeranpin and Malchud which is our world as the white light of the sun contains the seven colors of the rainbow the light of the creator contains various grades or frequencies of Spiritual light these produce different forces and different degrees of fulfillment. The Zohar describes the grades of light that Malchud must arouse and Zeranpin must impart during the process of unification at their creation. The realms of Zeranpin and Malchud joined back to back through what is best described as spiritual surgery. They separated and revolved 180 degrees until they were reunited face to face. This complex metaphysical procedure is mirrored in our day-to-day -day existence through the relationships between man and woman. Therefore, the Kabbalists teach us that all relationships between man and woman must be built upon the same spiritual principles. If they are to remain passionate and fulfilling a motivation to draw light into our lives through spiritual pursuits must be the foundation of these relationships. Relationships that remain ignorant and devoid of these principles will eventually lose their fire. We are given the light to maintain and enrich our relationships. Through the spiritual influences arising from this passage 327 in the beginning Bereshit Elohim created is the secret of you shall offer up a cake of the first head Reshit of your dough Bar 1520 this is the supernal chakma that is called Reshit there is an analogy between the two verses just as Reshit in the second verse alludes to supernal chakma so it does in the first the letter bed of Bereshit which is derived from the Hebrew word for house is an allusion to the house of the world namely the feminine principle of Zeir and when she receives the Mokin of chakma and becomes a house for the habitation of the world she is irrigated when she receives the Mokin from that river which flows into it as it is written and a river went out of Eden to water the garden Bereshit 210 and a river that gathers everything from the supernal source whose waters never cease to flow waters the garden 328 the supernal source was the first house which is Abba and IMA is the letters which are the vessels were completed through a narrow path hidden inside it them from this deep source two forces emerged as it is written the heaven and the earth it is not written heaven but rather the hey heaven with hey this means that the heaven comes out from within that deep source which is the most hidden of all referring to the aspect of the narrow path in Abba and IMA the phrase and the earth means that this river namely Israel, Saba and Tevuna produced this earth 329 but at first the earth was included within heaven and heaven and earth namely Zeir and Pen and its feminine principle emerged as one clinging to each other from their rear when the overall beginning shown when the feminine principle received the Mokin of Chakma that is called overall beginning heaven namely Zeir and Pen took the feminine principle and made her settle down in her place because now she was separated from him so Zeir and Pen gave her a place of her own as it is written and the VET earth in which VET alludes to the entire 22 letters from Aleph to top that are the initials of ET 330 when the earth settled in its place and was separated from the far side of the heaven namely Zeir and the earth was without form and void it wanted to continue cleaving to the heaven and become one as before because the earth saw the heaven shining while it she became dark this darkness surrounded the feminine principle until the supernal light came in expanded toward her and shone upon her and she was settled in her place to look upon the heavens eir and face to face then the earth was established and flourished the feminine principle was sweetened from all her harsh judgment 331 at this point the zohar explains how the female received the supernal light it says that the light emerged from the right side because it is received by zeir and who is the secret of the right while darkness remained on the left side which is the feminine principle afterwards zeir and separated the light from the darkness so they may be included within each other because of the separation the female receives the light from zeir and as it is written and elohim divided the light from the darkness Bereshit 14 by this act of dividing elohim called the light day and the darkness he called night day and night joined to become one day you may say that the phrase and elohim divided means an actual division and actual separation between light and darkness he said this is not so the meaning is that the day comes from the side of the light which is the right and the night comes from the side of darkness which is the left when they emerged together and governed as one he separated them dividing came from his side from the side of zeir and so they could look upon each other face to face cleave to each other and
His dark IT still does not belong to the feminine principle as she has nothing of her own darkness prevails until it is illumined under the influence of the day until it receives the Shesedim from Zeir Anpin who is called day and then the light of Chakma is enclosed by the light of Shesedim so we learn that this aspect day which is Zeir Anpin shines upon the night which is the feminine principle but night does not shine under the influence of day until the time of the end of correction. Of which is written, but the night shines as the day, the darkness and the light are both alike to you. Tehillim 13,912.34 The voice of Hashem is upon the waters. The voice of Hashem is a supernal secret. It refers to the process by which the Creator sends forth his energy and light into our physical universe. The word water is a code referring to the light itself. These paragraphs fortify our connection to the light of the Creator. 333 Rabbi Lazar rose to the front and explained the verse. The voice of Hashem is upon the waters. The yell of glory thunders. Hashem is upon many waters. Tehillim 293 The voice of Hashem is a supernal voice that is appointed over the waters. These waters are the mokin that flow from great to great, from the great of to that of Zeir Anpin, and from the great of Chesed Bure and Tiferet of Zeir Anpin to the great of Netzach and Yezid until they gather in one place, which is the secret of his Yezid in one assembly because Yezid includes all the grades. Within itself and is thus called all the supernal voice sends these waters on their way to every sphere and sphere each according to its course just as that gardener who guides the ditch of water and sends the stream of water to each and every spot as is required the voice of Hashem governs the waters which are the mokin in the same manner 334 the phrase the yell of glory thunders was hard for him to understand because the term el alludes to Chesed while thunder is an action of Bure he said that this is according to what is written but the thunder of his power who can understand Eo 2614 this aspect is revealed by gazing on the thunder of Bure and originates in it in other words the phrase the yell of glory is the secret of the Chesed that is revealed because of the Bure has light superiority over darkness therefore it is written the yell of glory thunders because it was revealed by Bure through thunder another explanation of the phrase the yell of glory Thunders is that it is the secret of the right which is Jesus from which the left viewer comes forth as the Sphira issue and emanate from one another as is known according to this L of glory which is Jesus thunders emanates viewer which is the secret of thunder Hashem is upon many waters means that Hashem is the revelation of supernal Chakma which is called Yud, namely that the Mokin of the supernal Abba and IMA is upon many waters IT is revealed over that hidden source from which it emerged as it is written and your path in the great waters Tehillim 7720 over against the border the Zohar describes the way in which water fire and wind can become unified in our physical existence water is the physical expression of the right column the positive energy force of sharing this male principle plus corresponds to the proton in an atom fire corresponds to the left column the negative energy force of receiving this female principle dash is expressed as the Electron wind is the personification of the central column, the neutral energy which corresponds to the neutron in an atom, just as an atom unites these three forces into the building blocks of our physical universe, we through our actions can unite them as the building blocks of our spiritual universe. The positive force relates to the soul and our will to share the negative force concerns the ego and its bottomless desire to receive and consume the neutral force corresponds to the free will of man. Each of us possesses the power to unify these three columns by learning to receive for the sake of sharing rather than receiving for gratification of the ego. 335 Rabbi Shimon explained the controversy explaining the inclusion of the left and right columns which had previously been in discord. He opened the scriptures and began with the verse over against the border shall the rings be for places of the poles to bear the table. Shema 2527 He asked what is this border? He replied, This is a Closed place the only access is through a narrow path that is hidden within it through its power it is filled with light and marked gate so as to light the lamps because it is a concealed and hidden place it is called the border or a frame this is the world to come which is called frame 336 the phrase shall the rings be refers to the upper rings meaning Chesed, Bira and Tiferet which are above the chest of Zeir Anpin and cling to one another water fire and wind correspond to Chesed, Bira and Tiferet of Zeir Anpin when they receive the Mokin they are combined one with the other water which is Chesed is included with wind which is Tiferet wind with fire which is Bira and fire with water they combine together and issue the one from the other like rings all the rings reach that border closure which is the secret of Israel, Saba and Tabuna where they reach for the supernal river that waters them that is the secret of the river that comes out of Eden which is the Secret of Israel, Saba and Tevuna and they cling to it. 337 The verse continues four places of the poles because the upper rings which are above the chest of Zeir Anpin have at this stage become houses and places for the poles which are net and Yezid below the chest of Zeir Anpin. These poles are the lower chariot as they originate from the upper chariot which is Chesed, Bura and Tiferet which correspond to water fire and wind thus the left column of the poles which is called Hot originates from the aspect of fire of the upper chariot which is called Bura. The right column of the poles which is called Netzach originates from the aspect of water of the upper chariot which is called Chesed and the central column of the poles which is called Yezid originates from the aspect of wind of the upper chariot which is called Tiferet. This continues so everything that exists in the upper chariot is drawn down to the lower chariot so that the poles can be formed into a chariot. For the Ark of the Testimony where the Sheshen arrests therefore all who approach shall approach these poles which are the aspect of Netzach and Yezid which are from the chest downward but not go inside them no one is to approach and draw the Mokin from Shesed, Bura and Tiferet which are above the chest of Zeir and get away they say to the hermit have Nazir go around to the vineyard you shall not approach only those who are worthy of serving within, referring to those people whose souls come from the chest upward of Zeir and are given permission to enter serve and come near this is why it is written and the stranger that comes near shall be put to death. Bimidbar 15136 Bet Rashid in response to a question by his student Rabbi Yussi Rabbi Shimon reveals a profound secret contained in the very first word of the Torah the Hebrew word for in the beginning is Bereshit when you separate the first letter of the word Bet from the rest of the word you have by end. Rashid the letter bed refers to the sphere of Malchut our physical world the word Rashid corresponds to the light of Hokamah the highest grade of light emanating from the creator the realm of Malchut signified by the bed is the world most distant from the light source the light of Hokamah for that reason Malchut experiences the greatest need this need in turn produces the maximum desire to receive the light this truly titanic desire is necessary to draw down the light through the entire structure of the Sphira and without this great desire Malchut would remain an empty vessel desolate and impoverished from the perspective of the Kabbalist human desire is not necessarily a negative trait while other spiritual doctrines call upon us to nullify and negate all earthly desires the Zohar maintains that desire is a vital force essential for arousing and revealing the light the purpose of our creation however is to transform this impulse from a covetous desire to receive for the self Alone into a desire to receive for the sake of sharing the power to bring about this transformation in our self-seeking desires is contained within these passages. 338 The letter bed of Bereshit is large according to tradition. Rabbi Yussi asked Rabbi Shimon what are these six days of Bereshit that we learned about. Rabbi Shimon answered that it is written the cedars of Lebanon which he has planted. Tehillim 10,416 Just as these cedars emerge from Lebanon so these six days of creation emerge from. Bereshit 339 These supernal six days of creation are described in the scriptures as is written. Yours Hashem is the greatness namely Chesed and the power of Bura and the glory Tiferet and the victory Netzach and the majesty hot for all which is the righteous namely Yezid that is in heaven alludes to Tiferet and an honor to Malchut which is the congregation of Israelite of Rehamim 2911 This is translated into Aramaic as that is attached to the heavens and to the earth. This means that the foundation is it of the world namely is it of Zeir Anpin which is called all dash is attached to Tiferet which is called heavens and to the earth which is called the congregation of Israel namely Malchut 340 this is why it says Bereshit about Chakma which is composed of Bereshit the numerical value of Bet is 2 because Chakma is the second of the ten Sfirot it is called Reshit beginning because although the supernal and concealed Keter is the first of the Sfirot
Hinted at in Barashid lit created six which emerged from Bereshit are like the six of Zeir and that emerged from him. Nevertheless, Bereshit in itself is a complete saying. 342 The words Elohim created are analogous to what is written and a river went out of Eden to water the garden. Bereshit 210 Because the word created means went out. He asked what is the meaning of to water the garden. He replied it means to water Malchut that is called the garden and sustain it and keep. Watch over all its needs. The word Elohim alludes to Bino, which is called living Elohim when it returns to Chakma because the meaning of in the beginning Elohim created holds only through this river. All this brings forth and emanates everything and waters all bestowing the Mokin of Chakma to all 343. The heaven alludes to a proper union of male and the female because ET is a female and heaven is a male. The lower world was created by this union in the world below. Everything reached completion. The heaven ET means that heaven, namely Zeir Anpin, brought forth its own feminine principle called ET with the power IT received from living Elohim who is bin after Rashid Zeir Anpin emanated by using the name of living Elohim 344. As a result, living Elohim brought forth everything and put all things in their places as one. This last ring became Rashid through this beginning, namely the feminine principle. He created the supernal lights, which are the secret of the illumination of Chakma, and it began to shine by the illumination of Chakma. The water, which is the secret of Chesedim, began to flow downward from IT for the lower beings to receive as they can receive only from the feminine principle. According to this, Elohim has created everything through Rashid, which is the secret of Chakma. He has created the lower world, namely the feminine principle of Zeir Anpin, which is called Rashid as well by the feminine principle of Zeir Anpin. He Created and revealed the lights of Chakma through her, he gave power to all the grades because the light of Chakma is the sustenance of all the grades. 345 Rabbi Yehuda said, This is why it is written, Shall the axe boast itself against him that hews with it? Yeshua 1015, who deserves the praise, is it not the artisan who hews here as well in this Rashid? The supernal Elohim, namely Bana, who created the heaven and all else, is the one to be praised. Elohim, namely Bana, to the end of 346 Rabbi Yossi commented on the verse that has Elohim so near to them. Devarim 47, he asked, Why is it written so near in the plural? It should have been in the singular. He explained, But there is supernal Elohim, which is Bana, Elohim of the fear of its hawk, which is Bura of Zeir Anpin, and the last Elohim, which is the feminine principle of Zeir Anpin. This last is called Elohim because the name Elohim of Bana expands and shines on Bura and Malchut. For this reason, it is written so near in. The plural there are many Burat that are called by the name Elohim. These are the secret of the 120 permutations of the name Elohim. But all these names of Elohim are really one. They are all extensions of the supernal Elohim, which is Bina 347. The Zohar explains how all the tense Virat are alluded to in the first verse of the Torah. In the beginning created alludes to Keter and Chakma Elohim alludes to Bina Et that alludes to the greatness Jesus and Bura the heaven is Tiferet. And it alludes to Netzach and Yizid and the earth alludes to Malchut and of Tisip the 37. The hidden light profound secrets pertaining to the hidden light the world to come and Shabbat are revealed here. The Zohar explains that our Creator foresaw the sins of man and all the evil ones who would walk this earth. The Creator therefore hid the vast portion of his great light so that man could not misuse this raw naked energy in the same way a parent naturally forbids a child to approach a Broken high voltage wire, though the energy carried by the cable is a positive force that lights an entire city touching the power line could bring immediate destruction to the unaware child. This hidden light of the Creator was stored in the upper dimension called by one of the tense rod where it was set aside for the righteous of this world. This is the secret of the term world to come. The world to come does not refer to a realm that we reach at death or at any point in the future, and the righteous of this world are only the great sages. The world to come occurs in the present at the precise moment we transform our nature and create a new world for ourselves and of ourselves. We are included among the righteous whenever we make these spiritual corrections. The Zohar further explains that the Shabbat is the time when a great portion of this hidden light is revealed so that we may use it to purify our souls and enrich our lives. Learning from this section of the Zohar connects us to this great hidden light 348 and Elohim said let there be light and there was light. Bereshit 13. This is the light that the Holy One blessed be he created at first and this is the light of the eyelid sight. This is the light that the Holy One blessed be he showed Adam and through it Adam saw from one end of the world to the other and this is the light that the Holy One blessed be he showed David who said in praise oh how great is your goodness which you laid up for those who fear you. Tehillim 3120. This is the light that the Holy One blessed be he used to show Moshe who saw in it the entire land of Israel from Jalad to Dan 349 when the Holy One blessed be he had foreseen three sinful generations namely the generation of Enosh the generation of the flood and the generation of the tower of Babel Babylon he hid this light to prevent them from using it the Holy One blessed be he gave it to Moshe who used it during the three months left to complete his period of pregnancy. As he was born after six months and one day, this is why it is written, She hit him three months, Shema 22, 350. After three months after the pregnancy with Moshe was over, he entered before Paro. In other words, the daughter of Paro found him at the river bank of the Nile and brought him to Paro. The Holy One blessed be he took this light away from him until Moshe stood at Mount Sinai to receive the Torah. Then he gave this light back to him, and Moshe used this light all his life, and the children of Israel were not able to approach him until he put a veil over his face as it is written, and they were afraid to come near him. Shema 3430, he covered himself with this light like a talent as it is written, who covers himself with light as with a garment. Tehillim 1042, 351, let there be light, and there was light. Everything that begins with let there be have he applies to this world and the world to come, which are Malchut and Bina Rabbi Yitzhak said the light that the Holy One. Blessed be he created during the creation shown from one end of the world to the other then it was hidden 352 he asked what is the reason for hiding it he replied so that the sinful people of the world may have no pleasure in it thus the worlds have no pleasure in this light because of the wicked it is hidden for the righteous and only for the righteous as it is written light is sown for the righteous and gladness for the upright in heart Tehillim 9711 then the world shall find pleasure in the revealing of this light and they shall all be as one until that day when Bino which I ask the world to come will be revealed its light will remain hidden and treasure 353 this light that comes forth from the world to come emerges from the darkness that is engraved on the most concealed engravings of all upon the engravings of Bino the secret of the world to come it remains there until a hidden path is hewn from that hidden light to the darkness below then the light resides and rests in it meaning that it is revealed throughout the worlds what is this darkness below this is the darkness that is called night namely the feminine principle of Zeir Anpin as it is written and the darkness he called night 354 therefore we have learned about the verse he uncovers deep things out of darkness Eof 1222 Rabbi Yossi said you may say about the meaning of the verse that out of the concealed darkness out of the darkness of Bina deep things are revealed yet all of the supernal crowns of Bina are hidden therefore they are called deep things in the scriptural verse what is meant by the verse he uncovers deep things since they are not revealed at all Rabbi Yossi replied all these supernal deep things are only revealed from within that darkness which is the secret of the night which is the feminine principle come and behold all these hidden deep things that emerge from thought Bina which the voice Zeir Anpin takes up are not exposed until the word manifests. Then he asked what is the word he replied it is speech namely Malchut because Zeir Anpin with the Mokin of greatness is called the voice and Malchut is then called the speech 355 the speech or rather the combination of thought voice and speech is called Shabbat Shabbat which is the feminine principle with the Mokin of greatness consists of the Shin and Bat daughter Shin alludes to the upper three Sfirat and daughter alludes to the feminine principle because Shabbat is called speech. Common speech is forbidden on Shabbat because it disrupts the great union of the voice and speech and the speech of Shabbat should prevail in the world and not the speech of the weekdays which is an aspect of the smallness of the feminine principle the speech which comes from the aspect of darkness reveals deep things from within it the meaning of the phrase out of darkness is that which emerges from the aspect of darkness it is precisely written out of darkness 356 Rabbi Yitzhak. Said if the darkness is so great in
Darkness afterward the male and female are united as one to be one so he asked why are they divided that the verse says of them and Elohim divided the light from the darkness he replied to distinguish the light from the darkness the grades are first separated from each other then the advantages and disadvantages of the light on its own and the darkness on its own become evident then they mate and become one and they need each other because light requires darkness the light of Zeir and is not complete by the light of Chakma unless it is combined with the darkness of the feminine principle and darkness requires light because the darkness of the feminine principle is not complete until it is united with the light even though they are different in their aspects they have become one as it is written one day 38 if my covenant be not day and night here Rabbi Shimon reveals secrets concerning the ritual of circumcision and its link to the sphere of Yezid Yezid is like a reservoir into which all the upper spirot or their energy forces Yezid gathers all these elements blends them and transfers this great light into our physical universe for this reason Yezid resides just above Malchud our world within the structure of the tense spirot Yezid acts as the portal through which the awesome forces light enter our realm as the building blocks of all creation the tense spirot reflect themselves in our world thus we have ten fingers and ten toes and our numerical system Functions on base 10 each of the 10 spirot are also expressed within the human body as it correlates to the sexual organ where the greatest expression of light manifests this great light is responsible for the miracle of procreation and the pleasure derived from it the negative forces in our midst automatically attach themselves to any gateway where the greatest light can shine for this reason these negative entities are found in the realm of Yezid in our realm they naturally manifest. Within the human sexual organ the purpose of the covenant of circumcision is to remove this negative influence from our lives as well as from the worlds above circumcision performed properly with Kabbalistic mediation removes all negativity from both the child and the world this is the secret of the covenant between God and man the covenant should not be perceived as a rule to be blindly followed but as a revelation of the universal law of the cosmos that is followed for its own sake and wisdom. Similarly, a rational man will not step off the ledge of a building for fear of violating the universal law of gravity. He does not require strict laws to prevent him from committing such perilous acts. The act of circumcision is rooted in the spiritual benefits brought to the child, including boosting his immune system. Though small in size, the foreskin contains powerful negative forces as if it were a nuclear warhead at the tip of a ballistic missile throughout life with respect to Yezid and also to sexual relations. It benefits man to sustain the purity and cleanliness that is achieved during circumcision. The Kabbalist, however, does not consider big concepts of morals and ethics as motivation for maintaining sexual relations within the spiritual confines of marriage. Rather, it is our own spiritual understanding of the metaphysical forces at work that provides the impetus. Religious authority must be removed from the equation, and individuals must be empowered by knowledge to assist them. In their own free choices, these specific Aramaic texts emanate spiritual influences that help cleanse the realm of Yezid, including any negative sexual thoughts or desires. 358 Rabbi Shimon said the world was created and is sustained by the covenant as it is written, If my covenant be not day and night, it were as if I had not appointed the ordinances of heaven and earth. Here may 3325. He asked, Who is the covenant? He answered, He is the righteous, the everlasting lid of the world foundation. The secret of remember, therefore, the world which is the feminine principle is established on the covenant that unites day and night, which are male and female as one. It is written, If my covenant be not day and night, it were as if I had not appointed the ordinances of heaven and earth, and the ordinances of heaven alludes to the mokin which flows from the upper Eden. 359 Rabbi Shimon began the discourse on the verse louder than the voice of the archers in the places of drawing water. There let them recite the righteous acts of Hashem Shoftim 511 he said the voice of archers is the voice of Yaakov because archers means as it is written and there went out a champion Ishmuel 174 in the place of drawing water means that Yaakov Tiferet dwells among those who draw water on high he referring to Zeir and travels along the two sides right and left and combines them within himself thereby revealing their perfection 360 in the verse there let them recite the righteous acts of Hashem there is the place of faith which is the queen namely the feminine principle above the chest of Zeir and to cleave to there let them recite the righteous acts of Hashem means that they absorb the righteous acts of Hashem from there the phrase the righteous acts towards the inhabitants of his villages which is a continuation of the verse louder than the voice of the archers alludes to the righteous of the world namely is it of Zeir and who is it? Covenant and is holy he draws and takes everything and discharges into the great sea namely the feminine principle these supernal waters namely his mokin that are drawn from Miami the supernal waters the phrase in Israel which ends the verse means that Israel shall inherit this covenant and the holy one blessed be he gave this to them as an everlasting inheritance 361 the children of Israel abandoned the covenant when they performed circumcision but neglected the uncovering of it. Corona therefore it is written of them when the people of Hashem went down to the gates showed them 511 meaning went down to the gates of righteousness as they sat at the gates but did not pass through them it is written of that time and they forsook Hashem showed them 212 Borov and came and donated this to them she drew down and revealed the supernal mokin to them as it is written in time of tumultuous strife had peroti in Israel showed them 52 peroti means revealing as in and loosen hepara. The hair of the woman's head be midbar 518 which is an allusion to the revelation of the Mokin that Dora returned to Israel 362 thus it is written of Israel the inhabitants of the villages ceased they ceased in Israel Shoftim 57 refers to the inhabitants of his villages as has already been explained as the abundance of Mokin of greatness from Yezid to the great sea since they left the covenant the Mokin ceased to flow upon them the inhabitants of the villages dash Mokin ceased from the holy covenant because they circumcised but did not uncover the corona head period thus it is written until Bora rose I rose a mother in Israel he asked why does she call herself a mother she replied because I have drawn down supernal waters from above referring to the Mokin of the upper three spirot that come from Miami to sustain the world and she called herself a mother because she revealed the Mokin from Miami in Israel is a general term indicating that she has Become a mother to both Israel above which is Zeir and to Israel below which signifies the children of Israel in other words she drew down the Mokin to both Zeir and and Israel to show that the world exists only by this covenant and the secret of all this is found in the phrase but the righteous is an everlasting foundation or foundation of the world Mishle 1025 who is the foundation yet upon which the world is established 363 3 emerge from one one exists within three. It enters between the two the two feed the one and the one feeds many aspects then they all become one as it is written and there was evening and there was morning one day Beersheet 15 as the evening and the morning were united as one this is the secret of the verse if my covenant be not day and night because within it is Zeir and and his feminine principle are one which are day and night the covenant which is yes unites day and night into one discipline and 364 we have. Learn that he who performs circumcision but does not uncover the corona by splitting the skin acts as if he does not perform circumcision at all. Why? Because circumcision and the uncovering of the corona are two different grades that correspond to remember and keep the righteous and righteousness male and female circumcision. I ask the sign of the covenant corresponding to Yosef, namely Yezid, and the splitting of the skin. I ask the covenant that corresponds to Rachel, namely the feminine principle of Zeir and they should be united together. Yezid and the feminine principle. When does one unite them? When he circumcises the foreskin and uncovers the corona, he who circumcises without uncovering the corona acts as if he has created a separation between Zeir and and his feminine principle. End of to 39. The firmament that divides and unites all the worlds were created with boundaries, and these boundaries are reflected within the human body. Thus, reasoning takes place only within it. Boundaries of the head each of the tense spirot represent domains of particular spiritual forces human behavior should also reflect and respect this idea the ego's natural tendency is to penetrate another person's boundary the effect is a volatile combination of spiritual energies which is the source of conflict the benefit derived from this section of Zohar awakens our tolerance and respect for others and an awareness of the need to remain within our own boundaries 365 and Elohim said let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters and let it divide water from water Beersheet 16 Rabbi Yehuda said there are seven celestial firmaments and they all exist in the supernal holiness of Eric Enpin and the holy name El
Principle is called the garden enclosed when all the lights are enclosed and included within her and she is called the spring shut up when that river that flows out of Eden enters the feminine principle to water her from Eden so it comprises the entire Mokin but does not bring forth their illumination because the waters which signify the Mokin are frozen and stand stiff in it what is the reason for them freezing he replied because the northern wind blows into these waters they freeze into ice and cannot flow out had it not been for the southern aspect namely the right column that shattered the power of this ice the waters would have never flowed out 368 the appearance of that upper firmament is similar to the appearance of the frozen ice which collects within it all the waters that are poured on it in this manner the upper firmament gathers upon it all these waters and separates the upper waters from the lower waters the verse let there be a firmament in the midst of it waters refers to the firmament in the midst of the waters thus we might think that the first firmament is the middle one yet he said it is not so because let there be precedes this firmament which means that the firmament that was formed by this first firmament is in the midst of the waters but the one above it referring to the first firmament rests on the heads of the living creatures over Chesed, Bura and Tiferet of Eric and Penan, not in the midst of the waters between Chesed, Bura and Tiferet and Net Sashat and Yezid 369 Rabbi Yitzhak said there is a membrane in the middle of a man's abdominal organs that separates them from the upper organs thereby separating the abdominal organs which are the food organs and the heart and lungs which are the organs of life this membrane begins in the navel and stretches up to the chest in a diagonal line it absorbs the force of life from the organs of life above the chest and distributes IT to the organs of food below. The chest of firmament is similar to this membrane that is the body of Eric and that also extends from the navel to his chest and rests above the lower living creatures that is above the Sfirat of Netzach Hot and Balchud called the lower living creatures it separates the upper waters which are his Jesus Bura and Tiferet from the lower waters which are his Netzach Hot and Yezid 40 the waters conceived and gave birth to darkness Rabbi Yehuda offers additional insights into the concept of boundaries though we must respect and consider the boundaries of all people this does not preclude the exchange of ideas and debate between parties provided it is for the sake of heaven and not for ego gratification a spiritual debate between two distinct points of view can enhance both parties as expressed by the adage the whole is greater than the sum of its parts this occurs when dialogue takes place with sharing and mutual respect it is incumbent upon us not to argue for the Purpose of unduly influencing others toward our own position by all means we must respect their differences while trying to enhance their lives within the context of their own boundaries come and behold these waters conceived and gave birth to darkness based on the secret it is written and the veil shall be for you as a division between the holy place and the most holy lit the holy of holies Shema 2633 370 Rabbi Abba opened the discourse with an explanation of the verse who lays the beams of his chambers in the waters Tehillim 1043 the waters refers to waters above all namely Abba and Iama with which he established the house that is the feminine principle of Zeir and about this it is written through wisdom a house is built and by understanding it is established Mishle 243 371 who makes the clouds have of him his chariot Tehillim 1043 Rabbi Yesa divides of him into AB and Yam this means that AB cloud which is darkness from the left rests on this Yam in the phrase who walks upon the wings of the wind, the wind or spirit belongs to the supernal temple. This is the secret of the verse, and you shall make two cherubim of gold. Shema 2518 It is written, and he rode upon the cherub and did fly, yet he soared on the wings of the wind. Tehillim 1811 At first, and he rode upon the cherub refers to the female cherub, but later he was revealed on the wings of the wind. The secret refers to the male cherub until one is stimulated, it is not revealed within the other. 372 Rabbi Yossi said it is written, and he weighs the waters by measure. Yo 2825 This means that by actual measure did he weigh and establish their existence as the waters flowed into the measure. They are meant for the improvement of the world when they reach the measure from the side of Bura. Rabbi Abba said the sages of old used to say that when the wise reach this place, referring to the secret of the measure that improves the water, their lips moved, but they uttered no sound because they were afraid they might be punished. 373 Rabbi Laser continued the first letter which was floating over the pure knot was crowned from below and above it goes up and comes down so that now the right is stronger and now the left column after the waters which are the Mokin are engraved into their shapes and the Mokin settle in place the two columns are included one within the other and this is the secret of the central column so all the letters rose up to Abba and Ima and first received it. Mokin of the right and left columns then they received the Mokin of the central column were combined with one another and crowned by one another until the building of the parts of Zeir and, and his feminine principle and its Yezid was built upon them. 374 when all the letters were constructed and crowned with the Mokin of the upper three Sfirot by their inclusion in Abba and Ima the upper waters mixed with the lower waters and produced the house of the world the female is called it. House had bait of the world when she receives the Mokin of Chakma and so the letter bed which alludes to the feminine principle was first seen as the waters ascended and descended in her until this firmament was formed and separated them the dispute between the two columns occurred on the second day of creation the day on which Ihanam was created which is a burning fire because of the discord as it is written for Hashem your Elohim is a consuming fire Devarim 424 and it will rest on the heads of the wicked 375 Rabbi Yehuda said from this we learned that every disagreement for the sake of heaven is destined to last year was a disagreement for the sake of heaven for the sake of Zeir and who is called heaven and heaven was established after this disagreement on the third day it is written and Elohim called the firmament heaven Beershi 18 here called means to summon the construction of the house and the attic by means of the beams connecting them is from the beams serve as a floor for the attic and a ceiling for the house thus the entire house and attic exist through the beams but did not exist before they were put in place without beams there shall be no house and attic we have learned that the verse and the veil shall be for you as a division between the holy place and the most holy holy of holies Shema 2633 is precise the holy and the holy of holies were formed by the veil and are preserved by it because the veil is the firmament that divides it within in the middle between the upper and lower waters 376 come and behold it is written afterward let the waters under the heaven be gathered together to one place Bear sheet 19 note that it reads precisely under the heaven to one place means to the place that is called one which is the lower sea namely the feminine principle as she completes the name one without her zeir and is not called one accordingly we learned that the verse let the waters be gathered together implies that all the waters be gathered in the feminine principle as is written all the rivers run into the sea Kahilat 17 which is the feminine principle 377 Rabbi Yesa said the verse to one place refers to the place about which it is written neither shall the covenant of my peace be removed Yeshayah 5410 it alludes to Yezid of Zeir and that is called the covenant of peace and not as Rabbi Yehuda said to the feminine principle for Yezid takes all the lights as it is written let the waters be gathered and cast them into the sea which is the feminine principle when she has the Mokin of Chakma through it the earth is established which is the feminine principle when she has the complete Mokin which consists of the light of Chakma together with the light of Shasadim as it is written and let the dry land appear Beersheet 19 this is the earth according to the verse and Elohim called the dry land earth of the 10 378 he asked why is the feminine principle called dry land Rabbi Yitzhak replied this is one of which it is written the bread of affliction lit poverty Devarim 163 it is written no and I poverty without the letter Vav thereby alluding to the feminine principle when she has Chakma without Chesedim at that time she is called the bread of poverty because she cannot shine because she is considered then to have the name the bread of affliction she is also called dry land as well without the waters that are the Mokin therefore the feminine principle absorbs into herself all the waters of the world namely the light of Chakma that includes the entire Mokin of the upper three Sfirot nevertheless she remains dry until this place namely Yezid that is called one place fills her up with the light of Chesedim the waters then flow throughout the sources of abundance from Yezid through the enclosing of Chakma with Chesedim 379 the verse and the gathering together of the waters he called sees Bear sheet 110 refers to the Reservoir lit the house of gathering of above and bind all the waters gather there and flow and go forth. Rabbi Shia said the gathering together had might be of the waters is an
of them through its reconciliation. This is why it receives them all and it is called the seas based on this as a result of Yezid amending these Mokin of Chakma. The verse reads, and Elohim saw that it was good 381 because it is so marked, meaning that it included within itself the entire Mokin both of Chakma and Chesedim. It represents the division between the first and third day. It is not said good in between referring to the Mokin of the second day on the third day the earth. Namely, the feminine principle produced fruit from the power of its righteous namely Yezid as it is written, and Elohim said, Let the earth bring forth grass, the herb yielding seed, and the fruit tree yielding fruit. Bear sheet 111. He asked, What is the fruit tree? He replied, This is the tree of knowledge of good and evil, alluding to the feminine principle of Zeir and yielding fruit means the righteous, the fountain Yezid of the world that produces all the fruit and bestows them upon it. Feminine principle as a result of the greater value of Yezid the second day seems to be of comparably little value, so it is not said on it that it was good. 382. The phrase yielding fruit after its kind in the verse and the fruit tree yielding fruit after its kind means that Yezid leaves an imprint on every human being who has a spirit of holiness and who is a fruit of that tree, namely the feminine principle of Zeir and after its kind, just as Yezid of Zeir and is a holy. Covenant and a covenant of peace so are the people of faith after its kind those who have merited the spirit of holiness from the feminine principle this means that they also attain the grades of the holy covenant and the covenant of peace they enter into its kind they cleave to it and they never separate themselves from it the righteous namely is it yields fruit that is brings forth the spirits and souls of human beings that tree namely the feminine principle of zeir and becomes pregnant with the fruit that she receives from Yezid which are the spirits and souls and produces that fruit after its kind after the kind of it which yields the fruit namely Yezid whoever receives its fruit becomes like it then the feminine principle gives them to the human beings which resemble it which yields the fruit 383 happy is a lot of he who resembles his father and mother who are male and female therefore the sacred imprint the cutting of the foreskin on the eighth day is for the Purpose of making him resemble his mother who is the feminine principle of Zeir and thus the splitting of the membrane and exposure of the sacred imprint is done to make him resemble his father who is Zeir and for by the precept of the circumcision he merits the mokin of the feminine principle and by the splitting of the membrane he receives the mokin of Zeir and this is why the fruit tree is one's mother the feminine principle of Zeir and and yielding fruit in the holy covenant which is Yezid of Zeir and is one's father it is after its kind so that he may resemble his father and be imprinted by him to receive all his virtues 384 it is written whose seed is in itself upon the earth bear sheet 111 he asked why is it written whose seed Hebzaro is in itself when it should have been written a seed without the letter Bob he replied because the seed of Bob who is Zeir and is in it it is written upon the earth this is certainly so because the seed has been cast by Zeir and upon the earth which is the feminine principle happy is a lot of Israel who are holy and resemble holy beings meaning that they receive the mokin from male and female and resemble them because of this it is written and your people shall also be all righteous Yeshua 6021 they are certainly all righteous because their souls come forth through the righteous which are the Sfirat of Yezid of the male and female this is why they resemble them they are blessed in this world and in the world to come 385 Rabbi Shia said it is written he has made the earth by his power your male 1012 so he asked what is the meaning of he has made the earth he replied this is the holy one blessed be he above and by his power is the righteous namely Yezid of Zeir and in the verse he has established the world by his wisdom but the world alludes to the earth below and his wisdom means righteousness as it is written and he will judge the world in righteousness Tehillim 99 He has made the earth refers to the Holy One blessed be he who fully establishes the earth and mends its ways by what does he fully establish it by his power as we have stated 386 Rabbi Yehuda said in the book the engraved letters of Rabbi Lazar there are knots by which all 22 letters are bound together as one there are two letters that bind the 22 letters as one one ascends and the other descends that which ascends descends and that which descends ascends as is noted in the verse surely lit but L is in you Yeshua 4514 387 Rabbi Yehuda said the tip of the scale stands in the middle its portent may be found in the verse in weight or in measure Vayikra 1935 in which in weight had Mishkal means that the tongue of the scales is in the middle because the scales are just this is the secret of what is written after the shekel of the sanctuary Shema 3013 and the scales that weigh the Mokin are set upon the point in the middle he asked what are the Scales by which, as you say, the Mokin are weighed. He answered, This is according to what is written, just balances. Vayikra 1936, meaning that justice is weighed by the men. All Mokin are established by this weight. After the shekel of the sanctuary, Rabbi Yehuda said that the phrase, After the shekel of the sanctuary, lit holy shekel, is an allusion to the Holy Spirit. 388 Rabbi Yitzhak said, It is written by the word of Hashem, were the heavens made, and all the host of them by the breath of his mouth. Tehillim 336, by the word of Hashem, were the heavens made, refers to the lower heavens, which were made by the word of the upper heavens. They were made by the breath that produces a voice until it reaches the river that ebbs and flows, and whose waters never cease. And the phrase, and all the host of them by the breath of his mouth, applies to all lower beings who exist only by the light of the breath, which is the male. 389, in discussing the verse, he waters the hills from his. Upper chambers, the earth is satisfied with the fruit of your works. Tehillim 10,413. He asked, What are his upper chambers? He answered, This is consistent with who lays the beams of his upper chambers. If it, the earth is satisfied with the fruit of your works, is the secret of the river that ebbs and flows downward. Therefore, it is written, The earth, namely the feminine principle, I am satisfied as she receives this light of Chakma. Thus, it is written, and the fruit tree yielding fruit after its kind, whose seed is in itself, as has already been explained. 41. Let there be lights. Your discussion turns to the two great lights in the sky, the sun and moon. The Zohar explains that when the moon was diminished in size, this also diminished the spiritual light in our physical world of Malchut, and the resulting darkness created an opening for curses. Interestingly, the Hebrew word for curses is Mirat, the Hebrew word for lights is Mirat. The singular difference between the two is that. The word for curses lacks the Hebrew letter Bob. The usual reading translation for this word as it appears in the Torah is lights, which is how the word has been read in synagogues all over the world throughout history. Nevertheless, the actual written word in the Torah is curses minus the letter of the secret meaning of this passage remains hidden without the light of the Zohar to reveal it. According to Kabbalah, we pronounce the word as lights because when spoken, the word reveals the very light. It describes this action replenishes the spiritual light of the moon, removing darkness and eradicating curses from the face of the earth. Another secret pertains to the creation of the negative and evil female angel Lilith, whose name we do not pronounce. She came into existence at the moment the moon was diminished. The concept of curses and the childhood disease known as croup were also created in the stage protection from curses. Croup and other negative forces is bestowed when we scan and Learn this section of the Zohar 390 and Elohim said let there be light in the firmament of heaven to give light upon the earth. Bear sheet 114 to 15 it is written let there be lights with a defective spelling without the letter Bob. Rabbi Shizkiah said these are the lights where harsh judgment lies and is absorbed. Rabbi Yossi said the reason why let there be lights I spelled without the Bob and can be read as me E-R-O-T curses is because it refers to the moon namely Malchut which is the cause. A croup and infants of the lower world curses derived from her because she is the lesser luminary of all the lights that is the last one at times she is darkened and receives no light as a result croup and curses are drawn down from IT 391 the phrase in the firmament of heaven bear sheet 114 refers to the firmament that includes all others because it receives all the lights and also shines upon the light that does not shine 392 Rabbi Yitzhak said it brought forth this firmament. That does not shine which is called the kingdom of heaven the land of Israel and the land of life all of these are names of Malchut the heaven which appears in the verse shines upon this firmament Zeir and who is called the heaven shines upon Malchut which is the firmament that does not shine this is why it is written let there be lights Mirat without the letter Bob this means that she receives no illumination from the heaven that is called Bob what is the reason
that does not shine by itself but by the reflection of the upper lights just as the glass walls of the lantern reflect the light of the candle inside in the same manner the feminine principle takes the lights from the upper grades and bestows them on the lower beings though it has no light of its own it is written behold the ark of the covenant of the master of all the earth Yahashua 311 behold the ark refers to the opaque mirror Malchut the feminine principle of Zeir and the covenant is the shining mirror behold the ark refers to Mirat without the letter Bob which means the feminine principle before Zeir and that is called the written Torah joins her the ark is a chest in which the written Torah which is Zeir and is laid the covenant is the son namely Zeir and which shines on the feminine principle she is also called the covenant as he is when she is united with him this is why she is described in the verse as the ark of the covenant so she is indeed the ark of the covenant of the master of all the earth because only when she is united with Zeir and who is called the covenant is she called the master of all the earth like her husband Zeir and why because the covenant which is Zeir and is called the master of all the earth 395 this ark is the master since the sun that shines on her and the whole world is called so from it the feminine principle attains the name master and this ark is called master Hebadon according to the secret of the name Adonai as we have already stated righteous signifies the male and righteousness the female accordingly Adonai as the name of the male and Adonai the name of the female because just as the name righteousness of the female is derived from the name righteous of the male so is the name Adonai derived from Adon when the female is called after her husband by the name the ark of the covenant she is then called by the name of the male Adon they are both interrelated 396 come and behold the planets and the constellations exist because of this covenant which is the sun namely Zeir and as we have already stated this is the firmament of heaven that appears in the verse let there be lights refers to the female and the firmament of heaven refers to Zeir and which shines upon her the planets the constellations and the whole world in this firmament the planets and the constellations are engraved and inscribed and they depend on the firmament to shine on Earth he explains that the phrase let there be lights is the female and in the firmament of heaven is Zeir and Rabbi Yes the elder said the emanator said let there be lights suspended from the firmament of heaven meaning that all the measures of illumination derive from the firmament of heaven so the light that is the moon derives in every way from the firmament since it is written and let them be for lights in the firmament of heaven the sun is also dependent on the firmament because it is also written and let them be for signs and seasons and so on the entire structure of dates feasts holy days of lunar months and the Shabbat is derived from and is formed by the firmament because it measures each and every grade 397 all this the statures that the firmament measures is done by the function of the first upper firmament where the holy name achieves unity and it is everything there are seven planets corresponding to the seven firmaments they all are the governors of the world and the supernal world is above them there are two similar worlds the upper world by and the lower world Malchut all that is established in the upper world also comes into being in the lower world thus the lower world is also governed by the planets as is the upper world it is written forever and ever live from the world to the world I Rahim and 1636 which means that whatever exists in the upper world reaches down to the lower the upper world is the upper King namely Bud and the lower world is the lower king namely Malchu 398 it is written Hashem reigns Hashem has reigned Hashem will reign forevermore this means that Hashem reigns above Hashem has reigned in the middle and Hashem will reign forevermore down below Rabbi Ech said Hashem has reigned in the past tense means the upper world which is the world to come namely by Hashem reigns in the present tense is Tiferet of Israel namely Zeir and Hashem will reign in the future tense is the Ark of the Covenant namely the lower world Malchu 399 David came in another period and reversed their order from down below upward and said Hashem is king forever and ever Tehillim 1016 Hashem is king means down below in the lower world of Malchu forever means in the middle namely in Zeir and ever means above in Bud where there is meeting namely unity and Mokin and completion of all the grades this is why the upper world is described as reigns its sovereignty is completed in all its perfection whereas will reign means that the world below namely Malchut shall reach perfection and full sovereignty in the future as it is not yet completed 400 Rabbi Abba said all the lights are connected to the firmament of heaven as it is written and Elohim set them in the firmament of heaven to give light upon the earth he asked what is this heaven that gives light upon the earth he replied this is the river that flows out to Eden as it is written and a river went out of Eden to water the garden Bereshit 210 401 come and behold because the moon governs and shines by the power of that river that flows out of Eden which is by the light is added to all the heavens below under Atzalut and Bria Yitzhara Isi of separation and their hosts thus the planets rule the world and cause plants and trees to grow and everything in the world grows and multiplies even the water and the fish in the sea increase in numbers many emissaries of judgment roam the world because everything is full of joy and energy in other words these emissaries are stronger because of the strength of Malchut as a result one must be careful that they do not bring greater harm than before when there is joy in the house of the king even the guards of the gates and the roads are happy and roam about in the world therefore the young children should be well guarded from demons 402 Rabbi Ech quoted the verse and Elohim set them in the firmament of heaven when all of them are there when the sun and the moon are both in the firmament of heaven which is by they rejoice with each other the moon and diminishes its light before the sun from then onward all the light that the sun's eir and receives is for the purpose of shining on the feminine principle and not on himself as it is written to give light upon the earth 403 Rabbi Yitzhak said it is written moreover the light of the moon shall be as the light of the sun and the Light of the sun shall be sevenfold as the light of seven days. Yeshayah 3026. He asked, What are these seven days? He answered, These are the seven days of creation, namely Jesus, Burit, Tiferet, Netzach, Hadyazit, and Malchut of Zeir and in the future the sun and the moon shall shine equally. Rabbi Yehuda said, The light of the seven days alludes to the seven days of the consecration, Hemelim of the tabernacle, namely Jesus, Burit, Tiferet, Netzach, Hadyazit, and Malchut of the feminine. Principle after becoming full, Hemelim of light in the future, 404. The Sfirat of the feminine principle definitely represent the days of consecration at that time when the world will be sweetened and restored to its perfection. The light of the moon will not be defective because of the evil serpent of whom it is written, and the whisperer separates close friends. Mishli 1628 as the serpent separates Zeir and from his feminine principle for this reason, her Sfirat are called by the name. Days of consecration or filling he asked when shall this be in other words when will the feminine principle be completed without any limitation he answered this shall be in the time about which it is written he will swallow up death forever Yeshayah 258 when the other side and death will be annulled then it is written on that day Hashem shall be one and his name one Zechariah 149 42 let the water swarm abundantly the Zohar explores the concept of angels explaining how they enter and influence this world some angels appear in human form while others remain as unseen spiritual entities their function is to assist us in our spiritual growth we arouse and draw positive angels into our lives through the influence of the letters composing the section 405 let the water swarm abundantly with moving creatures that have life Bereshit 120 Rabbi Lazar said these are the lower waters that produce living creatures head nefesh which correspond to those created by the upper waters in other words, just as the upper waters bind to bring forth the souls of male and female, so the lower waters of male and female bring forth the souls of the righteous. These upper waters bring forth supernal souls, male and female, and these lower waters bring forth souls of the lower beings, the souls of the righteous. Rabbi Shia said the upper brought forth the moving creatures, let nefesh that have life. What is this? This is the nefesh of the first man, as it is written, and man became a living. Soul have nefesh. Bereshit 27, 406, and let birds fly above the earth. Bereshit 120 refers to the emissaries from above the angels who appear before human beings in the image of human beings. This is understood from the phrase fly above the earth, which means that their shape is similar to that of the people of earth. There are other angels who appear in spirit only according to an awareness that human beings have acquired. Thus, the phrase above the earth indicates that these emissaries. Are conceived in the image of man, they are described as birds fly above the earth. Since the earth is the secret of Malchut 407, because of that, their ability to change their form into the image of man, it is not written of them after its kind as it is of the other
Section is couched in metaphor and is highly esoteric. When the Messiah comes, the righteous will merit the meal of the Leviathan. The Leviathan symbolizes the revelation of a great light. Reading this section helps us to merit the opportunity to be included in that spiritual feast. 408 and Elohim created the great crocodiles. Bear sheet 121 refers to the Leviathan and its mate. The verse continues, and every living creature had nefesh that creeps, which refers to the nefesh of that living creature that moves to all four corners of the world. He asked, Who is this living creature who creeps? He replied, It is Lilith 409. The next phrase, which the waters brought forth abundantly after their kind, means as the waters make them grow, the Leviathan and its mate, because the waters are unfrozen and flow in all directions when the southern wind comes and the ships of the seas can now pass as it is written. There go the ships, there is that Leviathan whom you have made to play therein. Tehillim 10,426, 410, the verse then reads, And every winged bird after its kind, as it is written about those angels, for a bird of the sky shall carry the sound, and a winged beast shall betray the matter. Kehillah 1020, these are the aspects of the angels that come from Zeir Enpin, who is called Sound. Rabbi Yussi said they all have six wings, and they never change, they have six wings, because they come from Zeir Enpin, who has six fire and they never change their image, so they can enter the body. Thus it is written after its kind, he asked, What is the meaning of after its kind? He answered, After its kind, from above, this is why they do not change and enter bodies, they fly around and roam over the world with six flaps of their wings, which corresponds to the six fire of Zeir Enpin, they carry their observations of human behavior up to the celestial court, and it is thus written, Do not curse the king, no, not even in your thought of it, referring to the king of the universe, because the bird of the sky, dash, namely the angels, shall carry the voice up to the heavens. 411 Rabbi Shizkiah said it is written that creeps, although it should have been written that swarm, just as it is written, let the waters swarm. He said this resembles the expression night creeps, that is, it gets dark so during the night which is malchute, all the beasts of the forest do creep forth. Tehillim 10,420, in other words, all the forces of darkness which are the beasts of the forest, dash, are dominant at night. They govern during the time when the night which is the feminine principle rules, because malchute includes all that exists under her, even the clip the angels chant without rest during the three shifts of the night, as it is written, you that make mention of Hashem take no rest. Yeshayah 62644, let us make man. Rabbi Shimon offers a discourse concerning the creation of man when the Creator was planning to make man the heavens and earth trembled and shook for the new man. Would control all reality prior to the appearance of man. They knew all the worlds were securely in the hands of God, but with man's creation, the reins were literally handed over in the process of forming man. The four corners of the earth, north, south, east, and west, gave a part of themselves to man, imbuing him with their essence. Man would now truly control the world, for the world is man. The segment of the Zohar awakens a sense of responsibility within us to care for the world, our neighbors, and the entire cosmos. 412 Rabbi Shimon stood up and said, I observed that when the Holy One blessed be, he planned to create man. The upper and lower worlds trembled. Why? Because they all depend on his actions for good or for evil. Therefore, the creation of man concerned them greatly, and they were afraid that he might send the sixth day rose up through its grades until it reached the supernova and illuminated the beginning of all lights. 413 It opened the gate of the east from which the light emerged to shine throughout the world and the south which is the secret of the right and she said revealed the force of the illumination it had inherited at the head that is Israel, Saba and Tabuna and was strengthened by the east the east which is Zeir and overtook the north and IT revealed in itself the illumination of the left that it drew from Israel, Saba and Tabuna the north was thus aroused expanded within Zeir and and called to the west which is the feminine principle of Zeir. And then with much force to come closer and join it then the west which is the feminine principle rose up and united with the north afterward the south which I asked the right and she said held onto the west the feminine principle and the south and the north became the fences that surrounded the garden and the east Zeir and made it with the west the feminine principle and the west rejoiced and asked everybody and said let us make man in our image after our likeness let him comprise the four winds. South, north, east, and west, above and below, namely the six extremities, then the east, Zeir, and cleaved to the west, the feminine principle, and produced the soul of Adam. This is what we have learned. The first man came out from the soil of the temple, namely from the feminine principle of Zeir, and which is called the temple. 414. Furthermore, the verse, let us make man, can be explained as follows. The Holy One, blessed be he uttered that I asked, down to the lower beings that come from it. Aspect of the upper beings, the secret of the name that is numerically equal to Adam. This is a reference to the name that adds up to 45, as does Adam. Adam comes from the secret of the upper world, comprising the celestial right and left columns, which were blocked before the reconciling of the third column, and Adam is the secret of the letters. He includes the central column, which is an aspect of the lower beings that are called letters. The upper ones are the cantillation marks and dots, vowels, and the lower ones are letters, so Adam accordingly includes within himself all that is above and all that is below. The name Adam consists of three letters. The Aleph of Adam alludes to the supernal world whence the right column originates. The closed final MEM is the letter that appears in the phrase of the increased heavenly marked of Israel. Mishael 96, although it appears in the middle of the word, it is written traditionally as final MEM in its closed form from it. The left column is extended. The lower dollar is concealed in the west, and this is the entire Mokin of above and below. After this had been established above in Zeir and his feminine principle, it was established below as well in Adam himself. 415 These letters Aleph Dalat MEM descended and entered the soul of Adam altogether as one that is according to the secret of the reconciling of the central column. They were included one within the other. Thus Adam was comprised of both male and female. The female clung to his. Sighed until sleep fell upon him and he lay in the terrestrial temple 416 the Holy One blessed be he saw him through meaning that he separated the female from the male and prepared her just like a bride is prepared and he brought her to him as it is written and he took one of his sides and closed up the flesh in its place Verse 221 and he took one means precisely one Adam had two ribs and he took only one of them he continues I have learned from the books of the ancient sages that the rib that was not taken symbolized Lilith who was with him and who conceived from him as she was the first wife of Adam and was taken away from him 417 Lilith was not a help to match him as it is written but for the man there was not found a help to match him but 18 what does this mean it means she was an evil clipper and he could not trust her she stayed with him until that time of which it is written it is not good that the man should be alone I will make him a help to match him Ibn for then she was taken away from him come and behold Adam was the last being to be created therefore he had to come into the world as a complete being this is why Lilith had to be taken away from him and Shabbat given to him instead 45 for Hashem Elohim had not caused it to rain Rabbi Shimon explains that our world was not created complete for it would be man's merit and responsibility to perfect creation through his actions and spiritual development the word rain is a metaphor for the light of the creator when the Torah says God had not caused it to rain this indicates man's capacity and accountability for generating light Rabbi Shimon adds that for man to accomplish this task he must first complete himself by finding and bonding with his soulmate in marriage the power to find our soulmates and to strengthen and complete our vessel radiates from the words of this text 418 Rabbi Shimon said it is written and no plant of the field was yet in the earth and no herb of it Field had yet grown for Hashem Elohim had not caused it to rain upon the earth. Verse 25 and no plant of the field refers to big trees but just after they are planted when they are still small this is why the verse states and no plant of the field was yet 419 come and behold that Adam and Shabbat were created side by side he asked why were they not created face to face he answered because it is written Hashem Elohim had not caused it to rain that is the mating of male and female was not yet properly established so when Adam and Shabbat were completed down below and turned face to face the same then happened above 420 how do we know this this is learned from the tabernacle as it is written the tabernacle was erected Shema 4017 this means that another tabernacle was erected together with the tabernacle above which is the feminine principle and the tabernacle above was erected only after the tabernacle below was completed thus when it was erected below when Adam and Shabbat came face to face it was erected above male and female also came face to face since this was not completed above
Prepared called Lilithi explained but same it means the support of male and female above after they were again face to face because only then are male and female supported by one another in other words they give strength to each other indeed it is written they stand fast forever and ever done in truth and uprightness Tehillim 1118 they stand fast means that the male and female stand together face to face as 1422 the verse for Hashem Elohim had not caused it to rain upon the earth means that male and female were not yet face to face supporting each other in other words male and female while face to face support Adam and Shabbat in order that they too can face each other the lower world refers to Adam and Shabbat who were the children of this world when it was established when Adam and Shabbat turned face to face and achieved completion there was support above as male and female also turned face to face before this the action below the positioning of Adam and Shabbat face to face was incomplete because Hashem Elohim had not caused it to rain upon the earth and one depends on the other 423 it is then written but there went up a mist from the earth Ereshit 26 which is the perfection below of Adam before male and female were turned face to face the verse continues and watered the whole face of the ground it meaning that the male and female were turned face to face and zeir and watered Malchud which is called ground there went up a mist from it Earth alludes to the passion of the female that ascends toward the male. The passion of the female rises up to the male for raising female waters is considered to be the desire of the female for the male for everything lower and upper is considered male and female. The lower is always considered female in relation to that which is higher. Raising female waters is equated with desire because it only ascends by force of desire. Another explanation of the verse, but there went up a mist from it. Earth is found in the meaning of the verse and Hashem Elohim had not caused it to rain. What is the reason that he had not caused it to rain? Which means that male and female were not face to face. The reason is that the forming of a mist from the earth had not yet been completed. This means that man had not yet elevated female waters to male and female without female waters from man. The mokin of face to face of male and female would not emerge. Therefore, lower earth Adam and Shabbat. Aroused the actions of the upper world of male and female 424 come and behold that mist rises at first from the earth and the cloud is aroused and they are both united similarly the smoke of the sacrifice which is burnt upon the altar is aroused below and rises up as female waters from below upwards by male and female so it brings perfection above and they become united and reach completion in the same manner it occurs above among the supernal beings awakening always moves from the lower to the higher and eventually they all reach perfection unless the congregation of Israel namely the feminine principle has begun the act of arousing then the passion above of Zeir and would not have been aroused towards her so through the passion aroused below the upper reach completion 425 Rabbi Abba asked why is it written the tree of life also in the midst of the garden and the tree of knowledge of good and evil Beersheet 29 as the tree of knowledge is not in the midst of it garden the tree of life as we have already learned extends for a journey of 500 years and all the waters of creation part underneath it the tree of life is exactly in the middle of the garden it is the central column and receives all the waters of creation which separate underneath it 426 why do all the waters of creation separate underneath it the river that flows out of eden namely bina rests on the garden and enters into it namely the mokin of the tree of life that shines on it garden are from the river which is bina from there from bina the waters divide and flow in many directions this garden received all three aspects of the mokin afterward they flow from it and are separated into many streams below as it is written they give drink to every beast of the field tell 10411 this means that each of the lower beings receives nourishment from its corresponding aspect in the mokin of the feminine principle he elaborated further by saying just as the mokin come from the supernal world, namely Bina and Bina waters, the supernal mountains of pure balsam, which are Chesed, Vira, and Tiferet of Bina. So when the Mokin later reach the tree of life, which is Zeir and Bina, they also separate in all directions according to their individual path, right, left, and central. Thus they also part in the garden, which receives from the tree of life 427, and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Beersheet 29 means that it located in the middle between good, which is the right, and evil, which is the left. He asked, Why is it called so as the tree is not in the middle, but rather more toward the left than the right? He explained, What is the tree of knowledge of good and of evil? Why is it called thus? Because it draws from both the right and from the left sides and knows them, clings to them as one who sucks the sweet and the bitter as a result of sucking from and knowing both sides that is cleaving to them and residing among them, it is called good and evil. 428 The plants, namely the Sphirot of Malchud, rest on the two points of good and evil because these two points are the aspect of Yezid of the feminine principle which lies underneath all the Sphirot and other supernal plants referring to Chesed, Bure, Typhur, and Netzach, and Yezid of Zeir and Ben are attached to it. These are called the Cedars of Lebanon. Tehillim 10416 He asked, What are these Cedars of Lebanon? He replied, These are the six supernal days, the six days of creation as we have already stated. It is written, The Cedars of Lebanon, which he has planted, the scriptures describe them as plants because they are indeed plants that survived after they were uprooted from their place and planted in a different one. 429 From here on, Samak appears in the section. He asked, What is this reference to Samak? He answered, This is the Samak that appears in the phrase and closed up have ice or spelled with the Samak the flesh in its place. Bearsheet 221 This means that Chabu became it. Aspect of Samak lit a support from here on at first Chabba was attached to his side and they were side by side then the Holy One blessed be he tore them apart as it is written and he took one of his sides and planted them in a different place Adam and Chabba became facing one another this is how their existence was completed 430 Rabbi Abba asked why do we conclude that Adam and Chabba were called plants because it is written the branch of my planting the work of my hands that I may be glorified Yeshaya 6021 it is indeed the work of my hands that alludes to Adam and Chabba who of all the creatures were the work of the Holy One blessed be he alone the verse describes them as the branch of my planting hence they are described as the planting it is written though in the day of your planting you make it grow Yeshaya 1711 which means that on that same day they were planted in the world they since so the verse actually speaks of Adam and Chabba and describes them as Plants 431 We have learned that the plants that were male and female were as tiny as the antennae of grasshoppers their light was feeble and they did not shine as soon as they were planted in a different place and were improved their lights became stronger and they were called the cedars of Lebanon similarly Adam and Shabbat did not increase their light or emit a good odor before they were planted in a different place namely in Zeir and Ben and his feminine principle but when they were uprooted from their place and planted again on high in male and female their existence was firmly established 46 and Hashem Elohim commanded Adam God commands Adam not to eat from the tree of knowledge of good and evil for if he does so Adam will surely die upon eating from the tree of knowledge Adam brought the force of death into existence a profound secret is revealed in this passage God did not command Adam not to eat from the tree of knowledge moreover God did not punish Adam for Disregarding his warning God was merely revealing the universal laws at work within the various spiritual worlds tree of knowledge is a realm of chaos death and decay the significance of this passage can be likened to a father telling his son about the danger of placing his finger in the fire if the child proceeds to do it anyway it is incorrect to say that the father punished the child in awareness of the laws of cause and effect are awakened within us when we browse and learn the secrets of this passage 432 and Hashem Elohim commanded Bereshit 216 we have learned that commanded is idolatry therefore every place the word command is written is an allusion to the prohibition of idolatry thus the verse relates to the seven precepts that were given to Adam commanded applies to idolatry Hashem to blasphemy Elohim to the judges who should strive to maintain justice Adam to the prohibition against shedding another's blood saying to the prohibition of incest of every Tree of the garden to thievery and you may freely eat to the eating of flesh from a living animal this explanation is accepted although it may be added that of every tree of the garden you may freely eat means that he permitted him to eat of all including the tree of knowledge but he was supposed to eat of them together meaning that the tree of knowledge had to be in harmony with the other trees in the garden of Eden 433 we know that Abraham ate from the tree of knowledge did it's Hakan Yaakov and all the prophets nevertheless they remained alive why because this tree the tree of knowledge is the tree of death whoever ate of it by itself died because he has taken the potion of death thus it is written for in the day that you eat of it you shall sur
The fruit of the tree bear sheet 33 refers to the woman namely the feminine principle of Zeir and it is written you shall not eat of it because of the verse her feet go down to death her steps take hold of shol michle 55 this means that if he draws sustenance from the female when she is unaccompanied by her husband the feet of the female descend to the clipot where death is but we should not conclude that the tree of knowledge is the other side and is not the feminine principle of holiness because there is fruit in the feminine principle of Zeir and therefore it is written but of the fruit of the tree in the other side there is no fruit because another L is sterile and produces no fruit it is written of it for in the day that you eat thereof you shall surely die bear sheet 217 it is called the tree of death even though she is a female of holiness of whom it is written her feet go down to death nevertheless in herself she is full of life and holiness 436 Rabbi Yossi said this tree that we have mentioned referring to the tree of knowledge was watered from above grew and was happy as it is written and a river went out of Eden to water the garden of Eden. The garden is the feminine principle of Zeir Anpin and the river namely Bun enters the feminine principle and waters her bestows under the mokin of greatness and they all become as one this means that because of these mokin Zeir Anpin and his feminine principle are united as one because from their downward below the feminine principle of Zeir Anpin everything is then separated from there they would not have been able to receive these mokin as it is written and from hence it was parted 47 now the serpent was craftier Rabbi Yitzhak and Rabbi Yehuda came to their master and teacher Rabbi Shimon with an intriguing disagreement the two students were at odds concerning the underlying cause of Eve's sin and eating from the tree of knowledge Rabbi Yitzhak felt it was the evil. Inclination implanted in Eve that caused her to succumb to temptation, but Rabbi Yehuda believed it was the snake's cunning that beguiled her into eating from the tree. Rabbi Shimon said that both of his students were correct. The Zohar's explanation is as follows: the negative part of our intelligence, the part that motivates us to sin, is the same negative intelligence that serves as our prosecutor in the heavenly court, and the same evil intelligence executes any judgments decreed against us. As a final irony, this intelligence is also none other than the angel of death who ultimately consumes us after years of living out this evil cycle of sin. If only we could recognize the voice inside us that says, "Do it," even when we know we shouldn't, we would shudder in terror at the prospect of succumbing to these negative urges. The Zohar then discusses the verse, and the eyes of the Adam and Eve both were open. Rabbi Shimon explains that at the moment Adam and Eve saw evil, they fell into. That reality the mystery of this explanation concerns the power of consciousness and the nature of reality and illusion if we look for evil in others our consciousness literally creates that reality the Zohar is telling us that evil is an illusion but we give it reality when we see it and believe it for this reason alone we should turn all our efforts toward finding the good in people instead of always looking for what's wrong this portion of the Zohar awakens us to these spiritual truths by helping us to distinguish between the reality of good and the self-confirming nature of evil 437 now the serpent was craftier bear 31 Rabbi Yitzhak said the serpent is the evil inclination which incites one to sin Rabbi Yehuda said it is a real serpent they approached Rabbi Shimon who said both interpretations are correct it was a male and he was seen riding on the serpent the image of the serpent is Satan namely the evil inclination that incites humans to sin and then ascends to Demand punishment above they are both the same you can say that the serpent is the evil inclination and is a real serpent 438 we have learned that Samael the angel descended from heaven riding on the serpent at that time all the creatures saw his image and fled from him and Samael and the serpent approached the woman with words and brought death upon the world so Samael cleverly brought curses upon the world meaning that he incited them to sin with cunning and brought damage to the first tree namely the first man which the holy one blessed be he created in the world 439 the sin rested with Samael who is described as stealing the blessings and the mokin from Adam by cunningly inciting Adam to sin and eat of the tree of knowledge until another holy tree appeared who is Yaakov and took back the blessings from Samael to prevent Samael who is the minister of ESAB from being blessed above and Esau from being blessed below Yaakov resembled Adam and his beauty was like that of Adam so just as Samael prevented the blessings from reaching the first tree who is Adam so Yaakov who is a tree that resembled Adam prevented the blessings from reaching Samael above and Esab below everything Yaakov took belonged to him referring to everything Samael robbed from Adam therefore it is written and there wrestled a man with him Bershi 3225 alluding to Samael 440 now the serpent was crafty or the serpent is the evil inclination the angel of death as a result it serpent brought death upon the whole world by tempting Shabbat to sin in the tree of knowledge this is the secret of the verse the end of all flesh is come before me Bershi 613 which alludes to the angel of death which puts an end to all flesh by taking the soul away from all the flesh it is thus called the end of all flesh 441 and he said to the woman is a true have af Bershi 31 Rabbi Yossi said the serpent started with wrath have af when it said I as a true have af as Elohim said thus he brought wrath af and anger upon the world he said to the woman by this tree the holy one blessed be he created the world because the world was created by the female therefore eat of it and you shall be as elohim knowing good and evil of it five which means that you shall also be able to create worlds with the feminine principle because he namely zeir and is indeed elohim is named the female is the tree of knowledge of good and evil therefore if you eat from the tree of knowledge which is his name if you cleave to the female and draw upon her abundance you shall be as elohim knowing you shall be as zeir and and will be able to create worlds as he does 442 rabbi yehuda said the serpent did not say this because had he said by this tree the holy one blessed be he created the world it would have been good for this tree is like an axe in the hand of he who used with it but the serpent did not say so instead he said that from this tree the holy one Blessed be he ate, meaning that Zeir Anpin received abundance from the feminine principle and then created the world and every craftsman hates his fellow craftsman so eat from it and you shall also create worlds this is a complete lie because the feminine principle receives everything from Zeir Anpin this is why he said for Elohim knows that in the day you eat of it a bit five which means that because he knows that you shall be as Elohim and be able to create worlds as he does he commanded you not to eat from it 443 Rabbi Yitzhak said all his words were lies even what he said at first was a lie as it is written is it true have af as Elohim said you shall not eat of every tree of the garden this was not so because it is also written of every tree of the garden you may freely eat so he was permitted to eat of them all 444 Rabbi Yossi said we have learned that the holy one blessed be he commanded him against idolatry as it is written and commanded in Hashem against Blaspheming the name in Elohim for keeping laws Adam the prohibition against shedding blood and in saying against incest he asked how many people were there in the world that he had to warn him against doing so he replied all seven precepts were definitely related only to this tree to the tree of knowledge because all these precepts are connected to IT 445 because all these precepts are connected to it whoever takes the tree of knowledge namely the feminine principle on its own end. Without her husband Zeir Anpin causes a separation between Zeir Anpin and his feminine principle thus he takes her down to bestow plenty to the masses below in the worlds of Bria Yitzra and Asiyah of separation where the clipot are and they cleave to the tree of knowledge so he takes upon himself the sins of idolatry bloodshed and incest he is guilty of idolatry because he drew the abundance of the tree of knowledge down to those ministers in doing so he worshipped them which is idolatry he Committed bloodshed because the powers of shedding blood are related to this tree as it is the side of Bureau which is the left side Samael who is the minister of ESAB is appointed over this he is guilty of incest because the tree of knowledge is a woman and she is called the wife namely the feminine principle of Zeir and a man is not permitted to invite a wife on her own she must be accompanied by her husband so there can be no suspicion of adultery and the sin of the tree of knowledge is that he invited the female alone without her husband because of this all seven precepts relate to this tree and because Adam ate from it he transgressed them all and they all cleave to him 446 Rabbi Yehuda said this issue referring to prohibition of the tree of knowledge is indeed true because nobody is allowed to enjoy alone the company of a married woman unless her husband is with her so what did that evil one namely Samael do he said behold I have touched this tree yet I have not died. You too can come closer and touch it
Seeing brought the desire upon her, the seeing after the eating was greater than the size of the tree, and of this it is written, and the eyes were opened, therefore it is written, and when the woman saw stressing the word woman to indicate that the seeing was the light of the aspect of the feminine principle 448, and when the woman saw that the tree was good, she saw yet did not see that the tree was good, she saw that the tree was good, but could not decide it is then written, she took of the fruit thereof and not she took of it why because her mind was not set that the tree was good by taking of its fruit and not from the tree itself she became attached to the place of death brought death upon the world and separated life from death and the sin caused a separation between the wife the feminine principle and her husband zeir and because the voice zeir and is never separated from the utterance the feminine principle whoever separates the voice from the utterance namely zeir and from his feminine principle becomes dumb and loses the ability to speak as a result of losing the ability to speak he is given to the dust this is why it is written and to dust shall you return bear she 319 449 rabbi shimon said it is written i was done with silence i held my peace even from good had no comfort and my pain was stirred up tell 393 i was done with silence was expressed by the congregation of israel which is the feminine principle of zeir and the time of the exile why because the voice zeir and conducts the utterance the female since she is in exile the voice is separated from it and the utterance the female is not heard because of this the female said i was done with silence why was she dumb because i held my peace even from good which is zeir and that is called good and is the voice therefore the voice does not accompany it the children of israel then said praise waits for you in silence elohim Tehillim 652 what does in silence mean this is when the praise of david alluding to the feminine principle which is called praise during greatness is silent during the exile and becomes dumb without a voice rabbi it's asked what is the meaning of for you in the verse praise waits for you he answered israel cry out to zeir and saying it is because of you that she is dumb and in silence since the voice namely zeir and has abandoned her 450 she took of its fruit she 36 we have learned that Chabba pressed grapes and gave them to Adam and by their eating they brought death upon the whole world for death resides within this tree of knowledge which is the tree that rules at night namely the feminine principle this is the secret of the verse and the lesser light to rule the night bear she 116 of her it is also written she rises also while it is yet night Mishlei 3115 when she rules at night all human beings taste death because sleep is 160th part of death but the faithful make haste to put their nefesh in your hands as a deposit before they fall asleep they recite the verse into your hands I commit my spirit you have redeemed me Hashem El of truth Tehillim 316 because they the nefesh are entrusted to the hands of the feminine principle during the time when death governs they are not hurt and return to their places to their bodies in the morning this is why it is written and your faithfulness every night Tehillim 923 451 and the eyes of them both were Open Bereshi 37 Rabbi Shia said that they were now open to know the evils of the world which they were not aware of up to then as a result of opening their eyes to evil they learned that they were naked once they knew and their eyes opened they realized their nakedness since they lost the sublime luster that enveloped them and was gone from them and they were left naked of it 452 the phrase and they sewed fig leaves together it means that they cleaved to the shadows of that tree from which they ate to cover themselves as the so-called leaves of the tree give shade to those underneath them the verse continues and made themselves loincloths Rabbi Yossi said because they acquired knowledge of this world and became attached to it they saw that this world was governed by these leaves of the tree thus they made themselves a stronghold to strengthen themselves with these leaves in this world they became acquainted with all sorts of sorcery and wanted to protect themselves with weapons made from the leaves of the tree 453 Rabbi Yehuda said then the three referring to the serpent Adam and Shab entered to be judged and were sentenced thus the lower world was cursed it did not return to its previous state due to the defilement of the serpent until the children of Israel stood before Mount Sinai and only then did the defilement cease 454 after the sin the Holy One blessed be he clothed them in garments comfortable to the skin but not the nefesh is it is written coats of skin had or spelled I in Resh Bereshi 321 before they had coats of light had or spelled Allah fresh which served the beings above the supernal angels used to come to Adam and enjoy themselves with that light as it is written yet you have made him a little lower than the angels and have crowned him with glory and honor Tehillim 86 but now that they have sinned they were given coats of skin comfortable to the skin namely the body and not the nefesh 455 after this day gave birth to the first son he was the son of the serpent's defilement because two had intercourse with Chab Adam and the serpent and she conceived from both and gave birth to two kind and heavily resembled his own father and their spirits were separated one to the side of impurity and one to the side of holiness each was in the appearance of his own aspect the aspect from which he had come 456 from the side of kind came all the evil species spirits demons and sorcerers from the side of Hebel came something more merciful but still not perfect it is like good one mixed with bad so the world was not fully established by Hebel this was left to shit the ancestor of all the righteous generations in the world from whom the generations of the world issued but from kind issued all the ruthless people all the sinners and wicked people of the world 457 Rabbi Lazar said when kind sinned he was in fear because he saw all sorts of armed hosts coming to kill him when he Repented, he said, Behold, you have driven me out this day from the face of the earth, and from your face I shall be hid, and it shall come to pass that anyone that finds me shall slay me. Bereshi 414. What is the meaning of from your face I shall I be hid? It means that he shall be hidden and banned from his own building because Cain was a farmer, and because he was driven off the face of the earth, his entire establishment was destroyed, and nothing remained for him in the world. Rabbi Abba said, This is as is written, nor had he hid his face from him. Tehillim 2225 and, and Moshe hid his face. Shema 36. This is why Cain said, From your face I shall be hid, as if to say that I will be hidden from your face and not be protected. Therefore, anyone who finds me shall slay me. 48. And Hashem set a mark upon Cain. God inscribed the Hebrew letter of onto the forehead of Cain. The letter of connects to the Sfirat of Yezid, which signifies the covenant between God and the Israelites when Cain. Sincerely repented for the murder of his brother Abel, the letter vote protected him from the murderous hands of people which were aroused against him by the spiritual law of cause and effect provided we fully repent meditating upon the letter vote offers us protection from any decrees of judgment 458 and Hashem set a mark upon Cain lest anyone finding him should smite him. Bereshi 415 this is one of the 22 letters of the Torah which is the letter vote that he placed upon him for his protection. The letter vote is related to Yezid which is related to the sign of the covenant this he merited when he repented and agreed to keep the covenant. Rabbi Yehuda asked why is it written and it came to pass when they were in the field he answered a field signifies a woman thus because of a woman he rose and killed Hebel for it is from the side of woman who is the left side that he inherited his murderous tendency which is the aspect of Samael that brought death to the whole world when he seduced Adam and Shabbat with the tree of knowledge. Similarly, Cain was jealous of Hebel because of his wife as Hebel had a second wife. Rabbi she raised an objection before Rabbi Yehuda. He said the reason Cain killed Hebel was as it is written that Cain was very angry and his face fell. But five, it was because his offering was not accepted and not because of a woman. Rabbi Yehuda answered that Cain was angry that his offering was not accepted and all the reasons were before him when he killed Hebel, including jealousy because of the extra woman. 49 sin crouches at the door. A verse in the Torah states that negativity and evil forces hover by doorways, openings, and beginnings of all kinds. This idea is related to the secret and power of a seed. If one plants a defective apple seed, it will yield a defective apple tree. Doorways and beginnings represent the seed level. The door to the home is the seed of the entire house. Negative forces attack at the seed level so as to influence. All the future stages and developments they cling to all entrance ways to infect the seed with negativity. The mezuzah or doorpost ornament not only cancels this negative force but also transforms negative energy into positive energy. The mezuzah contains a piece of parchment bearing the Hebrew letters Shindalat and Yud. This is a powerful name of God that brings us protection. These passages bring protection to all the starts or beginnings in our lives including marriage, business, ventures or any other area of activity. 459 Rabbi Yehuda continued with the next verse
Sin crouches at that gate of Malchut and this is the angel of death who exacts payment from you 461 come and behold Adam was born on the day of Rosh Hashanah New Year Rosh Hashanah is the secret of the upper and lower referring to male and female who are called the supernal man and the lower man there is a Rosh Hashanah above which is Zeir and his feminine principle when they are in a state of judgment and there is a Rosh Hashanah below in the frame of time which is the sixth day of creation the day when lower man was created this teaches us that man was created by the secret of judgment for he was created on lower Rosh Hashanah this is connected to the aspect of above upper Rosh Hashanah which is Zeir and his feminine principle in a state of judgment on Rosh Hashanah the barren women are visited how do we know this happens on Rosh Hashanah because it is written and Hashem visited Sarah Bereshit 211 the reference to the term and Bob Hashem is precise to indicate. That it was on Rosh Hashanah that she was visited whenever the scripture uses the term and Bob Hashem IT alludes to Zeir Anpin and his courthouse which indicates judgment which is the upper Rosh Hashanah because Adam was born on Rosh Hashanah he was born under the influence of judgment that then prevailed in the world thus it is precisely so that sin crouches at the door alluding to the angel of death to exact payment from you and the verse and to you shall be his desire bear she 47 of the angel of death to punish you until he destroys you 462 yet you may rule over him if it is a hidden reference to the verse and you do preserve them all Nechmai 96 which alludes to Malchut called you who is referred to here as giving life to all even the Klippot consequently it is said that the Holy One blessed be he does not rule meaning that his control is not evident except when all the wicked people are destroyed thus when the angel of death has destroyed them the Holy One. Blessed be he will control him and prevent him from causing harm to the world. This is as is written, yet you dash which I as Malchut may rule over him. This means that Malchut will control the angel of death after he has administered judgment to the wicked and will no longer allow him to damage the world or its inhabitants. Hence the term you is precise because it is the name of Malchut 463. Rabbi Yitzhak said the government is joined together in debate to judge them and execute justice. This explains the phrase, yet you may rule over him, which indicates that Malchut reveals her control through the agency of the angel of death because he is the one who punishes the transgressors. Rabbi Yehuda said, yet you may rule over him through repentance. If one repents, then he rules over the angel of death and the evil inclination. 50 Azza and Azal Azza and Azal are the two angels who argue with God against the creation of man. These negative angels were subsequently banished to the Mountains of darkness Bilam a powerful and evil sorcerer who is spoken of in the Torah lived during the time of Moses Bilam would travel to these mountains to draw all of his strength from the negative forces dwelling there the Zohar offers us protection against any negative people or forces that might try to harm us 464 Rabbi Yossi said that when Cain's descendants walked the earth they smoothed the face of the land and resembled both the celestial angels above and the humans below. This is because Cain descended both from the filth of Samael who made it with Shabbat and was an angel and from the seeds of Adam Rabbi Yitzhak said when Azah and Azal fell from the place of their sanctity above they saw the daughters of men sinned with them and begot children these were the Nephilim about whom it is written there were Nephilim on the earth Bear sheet 64 465 Rabbi Yossi said that the descendants of Cain were the sons of the Elohim because when Samael injected his filth into Chabashi conceived and gave birth to Cain consequently his appearance was not similar to that of the rest of humanity for he was conceived through an angel all those who descended from Cain were called the sons of the Elohim because their appearance was that of angels called Elohim 466 Rabbi Yehuda said even those Nephilim who are the children of Azazel and Nam are called the sons of the Elohim the words the same were mighty men but indicate that only they were the mighty men and not the original Nephilim there were only 60 of them by supernal reckoning as compared with the six directions namely Chesed, Biru, Typhra, Net, Sachat, and Yezid of Zeir and we can draw analogy from the verses here in the scripture it is written the same were mighty men and there in relation to King Solomon who is Zeir and it is written 60 valiant men are about it Sure Hasherim 37 just as they are 60 there so here they are 60 yet the first ones are drawn from above from six. Sides of Zeir and Rabbi Yossi continued by saying the same were the mighty men of old lit from the world and this is written precisely to differentiate them from the first Nephilim Azah and Azal who originated in the world above the world is the feminine principle of Zeir and and the text teaches us that those mighty men were intended to become a chariot for male and female and thus a part of the female called the world he asked to which name does the text refer when it is written men of renowned lit name Bereshit 64 this is the world we have mentioned which is the feminine principle the phrase men of name is precise it teaches us through an analogy by stating that it is written here men of name and in another place when he blasphemes the name Vayikra 2416 it is written and the son of the Yireelite woman blasphemed the name of it 11 just as name implies the feminine principle in the previous verse so it implies the feminine principle in this verse 467 Rabbi Shia said that they were from a real world because they were intended to be a chariot of the female as Rabbi Yosi has already said and from the lower world the Holy One blessed be he took them when they fell to this world they were refined and the refined particles were linked together to become a chariot of the female on the other hand the original Nephilim had nothing of this world because they were heavenly angels thus it was written remember Hashem your tender mercies and your truth Shesedim for they have been from of old lit from the world Tehillim 256 they are assuredly from the world because the Holy One blessed be he took them from this lower world namely his mercy and Shesedim to become a supernal chariot above these are the early patriarchs mercy is related to Yahikov and Shesedim to Avraham who elevated from the lower world to become a chariot of Zeir and, and his feminine principle hence the saying it is the fathers that are the chariot similarly the same word Mighty men from the world as they have also been elevated from the lower world to unite above with the chariot of Zeir Anpin and his female Rabbi Yitzhak said that the phrase from the world in the passage before us refers to King Solomon's bed which is also the feminine principle but from the aspect of Bura as it is written behold it is his litter that of Solomon sixty valiant men are round about it Rabbi Yitzhak said that the sixty valiant men who surrounded the bed of Solomon are also called the sons of Elohim to Sifta 468 our sages of blessed memory have said that when the Holy One blessed be he created man he created him in the Garden of Eden and commanded him to observe seven commandments when he sent at the tree of knowledge and was driven out of the Garden of Eden those two celestial angels Azza and Azal said to the Holy One blessed be he if it would have been us on earth like man we would have been virtuous the Holy One blessed be he then asked them. Would you be able to overcome the evil inclination that is in control on earth? They said we can the Holy One blessed be he immediately dropped them from heaven to earth and the scripture reads there were Nephilim in the earth Bear sheet 67 and also mighty men as soon as they descended to earth the evil inclination seized them as it is written and they took them wives of all whom they chose of it too they sent and were deposed from their sanctity and of this up to 469 come and behold all the plants which are the Sphirot of Zeir and, and his feminine principle were concealed and impressed with faint marks upon one place the place of Malchut the Holy One blessed be he uprooted them from that place and sent them elsewhere namely Jubano where they flourished and gained their in 51 this is the book of the generations of Adam the Zohar reveals a secret that pertains to a powerful combination of letters encoded into a verse inside the Torah the name of God is a strong tower and the righteous run into it and is safe since doing so can be spiritually harmful we do not pronounce this combination of letters aloud instead we gaze and pass our eyes over the letters Rabbi Abba reveals that Adam was given a book of secrets the secret book was passed down from one generation of sages to another the book was brought to our physical realm by the angel Raziel when Adam left the garden of Eden the book flew away Adam prayed for God to return it and God agreed. Enoch possessed another book of cosmic knowledge which contained the inner secrets of all wisdom the books of Adam and Enoch are the foundation and underlying principles of the wisdom of Kabbalah these passages connect us to the original seed of Kabbalah thereby strengthening our connection to this Zohar and all the blessings we receive from it 470 Rabbi Yes asked what does the verse allude to when it reads this is the book of the generations of Adam on the day
is a book of the generations of Adam certainly refers to the righteous who is Yezid of Zeir and who brings forth generations in the day Elohim created man in the likeness of Elohim after the revelation of the book of the generations of Adam all was completed in the upper and lower worlds and they were both preserved by the same order the phrase male and female he created them is big because the text should have read man and woman he created them this is because one was included within the other namely that the female was included in the male upon their creation this is because they were double faced and he saw them 471 in the Mishnah it is written the name of Hashem is a strong tower the righteous runs into it and is safe Mishlei 1810 the righteous mentioned here is the book of the generations of Adam that runs into that tower he asked what kind of a tower does the verse refer to this is the tower of David namely Malchut which is the name of Hashem is a Strong tower and all refer to it this way because tower is a name of Malchut at the time of her greatness. Migdal tower is derived from the Hebrew word greatness. Gadla here is a hidden secret known only to the faithful as the sequence of names evolving from the verse. The name of Hashem is a strong tower hence this most certainly is the book of generations because Yezid the righteous bring forth offspring by the tower in the diagram we find 12 sequences of three lettered structures. Adding up to the 36 letters of the verse above 472 Rabbi Abba said a book was indeed sent down to Adam through which he discerned and comprehended the supernal wisdom hence the verse refers to it as the book of generations of Adam this book later came into the hands of the sons of Elohim the sages of their generation who were privileged to learn from it and to glean the supernal wisdom they grasped it and comprehended it this book was brought down by the guardian of the secrets who is. The angel Razi line was given to Adam in the Garden of Eden. Three guardian angels went before him and guarded the book so that the external forces would not have access to IT 473. When Adam left the Garden of Eden, he still held to the book. Yet as he stepped out, the book flew away from him. He prayed and cried out to his master, and the book was returned to him as before so that this wisdom would not be forgotten and people would endeavor to attain knowledge of their master. 474. We have also been told that Shadok had a book which originated from the same place as that of the generations of Adam, and this book contains the inner secrets of wisdom. He was taken from this earth to become a heavenly angel, thus it is written, and he was not for Elohim took him. Bear sheet 524. He is a youth, that is, he is always called a youth, as the verse states, train up had Shadok a child in the way he should go. Mishlei 226, indicating that Shadok is a youth because he became ministering. Led to the Shechinah 475, all the supernal secrets were delivered into his hands, and he in turn delivered them to those who merited them. Thus, he performed the mission that the Holy One blessed be. He assigned to him 1,000 keys were delivered into his hands, and he takes 100 blessings every day and creates unifications for his master. The Holy One blessed be. He took him from this world so that he would serve him. Above the text refers to this when it reads, and he was not for Elohim took him 476. Since it was given to him, it is called the Book of Shadok. When the Holy One blessed be, he took him. He showed him all the supernal mysteries, including the mystery of the tree of life with its leaves and branches in the middle of the garden. We find all those secrets in his book. All that Elohim showed him when he took him to heaven. Happy are those of exalted piety to whom the supernal wisdom has been revealed and from whom it will never be forgotten, as it is written. The secret of Hashem is with them that fear him and he will reveal to them his covenant. Tehillim 2514-52 My spirit shall not always strive on account of man. The Zohar speaks about the immortality that was achieved on Mount Sinai during the great revelation of light. The Zohar reveals that Moses never really died. Rabbi Lazar, the son of Rabbi Shimon quotes a verse from the book of Isaiah that discusses the reality of immortality at the end of days and how man will eventually live. Forever the end of days refers to our current period of time. We arouse the force of immortality through the spiritual influence of the words that compose this passage. When we scan these letters with certainty of mind and a trusting heart, we merit the removal of the force of death from our lips. 477 And Hashem said, My spirit shall not always strive on account of man for that he also is flesh. Bear sheet 63 Rabbi Isaiah said at that time before the flood this river which originates and flows. Out of Eden, which Iaspina produced a supernal spirit from the tree of life, this is Zeir and it poured this into the tree, which is a feminine principle, and from it flowed spirits of life into the bodies of people who lived a very long time until their sins reached the supernal world and stood by the door at which sin crouches. The supernal spirit from Bina departed from the tree, which Iaspina, the feminine principle, at the instant when souls soared into people, hence it was written, My spirit dash from Bina will not strive with man forever, live for the world to give my spirit to the world when souls fly from the male and female to people. 478 in the verse 4 that had Bishagam, he also is flesh. Rabbi Lazar claims that Bishagam refers to Moshe because Bishagam has the same numerical value as Moshe who shines on the moon because of that force people can live in this world a long time. The phrase and his days shall be 120 years. Bear sheet 63 alludes to Moshe who lived for 120. Years through him the Torah was given at the time the Torah was given he bestowed life upon people from the tree of life and he left the garden of Eden clothed in that tree of life that is Bina had the children of Israel not sin the situation would have continued they would have received life from the tree of life and would not have had to die thus the text says engraved had Jera upon the tablets Shema 3216 which means freedom had Jera from the angel of death because the tree of life was drawn down and through it comes eternal life 479 hence the text reads for that had Bishagam he also is flesh because Bishagam is flesh namely Moshe who is clothed in the flesh of the body because upon him rests the inflow of eternal life Bishagam who is Moshe is connected to the upper and lower worlds the upper Zeir and is also called Moshe therefore the phrase is specific for that Bishagam he also is flesh it indicates that it refers to Moshe of the lower world who is Clothed in flesh and through whom the giving of the Torah bestows freedom from the angel of death. Hence we learn that Moshe did not die. He was taken from this world to the upper world of Zeir and from where he shines upon the moon which is a feminine principle. Even though it disappears from the world the sun does not die and is one not cancelled. Instead it now shines upon the moon. Similarly Moshe left the lower world and now shines upon the moon in the upper world. 480 Another explanation of the verse for that he also is flesh maintains that when the spirit of life resides within the body of people for a long time the spirit becomes like flesh like the body to be drawn after the pleasures of the body and be involved only with worldly affairs. 481 Rabbi Yitzhak said that all those generations which originated with and came from Shid were pious and righteous. Subsequently as they spread and multiplied they learned earthly skills of destruction with swords and spears that as they lived upon their sword this went on until Noach came he improved the world for them and taught them to cultivate the land when Noach first came they did not sow and reap they lived by their swords and later they depended on agriculture this is what is meant by the verse while the earth remains bare sheet 822 because then the art of sowing and harvesting was practiced 482 Rabbi Lazar said that in the future the Holy One blessed be he will correct the world and transform it spirit of life in people so that they live forever about this it is written for as the days of a tree shall the days of my people be Yeshua 6522 and he will destroy death forever and Hashem Elohim will wipe away tears from off all faces and the insult of his people shall he take away from off all the earth for Hashem has spoken it Yeshua 258 one of seven chambers of the garden of Eden the following sections of the Holy Zohar explore the metaphysical Structure of all reality the Zohar is not just another book that provides information as we scan these Aramaic words and sentences they convey mystical knowledge profound spiritual influence and positive energy into all areas of our lives the Zohar is a life enriching instrument that conveys the very same spiritual light that it describes in its pages the act of looking at and learning from the Zohar allows us to assimilate the energy that is present in each and every letter quite simply the words on these pages bring light to places of darkness there are seven chambers in the Garden of Eden that is seven levels or frequencies of spiritual energy these seven chambers correspond to seven spirit or dimensions though there are ten spirit in all and these comprise all reality they are divided into two groups the upper three Kedar Shachma and Bina and the lower seven Chesed Gavir and Netzach Hadiyazid and Malchut generally the upper three have no real influence or sway over our physical world they are above and beyond the
And he established laws below in Malchut. He established all of this at the same time, meaning that both laws have the same form that of Bina, and he made the lower world Malchut in the likeness of the upper world Bina, and he made one the exact reflection of the other so that they can be elevated and thus united as one. That is why the Holy One blessed be he established the laws of the upper and lower letters of the alphabet with which he created the worlds to come and see that in the same manner the Holy One blessed be he created the world which is to say by including the quality of the mercy of Bina as explained above. He also included in the soul of the first man Adam the same quality of mercy with which the world Malchut was created. Subsequently, he was also able to attain the level of the upper emanations of Bina as well as Malchut as the Zohar explains to us. He opened up the discussion and said they are like man who has transgressed the covenant Hashia 67 because the Holy. One blessed be he crowned Adam with the supernal crowns of the Mokin of the first three Sfirat. He also created him with the six extreme ties of the world, namely with the Mokin of the six lower Sfirat, so that he would be complete in everything. And all the creatures trembled before Adam and feared him, because when he was created, it was in the supernal form. All the creatures looked at that form and were reverent and fearful of him. Three subsequently, the Holy One blessed be he brought Adam into the Garden of Eden to enjoy its supernal delights. He was encircled by holy angels who served him and informed him of the secrets of their master. Come and behold, when the Holy One blessed be he brought Adam into the Garden of Eden, Adam saw and observed all the higher secrets and wisdom, so that he was able to observe and understand the splendors of his master. Adam had access to all that because he was created in the supernal form of Bina. For there are seven sacred chambers and seven levels. Above which are the secrets of supernal faith, namely Bina, and there are seven chambers below in Malchut similar to those above in Bina. Six of these chambers are just as they are above, corresponding to the six Firat of Zeir and Pin, but one chamber corresponding to Bina is hidden and concealed, and all the chambers of Malchut and even the lower six are part of the holy secret, and thus they are in the shape of Bina. This is because each of the chambers has some of the likeness of above and some of the likeness of below, so that it is included in the form of the supernal secret of Bina as well as in the form of the lower secret of Malchut. Adam resides in these chambers five, and after the expulsion of Adam from the Garden of Eden, the Holy One blessed be he prepared the chambers for the souls of the righteous to reward them with the blissful splendors of his divine light, and each one of those chambers was prepared in the semblance of the supernal shape of Bina and the lower shape of Malchut, as we have already explained, section 2, first chamber, Yezid the Zohar explains that in the first chamber the souls of the converts enter and stand to behold the divine splendor three times a day they are illuminated by divine light. Six, the first chamber below was created in the likeness of that which is above, that is the sphere of Yezid within Malchut set in its place below to correspond to Bina. It has already been explained that the law of the Garden of Eden states that all its aspects are exactly the same as those in the divine secret of Bina. Although the aspect of the Malchut of the attribute of judgment is not noticeable there, it is not visible to the eye because the essence of Malchut is stored deep within and thus cannot be seen. The attribute of mercy can be seen but only by the souls of the righteous. Such souls exist in harmony with both the upper and lower laws reaching completion from both Bina and Malchut. They are able to attain it. Essence of Malchut. Furthermore, through Malchut, they are able to see the secret of their master and to enjoy divine bliss. Seven, those who reach Malchut within the chambers are the righteous ones who have not betrayed their master for other gods. They attain Malchut, as is implied by the phrase that says the secret of a virtuous woman is the crown of her husband. Michelet 124. The secret of faith, namely Malchut, is that whoever attains it should cleave to his master always be in awe of him and never stray to the left or to the right. As we have explained, one must not follow other deities which are termed a sinful woman. This is the reason for the verse that they may shield you from a foreign woman from the stranger who flatters with her words. Michelet 75. And no one merits any of this except through Malchut. Hence, the stature of those righteous ones who do merit it is very high, and you should know that the only attainable chambers are the six of Zeir and the seventh is unattainable. The Chambers together with Zeir and Bin are considered the tenth Sfirat. Remember that the first chamber of Yezid also includes Malchut, and the last chamber of Bina also includes the three top Sfirat, Kedar Shachma and Bina. This chamber is fixed in the secret of the divine form, which is Bina, because when the souls of the righteous leave this world, when they depart to their own world, they enter those chambers of the lower garden of Eden, and each one remains there for as long as it is necessary. For the soul to be there, nine in each and every chamber of the lower garden of Eden, there are figures in the supernal form of Bina, and there are figures in the lower form of Malchut. Consequently, even if the soul is not entirely purified of bodily qualities, it can enter and be there in the shape of Malchut, which is connected with the physical nature. The soul, which is the aspect of Bina, can also enter and, as explained, be connected to Bina, and therein in the garden of Eden of below the soul. Is clothed with garments similar to those worn in the physical world and it enjoys all the time it needs there. It enjoys the bliss of divine light in order to be entirely cleansed of its old physical nature until such a time as it can be elevated to its divine home. This means that until all the imprints of the physical body that were attached to the soul in this world dissipated cannot be elevated to its place in the supernal garden of Eden as it needs to be for each soul is from Bina and must return to its source which is the upper garden of Eden and with the new form or clothing that the soul now wears it is able to see divine entities from Bina and can thus glimpse the glory of its master. This clothing is similar to worldly garments but it also contains supernal forms from Bina and therefore through its form the soul can strive to see the divine lights of Bina and behold the glory of its master. Ten this chamber has visible supernal lights and the souls of the converts. Enter and stand there to behold the divine splendor here they are clad in one luminous garment that shines and yet also shines not with the lights in this chamber the righteous are able to see and endow the souls of the converts enabling them to enter inside and receive the divine splendor after they have been dressed in a luminous garment that both shines and does not shine the lights have two functions which are as one to shine upon the worthy and not to shine upon in other words to leave in darkness the unworthy the clothing brings them joy because they merit it and are fit to receive it this chamber is lined with precious stones and gold eleven there is an opening that leads down to the gates of Gehenna hell from there the converts look at all the evil ones the idol worshippers those who have not converted and thus have not entered the holy covenant they are chased away by the angels of destruction with fire and the converts see this rejoicing that they have converted and are Thus spared such a harsh judgment twelve and three times a day they are illuminated by divine light blessed by lights of the three tops fire which are drawn into this chamber above them reside over the other convert and oculus the convert and the other similarly important converts and as has been explained regarding this chamber in the lower garden of Eden so too in the lower chamber of the upper garden of Eden the souls ascend and are adorned after residing for a sufficient time in the lower garden of Eden section three second chamber how the second chamber is located within the first the opening to this chamber can be found in our world deep within the caves of the patriarchs in Machpelah Hebron in the land of Israel in this chamber reside the souls who met with adversity and endured hardship in the physical world throughout their ordeals they retain their certainty and faith in the creator these souls understood the purpose of human existence as achieving spiritual growth and therefore they thank the ancient and holy one for sending them genuine opportunities for attaining that purpose. Thirteen, the second chamber is within the first. The opening of this chamber is from within the cave of the patriarchs and it is lit by the first chamber. All manner of precious stones surrounded. Fourteen, within this chamber there is one light that includes all the colors that is the four colors of Chakma, Bina, Tiferet, and Malchud which shine downward. From above in this chamber are found all those who so as to be made whole by perfect repentance suffered illnesses and misfortunes in this world and who thanked and praised their master every day and never once stopped their prayers. Therefore they attained admittance to the chamber of hot in the garden of Eden. Fifteen, and within this chamber reside all the righteous people who sanctify with all their might the name of their master and answer with all their might. Amen. May the great name be. Lest this third aspect of the chamber contains the three tops fire to which the above mentioned righteous merit admission they reside in the innermost recesses of the chamber Chesed Vira and Tiferet of this chamber exist within net sash hot and Yezid of this chamber and the three tops f
endured the suffering of the entire world during their existence. 16 Mashiach leaves the second chamber and enters the third year are found all those who suffered for the purpose of being made whole more severe illnesses and greater misfortunes than those in the second chamber. This is why they have merited a place in the third chamber and this is the first type of soul found in the chamber. The second type of soul in this chamber is that of children who did not live their full lives who died. Before their time and thus did not send such pure souls as sent to main look in female waters and attract the lights of the second chamber. The third type of soul in the chamber is that of those who mourn the destruction of the holy temple and who shed tears thereby drawing down the lights of the top three spirot into this chamber. All three types of righteous souls reside in this chamber and Mashiach consoles them which means that he bestows on them their light section. Five fourth chamber type red in this chamber are found the mourners of Zion and Jerusalem just as a child can feel the pain of parents who suffer over their children's misdeeds these souls feel the pain of the creator souls who were slain and executed for their unwavering belief in God are also among this group the Messiah the Zohar reveals wears a garment upon which are inscribed the names of all martyrs 17 he leaves the third and enters the fourth chamber because after being completed with all the lights of the third chamber he can now enter the chamber of Typhoret in this chamber are all of the mourners of Zion, Zion and Jerusalem and all of those murdered by idolatrous nations and when Mashiach sees them he breaks down in tears and cries then all the princes descended from David hold him and comfort him 18 Mashiach starts crying again till a supernal voice emerges and mixes with the voice of Mashiach and his voice rises up and it is delayed there until the beginning of it. Month when it descends from Bina, then it brings down many lights and emanations that shine upon all the chambers. It also brings remedy and light to those killed by the idolatrous nations of the world and those ailing and with pains who suffer with Mashiach so as to bring forth the redemption. 19 Then Mashiach puts on the purple garment of royalty called purpura on which the names of all those killed by the idolatrous nations of the world are inscribed and listed. This purple garment of Mashiach ascends to Bina and is engraved upon the supernal royal garment of the king which is Zeir and that clothes Bina. There those killed by other nations and listed on Mashiach's garment are inscribed onto the supernal garment along with all others listed above and divine light is drawn by them to this chamber. The Holy One blessed be he will one day clothe himself with this royal garment of Mashiach and judge the nations of the world as it is written he shall judge the heathen and he shall fill the places with dead bodies tail in 1106 before this comes about at the end the royal garment of Mashiach is sweetened by connecting it with the royal garment of the Holy One blessed be he then they both ascend together to the place known as female waters may and they unite in the upper worlds and draw their lights thereof until Mashiach descends and returns from the place of union bringing lights and bliss down with him for the pleasure and consolation of the souls and many angels and chariots descend with Mashiach each carrying a garment for the souls of those killed by the idolatrous nations of the world there these souls experience divine bliss while Mashiach ascends and descends 20 on a spiritual level inside this chamber deep in the heart of Shizit Bura and Tiferet stand the ten appointed ministers who are Rabbi Akiva and his comrades they all go up through the holy mirror which I ask the secret of the luminous mirror and shine with supernal glorious Splendor of them it is written neither has the I seen Elohim beside you Yeshayah 644 section 6 5th chamber viewer the souls who have made complete repentance reside in the 5th chamber at its entrance stands King Minasheh the king of Judah who committed terrible sins throughout his life nevertheless the king atoned for his wrongdoings and his repentance was accepted by the creator 21 within the 5th chamber reside all those whose repentances complete those who have repudiated their wrong deeds and have been consoled for them this means that they have repented through love and their wickedness is transformed into virtue and they are consoled for all their sins because they have received merit for repenting them their souls leave them purified in this chamber also reside those who have sanctified their master's name and have taken upon themselves self-sacrifice for his honor blessed be he and at the entrance to the chamber stands Minasheh the king of Yehuda who has entirely repented his sins and whose repentance the Holy One blessed be he accepted the Holy One blessed be he created a recess for his sake underneath the throne of glory to receive him that is he concealed him as if underground from the eyes of the prosecutors so that they would not ask for judgment of him 22 and within net sash hot and yezid of this chamber reside all those whose repentance is immense who gain so much power through their repentance of misdeeds in life that their souls left through disgust at their own evil actions they delight in the supernal Eden each and every day three times a day the light enters this chamber in which the souls experience bliss each to the extent that it deserves these three times correspond to the three columns to which the lights of the three tops by rod are drawn and each is burned by the light of the Japa canopy of his neighbor be it in the upper chambers or the lower this means that the levels of the righteous are uneven neither in the upper chambers nor the lower each has a canopy of his own that no other can touch without being burned 23 this chamber stands above all the lower chambers and even the truly righteous in the lower chambers cannot enter or reach at this chamber which is Bureh is at a higher level than all other chambers only the level of the righteous who reside in the chamber of Chisa is a higher level than all the rest even higher than the chamber of Bureh. Section 7 6th chamber Chisa this is the chamber of the righteous who say what is mine is yours and what is yours is yours the truly righteous share everything they possess desiring and keeping nothing for themselves the 6th chamber is loftier than all the rest and governs over all others 24 the 6th chamber is the chamber of the righteous it is for those whose character is to say what is mine is yours and what is yours is yours this means that they share but do not Receive anything for themselves this is a loftier chamber than the rest and governs them all thus one cannot reach this chamber if one has not passed through all of the lower levels it is a right hand chamber because the level of Chisa is considered to be the right column and it cannot be attained by anyone except the holy righteous souls and all those who greatly love their master at the entrance of this chamber are those who proclaim their master's unity each day these are the ones who draw down the revelation of his unity blessed be he from the blessed Ein Sof the endless world to the Sfirat and all the worlds and they are the first to ascend from there to higher chambers meaning they are the first of the righteous in that chamber to ascend 25 above this entrance where the lights of Netzach and Yezid are stands Avraham to the right of the holy one blessed be he that is he stands on the side of Chisa and at another entrance is its hot who was bound upon the altar and was an unblemished sacrifice before the Holy One blessed be he and represents Bura and at another entrance stands Yaakov a perfect man surrounded by twelve tribal heads who have the Shechina female presence of God over their heads they correspond to the lights of Chesed Bura and Tiferet of this chamber as Abraham Itzhak and Yaakov are the embodiments of Chesed Bura and Tiferet as we know 26 and when the children of Israel are in a time of trouble these three patriarchs awaken and arouse the Shechina to protect Israel consequently the Shechina descends and after being crowned receiving the three top Sfirot called crowns protects Israel but she cannot protect Israel until the patriarchs are awakened and she receives the crowns of the top three Sfirot just as chambers are found in the lower garden of Eden corrected chambers can be found in the supernal garden of Eden these corrected chambers contain the secret of faith namely Malchut for Malchut upon its Completion is called faith and each chamber is an aspect of Malchut section 8 7 chamber Bina this is the most hidden of all the chambers all the others are connected to and crowned by this one it is not a dwelling of souls but a chamber to which they ascend on the way to their respective places most of the turbulence and turmoil of life occurs within the darkness that is created from an absence of spiritual light as we scan the letters that tell the secrets of the seven chambers the verses bring the all embracing light of the creator into our lips 27 and all those chambers are connected to and crowned by one chamber which is the seventh chamber this chamber is more hidden and bigger than all the others in the middle of this chamber stands a column of the colors green white red and black and when the souls need to ascend to a higher level they enter the column that stands within this chamber and whoever is suitable for one color of the column rises through it and whoever is suitable for another color rises through it each and every soul ascends through the color most suitable to it 28 the first six chambers are the dwellings of the souls as we have said the seventh chamber however is not a dwelling place of the souls it is only a place where the souls ascend through the columns contained therein and all six chambers are in the
Haze, these two Haze are part of the tetragrammaton in the name of God that is spelled out as Yud Kivaki. Please note that when the letters of the tetragrammaton are presented in sequence like this Haze transposed to key the names of God are powerful energy forces and the tetragrammaton is one of the strongest names of God in existence. The first Hay in the tetragrammaton pertains to the sphera by the repository of light. The Vov embodies the realm of Zerenpin which enfolds and includes six Firon within it. The Vov is the conduit through which the light stored in Bina flows into our physical world. Our world Malchut is signified by the Lord. Hey Rabbi Abba reveals a secret concealed inside the word Bershid which means in the beginning within the word we can find two words Ara and Shid which mean he created six. The six refers to the six Firon or dimensions compacted within Zerenpin 29. Come and behold Bershid in the beginning Rabbi Yehuda said there were two. Temples the first and the second the first was supernal corresponding to Bina and the second was lower corresponding to Malchut. There are also two Hays in the name Yud Hay Bab Hay is supernal Hay relating to Bina and a lower Hay relating to Malchut and all is one. This means that the first and second temples are one with the upper Hay and lower Hay which are Bina and Malchut. The supernal bed of Bershid is the first temple which is Bina it opens the gates to all directions because they are truly included within one another. This means that Malchut which is the second temple is mixed with Bina which is the first temple consequently Bina opens the gates to all directions share own six sides and the six sides of Malchut this enabling the latter to receive the Mokin as herself. The word beginning Bershid indicates that Bina is the first to be counted as part of the structure composed of Zeir and and Mukba that is called the structure of the world. This means that Bina is Considered the first to draw the Mokin to Zeir Anpin and Mukba and to the world's Briya Yitzra and Asiyah this alludes to the words in the beginning Bereshit of Torah Bet Heaven refers to the upper temple Bina the beginning Bereshit indicates that it was first to draw the Mokin to the world's Rabbi Yitzhak says that Bina comes first in the counting 30 Rabbi Lazar says the word Bereshit in Torah is a collective word this means that Malchut which is the secret of the face of man embraces all forms of reality this is the secret of the verse this was the appearance of the likeness of the glory of Hashem Yashiskel 128 in this appearance six other levels are discernible because through Malchut the spiritual lights of Chakma are attracted to the six directions of Bina aside and appearance are characteristic of Chakma thus Bereshit is derived from Barashit because through the ascension of Malchut to Bina six directions are formed in Bina come and see. When the six directions of Bina enter this Malchut, she makes herself ready to reflect them. She draws the spiritual lights of Chakma for the sake of their revelation through them. Through the spiritual lights of Chakma, she engages in all the worldly workmanship, and this workmanship is the spiritual light of the illumination of Chakma from which sprang the reality of the six weekdays. Rabbi Lazar reveals to us that although all spiritual light comes from Bina, it comes mainly through Malchut's elevation to Bina. It is because the workmanship of the world, namely the spiritual light of Chakma, comes from the level of Malchut that it is written. Barashi created six. This signifies that credit for the workmanship is attributed to the six aspects of Bina as they perform their craftsmanship in the level of Malchut. Thirty-one. Rabbi Yossi quotes: "The flowers appear on the earth. The time of song has come, and the voice of the turtle dove is heard in our land." Sure, Hashirin, 1112. The flowers allude to the six levels. Jesus, Bureau, Typhor, Net, Sachat, and Yezid. In the phrase, they appear on the earth. Earth alludes to Malchut. The flowers are forms that are not revealed at any level other than Malchut. The time of singing has come. Signifies that when the Shechinah called song is inspired with the spiritual light of Chakma, then is the time for praise and glorification as is written, so that he may sing your praise and not be silent. Tehillim 3013. Malchut is therefore called song as we have learned from the words. A song for David. Tehillim 31 and not David's song. Tehillim 241. This indicates that first David was inspired by the Shechinah. This is why it is said that the time of singing has come. First, the Shechinah called song reached him only. Then did he start singing and praising Rabbi Shia said that the time of song has come. This should be understood literally as the time of praise has come, meaning that after receiving the spiritual light, it is. Time for praise he disagreed that the Shechina of Hashem is called Song 32 Rabbi Abba says that the upper world Bina is shrouded in mystery as are all of its attributes because it exists in the divine secret the three tops Firat of Bina which is a day that embraces all days and when Eric Enpin created and produced Bina with the thought he produced it on the lower six of Bina and not the upper three and because Eric Enpin is mysterious and his actions are incomprehensible it is written in the scripture Bereshit meaning he created six Barashit this hints at those six supernal days but does not specify who created them the six days alluded to in Bereshit belong to an incomprehensible and big world 33 later he revealed the creator of the lower world of Asiyah namely Zeir Enpin and Mukba because it is a world that stands revealed he said Elohim created the heavens and the earth Bereshit 11 alluding to Zeir Enpin and Mukba consequently it is not written Vaguely without reference to the creator that is just created the heavens and the earth because it is a world of revelation thus it says Elohim created Elohim did certainly create them as ITIS a revealed name because Elohim ensures the completion of the spiritual light of the illumination of Chakma the first world Bina is concealed because it is the divine world the lower world of Zeir and Mukba is revealed because the workings of the Holy One blessed be he are always both concealed and revealed so is the secret of the Holy Name concealed and revealed the Yudha of the name Yudha Bob are concealed because we have no comprehension of the three tops Fire Bob are revealed because they allude to Zeir and Mukba which are comprehensible 34 the particle ET had the one place before the word heavens in the scripture includes the lower heavens below one place before the word earth however it also includes in it the earth below adding the Idea that everything done in the lower earth is similar to the divine pattern above section 10 7 dwellings of the upper and lower earth the spiritual and physical worlds are each divided into seven these are a reflection of the seven spirot or dimensions 35 the words the earth was formless and void have already been explained moreover the earth is the upper earth of Zeir Anpin which has no light of its own was indicates that it was originally in its ordered state but now it has become formless void and dark the scripture employs the word was precisely to draw our attention to the fact that it was complete later it diminished itself and its light and in it there came about formlessness emptiness darkness and spirit these being the four worldly elements that were built into the earth section 11 7 dwellings of the lower earth the physical realm includes seven compartments or worlds these are called Eretz Adam Agavi Neshi Atziyah Arka Table Our physical earth corresponds to table when Rabbi Yossi inquires as to the nature of world called Tziyah Rabbi Abba replies that this realm is the location of hell the world of Neshi the Zohar explains is called oblivion it is totally forgotten for it is without any form 36 another explanation of and the earth is that the words include the lower earth which was made of compartments as was the upper earth and this is what is meant by the earth was formless and void and darkness and the spirit and the compartments of the earth are called Eretz Ert Adam Agavi Valley Neshi Oblivion Tziyah Drinus Arka Ground and Table World the major level of earth is table about which it is written and he will judge the table world in righteousness Tehillim 98 this is not said about any other level of earth and thus we infer that it is the most important 37 Rabbi Yossi asked what is the nature of this earth that is called Tziyah Rabbi Abba said to him this is the location of Gehenom as it said the land of Tziyah and the shadow of death Yermeyah 26 and as the shadow of death is the place of Gehenom so is Tziyah this is the secret of the words and darkness on the face of the abyss Bereshit 12 alluding to the place of Gehenom this is the wilderness the place of the angel of death of whom it says he darkens the faces of all creatures this is also the place of the upper darkness referred to in the words and the earth 38 formlessness is the earth called Neshia Oblivion it is so called because it has no appearance until it is completely forgotten it is therefore called Oblivion void is arca ground a place that cannot be forgotten Rabbi Shia disagrees and says this earth called Gavi Valley is void not arca ground and the words the spirit of Elohim hovers allude to the earth called table world which feeds from the spirit of Elohim namely from the spirit of Bina called Elohim Day. Are all parts of the same level section 12 7 dwellings
Below is a place of darkness and does not illuminate anything. It is constructed for the dwellings of spirits, administrators of judgment, and forceful stormy spirits. These clipot shells with negative spiritual powers are invisible and have no light or darkness or any shape at all. Each is stronger than the other, beginning with the first of the four clipot. In that place, they are not evident because they have no shape at all. This compartment corresponds to formlessness as no one knows of it. Existence of those clipot shells 41. This place has a governing angel named Tahariel who is accompanied by 70 flying ministers. They are overcome by the blast of lapping flames above them. Some are destroyed and some survive, but these are not seen. Some are visible, but upon closer examination are not really there. When morning comes, they are all restored, yet they are not sustained in existence because when they reach this place, they are dissipated and cannot be found because they go into. A hole in the abyss and disappear when night time comes they are again wiped out by the flames of fire until morning comes section 14 the second compartment hot this realm contains more light than the other realms discussed thus far the angels who interact with people by virtue of our actions reside in this compartment these angels serve to connect our actions and the upper worlds when we perform positive actions the upper worlds reflect positive influences back to us through the medium of the angels the same process occurs with all our negative actions 42 the second compartment is a place of greater enlightenment it still is dark but not as dark as the first it is reserved as the domain of the upper angels there are no clipot shells here these angels are responsible for the actions of people they help them accomplish good deeds and also lead them astray into the evil path they tread that is they give strength also to those who walk on evil Paths nevertheless they are holy angels and not heaven forbid clipot negative spiritual forces this place is more evident than the first compartment because the former place is in effect formless the second on the other hand is regarded as void as it is written in the scriptures and is more visible these angels are more closely related to humans meaning that they appear to people in their own shape they are nourished by the subtle odors and perfumes that humans emanate from below and because of the opportunities they receive they are able to ascend in order to receive and therefore give more life 43 they are governed by one minister named Kadumil who is from the side of Chisit Hansel and his function is to protect them from the forces of judgment in the third compartment these angels under Tariel start singing then are quieted and driven away because song strengthens the force of the left column this awakens the forces of judgment in the third chamber after their song is interrupted and they are driven away they do not appear again until the nation of Israel below in this world starts singing then they return to their places resume their song and are seen glowing brighter three times a day they sing with holiness and when the people of Israel are busy with Torah all the angels of this compartment take wing and give testimony above and the Holy One blessed be he has compassion for them section 15 the third compartment Netzach the energy and intelligence of judgment dwell in the third compartment negative angels of destruction who reside here are the contents by which judgments befall us 44 the third compartment of the seven in the upper earth is a place of tongues of fire and rising smoke there the streams of the Nahardina river of fire gush forth because this is the source of the river of fire it is a crematorium for evil souls the place where fire comes down upon the heads of the wicked those who Dwell underneath in Gehenom and there reside also the angels of destruction whose task it is to crush the souls that dwell in Gehenom. 45 There can be found sometimes slanderers who speak evil of Israel and who lead people away from the path of good but they can do Israel no harm if Israel takes precautions to keep them away. They are governed by one minister from the left side. All the angels there are from the side of darkness as it says and darkness on the face of the abyss and it. Evil angel Samael resides in this compartment. Section 16 The fourth compartment Typhorite The fourth compartment is a place of positive energy and light. The angels who inhabit this realm are responsible for the acts of mercy that appear in our lives. These angels also bring about the salvation that is merited when people repent and transform. 46 The fourth compartment Typhorite is a place from which light emanates to the supernal angels of the right day. Start singing and then abruptly end their song however they are not destroyed for their singing as are those in the first compartment who start singing and then are scorched by being sucked down into burning fire only to be restored again in the morning as before the angels in here are preserved and are not destroyed they are the angels of mercy who never change because they are of the aspect of mercy which draws from the side of Jesus they are unaffected by the judgment drawn down by singing and thus they can finish their song 47 about those angels it is said he makes his angels as spirits tell him 1044 they perform their mission in the world without being seen by humans and can only be seen through visions and by other means such as intense meditations one angel governs them and his name is Padel this name is a combination of the words P-A-D-A-L meaning El has redeemed all those who elevate male and female waters to this compartment through their good deeds Receive the illumination of Chesedim from this angel and even if they have been sentenced to death they are redeemed and do not die hence the angel is named Padel in this chamber the keys to the gates of mercy are accessible to those who have repented and have returned to their master these keys open the gates through which their prayers enter and are thus answered section 17 fifth compartment viewer this compartment embodies more light than the fourth compartment angels of both mercy and judgment reside here these angels are likened to generals of the upper worlds while the angels in the prior compartments are compared to foot soldiers this realm is primarily one of judgment but if our actions in the physical warrant it we can sweeten judgment through the angels of mercy who dwell here the concept of sweetening judgment can be understood this way a child misbehaves and the parent reacts with great anger the parent then spanks the child and Harshly scolds him according to Kabbalah there is no aspect of mercy included in the actions of the parent the punishment is pure judgment rooted in the anger of the parent but the parent could also restrain himself at the moment anger erupts he could shut down his reactive nature and release all his negative feelings yet the parent still realizes out of love and concern for the child that a punishment is called for therefore with pure love in his heart and in complete control of his actions he reprimands the child this is still judgment but it is judgment sweetened with mercy 48 the fifth compartment is the one in which light shines more brightly than it does in any of the preceding ones in it are angels some ones who represent judgment are fiery angels others ones representing mercy are watery angels sometimes mercy is prominent when the watery angels are dominant and sometimes judgment is prominent when the fiery angels are dominant those of water are on the right side and those of fire are on the left side occasionally some of these angels glow while the others are in darkness both groups of angels oversee the chanting to their master some angels of judgment at midnight and others angels of mercy at dawn and one minister governs them both he is called Katshiel his duty is to draw down Kedusha holiness to the lower worlds 49 at midnight the northern wind arises and the holy one blessed be he comes to the garden of Eden to rejoice with the righteous and this northern wind of Bina knocks and reaches those ministers in charge of chanting at midnight they all sing and begin to chant thus enabling the lower levels to sing when the deep darkness just before dawn joins with the light of the morning all the other angels the water angels on the right sing and all the stars in the firmament help them along with the angels of fire from the left side because singing is of the left aspect they need the help of the left column angels in order to sing as is Written the morning stars sang together and the sons of Elohim shouted for joy. Yo 387 because all the angels sing in the morning until Israel below opens with singing and praises after them because those angels are more important than Israel. Israel receives strength from them to sing section 18 6 compartment Jesus while viewer the compartment directly below personifies judgment Jesus is a realm of pure mercy the angels residing here are responsible for delivering spiritual influences of mercy into our lives we bring these angels into motion whenever we show mercy toward others everyday acts of sharing and kindness without any expectations in return are examples of mercy in the sense 50 the sixth compartment is very close to the kingdom of the heavens that is the inner Malchut in it are ships and rivers and streams that branch off and leave the sea which is Malchut many are the fish alluding to the angels that governed by their ministers swarm in the rivers and streams to the four winds of the world. One minister called Uriel is in charge of all the lower angels in this compartment. He is responsible for all the angels from the western side. 51 at those hours and moments when the ship sail, all these angels travel with them in one direction and another in those directions toward which the ship sail. When the ship sail southward, the minister governing them is Michael, who is drawn from the right column, which is Jesus. And when the ship sail northward, the minister governing them is Gabriel, who is drawn from the left side, which is B
The righteous this means that no angels reside there there can be found treasures of peace blessings and charity and everything there is in the matter of the divine aspect namely bond as the friends have explained 53 the same can be found in the seven compartments of the lower land which are all similar to the seven compartments of the world above thus the seven compartments of AC and below are equal in all respects to the seven compartments of Malchut of the spiritual world of Atzalut. Above and in all of the seven compartments below there are angels in the shape of humans clad like people in the clothing of the physical world the difference between above and below is that above only in the second compartment can there be found angels who are related to humans but from the fourth compartment upward there cannot be found any relation between the angels and humans save that achieved through visions and intense meditation in the lower worlds however even those compartments from the chest up are allowing the angels to appear in the form of humans they all are grateful and praise the holy one blessed be he and none can perceive his glory blessed be he as can those in the supernal realms they behold his glory most appropriately so as to worship praise and acknowledge his greatness 54 the supernal world called table exists only for the sake of the righteous who are holy bodies who are found in this world for them this world table was created and for their sake it continues to exist similar to the upper compartments of the supernal world the seventh compartment below exists only for the souls of the righteous also in the compartments of the lower earth the lower seventh compartment table exists only for the bodies of the righteous one world is similar to the other much like a reflection of the other the seven compartments of the lower worlds are a reflection of and are drawn through the seven supernal compartments every aspect above has its counterpart Below as the souls of people alone can be found in the supernal seventh compartment so in the lower seventh called table one of the seven physical worlds can be found only the bodies of the righteous people although all the other kinds of creatures and wicked people can also be found there they are there only to serve the bodies of the righteous because the world was created and is maintained for the sake of the righteous as is written they have been created to serve me and I to serve the one who owns me section 20 the seven chambers of the upper worlds the Zohar explains that the preceding seven compartments are the building blocks and foundation for another still higher level of chambers first chamber is at this realm is the domain of the angel who dispenses great mercy to all those souls who convert and follow the true path of the creator 55 rabbi Shimon said come and behold these seven compartments of the upper worlds about which we have spoken contain seven chambers based on the perceived secrets of faith which is Malchut of the spiritual world of Atzalut. These correspond to the seven divine firmaments in each and every chamber. There are supernal spirits who are the angels responsible for those chambers. The first chamber when counting from below is called Yezid and has a spirit who is in charge of the souls of the converted. His name is Rajmiel because he extends recommend mercy to those souls through him they delight in. The radiance of divine glory section 21. The second chamber Hot this realm is the domain of the angel Ahinel who teaches uneducated children the spiritual wisdom of the Torah. 56. The second chamber called Hot has one spirit named Ahinel. He is in charge of the souls of children who did not merit learning Torah in their lives in this world. He is in charge of them and teaches them Torah. Section 22. The third chamber. Netzach the angel called Adrahinel occupies this chamber. Adrahinel helps purify all those people who desire to repent for their wrongdoings but died before they could complete their full repentance. 57 The third chamber called Netzach has one spirit named Adrahinel. He is in charge of the souls of those who intended repentance but who have not repented because they died before they could repent their actions. Thus their ministering angel is called Adrahinel from the Aramaic word Hadrana. Meaning contrition or repentance, these souls are punished in Gehenna and are then delivered to the spirit who is in charge and he receives them. They desire to enjoy their master's precious glory but cannot accept on Shabbat and the new moon. Those souls are called offspring of flesh as is written and it shall come to pass that on every new moon and every Shabbat all flesh shall come to worship before me. Said Hashem Yeshayah 6623. The reason these souls are called the offspring of flesh. Is that the tenth Firat have many names of which Jesus, Bira, and Tiferet are called brain, bone, and sinew, and Netzach and Hot are called flesh and skin. Thus the souls of the third chamber of Netzach are called all flesh as Netzach is flesh. Section 23 The fourth chamber Tiferet, the angel Gidrihel, inhabits this fourth chamber. Gidrihel assists souls who were murdered during physical existence in their transition to a place near the Creator. He also assists in executing judgment upon those who commit the act of murder. 58 The fourth chamber, Is Tiferet, in charge stands the spirit of Gidrihel. This angel, Is in charge of preparing the souls of those killed by the nations of the world for imprinting on the king's royal garment. They stay imprinted there until the day when the Holy One, blessed be he, avenges them as it is written, he shall make judgment upon the nations and shall fill them with dead bodies and shall crush heads upon the whole. World Tehillim 110 to 6 because the Holy One blessed be he resides among the souls of the murdered section 24 the fifth chamber Bira all those souls who emanate from the spiritual lineage of the left column with its energy of judgment anger and volatility are ruled over by the angel Adriel who inhabits the fifth chamber of Bira 59 the fifth chamber is called Bira in charge is a spirit named Adriel he stands in charge of the souls who are accomplished from the aspect of the left side the name Adriel is formed from the words Adir and Ladir means mighty as he is in charge over the chamber of Bira might section 25 the sixth chamber Chisa the greatest of souls are worthy to reside in this the sixth chamber of Chisa the loftiest of all souls are found in this loftiest compartment of all the archangel of all angels Michael rules over this chamber namely the chamber of Chisa thousands and Tens of thousands of angels reside under his rule on the side of Chisa there the souls of the righteous delight by the supernal light that is drawn therein from the world to come the light is drawn from Bina as Bina is called the world to come but since the seventh chamber of Bina has no governing angels it is not discussed at all section 26 the seven chambers of Abba Father and I am a mother of Bria all prayers must travel within a specific spiritual network in order to reach their intended destination the Zohar outlines this metaphysical structure so that we may access this realm simply by learning the section the descriptions and explanations that follow provide the reader with an opportunity to access the spiritual network in such a way that prayers will be answered the chambers of Abba Father and I am a mother pertain to the principles of male and female energy that are built into the fabric of our physical universe the proton and Electron the minus and plus charges in electricity as well as in men and women are all branches extending out from the singular spiritual seed 60 Rabbi Shimon said come and behold who knows how to arrange a prayer to his master as did Moshe who knew how to lengthen and shorten his prayer as necessary Rabbi Shimon said I found written in ancient books the order of connecting the WORL these inner secrets into one unit so that they united will project light to the lower world sometimes it is required to arrange a prayer as to entice and soothe the master to make the proper unifications penetrate firmaments and open gates and passages one must arrange his prayer so that no one will stop him namely that the prosecutors cannot disturb him 61 blessed are the righteous who know how to appease their master cancel decrees and cause the Shechina to rest upon the world they know how to draw down blessings and prevent the administrators of judgment from prevailing in the world Rabbi. Shimon rose and said, Who can utter the mighty acts of Hashem Tehillim 1062? Who can remove the dust from your eyes? Avraham, the devout, the right hand of the Holy One, blessed be he, he revealed to you the ultimate of secrets and the beginning of prayer in the world as Avraham instituted the morning prayer as well as the chambers of the divine king 62. There are seven holy chambers and they have well guarded gates, meaning that all the administrators of judgment have been removed from the men. They open only to those worthy of entering and into each and every chamber the prayers of unity enter for he who knows how to appease and soothe his master make complete unification, make his way into those chambers and connect the chambers among themselves, spirit with spirit, lower spirit with the higher spirit. It is said, Hashem in trouble have they visited you, they poured out a prayer when the chastening was upon them. Yeshayah 26 16. In this passage are implied all the elevations of the Sphirot. And all their connections section 27 the first chamber of Yezid and Malchut Lebnat has appear sapphire bricks this chamber is our connection with the upper worlds from which we draw spiritual light through our prayers without the connection known as the first chamber we cannot access the upper realms the term sapphire refers to a spirit called sapphire the word bricks refers to the moon the
glitters in two directions, namely Chisa and Vira. One light, the light of Chisa goes up as Orchosa, returning light, and goes down as Oryashar. Direct light, this light is white, shining in every direction, upward, downward, and to all four directions of the world. All six directions of Zeir and its light is suspended, sometimes hidden and revealed. That is, it is sometimes suspended without revealing the definite direction of the source of its shining. Sixty-four from the light of Chisa, four lights. Branch out to four sides. The second light is the light of Vira. Of the spirits appear. The first light, Chisa, shines in six directions, and the second Vira in four. This is because the two lights are the male and the female aspects of the spirits appear. The first light represents Chakmabana, Daat, Chisa, Vira, and Typhoid, while the second represents Netzach, Hadizat, and Malchut. All these lights are as one as the light of a candle that glitters to the eyes of onlookers. The light rays of it. Candle go up and down, leave and return from the fire of the burning candle, and all are one light. So are the four lights. They glitter like the red color of burnished brass as it is written, and they sparkled like the color of burnished brass. Yashiskal 17. All this is to the right because, in spite of the fact that the red light of the lights of superior luminous to the left side, it nevertheless stands to the right of the chamber 65. To the left of the chamber, there is a spirit named Lavana. Moon, which is included in and mingles with the first spirit called Sapir. The light from the spirit is simultaneously red and white because it originates from these two first lights of the spirit Sapir, which are also red and white. Yet here they are one, and when the lights of the spirit Lavana reach the first lights of spirit Sapir and intermingle with them and become one, only the first lights become evident. The other lights of the spirit called Lavana are not revealed and are indistinguishable. When they enter as it is written and it could not be known that they had entered there, Beersheet 4121, this is the intermingling of spirit with spirit to be one and of lights with lights to become one in this chamber two lower firmaments shine and they are called the heaven of heaven 66 from the emanation of those two spirits the holy Ophanim angels were created there just as are the Jaya animals as it is written the appearance of the Ophanim wheels and their work Yashiskal 116. This is as mentioned in the quotation when those moved these moved and when those stood still these stood still and when those were lifted up from the earth the Ophanim wheels were lifted up along with them and of the Ophanim wheels it is written as for the likeness of the Jaya animals and their appearance it was like burning coals of fire which burned like torches she walked amongst the Jaya Yashiskal 113 even though they are called Jaya they are nevertheless Ophanim that are called. Jayat because they are judged as Jayat he asks to whom does the scripture refer to as she in the verse she walked amongst the Jayat and he answers the reference is made to the Holy Spirit Lavana which is where they originated and it shines upon them as the scriptures continue and the fire was bright and out of the fire came out lightning Bear she 4113 the Holy Spirit Lavana is Malchut called brightness of which the scripture says and the fire was bright and out of the fire came. Lightning IT is therefore said of her that since she walks among the Jayat their appearance was like burning coals of fire she is an aspect of brightness from which fire and lightning are drawn 67 and when one spirit is included in the other that is the spirits appear in the spirit Lavana the light of one Jaya comes out of them and spreads over four angels the shape of this Jaya is that of a lion namely of Chisid which is why this Jaya rules over 13 million other Ophanim. The wings of this Jaya are those of an eagle. The number of angels is 13 million because each of the four angels travels on four wheels, each of which has three supports. In all, there are 12 supports for the four wheels on which each angel travels. The spirits appear controls them all because they originate from him. The spirit sustains them all, namely those wheels and supports, and through him they receive nourishment. Hence, he is counted with them as a the 13th, and because they originate from Bino, which is counted in hundreds, they are 13 hundreds, and also being from Eric Anpin, which is counted by the ten thousands, they are numbered 13 million sixty-eight. Those four Ophanim have four faces each, and all four face toward the four sides of the Jaya set over them. And when the four angels travel under that Jaya, they penetrate and cling to one another, are included each within the other, and receive support from each other. This is alluded to by the Luke's May. Correspond one to the other Shema 265 each is within the other and each interpenetrates the others when the wheels travel a tender sound is heard in all the lower hosts that is their pleasant sustenance reaches all the lower hosts 69 below this chamber the hosts spread out to radiate in many directions in the lower firmaments through which the ruling of the lower world changes this continues until a planet called Shabtai Saturn is reached in the second firmament of the world of Asiyat. All seven planets are located in the world of Asiyat and they are called Shabtai Saturn, Sedek, Jupiter, Mayad, Mars, Noga, Venus, Kashab, Mercury and Levanamun through these planets all change comes to the world the first planet Shabtai feeds from the lowest of the seven chambers of the world of Bria and the rest of the planets from the other chambers all the lower worlds look toward this chamber for their sustenance from this chamber all those present are fed and look forward to receiving. Sustenance and strength from the spirit of Sapir as it is written where the spirit was to go they went they turned not when they went Yashiskal 112 this chamber is called Lavana has Sapir because of the two spirits contained therein Sapir and Lavana 70 the spirit Sapir includes the spirit Lavana within him and his light that goes up and comes down his light never stops shining as the light of the sun within the water and nothing other than the desire of a righteous man through his prayer that goes into that chamber can attain that spirit that prayer elevates so as to connect perfectly that eyes make unifications under the influence of the spirit it is appropriate then the spirit is enveloped with light and is happy with the prayer and goes up with it to the second chamber to connect with its unity the spirit which includes within it the spirit Lavana can now mix with the higher spirit in the second chamber 71 this higher spirit which now includes the second spirit that went up to the second chamber as it travels upward also includes within it all the Jayat Ophanim and wheels they grasp onto it as does water to fire and fire to water and as the four winds grasp onto each other south onto north north onto southeast onto west and west onto east they all link with each other and hold onto each other chayot angels Ophanim and two spirits with the spirit of the second chamber the spirit goes up to connect with the spirit of the second chamber and the Jayat included in it. Spirit also looks up toward the second chamber to receive its sustenance they look toward each other and the second chamber and all therein look toward those of the lower chamber that have come up to it so it may be completed by them 72 in the center of this chamber stands a pillar that reaches the middle of a higher chamber it pierces the roofs of all the seven chambers and stands erect within them from bottom to top this enables the spirits to bond to each other and to elevate from all. These chambers so that they now unite and become one spirit as it is written they all have one spirit Kahila 319 section 28 the second chamber hot this chamber is filled with pure white light which remains in a state of potential until the interface of the first chamber acts upon it through our positive actions and prayers this white light then shines through the first chamber as it fulfills all our desires the one light suddenly becomes many a wonderful illustration of this process is visible in nature when a ray of sunlight strikes a gemstone and refracts into the seven colors of the rainbow 73 it is said that the second chamber is the embodiment of heaven's impurity Shema 2410 here can be found a spirit named Zohar Splendor which is always in white the color of the illumination of Chesedim called white it cannot mix with any other color this is called its of embodiment and never changes the shining of the spirit is not so Revealed as that of the others it is harder to distinguish because all its colors are included in the white this is similar to the hidden part of the eye the black part wherein lies the ability to see when it rolls it glitters and glows meaning that when a person wants to see he rolls all four colors to a particular direction and there is no other way to see the same applies to the spirit it cannot shine unless it rolls and it does not linger upon any one of its sides the spirit rolls them all. And they glitter until it reaches the white therein it stands there having exposed in the meanwhile its four sides for when the first spirit Lavana has appear elevates to the spirit it revolves it so as to reveal its full emanations and it thus receives all its four aspects the first spirit connects with the second as through the white in the eye meaning that after receiving its four colors it is attached solely to the white this is done through a much fainter color that is shed upon the spirit. Through the emanation of the spirit in the third chamber of Netzach that shines with white light from the spirit of the second chamber it is so faint that no color is distinguishable in IT 74 the spirit is empowered to rotate when the lower
Female, so there are two spirits in the second chamber. The male is named Zohar, and the female is called Itzim. The white of the spirit joins with the white of Itzim, and the blue of the spirit joins with the red of Levanta, located to the left side of the first chamber. They embrace each other, become one, and are thus called Itzim Hashemayim, the embodiment of heaven. All that exists below this chamber in Bria Yetzirah and Asiyah, along with all that exists in the lower chamber, Yezid is contained. Within the chamber called Hot, and because they are all contained in this chamber, it is called the embodiment of heaven. It embodies the whole existence. Seventy-seven from the totality of those lights through their mating, the seraphim were created. Each has six wings, as is written above. It's to the seraphim, each one had six wings. Yeshua sixty-two. They all have six wings because they originated from this chamber called Itzim Hashemayim, the embodiment of heaven. These burn all those who do not revere there. Master's glory. This means that he deals with the three tops firot, and it is said that whoever uses a crown is wiped out because the seraphim burn him. And whoever reads and learns the six orders of the mission and knows how to arrange and connect with his master's unity as is fitting, it is he who knows how to sanctify his master's holy name each day. Always seventy-eight. And when those lights revolve, they emit the light of one shaya, and that shaya is born and stands spanning four shaya. Those latter control the former, namely the seraphim, because they contain the seraphim within them. Because the shaya are extruded from the revolving light, they are very well balanced and can control the seraphim and sweeten the judgment and fire in them. When the shaya travel by force of the revelation of the revolving light, the lower seraphim are vanquished and rendered harmless. Those are the serpents that evolve from and are born of the seraph serpent that caused death to all people of the world. It Original serpent 79 those chaya are from the face of an eagle and look upon this higher chaya above them which is the supernal eagle to receive their sustenance it is written the way of an eagle in the Shamayim heavens Mishlei 3019 this alludes to the chaya called eagle which resides in the chamber of its Hashemayim the spirit named Shamayim heavens controls all at the time of the revolving of light but if the spirit of its was in control then the face of the chaya would be that of a lioness is the chaya in the first chamber which is white having the light of Chesedim but because the predominant spirit is that of Shamayim who is white and blue Chesed and Bura the chaya is in the face of an eagle and that mixture of Chesed and Bura for the image of Chesed is a lion and the image of Bura is a bull the chaya that spans over the four chaya looks upward towards the spirit named Shamayim and the chaya look upon that supernal chaya for their sustenance 81. Those Chaya travel as when the revolving light shines and the many hosts are shaken some shine because of them and some are broken loose from where they stand the radiance of the Chaya burns them with fire and later they are restored all the lower hosts slide under the supernal Chaya and find refuge under its wings so as to be included in it above 81 these four Chaya rise when the spirit Itzim Hashemayim shines within the supernal Chaya each and every Chaya has four wheels one wheel points east and three pedestals support it all face the Chaya that is in the center of the four wheels one faces west and also has three pedestals that face toward the Chaya in the center and the same is true for the wheels of the south and north the movement of all twelve pedestals of each Chaya is controlled by the Chaya in the middle of their wheels and not to any of the sides of the wheels they support the Chaya in the middle closes up and opens creating and controlling all of it Emanations of light while traveling each will can be clearly heard throughout the firmaments 82 the four Chayat interlink and the opening below in the first chamber penetrate the Chayat of the second chamber above which are included within one another the spirit which is included within the spirits below in the first chamber glows and ascends to the third chamber above there it connects with the desire of a righteous man while reciting his prayer when a prayer goes up and enters the second chamber it elevates all in existence in both the first and second chambers with it and all intermix until they are included in the spirit the spirit now travels empowered by the desire of the unifications of the prayer the prayer unifies all until they reach the third chamber and mix with it as the first ones they mix as fire with water and water with fire air with earth earth with air east with west west with east north with south and south with north similarly those here intermingle and intertwine and many hosts and camps descend mix and shine upon those lower angels until they glow upon a planet called Tzedek Jupiter on Jupiter many of the governing ministers of the world stand who receive this radiance and sustain the world 83 and when the spirit containing and contained by all those lower than IT rises enters the third chamber and connects with the spirit inside the pillar that stands erect in the middle of the chamber then all is complete as it should be until this point all become as if one spirit that contains all and is complemented by all as was stated before and they all have one spirit Kahila 319 here is the secret of bowing in order to reach full cleavage with his master section 29 the third chamber net satch this chamber holds light in its purest form light that is unseen and not yet manifest sunlight in the vacuum of space is the clearest illustration of this cabalistic truth because they lack a Physical object to reflect and reveal the light the photons of sunlight remain imperceptible to the naked eye this is why darkness surrounds the earth even though the sun's rays are continually streaming sunlight only illuminates when it strikes the physical atmosphere 84 the third chamber contains a spirit called Noga Venus or brightness the purest and cleanest of all the lower spirits no color is distinguishable there are neither white nor green nor black nor red thus it is called Tohar. Purity being purer and cleaner than all those lower than it but although it is purer than all the others its emanation is not visible until the lower spirits of the second chamber rotate with the light cling to it and penetrate it after the lower ones enter it it shows its light and does not retain any of the colors of the lower spirits that have entered IT 85 when the spirit is completed by the lower ones that have gone up to IT it emanates from within it one light composed of three. Lights those of the chambers net sash hot and yes two of those lights those of the lower chambers hot and yes go up come down and glitter but the higher light of net sash goes up and does not come down and within this glitter there can be seen 22 different lights that become one light the lights that have become one go up and enter the supernal light of the chamber of net sash and that light contains the 86 the spirit in this chamber does not shine except when the lower lights of it lower chambers elevate to it and the desire in the prayer of the righteous supports them all and the light mentioned earlier is born from within the spirit and from it emanate two glittering lights which appear in the manner of the 22 letters of Torah these lights then reunite with the light that brought them forth 87 these lower lights are all included in the 22 emanations as well as in the one light that gave birth to those 22 lights this light is included in the spirit to which they Gave birth the spirit stands in this third chamber and it does not rest until it reaches the fourth chamber typhoid unto which it desires to ascend 88. The lights that emanate from that spirit join together as one when they glitter when the two lights of the chambers of hot and yes it extend from the one light of net sash they press upon the veil which is the secret of binding by striking they do this so as to glow reflect the returning light and encase the direct light being drawn down. From those two lights a holy and great chaya is born the figure of this chaya is similar to that of the rest of the chaya from the first and second chambers from which came the two lights that gave birth to this chaya this chaya has the face of a lion from the first chamber and the face of an eagle from the second these faces are combined and formed into one shape this means that both the face of the lion and the face of the eagle combine together to form the face of this one chaya there. Is no definite face evident in the Chaya to remind us of the chamber of Netzach because there is no definite color within the spirit, no shape can be distinguished in it because the light of Netzach does not have to travel with the two lights in order to shine. 89 beneath this Chaya there are four supernal Ophanim having the appearance of chrysolite embroidered with four colors red, white, green, and black. They include six billion lights. Each of the four Ophanim has eight wings and it. Aspects of these Ophanim emanate from the light of the Chaya that controls them from above. And when the light of the Chaya shines, that is when the revolving light shines in them. All these hosts come out 90 and these four Ophanim underneath the Chaya face the four winds of the world east, west, north, and south. Each one has four faces with two faces. They look toward the Chaya above them. They conceal the other two faces with their wings to protect them from the brightness of the lights shining. Upon them which they cannot withstand 91 and whenever these Ophanim travel it is as the first ones travel each travels on four wheels and twelve support similar to the manner of those of the chamber of Yezid whenever the revolving light shines within them many hosts and camps are made from their sweat they all sing songs of praise and never stop doing so these hosts are
Upper chambers where they could receive the light of the top three Sphirot called crowns or adornments. These angels always stay in their places in this chamber until all the levels interconnect at IS until they are included within and unite with one another. Then this chamber Netzach moves to be adorned by the top three Sphirot. Then the angels leave their places filled with judgment toward the prosecutors of Israel. Hence Israel can receive the sustenance of the top three Sphirot without fear of intervention from outsiders. Those angels are called protectors because they protect Israel. They are emissaries to the administrators of justice who reside in the fourth chamber. They are commissioned to judge the actions of the lower levels on the side of either merit or demerit. And after Israel is acquitted by the court, it is passed on to these emissaries for protection suspended from the four sides of this place are six billion guardians of the gold in every direction below them are sixty. Guardians of gold surrounding them in rows 94 those guardians do battle with the emissaries of judgment in the world outside the chamber using swords and spears and burning them they burn them until the light of all levels in the lower levels reaches the planet Maya Mars from where the actions reach this world and then the chamber elevates to the fourth chamber where it is adorned by the spirit and the hosts there in this place together with its protectors and its guardians of gold remains in its place and does not elevate with the chamber this place is called the courier's compartment because the emissaries therein run to finalize the judgments and punishments to the enemies of Israel in every direction on earth they run and make haste to fulfill their errands because they may only destroy the tormentors and protect Israel while the chamber is elevating to the higher chamber at other times they are locked in and cannot leave 95 with the ascension of prayer all the Lights and hosts travel connect and intertwine to form a unity until the spirit of the lower chamber adheres to the spirit of the higher chamber and they become one they enter the central pillar of the chamber and elevate through it to be included in the spirit of the fourth chamber above them joyful is he who knows the secret of his master and raises his banner where he ought to 96 come and behold all the levels must complement each other and be led one by the other until they all elevate to that place that needs perfection they elevate first from below to complement the supernal place and then descend to complement the lower levels hence perfection prevails in all directions and all are made whole as it should be 97 he who knows these secrets and brings about such perfection adheres to his master and cancels all terrible decrees he crowns his master by drawing light from the top three spiral down to zeir and, and brings blessings to the world such a man is called Righteous pillar of the world because the whole world is preserved and sustained for his sake his prayer is never returned unanswered his rightful place is in the world to come and he is counted among the faithful in the world 98 come and behold these chambers Chayat hosts lights and spirits all need each other so that the upper levels can be completed by the elevation of main and female waters and so that consequently the lower worlds can be completed by drawing main detriment male. Waters from above these chambers cling to one another 99 they all cling to one another like the colors of the eye and all that is included within them is like the sight seen through the hidden part of the eye when the eye rolls from one side to the other then can be seen the glittering splendor which cannot be detected during this rolling of the spirit that governs all that is in this chamber that is why they stand one level upon the other that is each level depends on the other until all. Are adorned appropriately 100 come and behold if it were not for those colors in the eye as seen when the eye is shut and rolling those shining colors would not be seen and if it were not for these shining colors the hidden part of the eye that governs all would not be functional for sight everything depends upon everything else and connects with everything else 101 when they are all contained as one in the third chamber and the desire of prayer elevates them to be crowned in the fourth chamber then all become own desire and one connection this is the aspect of bowing down of finding favor with one's master section 30 the fourth chamber viewer this chamber represents the intelligence and will that directs and determines where light will manifest in our physical world 102 the fourth chamber this chamber is different from all other chambers it contains four chambers one within the other yet all are one chamber the spirit who Inhabits this chamber is named Zekut Merit because here all the liabilities of the inhabitants of the world are transformed into merit. Zekut takes all and he who attains it can find good favor for himself and the whole world. 103 from the spirit Zekut 70 lights radiate they all glitter simultaneously shining in circles not spreading out to shine downward like other lights. Those lights cling to one another and shine within each other because they have familiarity of form. They shine within each other because they mingle to shine as one they cling to each other because they need each other to shine. If one is missing none can shine all the merits of the world are before those lights. This means that through their light it is seen how the faults of the world are turned into merits from the totality of those 70 lights. Two lights emanate are counted as one and stand before them always 104 opposed to those 70 lights. There are 70 administers of judgment. In the world they encircle these four chambers from the outside but those seventy lights and those two lights that stand before them are innermost this is the inner meaning of your belly is a heap of wheat surrounded by lilies sure hasherim seventy three your belly alludes to the innermost because the bowels are inside the body kid and wheat alludes to shatame sins namely the faults that are turned into merits in the secrets of the said seventy two lights which are in the innermost part of the four chambers it therefore says of them your belly is a heap of wheat these are surrounded by lilies which allude to the judges who are the appointed ministers responsible for all the judgments in the world the seventy ministers stand in opposition to the seventy two lights this is because all punishment comes from the seventy ministers but they are not free to punish except so as to serve the seventy lights in their preparation of the lower levels for receiving their majestic revelation one hundred and five before the seventy lights stand all the merits and actions of the people to be judged the seventy lights are the secret of the supernal courthouse which judges people the two lights standing before them give evidence of people's actions because as is written those seven are the eyes of Hashem they roam around the earth Zechariah 410 eyes allude to supervision there are seven attributes of Chesed, Burit, Tiferet, Netzach, Hadyazet and Malchut to make people befitting to receive the supernal pleasure and delight therefore the image of all that transpires in the world good or bad is imprinted by the very deed and the very merit and they are preserved and upheld for eternity this means that no deed is lost in the world be it good or evil each action is recorded in its manner as is quoted the seven eyes of Hashem the two lights watch and see each action and give evidence before the seventy lights which are the upper courthouse after hearing them out the seventy lights pass judgment and issue decrees for good or for bad this chamber is a place of merit the judgment mentioned above is not revealed here but in the abundance that flows from the 70 lights that are received below there is revealed the bad but here in this chamber there is only merit 106 in this chamber the spirit's echo has imprinted the three letters yet when the letters yud havok cling to the place the malchud refer to as place and designated by the lower hay as a mating of male and female then the letters are imprinted on the spirit and do not depart from there then another ray of light extends and radiates in four directions this light also extends three other lights namely chakmabana and typhoid which are the three courthouses where judgments are passed in world affairs and non-criminal transgressions here judgments are passed regarding richness and poverty illnesses and health and other worldly affairs one chamber is set aside for the first 70 lights and is it Innermost of the four chambers of the fourth chamber there are three outer chambers for the three other court assemblies 107 Zekut elevates and containing all the lower lights and the other three lights produces one fiery holy chayot has eyes similar to those of humans to supervise the thousands upon thousands and tens of thousands armies of administrators of justice the latter take the verdicts from the court and by opening or closing channels of sustenance carry out sentences to the world 108 below this chayot four seraphim blow as buds on flowers and sparks of fire erupt from them each has 72 wheels that are burning with fire when they travel they leave behind a river of fire thousands upon thousands of angels serve that fire and from these thousands of thousands many armies emerge when the wheels travel myriads upon myriads are born and stand in the fire below the second chamber angels sing try to come close and are burned 109 the ministers who are Charged with managing the world receive their appointment from here the appointment comes from the spirit Zekut who has been branded with the letters Yud Heva from here they are removed from the world and sentenced by this fire that extends from the Nahur Diner River of fire sentencing is delivered from this chamber because it has been branded with the three letters Yud Heva within which the spirit is enclosed this Chaya brings forth innumerable armies and hosts 110 all the judgments of the world whether good or bad come from
shines upon the earth the announcements are released from the sun and roam the world until they reach the serpent of the firmament all the planets of the firmament are frozen within the sun which stands in the middle of the firmament 113 the officials below and those in charge over the serpent hear that and from them it is spread throughout the world come and see in the middle of the firmament there is assembled a bright trail which is the serpent of the firmament all the hardly noticeable stars are heaped together in it it is called the milky way by astronomers because the concentration of stars looks like milk those stars are in charge of the secretive actions of the inhabitants of the world the serpent in the firmament in which all the stars are frozen refers to the milky way in which all the stars are frozen and do not move from the serpent in the firmament an announcement is made and spread in the world even spirits demons and birds of the sky relay those announcements too the world when the verdicts have been carried out the ministers close the portals the spirit here does not go up to the supernal spirit of the fifth chamber until all the spirits in the lower chambers become one with the spirit here all the spirits are embraced within each other until they become one and the spirit here rises up with them to the fifth chamber and is embraced by the spirit there in 114 when a man lies in his sickbed he is sentenced either to life or to death life depends upon the supernal river above and not upon the chambers echoed indeed if one is sentenced to life one is given life from the upper river called mazel if mazel does not grant one life one does not live joyful is the state of he who adheres to his master and can enter and leave this chamber as he wishes here in this chamber a prostration is practiced where his face touches the ground so as to subdue the judgment of this chamber it is written L of truth and without iniquity to 324 Section 31 The fifth chamber Chisa This is the highest chamber for it is composed of pure love whenever love is generated and made manifest in our physical world it becomes a vessel this vessel then awakens the light of this chamber it begins flowing through the entire system and into our own realm 115 The fifth chamber is the chamber illuminated by lightning a spirit named Barak lightning dwells here shining and illuminating the lower ones Barak comprehends opens and closes and shines in every direction from this shining extends a ray of light with a purple appearance but it actually contains the colors white black red and green the colors mix with each other white is embroidered with the red the black with the green and the white with the black from the Vishaya is embroidered containing all the colors but mainly green and red it has the face of a human and includes all shapes 116 from this Chaya four pedestals are produced which are larger Chaya then. Those below one is called Ofen which is the Malchute alone and is two they cling to each other because when one is observed the other shines within it they adhere to and penetrate one another one goes inside the first and they are perceived as the foreheads of the four winds of the world yet all four are one body as is written Ofen a will in the middle of an Ofen Yashiskal 116 all four directions are connected with each other as is the case with the upper Chayat of this Chayat they never separate the four colors embroidered in the Chayat embrace each other and are drawn toward the four directions because of this it appears that when the Chayat travels it travels to two directions by and Malchute the embodiments of the four directions 117 the spirit of Barak is composed of two spirits first the spirit of lightning which produces the Chayat described above which contains all those mentioned lights a second spirit called the blazing spirit extends from Barak and shines. 118 from this blazing spirit extend two lights that are really four directions as discussed above these lights which are constantly changing their appearance are called the bright blade of a revolving sword bear sheet 324 these lights change and turn into the edge of a sword these lights stand above the lights in the lower chamber called the chamber of merit echo the blade of the sword is situated above the 70 lights of the court assembly in the chamber of merit from this we learn that a sword is hung above the heads of the judges 119 the bright blade of the sword which is the lights of the left side produces another chaya that stands above four ofanim who are unstable they cannot radiate outward but just twinkle because they are two to the right and two to the left and when the spirit of this chaya enters the four unstable ones when it travels under four ofanim two blazing sparks come out of them the sparks leave this chamber and constantly change they are sometimes Female and sometimes male, sometimes they are spirits and sometimes they are holy angels. 120 Why? Because when this Chaya was embraced by the first Chaya which came out of Barak, the strength of the entwinement created an eternal spark that never extinguishes the spark roams after the two sparks described above. 121 Now they are males and they perform their mission in the world but are extinguished before they are finished. Then the spark strikes them, shines upon them, and renews them as before. Now they are females because they receive from the spark the emanation of Malchud, which is considered female, and they go out and float around before they end their mission. They are extinguished when they radiate from the right, they are called spirits and they roam, but when they touch upon the left, they are called angels and are extinguished. But the spark then strikes and shines upon them again and they are renewed as before, and so it is every time they are extinguished for the spark. Comprises them all and consists of the four appearances thus those two sparks that receive from him change continuously into the four appearances males female spirits and angels 122 this lower spirit is included in the other supernal spirit as we said and both appear as one unlike the first ones which when included one with the other appear as one these are distinguishable they coexist in love and are composed of all the lower chambers although they appear as two spirits they are one and when one spirit expands within the other they lovingly include all the lower spirits as it is written your two breasts are like two young rows who are twins and feet among the lilies sure hasherim 45 123 when those two spirits expand and lovingly fill each other this chamber again becomes the chamber of Ahabal of the chamber of love is always stable and hidden from all within the innermost secrets except those who seek to cling to it this is as written there I will give you my love Sure Hasherim 712 124 Later when the two spirits that are one shine innumerable thousands and tens of thousands of different hosts emerge from them some are called mandrakes according to the secret meaning of the MA and Eryx give a fragrance Sure Hasherim 714 Some are called vines according to the secret meaning of Led USC if the vine has flowered Sure Hasherim 713 and others are called pomegranates as is the secret of and the pomegranates but forth the hosts come forth from it. Spirits until some of the hosts outside the chamber reach the planet Noga Venus and from this planet the lower planets draw down sustenance after the intermixing of those spirits they are bound by love and never separate this is as it is written if a man would give all the substance of his house for love it would be utterly ridiculed Sure Hasherim 87 here one bows one's head and spreads one's hands to cleave to his master's love section 32 the sixth. Chamber Typhoret herein lies the source of all desires. Desire is a vital component and engine which draws the light. Without desire, the light remains in a state of potential actions alone are not enough to arouse and draw in light. According to Kabbalah, every action must be coupled with an active desire to receive the light. Desires can be either positive or negative. A negative desire for light arouses the energy, but it will be utilized for evil purposes just as electrical current can be applied. For both positive and destructive means, our intent and desire determines how light will be revealed in our world. 125. The sixth chamber is called the chamber of Ritz and desire. Here dwells the spirit called Chathashin, a thread of scarlet about which it is written, Your lips are like a thread of scarlet. Sure, Hashirim 43. All the lower spirits chase Ritz in an effort to catch him and cleave to him with a loving kiss. 126. The spirit consists of six and is sustained by six. It comprises it. Six chambers below it and is sustained by six above it. The spirit therefore produces twelve lights. Each light includes all the upper and the lower six. These twelve lights are happy to elevate higher as well as to receive the lower ones. One hundred and twenty-seven. This is the chamber of Ritz and being the overall desire and he who forms connections that is unifies and elevates the lower chambers up to this chamber draws good will desire from Hashem with love into this chamber. Moshe was gathered to his people with love. He was kissed with the kiss of love as is written and Moshe the servant of Hashem died here in the land of Moab according to the mouthword of Hashem. Devarim three hundred and forty-five. This is the secret meaning of the kiss of love. This is called the chamber of Moshe. The spirit is the spirit of love. The spirit of unison. It draws love to every part and the twelve lights within the spirit rise and glow. One twenty-eight. And the twelve lights of the spirit rise and glow from their shining four holy are produced. These Chayat which are the true manifestations of love are called the Great Chayat they embrace the smaller Chayat and contain them as is said both small and Great Chayat Tehillim 10425 129 the Great Chayat contain
include six from the chamber itself and six from the lower vessels which have elevated to be included in it the same effect is produced in the jayat the six lights of the chamber produce four great jayat namely chakma bandha typharet and malchut each one of the four great jayat has four sides hence there are 16 lights and the six lights emanating from the lower chambers produce the 12 small jayat each of these jayat contains only three aspects being from the position of the chest downward and within these small jayat spirits are contained in spirits and lights within lights all are contained within the other until they become one and then after all the lower ones unite the spirit includes them all it thus encompasses the 12 lights which in turn are included within the four great and 12 small jayat and the 12 small jayat include all the lower ones as previously explained the spirit rises with them to be adorned by the supernal spirit called Shamayim heaven which is the secret of Zeirn of Atzala as Zeirn is the secret of the Ruach of Atzala and is called heaven it invites him to be united with him and when all those from below are attached to him it says let him kiss me with the kisses of his mouth Shir 11 and there is the joy of uniting a spirit with a spirit that is the spirit of desire which includes all the lower ones joins with the spirit of Atzala which is the secret of Zeirn and called heaven to complement each other this union results in perfection by uniting all of the lower chambers the spirit becomes whole both with Chesedim and Chakma 131 the spirit of Ritzin connects with the spirit of Atzala called Shemayin and each complements the other with the emanations of Chakma they are lit by each other through the light of Chesedim and perfection ensues all of this happens when the desire of a righteous man reciting his prayers elevates all of the chambers of Briya to this place in it world of Atzala for the sake of lovingly joining them together and each of the spirits all of the chambers that are contained within the spirit called Ritz and Desire and each and every spirit or chamber contained in Zeir and of Atzala called Shamayim picks the chamber and spirit most suitable for it to connect with and to be complemented by through this unification the sixth spirit called Ritz and elevates all of the lights and spirits in the chambers of Briya to the lights and spirits in Zeir and of Atzala 132 thus connect every aspect of Zeir and with every corresponding aspect of the chamber Shamayim namely Zeir and or the supernal holy spirit therein receives the upper chamber and the upper spirit called Ritz and so that they can kiss connect with and complement each other this is the concealed meaning of and Yaakov kiss Rachel Bershi 2911 Yaakov is the secret of Zeir and and Rachel is the mukba containing all of the chambers that elevated to Atzala. 133 hence Avraham who is the right column of Zeir and called Chisa takes the spirit called Ahabalab and causes them to connect and embrace each other this is evident in the words I know that you are a beautiful woman Bershi 1211 and the beauty of a woman lies in her breast namely in the fifth chamber signifying breast 134 it's Hot who is the left column of Zeir and called Bure takes the chamber of courthouses which is the fourth chamber from where comes all the judgments and joins it with Zekut they connect with and complete each other and they are one as should be the other prophets beside Moshe namely Netzach and Hot of Zeir and connect the two chambers containing the two spirits of Noga brightness and Zohar splendor as it is written the joints of your thighs are like jewels Shur Hashirim 71 because the two chambers are contained in Netzach and Hot of the Mukba and are like thighs which connect with each other to be one 135 Yosef the righteous Pillar of the world, namely is it of Zeir and takes the chamber of Sapir and the spirit called Lebnat Hasapir because it is written and beneath his feet as if it were a paved work of sapphire Lebnat Hasapir Shema 2410. One might think that Lebnat Hasapir is beneath Yezid of Zeir and beyond his grave, nevertheless, beneath his feet was set for the honor of the king, but it certainly is Yezid of Zeir and that takes the chamber of Lebnat Hasapir. Furthermore, this pillar, namely Yezid of Zeir and takes more, this is a highly secret matter to expound on because he takes in the seventh chamber. Now, the levels of Zeir and are linked with the levels of the chambers and the two complete one another. All is as should be, and hence Hashem is Elohim. I may 1839 that is Zeir and which is called Yudi Havahe becomes one with the Nukva called Elohim in such a way that Yudi Havahe is Elohim joyous is the portion in this world and the next of you who knows how to link them and Cleave to his master 136 here in the chamber of Ritz in the bowing prostration spreading of open hands and genuflection are practiced what is practiced in the lower chambers is practiced here but the lowering of the face is added here the lowering of the face is practiced only in this chamber because all of the lower chambers are contained here it is necessary to draw on the goodwill of the supernal spirit namely the top three spirit of Zeir and the soul of all souls suspended above in the supernal Abba and IMA all the way up to Einsaf the endless world draws on it by the mating of a kiss from the Einsaf above come lights and blessings to complement all appropriately this is the secret of the light of the Shesedim of the supernal six of Abba and IMA this is the necessary means through which all can be completed from above by the light of Shesedim and from below by the light of Chakma after this completion all the faces meaning all of the features of the three top spirit. Namely, the three top of Chesedim and the three of Chakma shine suitably, and because of the light of Chakma, all judgments are annulled, and because of the light of Chesedim, goodwill fills above and below. Hence, it is written, and he said to me, You are my servant, O Israel, in whom I will be glorified. Yeshayah 493, and happy is that people that this is their lot, happy is that person that Hashem is his Elohim. Tehillim 14,415, section 33, seventh chamber. Coach Kodashim, the Holy of Holies, this realm is defined as the source of all sources. We must enter into this highest realm in order to ignite and activate all the complex processes that occur in the previous chambers. This realm is symbolized by the ancient Holy Temple of Jerusalem, and specifically in the chamber known as the Holy of Holies. Though the physical temple no longer stands, our daily prayers are metaphysically structured to lead us into the spiritual essence of the Holy of Holies. These seven chambers complete the structure and framework that form the upper worlds 137. The seventh chamber has no real shape, everything in it is concealed deep within the innermost of mysteries of the closed Parashat curtain. Here, all of the chambers exist so as to conceal two cherubim, a male and a female. All the lower chambers are elevated to be contained in this curtain so that they cover the male and the female while they may, hence, the chambers are able to ascend as curtain separates. The six chambers, which are holy, and the seventh chamber, Coach Kodashim, the Holy of Holies, beyond the curtain can be found the Kapurit cover of the ark, which is the image of the Holy of All Holies, because this chamber is the place of union, therefore, it is called the Holy of Holies, a place designated to receive the supernal soul, which is the totality of all the worlds. This is the world to come of the supernal ones 138 when all the spirits of the chambers have joined with and completed. Each other a supernal spirit the soul of all rises toward the supernal who is the most concealed namely Eric Enpin to bring sustenance down to all to shine on them from above with the light of the right column and to complete them and light the candles with the light of the left column 139 when all are completed by the light that shines on all and the supernal light descends the seventh chamber which is concealed with utmost concealment receives the holy of holies which is the descending. Supernal light the light fills the seventh chamber as a woman who conceives from a male is filled by him the chamber is designed for concealment from all so that it may receive the supernal light namely if the concealment was not set there it would not have been able to receive the supernal light this is the secret of the seventh chamber which is the place of the connection made during union the union links the seventh with the seventh so that all is one unity as is appropriate 140 joyful. Is the portion of he who knows to connect with this unification he is beloved above and below the Holy One blessed be he decrees and he that man nullifies he asks how is it conceivable that a righteous man criticizes his masters well how is it possible that he cancels out the desire of the Holy One blessed be he and he answers this is only possible when a righteous man forms links and knows how to make unification so that all faces shine all is complete and everything is holy blessed then. All judgments are abolished and none can be found in this world joyful is such a man's lot in this world and the next all that has been said about the righteous man refers to his actions below in this world hence it is written of him the righteous is the world's foundation Mishlei 1025 as he is the subsistence of the world and each day a declaration is made about him and you shall rejoice in Hashem and shall glory in the Holy One of Israel
Arouse and all the chambers enter the Holy of Holies which is the seventh chamber this is what is indicated by the inner meaning of the mating of seventh with seventh the seventh chamber is blessed and filled like a well of spring water that never ceases to flow and all the upper and lower chambers are blessed 143 the innermost of secrets is a light that cannot be conceived and is taken account of in the tense virat it is a desire that can never be grasped this light refers to the Light of Yeshida because the tense virat begin from Chakma by the DAAT Chisid Viru Tiferet Net Sach Hadyazid and Malchut the light of Yeshida is sweetened deep within the Svirat and its desire cannot be conceived not even by thought directed at knowing him thus all the levels of Tuan Saf the endless world blessed be he unite into one and everything is perfected from above below and within 144 this desire the light of Yeshida is not encased in the inner part of the levels nevertheless it stays within them unobserved until they reach completion and radiate with every aspect both the light of Chakma and the light of Chesedim as before hence this desire that cannot be grasped is sweetened and is encased and concealed deep within the inner parts at that time joyful is the portion of he who can cleave to his master he is complete above and below of him it is written your father and mother will be glad and she who gave birth to you shall rejoice Mishle 2325 145 come and behold, because they have been completed by each other and bind each other in oneness, and because the supernal soul namely bindeth shines on them from above, all the lights become one perfect candle. Then this light that cannot be grasped or observed is grasped by a desire of the mind. Yet this desire of the mind, called the light of Shaya, that encases the light of Yeshua, still does not know what it has grasped. This is because the light radiates within it in a concealed manner. Still the mind shines because of and is sweetened by it as it contains it. All the levels are filled with his light. All reach completion and all shine because of him and are suitably sweetened. Hence it is written, Happy are the people that this is their lot. Tehillim 14,415, 146. And he who is attached to his master in this manner inherits all the worlds. He is beloved above and below. His prayer never returns unanswered. He purifies himself before his master as a son who satisfies all of his father's desires. Giving him all that he requires, the fear of him is upon all creation, and whatever he decrees, the Holy One, blessed be he, fulfills of him. It is written, You shall decree, and it shall be established unto you, and the light shall shine upon your ways. Eo 2228, section 34. Let there be light. An unprepared vessel can be spiritually dangerous and destructive. Similarly, if acid is poured into a paper cup, the cup is not designed to receive the acid, and it dissolves. Preparing the vessel of your being is the first step that must be taken before you even activate your desire to draw in spiritual light. Perusing the Hebrew letters from the segment of the Zohar prepares our vessel so that we can receive and safely contain the awesome light of the Creator. 147. And Elohim said, Let there be light, and there was light. Bear sheet 13. Rabbi Itzhak said that we learn from these words that the Holy One, blessed be he, uprooted these plants and replanted them. Elsewhere hence the expression there was Rabbi Yehuda said that this implies that light had already existed this is indicated and there was it was not written there became light but there was light and when the Holy One blessed be he viewed the generations of the wicked who are not worthy of the light he stored it for the righteous this is mentioned in the verse light is sown for the righteous and gladness for those upright in their hearts Tehillim 9711 thus it was written and Elohim said let there be light as is written who arose righteousness from the east Yeshayah 412 148 and Elohim saw the light that it was good Bereshi 14 what did he see Rabbi Shia said that this implies that he foresaw the actions of the wicked and stored the light as we said before Rabbi Abba disagrees and says and Elohim saw the light that it was good to store it away that is he did not look at the actions of the wicked but saw the magnificence of the light itself and decided that it was good for it to be concealed and not revealed to the world and Elohim saw the light he saw its radiance beaming from one end of the world to the other and he saw that it was better to store it so that sinners might not benefit from it 149 Rabbi Shimon said and Elohim saw the light that it was good this means that he decided that no anger or judgment would be found in it similarly it was said in connection to Bilam that it was good in the eyes of Hashem to bless Yisrael Bimidbar 241 so that a curse will not befall Yisrael this is proven by the end of the verse and Elohim separated the light from the darkness to prevent wrath and judgment and even though the Holy One blessed be he afterward united light and darkness as one nevertheless there was no further conflict and anger 150 come and behold the supernal radiance by should continue to radiate and through its radiance it should bring gladness to all this is the position of the right which was crowned with the right to regulate laws of the left it is written how great is your goodness which you have laid upon those who fear you and which you have wrought for they who trust in you Tehillim 3120 how great is your goodness alludes to the primordial light that the holy one blessed be he stored away they who fear you alludes to the righteous who fear sins and as we said only they should enjoy the light section 35 and there was evening and there was morning true spiritual power is achieved through the existence of both light and darkness spiritual transformation requires darkness so that there is something tangible transform and light is actually generated during the stage of transformation a simple candle can provide us with analogies to help enrich our understanding of the need for darkness a tiny candle has no significance or worth when flickering against the backdrop of a brilliant sunlit day but even a massive darkened aruna responds to it Lighting of one candle in that setting the candlelight assumes great importance and value moreover it is the dark burning wick that gives rise to the candle's bright flickering flame it is for reasons like these that darkness came into existence intently browsing the text of Hebrew letters together with the knowledge gained by reading the section delivers streams of shining light into areas of darkness that may be present in our lives 151 and there was evening and there was morning one day. And there was evening was drawn from the side of darkness namely the mukbah and there was morning was drawn from the side of light namely Zeir and Pen and since Zeir and Pen and mukbah join together as one it is written of them one day this indicates that evening and morning are like one body and both make the day Rabbi Yehuda asked if the scripture has already stated that there was evening and there was morning means the mating of Zeir and Pen and mukbah why then are the words and there was evening and there was morning repeated each day he answers that it is to acknowledge that there cannot be day without night nor night without day and that they are inseparable 152 Rabbi Yossi said that the day from which the primal light emerged extended into all the other days of creation as the word day is repeated in them all Rabbi Lazar said that we learn this from the fact that the name morning was used in them all because morning only relates to the primal light that is morning means the first revelation of light Rabbi Shimon said that the first day accompanies all the others and that all are contained in the first this shows that there is no fragmentation between them and that all are one section 36 let there be light the power of these verses from the Zohar literally makes the light manifest in our lives 153 and Elohim said let there be light alludes to the spreading of light downward these are the angels that were created on the first day and who subsist on the right side because the first day Chisa is considered to pertain to the right side hence the angels drawn from it pertain to the right in the quotation and Elohim saw the light that it was good the particle ET the joins the opaque mirror that is malchute with the shining mirror that is Zeir and this is the union that was pronounced good Rabbi Lazar said that the particle ET includes all the angels who come from the side of the light of Chisa and that they all shine as holy as the first light as it is said of them and it was good section 37 let there be a firmament the light of sun requires reflection off a physical object in order to illuminate this is the secret of the word firmament to create resistance and a circuit of energy a burning light bulb requires a filament man requires a metaphysical filament the firmament to create resistance against the left column energy of our desire to receive which is our evil inclination this firmament or filament is our free will to resist the negative urges and desires of the ego when we apply this resistance we create a metaphysical circuit that generates spiritual light 154 let there be a firmament amidst the water bear sheet 16 rabbi yehuda said that these words indicate that the upper water was separated from the lower water and that a firmament means the spreading of water hence he continues the words and let it divide water from water mean let there be a division between the upper and lower waters 155 and elohim made the firmament bear sheet 17 the words and elohim made indicate that he acted by supernal greatness it was not said there was a firmament but that he made the firmament indicating that he invested it with greatness 156 rabbi Yitzhak said that in the second day Gehenom was created for
The light of the right considered the root of the second day had already emerged on the first day. Why was the second day made in need of the third day's correction? Rabbi Shia further pointed out that through the second day's correction by the third day, its own radiance was reduced such that it could not shine downward. If the second day had been corrected by the first day, then it would have maintained its essence and not have reduced itself. Rabbi Shimon said that this was the reason for the conflict. Actually, the first day wanted to correct the deficiency of the second as the root wants to correct the branch, but the second day would not accept any control by the first day and descended. Hence, it was necessary for the third day to intervene, settle the conflict between them, and restore peace. Section 38 Let the earth bring forth grass. The Zohar explains that the first five days of creation do not deal with real time but rather with spiritual. Phases during these five days, all the forces and entities of creation were maintained in a state of potential. The sixth day of creation refers to their physical manifestation and the start of their physical existence here through the spiritual influences that emanate from each and every letter. The Zohar provides us with an opportunity to manifest and express the potential light in our lives. 158. Let the earth bring forth grass. Bear sheet 111 indicates the union of the upper waters with the lower waters to bear fruit, the upper produce fruit, and the lower call upon the upper to receive from them the fruit they are to bear in the world. This is as a female calls upon the male to conceive from him and bring forth offspring to the world. This is because the upper waters are male and the lower waters are female. 159. Rabbi Shimon explains further that what is true for above is true for below. Above is the secret of Zeir and Leah, and Zeir and is upper waters and Leah is lower. Waters below is the secret of Yaakov and Rachel where Yaakov is upper waters and Rachel is lower waters. Rabbi Yossi said that if this be so then what does Elohim mean in the passage and Elohim said let the earth put forth grass what is the name Elohim in the verse it is a living Elohim above namely by as referred to by all 32 mentions of the name Elohim in the works of creation are we to accept that the name Elohim below is a plain Elohim this he said is contrary to what was explained. Earlier that is that all 32 Elohims within the 42 are the names of Bano which is a living Elohim Rabbi Yos I replied not so the offspring are below he quotes these are the generations of the heavens and earth when they were created behind Ram Bereshit 24 as has already been explained they were created by the letter Hey Ram which is the Mukva from the chest downward of Zeir and Rachel who is the last Hey of Yud Hey from where come all the offspring the offspring do not. Come from the Mukva above the chest, the one above is the father of all levels, namely the three Sfirat, Shisid, Bura, and Tiferet. All that comes down to the worlds comes from them, and Shidir Mukva completes the function of generation but does not bear fruit. Consequently, the earth bears fruit by being made pregnant as a female by a male, thus let the earth bring forth grass. Bear sheet 111 alludes to the mating of the upper and lower waters from the chest up, but the earth brought forth grass. Bear sheet 112 alludes to completion of the mating of upper and lower waters from the chest downward. 160 Rabbi Laser then said that all the forces were latent in the earth, which is a Maljut, and she did not fulfill her potential for bringing forth offspring until the sixth day. This is as it is written, let the earth bring forth living creatures. Bear sheet 124, where it is written, the earth brought forth grass does not mean that the grass emerged in actuality, it means only that it did. Not activate its forces until the sixth day all remained stored until the time came to release the forces namely on the sixth day for at first it is written IT was formless and void meaning desolate and empty in the Aramaic translation that is it was a desert and on the third day it was suitably furnished with seeds grass plants and trees finally it put them forth on the sixth day similarly the luminary bodies did not emit their light until it was needed section 39 luminous bodies of the firmament in these verses we are given the ability to remove curses all forms of negativity and all forms of deprivation from our lips 161 the words let there be luminous bodies in the firmament of the heaven bear sheet 114 are for the inclusion of the evil serpent who befouled and caused the separation between the sun and the moon as a result they are not able to make the word me or luminous bodies is therefore spelled without a vav so that it means curses the adjustment to the spelling is because the serpent caused the earth to be cursed as is written cursed is the ground for your sake. Bereshit 317 that is the serpent was the cause of the sin of the tree of knowledge a consequence of which was that the earth was cursed hence it is written Miro without a vav which means curses 162 let there be luminous bodies refers to one luminary as it is spelled without the vav connoting singular luminary is the moon and the words the firmament of heaven refer to the sun thus the entire expression let there be luminous bodies in the firmament of the heaven indicates that both the sun and moon were coupled to illuminate the worlds both above the chest of Zeir and Ben and below it is written on the earth and not in the earth to indicate radiance above and below and to teach us that all calculations are done according to the moon 163 Rabbi Shimon said that numerical measurements determination of periods and intercalary. Calculations are all made according to the moon because above the moon this mating cannot be found to radiate the Mokin Aram spiritual light of numerical calculations. Rabbi Laser said to him, however, this is not so as there are the Mokin of calculations and measurement above the moon for many calculations and measurements are made by our colleagues. But Rabbi Shimon explained that this is not what he meant. The Mokin of calculation are made in the moon and not in any other level yet from this basis a man may proceed further and grasp calculations in higher levels. Indeed, from there a man may also proceed to attain the Mokin of calculations from levels beyond the moon. Rabbi Laser said to him, yet it is written, let them be assigned for seasons and days and years. Bear sheet 114. This use of the plural indicates that the Mokin of calculation is revealed both in the moon and even in the sun, which is Zeir and Rabbi Shimon said to him, signs is spelled without Vav indicating it. Singularity of the moon and excluding the sun Rabbi Laser said it is written let them be indicating plurality thus including the sun Rabbi Shimon said this is not said about the sun and moon but about the faces of the Mokin they were all within the moon which is like a boat filled with everything but calculating them all is done only according to the moon not the sun 164 come and see there is one point which is the beginning of reckoning and account that is Eric Enpin called beginning that which is within and beyond Eric Enpin is completely unknowable there is one point above where all is hidden unrevealed and unknown it is by of Eric Enpin from there starts the reckoning and the revelation of all that is hidden and deep namely the seven lords fire of by of Eric Enpin there is also a point below namely Mukba of Zeir Enpin which is the starting point of the revelation of all calculations and numbers consequently it is the place from where the Mokin. Radiate upon all numerical measurements, determinations of seasons, intercalary days, festivals, holy days, and Shabbats, and the children of Israel who cleave to the Holy One, blessed be he reckoned by the moon, as the sages have said, Israel reckoned by the moon, and the nations of the world by the sun, they cleave to it, and ascended to clothe the supernal bun, as it is written, and you who cleave to Hashem to your Elohim are all alive today, to Barim 44, section 40, let the water team with swarms, the swarms refer to the numerous angels that continually interact with humanity, the power to remove negative angels, and their influences from our lives derives from the sacred letters, at the same time we gain the power to connect ourselves to the positive influences of the good angels that populate the upper spiritual atmospheres, 165, let the water team with swarms of living creatures, bear sheet 120, Rabbi Laser said, we have already explained that the Lower waters teamed and gave birth like the upper waters meaning that the lower waters gave birth to what they received from above it is said birds to fly over the earth why he then inquired use the word yafif to fly instead of the simple yaf 166 Rabbi Shimon said this is a secret because it alludes to the creation of angels bird refers to Michael of whom it is written and one of the seraphim flew to me Yashayah 66 one of the seraphim refers to Michael to fly yafif is said about Gabriel as it is written even the man Gabriel whom I had seen in the vision at the beginning being set aflight to fly swiftly Daniel 921 it is Eliyahu who is continuously upon the earth Eliyahu who is not connected to the side of Abba and I am a because he flies with four wings as it is written and the spirit of Hashem shall carry you where I know not I may 1812 the spirit of Hashem indicates one wing and carry you the second wing where the third and I know not the fourth does he Flies with four wings 167 the words upon the face allude to
Powers of the earth and because the healing of the earth comes from him his creation is indicated in the words upon the earth while the words upon the face of the firmament of the heaven refer to the creation of the angel Uriel and all the four angels the carriers of the chariot are alluded to in this verse 168 the text proceeds and Elohim created the great sea creatures Beersheet 121 Rabbi Lazar said those are the 70 ministers of the upper worlds in charge of the 70 nations created for the purpose of controlling the earth thus they are called the great instead of that move to teach us that they were created to be in charge 169 the words and every living creature had nefesh chayu that moves Beersheet 121 refer to the creation of the nefesh of Israel who are surely the nefesh of chayu which is the mukba of Zeir and this is certain because the entirety of the world of Atzalut is considered the light of chayu they are therefore called one. Nation in the earth to Shmuel 723 the words which the waters brought forth abundantly after their kind Beersheet 121 refer to those who occupy themselves with Torah water always alludes to Torah and whoever occupies himself with her merits the nefesh of Shaya and he who does not occupy himself always with Torah does not have a holy nefesh the words and every wing fell after its kind Beersheet 121 allude to the righteous among them among those who occupy themselves with Torah and for this reason for being righteous they merit the nefesh of Shaya according to another interpretation the words every wing fell refer to the angels worldly messengers of whom we have already spoken 170 Rabbi Abba said that the words living creatures refer to Israel because they are children of the Holy One blessed be he from whom their holy souls originate he asked from where do the souls of idolatrous nations originate Rabbi Lazar said their souls come from the forces of the left who Defile them therefore they are all impure and convey impurity to those who come close to them 171 and Elohim said let the earth bring forth living creatures Beersheet 124 these words refer to the rest of Shayat apart from Israel each and everyone receives according to its kind Rabbi Lazar added this supports our statement that living soul refers to Israel who are holy supernal living souls the words cattle and creeping things and Shayat of the earth Beersheet 124 refer to the idolatrous nations which are not living souls rather they are as we have said drawn from the forces of the left which defile them section 41 let us make man the body of man is a reflection of upper world forces every act we perform in our lower world initiates a corresponding spiritual action in the upper world the magnitude of each action however is concealed from us the simple physical hand movement of reaching into one's pocket to draw a few coins for charity arouses little effect in our physical environment in the realm of the spirit however this act moves mountains scanning through the Aramaic text is another such action it generates unimaginable positive energy for the reader and for the world 172 the words let us make man in our image and in our likeness indicate that man was made of the six directions that comprise all that is Chakma and Chesedim after the supernal image limbs are structured according to secret wisdom. According to the supernal structure the words let us make man refer to the secret of male and female made according to the holy supernal wisdom all was done so that man could receive supernal and holy wisdom and since wisdom can only be drawn through the mukba man was created male and female in the verse in our image and in our likeness in which image is the mokim of male and likeness is the mokim of female they will construct each other making man unique and fit to rule the world. Section 42 And Elohim saw all that he made when God created us he saw the final outcome of his intention to bestow infinite fulfillment upon the vessel for all eternity the creator actually saw the result even in the original thought because he is above any concept of time he perceives the end in the beginning we however who are under the influence of time find ourselves in a process of transformation that eventually paves the way for infinite fulfillment the section of the Zohar connects us to the creator's original thought of creation we can accelerate the process of change and connect ourselves to light that is destined to be ours when we achieve our final correction 173 And Elohim saw all that he had made and behold it was very good these words correct the omission of the words it was good in the second day these words were omitted on the second day because on a death was created now the words it was very good are used the colleagues have explained that it was very good refers to death because this is so it was fitting to use it was good on the second day the day on which death was created but the words were not used until the sixth day when it was revealed that death is very good 174 and Elohim saw all that he made and behold it was very good he asked did he not see that before the words and Elohim saw give the impression that he only saw after he had created he explains the holy one blessed be he saw all the things that had been made and those yet to be made and these are those who commented that the particle et before the word all indicates that he saw all the generations to be and all that was to happen in the world in each generation before those generations even came to existence the words which he had made allude to all the works of creation recounted in Beersheet there the foundation and root of all that was to be and will subsequently come to pass in the world was established hence the holy one blessed be he for Saul and placed all in the works of creation 175 the unique aspect of the words the sixth day is the letter hey have the hey was used in reference to no day except the sixth for the formula is not the first day the second day and so on but rather one day a second day and so on this is because now the world was finished which is Zeir and Pen and Mukba who were combined at the end of the works of creation as the female was united with the male into one unit hey with sixth to be completely one thus the heavens and earth were finished indicates that the unification of the male and female was complete in every detail the works of creation were completed in every way and were fully equipped with everything section 43 the heavens and earth were finished the spiritual intention of this passage is to help us recognize that the Torah is not a book about morals values and ethics the Torah is the actual channel and portal by which we connect to the light of the Creator this awareness gives us the ability to activate the Torah's spiritual powers when we study the Torah it becomes a vehicle by which we literally elevate into the upper worlds 176 the heavens and earth were finished along with all their hosts Beersheet 21 Rabbi Lazar quoted how great is your goodness which you have laid out for those who fear you you have wrought for them who put their trust in you before the sons of men Tehillim 3120 come and behold the Holy One blessed be he placed man in the world he gave him the abilities to perfect himself in his service and to correct his ways so as to merit the supernal light that the Holy One blessed be he saved for the righteous this is as it is written no I have seen Elohim Yeshayah 643 alluding to the stored light the words you will do for those who await you refer to the righteous 177 and how can one merit this stored light the answer I ask only through constant occupation with Torah he who occupies himself with Torah every day merits a place in the afterworld and it is considered as if he had built the world through Torah the world was built and completed thus the words Hashem founded the earth with wisdom he established the heavens with understanding Mishlei 319 referred to the wisdom and understanding found in Torah and it is also written and I will be an Azilin Hebamon with him and I will be his delight every day Mishlei 830 which means that Torah was his craftsmanship Hebamon in creating the world thus whoever embraces Torah completes and preserves the worlds come and behold the Holy One blessed be he made the world by breath and by breath it is preserved it is preserved by the breath of the mouths of those who study Torah it is preserved even more by the breath of the children in the houses of learning because the world is preserved for them 178 furthermore how great is your goodness refers to the hidden good or the stored light those who fear you relates to those who fear wrongdoing those who occupy themselves constantly with Torah for whom the light was stored you have wrought for them who trust in you he asks what is the meaning of raw and he responds that it refers to the works of creation the whole of creation did not come about and could not be maintained if not for those who study Torah those who can draw through their learning upon the stored light Rabbi Abba said the word raw refers to the garden of Eden which the Holy One blessed be he crafted on earth in the image of the supernal shape for the righteous to reinforce themselves the words are raw for them who put their trust in you which you had laid out for those who fear you before the sons of men because the lower garden of Eden is for humans and the other one the supernal garden of Eden is only for the supernal holy beings not for people Rabbi Shimon said the word raw refers to the supernal garden of Eden but even so it is for the sons of men for there gather the righteous who do the will of their master although the upper garden of Eden is not for humans the righteous in the lower garden of Eden rise through the air into the upper garden of Eden even though the righteous must ascend and return to their places the upper garden is still considered for people 179 and they were finished indicates that all the work that was to be done both above and below was finished
Craps refers to the top three Svirat, all their hosts refers to the details of Torah. The 70 alternative aspects of Torah, which are the details of the structure of Zeir and Pen called Torah, and the heavens and earth were finished, means that both Zeir and Pen and the Mukva called heaven and earth can coexist and complement each other. The heavens and the earth are particular and general, and all their hosts are the inner meanings called secrets of Torah and the rules of cleanliness and uncleanness in Torah. Section 44 and Elohim finished on the seventh day. The power of blessing is the final necessary stage for any endeavor. Blessing assures that positive energy remains constant and consistent. Focus visual connection with the Zohar's text arouses and imbues the power of blessing into our lives, especially in the areas of greatest need. 180 and Elohim finished on the seventh day. Bear sheet 22 alludes to the oral law, namely Malchut. The seventh day Zeir and Pen contains six days and the Mukva which is Malchut is the seventh on the seventh day the world was completed and all was preserved it is written his work which he had made and not all his work because the written Torah which is Zeir and Pen created the world through the power of written words which are Mokin extended from Chakma hence the work was finished on the seventh day which is Malchut the Mukva of Zeir and Pen 181 the seventh day was mentioned three times. In the text and Elohim finished on the seventh day and he rested on the seventh day and Elohim blessed the seventh day and Elohim finished on the seventh day refers to the oral Torah which is Malchut the Mukva of Zeir and Pen for by means of the seventh day the world was finished and completed as we have said 182 and he rested on the seventh day refers to the foundation of the world in the book of Rabbi Yebisava it is written that he rested refers to the Oval Jubilee namely the Illumination of the left side of Bina, hence it is written from all of his work because all originates from this and we say that and he rested alludes to Yezid not to the Jubilee because rest dominates everything else that is rest in the illumination of Yezid is more revealed than the rest in the illumination of the Jubilee 183 and Elohim blessed the seventh day refers to the high priest who blesses all and takes the first chair as we have learned the priest takes the first chair of all feasts and he is blessed hence he can bless others and is called the seventh Rabbi Yesus Abba said that and finished refers to the Yezid foundation of the world and blessed to the central column which is Typhorite 184 Rabbi Shimon said that and he sanctified it also refers to Yezid because it says and he sanctified it without saying what he sanctified this phrase is unlike the previous passages and he blessed and he rested because it refers to the place where the sign of it Covenant is fixed, namely Yezid. The word Odo it can be interpreted as the place of the sign of the covenant, namely Yezid, because it is written, and he shows me both it Odo and his habitation. Two Shmuel 1525 it refers to Yezid, and his habitation refers to Malchut. This place Yezid is the dwelling of all supernal sanctities, the place from which the Mukva descends upon the congregation of Israel to bestow upon her luxuries and the bread of joy. This is in accordance with the verse from Asher. His bread shall be fat, and he shall feel the dainties of the king. Bear she 4920 from Asher alludes to the perfect covenant. His bread shall be fat indicates that before the correction of the Yezid bread was a shame, but now after the correction it has become the bread of joy in the words, and he shall feel the dainties of the king. The king refers to the congregation of Israel, which is the Mukva of Zeir and to whom the Yezid gives all the luxuries of the world and all the sanctities. That emerged from above originate from this place hence he sanctified it the very sign of the covenant is at section 45 which Elohim created to make when the Sabbath was brought forth into creation it greatly diminished the influence of the created negative forces in our world the same power is given to us through the Sabbath learning the section helps us weaken the negative forces in our daily existence 185 for on it he rested indicates that in it namely within Yezid can be found rest for all the upper and lower in it is the Shabbat for rest which Elohim created indicates that from the remembering keeping had come forth to finalize the manufacturing of the world to make his the craftsmanship of the world to make alludes to the completed work a doing that perfects everything 186 Rabbi Shimon further elucidated the sentence which Elohim created to make with the words who keeps the covenant and the cheese of kindness. Devarim 79 he explained that who keeps refers to the congregation of Israel which is Malchut the covenant is the foundation of the world which is Yezid of Zeir Anpin and Shesed is Avraham who is Shesed of Zeir Anpin because the congregation of Israel Malchut is the keeper of the covenant and Shesed meaning it is the keeper of Shesed and of the Yezid of Zeir Anpin Malchut is called the protector of Israel because Zeir Anpin is called Israel and Malchut protects its Sfirot it protects it. Gateway to all the Sfirot of Zeir Anpin Yezid being its lowest sphere and Shesed its uppermost and because Malchut protects them it is viewed as the protector of all his Sfirot from Yezid up to Shesed upon it depends the functioning of the world because it protects Zeir Anpin from any INT reference from outside forces by means of the prohibitory precepts similarly all corrections and deeds depend on it by means of the positive precepts hence that Elohim created to make corrects and finalizes. Each and every day of the six days of creation which are the six Sfirot of Zeir and these words give birth to holy spirits and souls even evil spirits and demons are included in the phrase which Elohim created to make 187 and it is not true that evil spirits and demons play no role in correcting the world even they were created for the correction of the world to slap the hands of the wicked of the world and admonish them so they will follow correct paths whoever veers to the left side. Will find himself adhering to the demons and evil spirits of the left side who will punish him in this way the demons and evil spirits help correct the world come and see what was written about Solomon I will chasten him with the rod of men and with the plagues of the children of men. 2 Samuel 714 those plagues of the children of men are the harmful pests who are the demons and evil spirits because they were created to punish transgressors people fear them and keep away from since 188. Come and behold at the time the demons and evil spirits were being created the day Shabbat was being sanctified the demons and evil spirits were left without bodies because he did not have the time to make them bodies they are creatures who were not finalized come from the left and are considered the refuse of gold thus because they were not finished and remained defective the holy name cannot rest upon them and they cannot cleave to it they are terrified of the holy name and sweat with fear. Upon its mention therefore they cannot cleave to it furthermore the holy name cannot prevail in an imperfect place 189 come and behold a man who is imperfect because he does not leave a son behind him when he departs from this world cannot cleave to the holy name and will not be allowed beyond the curtain of the holy one blessed be he because he is defective and was not completed and a tree that was uprooted that is a man who dies without a son has to be replanted by being reincarnated. Into this world a second time because the holy name is perfect in all aspects the defective man cannot therefore cleave to him because spiritual cleaving is a matter of similarity of form and the defective are as far as east is to west from the perfect 190 come and behold those creatures namely the demons and evil spirits are defective above and below thus they cannot join the upper on the side of Bina or the lower on the side of Malchut of them it was written that Elohim created to make. Which means he created creatures that need correcting and finishing these creatures were not completed above or below neither from the side of Bina nor from the side of Malchut and if they are bodiless spirits why are they not completed above from the side of Bina because the spirits were not perfected below on earth by receiving a body they cannot be completed from above in the lights because they came from the aspect of Malchut they need to be clothed in bodies and since they have no bodies. Their spirits are defective as well and they cannot be corrected from above in Bina they all come from the left side and are invisible to the human eye they stand in opposition to people so that they can harm them they have three of the characteristics of the ministering angels and three features in common with people as has been explained they have wings fly from one end of the world to the other and foretell the future as do the ministering angels they eat drink procreate and die like people. 191 after their creation these spirits are left behind the millstones of the chasm of the great abyss when the sanctity of the Shabbat day has passed after the SHABBH these incomplete spirits come into the world and fly around in all directions people should be aware of them then once again the entire left side reawakens and the flames of Gehenna blaze all who come from the left side float around the world they want to clothe themselves with bodies but they are unable to do so at this time people must protect themselves against them thus the sages prescribe the saying of the hymn for
Pray for protection as when one says who protects his people Israel forever amen this blessing was prescribed for weekdays when the world needs protection but on Shabbat a tabernacle of peace is spread over the world and protects it from all directions even the sinners of Gehenna are preserved and all remain in peace both the upper and lower hands upon sanctifying the day we say he who spreads the tabernacle of peace over us and over all his people Israel and over Jerusalem instead of he who protects his people Israel as on weekdays 194 yet he asks why over Jerusalem and he answers because it is the abode of this tabernacle it behooves one to pray and summon the tabernacle of peace so that it will be spread upon us dwell with us and be to us like a mother protecting her children one therefore fears nothing on Shabbat from any side of the world therefore one says who spreads the tabernacle of peace over us and there is no need to say who protects his people Israel Forever Amen 195 Come and behold when Israel bless and call the tabernacle of peace the holy guest which only appears on Shabbat and is an infrequent guest they say he who spreads the tabernacle of peace then the supernal sanctity comes down spreads its wings over Israel and covers them as a mother covers her children and all evil leaves the world and the people of Israel remain under the holiness of their master consequently this tabernacle of peace gives new neshamot souls to her. Children he asks what is the reason it gives new souls to Israel and he answers that souls dwell in an issue from her because she is bind and because this tabernacle of peace dwells upon and spreads her wings over her children she sheds new souls upon each and every one of them 196 Rabbi Shimon says further that this is the reason why we have learned that Shabbat is similar to the world to come and this is true just estimate of the sabbatical year annual jubilee are equal to one. Another so are Shabbat and the world to come like Shemitah Shabbat is Malchut like Yobel the world to come is Bina and since we learn that Shabbat and the world to come are equal to each other then Shemitah and the Yobel are equal to one another the extra soul that the tabernacle of peace bestows upon her children comes from the secret of remembering Zeir and into the tabernacle of peace that extends from the world to come the tabernacle of peace receives the additional Neshamah from Zeir. And and gives them to the holy nation the people are related with the addition and all worldly matters sorrows and evil are forgotten thus it is written on the day that Hashem shall give you rest from sorrow and from your troubles Yeshua 143 indicating the time when additional Neshamah are received from the tabernacle of peace 197 on the evening of Shabbat one should taste of all the food he has to show that this tabernacle of peace embraces all three columns of Bina this is as Long as nothing is lacking from the Shabbat day meal because the honor of the day is greater than the night others say further that one should beware that nothing is lacking from the two meals of the day and it is well to be very careful with that and it is needless to say that if one has more than two meals on Shabbat day he can still taste of all the foods on the eve of Shabbat as long as two dishes remain for the day of Shabbat this was fully expounded upon 198 the Shabbat candles were given to the wives of the holy people to light and the friends have given a reason for that they explained that when Shabbat extinguished the candle of the world by causing Adam to eat of the fruit of the tree of knowledge she brought death and darkness to the world thus by lighting the Shabbat candles women correct that which Shabbat the first woman did and this is good nevertheless a deeper interpretation is that the tabernacle of peace that shines on Shabbat is the mother of the world and it Souls which are supernal candles reside within her thus a mother or a woman should light the candles by doing so she stands in the stead of the supernal mother of children the tabernacle of peace because she does so the upper mother of children bestows holy souls upon her children which is the secret of the supernal spiritual candles 199 for this reason a woman should light the candles of Shabbat with a joyful heart and great concentration because the supernal glory is hers it is a great merit to herself to be get in lighting the candles holy sons who are the shining candles of Torah and piety and who will bring peace to the world by lighting the candles she also gives her husband long light hence she should be very careful with the lighting of the candles and should do so with great concentration 200 come and behold the evening and day of Shabbat combine remember and keep in the first tablets it was written remember the Shabbat Shema 208 and in the second tablets it was written keep the Shabbat Devarim 512 because remember is the male presence of Zeir Anpin and keep is the female presence or the Nukva of Zeir Anpin when remember joins keep all is one joyful are the people of Israel who are the lot of the Holy One blessed be his destiny and his inheritance of them it is written happy is the nation that this is their lot happy is the nation that has Hashem as its Elohim Tehillim 14415 section 47 and Hashem Elohim built the rib this section helps every human being attract their true soulmates moreover the letters and words of the Zohar help existing marriages rekindle the flames of passion and spiritual enlightenment 201 and Hashem Elohim built the Zohar which he had taken from man Bershi 222 Rabbi Shimon says it is written Elohim understood her ways and he knew her place of there are many ways of looking at it but what is the principal way of interpreting Elohim Understood had heaven her ways it is similar to an Elohim built have Vayib in the Rib even the Rib means the oral Torah which is Malchut in which there is a path as it is written that makes a way in the sea Yeshaya 4316 the sea is Malchut and in it he made a path hence and Elohim understood her ways 202 and he knew her place he asks what is her place and he answers it is the written Torah namely Zeir Anpin the written Torah which is the secret of the upper Zeir Anpin and of the Mukba from the chest upward has knowledge Hashem Elohim is a complete name to correct the Malchut in everything hence the Mokin of the Mukba or Malchut are called Chakma and Bina because they are created with full perfection from the two names of Yudhe Vavhe and Elohim with Yudhe Vavhe corresponding to Chakma and Elohim to Bina hence Elohim understood her ways relates to the emanation of Chakma that comes through Bina and this emanation is called Elohim and he knew her. Place ISDAAT the light of Chesedim and the secret of Yud Hevav drawn from Abba through Zeir Anpin 203 the rib is a mirror that does not shine MALCHUT as it is written in Zalimai adversity they rejoice and gather Tehillim 3515 the word indicates opaque glass which needs correcting the words the rib that he took from man mean that he took Malchut out of the written Torah which is Zeir Anpin because woman originates in the Malchut of the written Torah to the woman indicates her connection with the flames of the left side Torah namely Zeir Anpin was given from the side of Bura which is related to the Nukva the word for woman Isha is derived from Ash meaning fire or the side of Bura and Hay indicating the Nukva to which the fire of Bura is connected and they are burned as 1204 and he brought her to Adam because it is not fitting for the Nukva to exist alone she is included within and cleaves to the written Torah Zeir Anpin and when it Mukba has united with Zeir Anpin, he feeds and prepares for her and bestows upon her all that she needs. Hence it is written, and the earth bear sheet 11, in which the Bab and in the earth alludes to Zeir Anpin, which bestows an abundance upon her called food. As we have already explained, 205 here we learn that the mother and father must supply all the needs of the daughter before she is wet. After she has been joined with her husband, it is for him to feed and give her what she requires. Come and behold, it is first written, and Hashem Elohim built the rib that is that mother and father have prepared for her. Then it is written, he brought her to Adam so they could join together and cleave to one another. Then it is for her husband to give her what she requires. 206. Another interpretation of the verse Elohim understood her ways is that when the daughter is in her mother's home, her mother cares for all her needs every day. Hence Elohim the mother understood the ways of it. Mukba when her husband marries her he gives her what she wants and satisfies her needs thus it was said that he namely the husband knew her place meaning that the husband cares for the wife once she is married to him section 48 and Hashem Elohim formed the man man is born into this world with an evil inclination built into his nature true transformation of character occurs through the assistance and spiritual power of a soulmate this relationship gives us inner strength and willpower to complete our transformation 207 it is written Hashem Elohim Vayetzer formed the man Bershi 27 Vayetzer is spelled with two Y-U-D-S to hint that your man was completely formed with both right and left as we have explained he was created with only the good inclination not with the evil inclination but later with and Hashem Elohim formed the evil inclination is also included in him this is the hidden reason for the two Yetzon alludes to the good Inclination the other to the evil inclination he asks why was he given two inclinations and he respon
The earth indicate that now he is about to be made ready that is now the two aspects will separate and face each other come and behold when a woman is wed to her husband she is called by her husband's name and woman righteous righteousness he is a young over dear she is a far dust he is called a dear and she a gazelle section 49 Bale and Asher these two words refer to two aspects of idol worship idol worshiping refers not only to bowing down before statues and icons idol worshiping includes any material possession or external situation that controls our emotions and behavior or that motivates us in any way when any of these influences determine our degree of contentment and joy in life then we have surrendered control and severed our connection to the light the true source of all fulfillment often our negative tendencies lead us to become worshippers of wealth or disciples of our own egos we can remove the power and allure of the idols that control us by meditating upon the Hebrew passages 210 it is written you shall not plant an Asher grove also the name of the goddess of any kind of tree at the altar of Hashem your Elohim which have Asher you shall make the Barm 1621 are we to understand from the words at the altar that only beside an altar it is not permitted to plant a grove if so then who permitted planting a grove anywhere else or above an altar but as we have explained Asher is the name of the husband and his wife is called after him Asher thus the words all the vessels made for the Baal and Asher 2 Melashim 234 indicate the side opposing Zeir and Pen and the Mukbah of the holiness the side where Baal lit husband is against Zeir and Pen and Asher is against the Mukbah hence we understand the question of why it says you shall not plant an Asher at the altar of Hashem your Elohim in the words at the altar at I synonymous with instead of the verse means you shall not plant an Asher of Idolatry in the place of Hashem your Elohim because the altar of Hashem is situated upon it that is about to annul the clip of Asherah as was said before thus do not plant another Asherah of idolatry against the altar 211 come and behold all those who worship the sun are always referred to as the worshippers of Baal and those who worship the moon are called worshippers of Asherah hence the above passage for the Baal and Asherah refers to Baal who is the sun and is male and Asherah who is the moon and is female she is called Asherah after her husband Asher but if she is called Asherah after her husband Asher why is the Mukbah not called Asherah anymore although the Mukbah of purity is no longer called so she was called Asherah in the past after the passage happy Oshri am I for the girls will call me blessed Beersheet 3013 she was called so by those who praised and acknowledged her and it is written of her beautiful of all sights the joy of the whole earth Tehillim 483 but the other nations did not acknowledge her erected an Asherah of idol worship in her stead and moreover belittled her as it is written all that honored her yet despised her each 18 and hence the name Asherah was taken away from her because they stopped acknowledging her and to prevent the other idolatrous nations from gaining strength she is called an altar which is made of earth this is as written an altar of earth you shall make for me Shema 2024 hence it was said of Adam and Hashem. Elohim made Adam from the dust of the earth where dust is malchute and earth is binded us through the sweetening of dust with earth he merited receiving the mokin of Neshama of life 212 after the dust was sweetened with earth it is written and he breathed in his nostrils the soul of life Beersheet 27 as the soul of life was breathed into the dust the body of Adam was sweetened like a female conceiving from a male through this process soul and body become joined because the light of Bina is called Neshama and because the body is sweetened to become an adequate vessel for Bina light and vessel embrace each other this dust which is the body becomes filled with emanations of light he asks what are those lights and he says they are the Ruash and Neshama it is written that then man became a living soul Nefesh which means that he was now complete in body and soul and could now correct and sustain the living soul that was his female 213 and Hashem Elohim built here. Also in building of the rib the full name is used as it was used in and Hashem Elohim made man because her father and mother corrected her before the woman came to her husband's home Zeir and Penhance a full name is mentioned as Hashem is Abba and Elohim is I am a the rib is described in the verse I am black and comely daughters of Jerusalem sure Hashem 15 meaning it was fashioned after the secret of the mirror that does not shine later her father and mother correct her so as to bring peace. Between husband and wife this is what is meant by he brought her to Adam section 50 soothing and asking permission the Zohar discloses the importance of treating one's wife with the utmost love honor and respect a man must make every attempt towards elevating his wife to the highest level here the Zohar is not simply emphasizing the need for moral and ethical behavior between a man and wife rather the Zohar is revealing supernal secrets the woman corresponds to the Sfirat of Malchut she is the vessel and is therefore responsible for manifesting life for the entire family accordingly the male must prepare and build the vessel if he hopes to maximize the spiritual light to be received the husband's actions arouse the light in the upper worlds while the wife manifests the light in our world in pursuing their own religious goals some men relegate their wives to a secondary position herein lies the difference between a religious mindset and a genuinely spiritual one spiritually a man can never grow and develop without elevating his wife to her rightful place from these passages we draw the consciousness and inspiration to strive for this kind of marriage 214 and he brought her to Adam Beersheet 222 from this we learn that it is incumbent on the father and mother of the bride to transfer her to the charge of her bridegroom as we read my daughter I have given to this man Devarim 2216 henceforward the husband is to come to the wife because the house is hers and not his IT behooves him therefore to come to her as it is written and he went into her Beersheet 2923 and and he went in also to Rachel Beersheet 2930 in the beginning it is written and he brought her to Adam because not until the mother and father prepare her to receive the light of Shesedim from Zeir and will Zeir and come to her all the whole house is the females and he has to have her permission before mating 215 and upon this we commented and he came onto the place and he slept there Beersheet 2811 meaning that he asked permission first from this we learn that he who wants to mate with his wife must soothe her first and soften her with sweet talk failing to do so he shall not sleep with her because their desire must be mutual and without coercion 216 and he slept there because the sun was setting comes to teach that sexual intercourse is forbidden during the day and he took of the stones of the place Beersheet 2811 we have learned that even if a king has beds of gold and glorious bed gowns to sleep in and the matron prepared for him a bed of stones he should leave his own and use what she has prepared as it is written and he lied down in this place namely on that bed of stones 217 come and behold it is written and the man said this time Beersheet 223 these are loving words spoken to win a woman's affections draw her closer to him and arouse love within her see how tender and how Love enticing are the words of bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh they show her that the two are one and inseparable 218 and then he should praise her saying this one shall be called woman which means she is peerless and the pride of the house other women compared to her are as apes before man this one shall be called woman perfect in every regard she and no other all those are loving words similar to those in the verse many girls have done great things but you have excelled them. All Mishlei 3129 219 hence a man shall leave his father and mother and cleave unto his wife and they become one flesh Beersheet 224 this is to draw her to him with affection and cause him to cleave to her because he was aroused toward her with those words it is written and the serpent was cunning Beersheet 31 the evil inclination was awakened to embrace her connect her with physical desires and arouse her to other things in which the evil inclination delights 220 then the woman saw that the tree was good to eat and was delightful to behold and she took the fruit thereof and ate Beersheet 36 she received the evil inclination willingly and lustfully and she gave also to her husband because she was lustfully aroused and wanted to win her husband's love and affection these passages explain the process to human beings as it occurs above between the upper male and female although the scripture talks of Adam and Shabba below it nevertheless alludes principally to the Supernal male and female and people should attune their actions to theirs 221 Rabbi Lazar said if it be so that the scripture talks of the supernal male and female how do we account for the evil inclination overtaking the female because it is inconceivable that the evil inclination can affect the supernal but he said to him I have already explained some things pertain to the upper realms and others to the lower meaning those happenings in the upper are directed toward the lower which are their branches everything in the lower has a root in the upper from whence it is drawn and grows hence the good and bad inclinations are drawn from their upper roots the good from
Manifestation of God's presence or Shechina in our world Rabbi Keep the great and holy master of the eminent sage Rabbi Shimon once told his students all that is yours and all that is mine is hers he was indicating the indispensable role a woman plays in a man's spiritual work 222 Rabbi Shimon was going to Tiberia Tiberius accompanied by Rabbi Yossi Rabbi Yehuda and Rabbi Shia on the way they saw Rabbi Pinchas coming toward them when they met they dismounted from their donkeys and sat under one of the trees on the mountain Rabbi Pinchas said now that we are seated meaning now that we are prepared to learn Torah I would like to hear of the good teachings you expound every day 223 Rabbi Shimon then opened a discourse by saying and he went on his journeys from the Negev Beersheet 133 it says journeys in the plural where it should have said journey in the singular why did the scripture say journeys in the plural because there were two journeys one his own and the Second that of the Shechinah the dual journey indicates that everyone should be male and female so that his faith may be strong and the Shechinah may never depart from him 224 and you may ask if the sojourner is not both male and female will the Shechinah then leave him come and behold he who goes on a journey should pray to the Holy One blessed be he before he leaves so as to draw upon himself his master's Shechinah when still at home and still both male and female and when he prayed and prays and the Shechinah rests upon him then he can go on his way now that the Shechinah is with him he can be male and female in the city that is at home and in the field on his journey because the Shechinah is joined to him it is written righteousness shall go before him with righteousness representing the Shechinah and then he shall place his footsteps on the way to 8514 225 come and behold as long as a man is traveling he should beware of sinning so that the supernal may Namely the Shechinah will not desert him causing him to become defective that is not composed of male and female just as he guards his actions in the city when his wife is with him he should do so all the more on the road when the supernal mate namely the Shechinah is attached to him furthermore because the supernal mate namely the Shechinah protects him on the road and does not depart from him until he returns to his home he should therefore watch his actions at home too so that the Shechinah does not desert him 226 when he returns home he should please his wife because it is she who procured the supernal mate for him by reciting a prayer for the journey while still at home with his wife he merited the supernal mating on the journey thus his wife brought about his supernal mating on the way namely the inspiration of the Shechinah and when he comes to her he should please her for two reasons first because of the joy of mating as this mating is the joy of a precept and because Rejoicing in a precept is the joy of the Shechinah 227 furthermore he increases peace at home as it is written you shall know that your tent is at peace and you shall visit your habitation and not sin Neo 524 he asks if he does not mate with his wife is that a sin according to the words and you shall visit your habitation and not sin and he says evidently so he has sinned he has diminished the glory of the supernal mating namely the Shechinah who has mated with him on the way because of the actions of his wife and if he is ungrateful to her he thus reveals his opinion that the supernal companion was not so important to him and hence derogates her honor 228 the second reason why he should gladden his wife is that if his wife conceives in consequence of this mating the supernal mating endows her with the holy soul for this covenant of the supernal mate that endows the holy soul is the covenant of the holy one blessed be he by this mating with his wife he causes the mating of the Holy One blessed be he with the Shechinah it behooves one then to concentrate on that joy as one should concentrate on mating on Shabbat which is the sages mating that is the holiness of the mating when one returns from a journey equals the holiness of the mating on Shabbat hence the quotation you shall know that your tent is at peace indicates that you will know the Shechinah is with you and has settled on your home hence and you shall visit your habitation and not sin means that you should not sin by refraining from intercourse before the Shechinah which is the joy in the precept namely one must not prevent the union of the Holy One blessed be he with the Shechinah through which a soul can be endowed this is a great sin 229 similarly the great scholars abstain from their wives all weekdays so as not to be distracted from their full occupation with Torah the supernal mate consorts with them and the Shechinah does not leave them so that they remain male and Female and when Shabbat comes these scholars have to please their wives for the honor of the supernal mate as we have explained causing the supernal mate to endow them with holy souls they should direct their hearts for their master's desire 230 similarly the supernal mate joins with a man whose wife is under unclean days and dutifully abides by the laws of family purity all those days so that he remains male and female and when his wife is purified he is obligated to rejoice with her. With the joy and a precept the joy of the supernal all the reasons we have discussed reach the same conclusion the main objective is that the faithful must direct their hearts and desires to this 231 one may say that a man is more praiseworthy while journeying than when he is at home because the supernal mate embraces him while he is on his way come and behold when a man is at home the foundation of the house is the wife because of whom the Shechinah does not leave the house as we have. Learned it is written that when he brought her to the tent of his mother Sarah Beersheet 2467 the candle was rekindled as it was when Sarah his mother was alive that is because the Shechinah came to the house for his wife's merit the Shechinah therefore dwells in the house because of the wife's merit 232 the concealed reason behind this is that the supernal Iyamibana does not coexist with the male namely Zeir and Pen until the house has been prepared and both male and female namely Zeir and Pen and Mukba have been joined and the supernal Iyamibana brings blessings upon them both similarly the lower Iman Amalif S-H-E-C-H-I-N-A cannot be found with the male namely men below except when the house has been corrected the male comes unto the female and they join together as one consequently the lower Iyamibana the Shechinah brings upon them a wealth of blessings 233 hence a man is crowned with two females in his home similar to the supernal Zeir and Pen as the secret of the words add until the Desire of the everlasting hills, Beersheet 4426, add in the verse until the desire is the mokin of the supernal garden of Eden, and it are the desires of the everlasting hills, which are the two mukbas, the supernal female bina desires to correct and crown the male with the mokin of the three spirat, and to bless him, which has it in the lower female desires to embrace the male and to be fed by him with the mokin of eighty, because of which the supernal mother bina desires to endow him with these mokin, hence the male is crowned by the two mukbas, for were it not for the lower mukbas need for the mokin of eighty, the supernal mother would not have endowed the male with them, because the male does not need them, he needs concealed chesedim 234, that which has been explained about the upper male also applies to the lower male that is man in this world, when he marries a woman, he receives the desires of the everlasting hills, he is crowned by two females called the everlasting hills, one is. Supernal namely the Shechinah and one lower namely his wife the supernal is to pour blessings upon him and the lower his wife should be fed by him and joined with him 235 but when he journeys it is not so that is he is not crowned by the two females but solely by the supernal Iyame namely the Shechinah who cleaves to him upon his sojourning the lower his wife stays at home and when he returns home he crowns himself again with two females as we have said hence he who stays at home is more dignified than he who travels Rabbi Pinchas said to Rabbi Shimon even in simple matters of the scales and fins of a fish no one will open his mouth to brag before you that is Rabbi Pinchas was so amazed at the depth of Rabbi Shimon's interpretation that he said even on simple matters of deciding whether a fish is fit for eating or not no one will dare to expound before you section 52 voice and speech a deeply hidden secret pertains to the spiritual powers of the mouth as letters and words arouse the very forces that they describe the mouth animates the spiritual forces that it speaks positive words generate positive angels while negative speech produces negative angels the good and bad events in our lives are merely the net effect of the angelic influences created through the power of speech the evil inclination works to blind us from this spiritual truth having succumbed to the uncertainty and doubt implanted within us by our negative tendencies most of us disregard the words that come out of our mouths yet Kabbalah teaches that it is far more important to consider what comes out of the mouth than what goes into it it is fitting that through the power of the Zohar's words we can draw light to help us use our speech in a positive manner 236 Rabbi Shimon said similarly Torah that is Zeir and is situated between two houses between two mukbas for IMA is called house as in for both houses of Yisrael Yishai 814 one is Upper and sealed the supernal Iyame by the other is more revealed the supernal sealed one is a great voice referred to in a
external one namely the Mukba 239 there are two inaudible voices called concealed chesedim and two other voices that are audible externally in them in the chesedim these voices are revealed by the radiance of chakma he explains the two inaudible voices are the supernal and concealed chakma namely eric and been clothed by thought and the supernal father heard neither in speech nor in the aspect of the voice first it is revealed slightly by an inaudible whisper as in the issuing of it Letter A called the great voice the great voice is a faint sound emitted secretly and it is the supernal mother those are the two inaudible voices Abba and IMA 240 the two audible voices are emitted from here produced by the two inaudible ones those are the voice of Yaakov namely Zeir and Ben and the speech that cleaves to it which is the Nukva of Zeir and Ben the great voice Bina is whispered and not heard it is a house head for the supernal Chakma which is Abba because each female is called house bait Bina is called house bait speech which is the Nukva of Zeir and Ben is the house bait for the voice of Yaakov which is Torah or Zeir and Ben hence Torah starts with the letter Bet or Beersheet in Hebrew both Bait house and the letter Bet are spelled in the same way 241 Rabbi Shimon said that the words in the beginning Elohim created correspond to and Hashem Elohim built the rib the structuring of the Nukva by Abba and IMA is insinuated here the words it. Heavens correspond to the secret of the great male and female in the words, and he brought her to the man likewise, and the earth corresponds to bone of my bones, the secret of the smaller male and female, the small nukva alluded to in, and the earth is called the land of the living. Section 53 Hashem said to my master, the Zohar describes the metaphysical process by which the negative desire to receive for the self alone is transformed into the desire to receive for the sake of sharing this transformation opens the way to the final redemption which will be achieved by the seventh millennium. We can hasten this process through our efforts in reading the section 242. Rabbi Shimon further said, Hashem said to my master, sit at my right hand till I have made your enemies as your footstools. Tehillim 1101 Hashem said to my master, this means that the upper level Zeir and says to the lower level, the sit at my right so as to link west. The Nukva with the south Chisit of Zeir Anpin and the left the Nukva with the right Zeir Anpin these linkages break the power of the idolatrous nations the quotation continues till I have made your enemies as your footstools because Hashem said is Yaakov Zeir Anpin and to my master is the Ark of the Covenant of the Master of all the earth Yahashua 311 namely the Nukva 243 an alternative explanation is that Hashem says is the Oval Jubilee which is Bina and to my master is Shemitah the sabbatical year the Nukva of whom it was said I love my master Shema 215 Oval says to Shemitah sit at my right because the right which is Chesedim exists in Oval namely Bina and Shemitah which is the Nukva must link with the right as we have explained 244 come and behold the sabbatical year namely the Nukva was not thoroughly connected to right and left from the day of its conception and when the Nukva wants to link with the right and the left Zeir Anpin spreads out his Left arm toward her and creates this world that is the Nukva in its role as the left in her is called this world and since he now has only the aspect of the left she has no existence that is no complete Mokin this was the state of affairs for the 6,000 years before the 7th millennium at the inception of the 7th millennium and only on that day the Nukva links with the right namely Shesedim and the Nukva is embraced completely between right and left that is with full Mokin and a new heaven and earth will come into being she will never be removed from there because she will be balanced between right and left forever 245 if what you say is correct and only in the 7th millennium will the Nukva link with the right how do we explain that sit at my right which means during the 6,000 years and not necessarily at the advent of the 7th millennium and he explains the verse sit at my right applies to a specified time period it says till I make your Enemies to be your footstools, which is not forever, but at that time in the seventh millennium she will never be removed, as it is written of her. You shall spread to the right and to the left. Yeshua 543, that is, she will comprise in herself the right column and the left column, and all will be one within her. 246 come and behold the words the heavens allude to the upper Sheshana, namely the Nukva, from the chest upward, and the words and the earth allude to the lower Sheshana, the Nukva. From the chest downward of Zeir and they are joined together as male and female. This means that the upper Nukva is connected to the male who is the great Zeir and and the lower Nukva is linked to the minor Zeir and All this has been explained by the colleague. Section 54 The rising flame, a glowing ember or lit candle, holds many supernal secrets concerning the revelation of spiritual light. By learning this section, we awaken these wondrous forces of. Light in our own lives 247 when they rose to leave Rabbi Shimon said we have something with us meaning that he had one more thing to tell them Rabbi Shimon then said two passages are written one says because Hashem your Elohim is a consuming fire Devarim 424 signifying that it is impossible to cleave to him as it is impossible to cleave to fire the other says you who cleave unto Hashem your Elohim are all alive today Devarim 44 signifying that it is possible to cleave to him these seemingly conflicting passages have been explained repeatedly by those who have tackled them but come and behold the verse because Hashem your Elohim is a consuming fire the colleagues have discussed that there is a fire that consumes and destroys even fire thus there is a fire that is stronger than normal fire and that has been explained 248 but come and behold one who wants to learn the wisdom of holy unification must examine the flames arising from a glowing ember or lit candle because the flames only rise if coming from a coarse object 249 come and see in the rising flame there are two lights one is a white and luminous light the other is a blue or black light to which the white light is linked the white shining light is higher and direct underneath it is a blue or black light which serves as a pedestal for the white 250 this shining white light spreads over the blue and the two lights unite to become one and this black light or the blue tint underneath it serves as a throne of glory for the white light hence its appearance is the secret of blue it is the aspect of the throne of glory which resembles blue as is generally known 251 this throne of black or bluish light links to something underneath it so it has something on which to burn this thing compels it to cling to the white light 252 the black and blue light sometimes turns red again yet the white light above it never changes it is always white but the blue changes it is Sometimes blue or black, sometimes red. 253. This blue light links in two directions. It connects to the white light above it and to the coarse object underneath it. Namely, the wick. The wick is designated as the place to which the light may connect and from which it radiates. The wick serves as the point at which the blue light connects with the shining white light. 254. The blue light of the candle always consumes and destroys the coarse object. Namely, the wick because the blue light consumes and burns all that it comes into contact with underneath it. And because its nature is to consume and scorch, it is the source of the destruction and death of all. The blue light is the secret of the nukva or the tree of knowledge from which death and destruction originate. It therefore consumes whatever it links to below. 255. The white light that prevails on the blue light never consumes or destroys and it never changes color. It is the light of chesed which never changes or becomes coarse. And which is free from judgment, therefore it does not destroy or change. That is why Moshe said, For Hashem, your Elohim is a consuming fire. It is because fire consumes and destroys all that is underneath it. That Moshe said, Your Elohim and not our Elohim. Moshe was a chariot for the supernal white light that neither burns nor destroys and which cannot be touched by judgments. 256 Come and see this blue light cannot awaken, kindle, or link to the white light without Israel connecting to it. From underneath, this is the same as the linking of the wick to the blue light. 257 Come and behold, although it is the nature of this blue black light to destroy all that contacts it from beneath, Israel still cleaves to it from beneath and survives. This is written, You who cleave unto Hashem, your Elohim are all alive today. It is written to Hashem, your Elohim, which is the Nukva and not our Elohim, which would allude to Zeir and for whom Moshe was a chariot. He said to them, You cleave to. The blue and black light that burns and destroys all but nevertheless you survive as it is written you are all alive today because this blue light did not burn you 258 a concealed light envelopes this white light it is a supernal secret that this light refers to the supernal light that clothes Zeir and which is a white light this light cannot be conceived or understood everything including the blue white and concealed surrounding light can be found in the rising flame of a candle and all great wisdoms are insinuated therein Rabbi Pinches approached and kissed him saying blessed be the merciful who led me to meet you here they accompanied Rabbi Pinches for
For this it is because she has not been linked to a male and wherever male and female are separate the letter A cannot be found nor is therefore spelled without the A and the A ascends while the Mukba stays with the letter Dalit which alludes to poverty 262 because whenever the blue and black light connect to this bright white light it is called A indicating unity the Mukba cleaves to the white light and Yitrael clings to her and stands underneath her to kindle her through the Female water main when they rise to her and unity is found Yitrael by bringing up the female water to her kindles the Mukba and causes her to cleave to and join Zeir and were it not for the female water the Mukba would not have joined Zeir and thus they two are attached to Zeir and this is because whatever one affects in the upper realms he also merits below hence the holy one the Shechina and Yitrael become 1263 this is the inner purpose of the sacrifice the smoke rises and Kindles the blue light when it is lit it links to the white light and then to the candle meaning that the Shechina lights in unity and when she cleaves to the white light and the smoke the three become 1264 the nature of the blue light is to burn and consume all that it contacts from below when the sacrifice is pleasing and the candle burns in unity it is written the fire of Hashem falls and consumes the offering I may 1838 when all has been burned completely it is known that the candle which is the Shechina is burning in complete unity and the blue light which is the Mukva has united with the white light which is Zeir and, and the two have become one furthermore the blue light burns and consumes the fats and burnt offerings meaning that it does not burn and consume from beneath except when it is elevating for the white light this indicates that all including the smoke and the blue light link to the white light hence peace is made in all the worlds and all is Embraced in unity 265 and when this blue light is through burning and consuming all that is underneath all the priests and levites and Yisrael come and cleave onto it the Levites cleave with the joy of singing the priests with the meditation of their hearts and the Yisrael with prayer and the candle namely the Sheshana burns and shines upon them all the lights unify the world's glow and all above and below are blessed 266 hence the words and you who cleave onto Hashem your Elohim are all alive today to Barim 44 apply to Yisrael he asks the passage says and you with the addition of the letter Bob which carries the meaning of the English word and should it not be just you he answers Bob shows Yisrael's virtue over that of the offerings and fat because when the offerings and fat connect to the blue light they are consumed and burned but if you cleave to this blue black light that burns and consumes all remains alive this virtue is alluded to by the Bob in and you are all Alive today 267 in a dream all colors except for blue are a good sign blue always destroys and consumes it is the tree where death is found it is the mukba which is called the tree of knowledge it reigns over the lower world which is this world and it consumes and destroys everything that exists underneath it 268 the mukba of zeir and is found in the upper heavens namely the world of atzala and there are many upper hosts in the worlds of briah yetzirah and asiyah yet they live and subsist so how is it one might ask that you say that the blue light which is the mukba of zeir and consumes all that is underneath come and behold all the upper hosts in the worlds of briah yetzirah and asiyah which are higher worlds and this are included in the blue light itself not underneath it yet the lower beings of this world are not included in the blue light itself because they are the coarse objects by which the world is supported the world links to the lower beings and subsists on them just as the wick of a candle without Zeir and the world would not exist hence the blue light consumes and destroys them and there can be nothing down here in this world that is not destroyed because the blue light destroys all that is underneath it section 55 by 45 colors of light as white sunlight refracts into the seven colors of the spectrum the light of the creator also refracts into colors that produce the diversity of creation it Zohar describes the refraction of the supernal light and the birth of the countless colors that we experience as joy bliss and happiness upon performing a positive spiritual action through these passages we gain a profound connection to all the colors of light our reading literally ignites the extraordinary eruption of color in the upper world so that all the grades of light begin to radiate in our souls 269 the world the of Zeir and is differentiated by 45 colors and types of light seven spirot divide into seven chasms each plumbing its own abyss namely malchut and stones turn within the abyss meaning that they overturn so as to shine downward and the light penetrates and pierces the stones creating holes through which water flows and is poured into and covers both sides of its abyss 270 as the water exists through the holes in the stone supernal light of the endless world shines through them and strikes the four sides of the abyss each light of it four sides includes all others at the time of striking they join as one and the water from zeir and splits within her 271 the seven spirot of zeir and cling to their seven chasms or malchutes because the sphere contains seven chasms each of which is considered the left column of zeir and they dig in that dark abyss where darkness is mixed with all the spirot of the mukha and water rises upward from below that is the light of chasidim called water which is the secret of the right Column first shines upward from below and then Chesedim falls back down to the left column and links with the lights of the left because the light of Chakma is darkness without containment within the lights of Chesedim and they all mix together lights darknesses and water and from them are made invisible lights that are dark 272 when each of the seven chasms of Zeir and Pin has struck its companion its opposing aspect in the abyss of the Mukba they split into 75 channels of the abyss through which water meaning lights is channeled each pipe raises its voice and the chasms of the receptor are shaken when the voices are heard each abyss calls to its companion split your water so that I can enter within you as is written abyss calls to abyss at the voice of your channels all your waves and billows have gone over me Tehillim 428 273 beneath the 75 channels extend 365 sinews some are white some are black and some are red they mix with each other become included Within each other and turn into one color the 365 sinews are enmeshed in 17 nets each of which is called a network of sinews enmeshed within each other they descend to the end of the abyss because they took on the aspect of Yezid which terminates the structure of the level underneath the 17 nets are four more two nets resemble iron and two resemble copper 274 two pedestals stand over all these aspects one to the right and one to the left and the nets join to be one and the water which forms the lights flows down the channels and enters the nets the channels the nets and all their lights are included within these two pedestals one pedestal is made of the black firmament the other is made of the firmament that is the color of a badger which is reddish 275 when the lights of the level of mating rise that is when they radiate upward they elevate through the pedestal of the black firmament which is the pedestal of nets who shines upward and when they descend they do so through the firmament of the badger color which is the pedestal of hot who shines downward 276 one of the pedestals is to the right the other is to the left the right pedestal is on the black firmament the left one on the firmament of the badger color and when the lights go up through the pedestal of the black firmament the pedestal of the left firmament goes down against it and the lights go down through it 277 each pedestal is embraced within the other within them they contain all the nets and they lure the lights to the very end of the lower abyss one pedestal rises and elevates above all the chasms the second remains at the bottom of the chasms between them the chasms revolve and become perfected as the chasms revolve the channels are inserted between the pedestals 278 there is a total of 75 pipes yet of them the seven abysses of zeir and are more supernal they are above the others which cling to them the 75 pipes are inserted in the wheels of the pedestal of the right and left sides 279 through the seven chasms of Zeir and which are the most supernal chasms water alluding to lights flows up and down those that flow down the supernal lights flowing down to the veils of all the malchutes dig into the chasms and pierce them these rising lights enter the holes that are pierced in the stones rise and then fill up the seven seas thus we have explained the seven kinds of lights that emanate from the supernal sea per 280 seven other lights divide into seven seas and one sea includes them all this one sea is the supernal sea that includes all the other seven seas 281 the seven lights go into the sea referring to this one supernal light that includes seven and strike it as a result the sea has seven sides each side splits into seven streams as it is written and he shall smite it into seven streams Yeshua 11 15 each stream then splits into seven rivers each river splits into seven roots and each root into seven lanes and all the Waters of the seas flow through them 282, seven lights ascend and descend in seven directions, seven supernal lights enter the lower sea of the seven upper seas, nevertheless they are only six instead of seven and originate from the supernal one together they are considered as seven
very severe and there is no salvation from him. 284 When the serpent enters the temple in the sea which is Malchut the temple is defiled and its lights are extinguished thus the supernal lights the lights of the top three Sfirah leave the sea then the waters of the sea split and go to the left side the sea then freezes and its waters do not flow. 285 This explains the hidden meaning of and the serpent was more crafty than any child. Bereshit 31 The secret is that the wicked serpent descends from the upper to the lower it draws the lights of the left downward and it swims upon the bitter water thus it went down to ensnare Chava into eating fruit from the tree of knowledge it draws the lights of the left down and ensnares them in his net 286 the serpent is death in the world because it enticed Chava with the tree of knowledge and thus brought death to the world it penetrates the closed intestine of man appendix which is to the left from which it draws sustenance another serpent which brings life is located in the right side which is a good inclination one that brings life to man both sides the good and bad inclinations accompany man as has already been explained 287 of then all the animals of the field we learn from these words that of all the animals of the field the clipot there is none that causes harm as the serpent does because he is the dross of gold woe to him alluding to adam who was seduced by the serpent he brought death upon Himself and all who came after him, all of this has been explained already. 287b Adam was drawn downward after the serpent, he went down to learn of all that is below, meaning that he went down to draw the light of Chakma to the lower Malchut that is missing, like the serpent, as he went down for the purpose of drawing light from above to below. His desires and his ways were drawn after the clipot. This drawing downward of the light of union is the secret of prohibition of the tree of knowledge. Since he intended to draw the light downward, he cleaved immediately to the clipot, even though he had not yet actually drawn any light. They went down to the serpent and saw the desire of the world, and his ways were swayed to this place of Malchut, which is the secret of eating of the tree of knowledge. Then the serpent was drawn after Adam and his wife, it cleaved onto them with its filth, bringing death to them, and all subsequent generations its venom did not cease to exist in the world. Until Israel stood at Mount Sinai, this has already been stated. Section 56 They heard walking in the garden when Adam and Eve sinned, they disconnected themselves from the Creator. The secret to re establishing our own connection can be found in the spiritual concepts of close and distance. Closeness refers to two entities that possess similarity of form and resemblance of nature. It is our difference of nature, our negative aspect of receiving in contrast to the Creator's positive aspect of sharing that causes the separation. The rays of light that resonate from the mystic shapes of the Hebrew letters awaken the sharing nature in our souls. We achieve greater similarity of form with the Creator, which in turn generates greater unity. 288 And because they sinned and attached themselves to the tree where death dwells below, it is written, and they heard the voice of Hashem Elohim walking, have MIT Halak in the garden. Note that the word is not Mahalak. Walking, which would indicate the male gender, but MIT Halak, which indicates the feminine gender, for the additional letter Tet indicates the feminine gender. Come and behold, before he sent Adam, was continually ascending to higher levels, had access to divine wisdom, and was never disconnected from the tree of life. But he was drawn after the lights and parted from the tree of life, descending and drawing down light from above because of his increasing desire for knowledge. He discovered evil and left good. Thus it is written, For you are not El that has pleasure in wickedness, neither shall evil dwell with you. Tehillim 55 Because he who is drawn after evil has no dwelling with the tree of life. 289 And as long as they did not sin, they could hear the divine voice partake of supernal wisdom exists within the Mokin of the holy radiance and have no fear. But once they sinned, they could no longer withstand it. 290 Similarly, as long as Israel did not sin from the time they stood at. Mount Sinai, the filth of the serpent was removed from them. There was a total annulment of the evil inclination in the world. When Israel rejected the serpent, they clung to the tree of life, elevated and did not go down. This meaning that they elevated the light of the left from below and did not draw any light downward. This is an aspect of the tree of life. Two hundred and ninety-one. Then they knew and saw the holy mirrors. Their eyes were lit, and they were happy to know and to hear. Hence, the holy one blessed be. He wrapped them with cords made of letters from his holy name, so that the serpent could not control them and would not defile them as before. This is the secret of the ornaments that they received on Mount Chorah. Two hundred and ninety-two. And because they sinned with the calf, all those supernal levels and lights were taken away from them, and all the armed cords ornamented by the holy name were retrieved. They drew upon them the evil serpent as before and caused death to all the world. Two hundred and ninety-three. Subsequently, it was. Written and when Aharon and all the children of Israel saw Moshe and beheld that the skin of his face shone, they were afraid to come close to him. Shema 3430 Come and behold, it was written before, and Israel saw the great hand. Shema 1431 Before they all saw the divine lights and were enlightened by the shining mirror, which is Zeir and as it is written, and all the people saw the voices. Shema 2018 And also upon the sea they saw and were not afraid, as indicated by the words Ismael. And I shall prepare him a habitation. Shema 152 But after they sinned, they could not withstand the sight of even the mediator Moshe, as it was written, and they feared to come close to him. Section 57 And they stripped their ornaments from Mount Jorah. The revelation of light on Mount Sinai was so great that it extinguished all darkness, including death, when the Israelites sinned by building the golden calf, they mirrored Adam's original sin and Disconnected from the light, death was reborn. Reading the section helps replenish the original volume of light that existed on Sinai and arouses the forces of immortality. 294 Come and behold, it is written of Israel, and the children of Israel stripped themselves of their ornaments from Mount Jorah. Shema 335 They were stripped of the ornaments that they received at Mount Sinai. The ornaments intended to prevent the wicked serpent from controlling them when their ornaments were taken away. It is written, and Moshe took the tabernacle and pitched it outside the camp, far off from the camp. Shema 337 295 Rabbi Lazar asked, What connection is there between this verse and the stripping of the ornaments? And he answered, Because Moshe knew that supernal protection was stripped from them when they took off their ornaments, it was clear that from now on the wicked serpent would reside among them. If the temple was erected there, it would be defiled immediately. Then Moshe took the Tabernacle and pitched it outside the camp far off from the camp because he saw that the wicked serpent would control them. 296 And he called it the tabernacle of appointment. Hebmod Shema 337 He asks, Was it not called the tabernacle of appointment before? And he answers, Before then it was called only a tent, but now it was called it the tabernacle of appointment. Mode, what is the meaning of mode appointment? Rabbi Lazar said for merit and good. Rabbi Abba said for discredit and evil. Rabbi Lazar explains that it was for good because mode means a festive day, which is the happiness of the moon, which is the Sheshanah, because of the Sheshanah's added sanctity. No defects mark her on that day. Hence he called the Sheshanah by the name Moed to show that the tabernacle which alludes to the Sheshanah had alienated herself from them at the time of the sin of the calf and thus was not made defective. Hence it was written and he called it the tabernacle of appointment. 297 Rabbi Abba said, it was called Moed so as to show unworthiness after the giving of Torah the Sheshanah was a mere tent as it is written a tabernacle that shall not be taken down not one of the stakes thereof shall ever be removed Yeshayah 3320 and it was continuously illuminated but now after the sin of the calf it was called the tabernacle of appointment because it was only illuminated periodically before it gave long life to the world and death was powerless after the giving of Torah there was freedom from the angel of death but after the sin of the calf the Sheshanah became the tabernacle of periodic congregation as it is written the house of appointment to all the living Yo 3033 now it is governed by time and life is limited in the world earlier before the sin of the calf the tent was not faulty but now it was rendered defective by the sin of the calf before that mating between the sun and the moon between male and female it was continuous now it is the tabernacle of periodic congregation because their mating is only periodic because their mating ceases when the serpent comes close hence it was now called the tabernacle of periodic appointment which means that union occurred only periodically 298 Rabbi Shimon stayed up one night and was busy with Torah before him sat Rabbi Yehuda Rabbi Yitzhak and Rabbi Yussi Rabbi Yehuda said it is written and the children of Israel stripped off their ornaments from Mount Chorev and we explained that in so doing they brought death upon themselves and all
Righteous because he loves righteousness, he loves the union of righteous and righteousness. Hebtedek and charity, Hebtedek 301. He is also upright as is said, righteous and upright. Thus, all the people of the world behold his face, blessed be he, correcting their ways and following the right path, for eventually all the world will follow that path. Anyway, come and see according to this when the Holy One, blessed be he, judges the world, he does so according to the majority of men. 302. Come and behold, when Adam sinned by eating of the tree, he brought death to the whole world, he caused a defect that separated a woman from her husband, namely the Nukba from Zeir, and the sin or defect was imprinted upon the moon, which is the Nukba, until the time when Israel stood at Mount Sinai. When they were at Mount Sinai, the defect was wiped out from the moon, which was enabled to shine forever. That is, after the defect of the sin of the tree of knowledge was removed, she returned to me. With Zeir and in a never-ending union, thus she forever shines without diminution, and they obtained the secret of freedom from the angel of death at that time. 303 When Yisrael sinned with the cap, the moon became defective as it was before the giving of Torah, the evil serpent regained control of her helper and drew her to him. When Moshe realized that Yisrael had sinned and that the holy supernal ornaments had been taken away from them, he knew with certainty that the serpent had control of the moon, which is the Nukba. He knew that it was drawing her to it and that she was becoming defective. That is when he isolated her. That is what is meant by. And Moshe took the tent and pitched it outside the camp. The tent is the Sheshana, as mentioned above. 304 It was blemished and defective, having reverted to her state as after the sin of Adam. Therefore, although Yahashua was still adorned and crowned with ornaments, no man can live forever anymore. The only exception to this rule was. Moshe who had control over her and whose supernal death was called the kiss of death of Zeir and this is as written so Moshe the servant of Hashem died according to the word of Hashem Devarim 345 because Moshe was the sustainer of the Nukba and not its recipient as were the rest of the people hence the fault in the Nukba had no effect on him the Nukba did not have permission to keep Yahashua nor anyone else alive forever hence it was called the tabernacle of appointment namely a tent that has a time limitation for the world meaning that everyone had to die 305 the inner meaning of all this is that there is right above as there is right below there also is left above and below he continues by saying that there is a right in the supernal holiness namely male and female and there is a right below on the other side namely the clip 306 there is a left above in supernal holiness that arouses love so that the moon can connect to a holy place above and shine from there because when Zeir Anpin is channeling the light of the left to the Nukba, she is consoled by him and permits him to mate and give her light. There is a left side below on the other side. It disrupts the supernal love blocking the moon, which is the Nukba, from shining by the sun, which is Zeir Anpin, and from coming close to him and mating with him. This is the aspect of the evil serpent 307. And when this lower left, the serpent is aroused, he draws the moon, the Nukba of Zeir Anpin, toward him and separates her from above from Zeir Anpin. Her radiance darkens and she cleaves to the evil serpent and draws death to the whole world, for she links with the serpent and alienates herself from the tree of life. That is Zeir Anpin, hence her connection with the tree of life is not continuous but periodic, and the life she gets from him is also periodic. 308. When the temple, which is the Nukba, was defiled, death was caused to the world for the period of time until the moon, which is the Nukba, is corrected and Resumes her radiance, she is now called the tabernacle of periodic congregation, which means that she will only be called so for a limited period of time because her union was disrupted by the proximity of the serpent. Hence, Yahashua died only because of the serpent which came close to and caused the tabernacle the Nukba to be blemished as in the beginning as before the giving of Torah 309. This is the inner meaning of but his servant Yahashua, the son of Nun, was a young man, he did not leave. The tabernacle Shema 2311, even though he was a young man below, he received life from the Nukba because his capacity was augmented by the angel Matatron Matar and is called a young man below in Atzalot. Nevertheless, he did not leave the tabernacle Shema 2311, which also means that he was no better than the tabernacle itself. The Nukba which contained him as the tabernacle was deformed, so was Yahashua, and although he still had the holy ornaments when the moon became defective, Yahashua could not. Escape alone from that very defect. This means that the same defect which was caused by the sin of Israel affected both the moon and Yahashua. 310 Come and behold, similarly, when Adam sinned with the tree of knowledge, the Holy One blessed be he took away his ornaments, luminous and sacred letters with which he had crowned him, namely the letters that formed the holy name. Hence they saw and knew the meaning of removing their ornaments as it is written. They knew that they were bare bare sheet. 37 Beforehand they were clothed with precious armed crowns which gave them freedom from all. After sinning, those precious crowns were taken from them. They knew then that death called for them, that they were stripped of that freedom from all, and that they had brought death upon themselves and the world. Section 58 And they sewed fig leaves together. Here the totality of spiritual wisdom is conveyed through the metaphor of a seed, the unfolding of this wisdom is personified through the metaphor of a grown tree that is the tree of life and tree of knowledge the evil intention to utilize this wisdom for negative purposes is conveyed through the symbol of the fig leaf Adam and Eve wearing fig leaves denotes their dabbling in the dark side of wisdom these verses can help prevent ourselves from falling into the negativity 311 and they sewed fig leaves together bear sheet 37 from these words we learned that they learned all types of magical spells and sorcery and that they cleaved onto the lower one which is the other side as was explained consequently the height of Adam was reduced to 100 cubits and a separation between Zeir and Ben and the Nukba was affected now Adam existed in judgment and the earth was cursed as has been explained section 59 and he expelled the man our lives are the sum of our decisions and the paths we've chosen to walk the moment we choose a path we immediately invite the totality of spiritual forces associated with that path into our life we are thrust into a whole new world according to the Kabbalists all possible paths exist in parallel universes we switch universes at the moment we choose a path as if we walked out of one movie to enter another movie that's far more enjoyable the power to choose which movie of life we experience resides in our choices and spiritual actions we are now receiving the spiritual enlightenment to always know the right path by so doing we envelope ourselves in all things positive 312 and he expelled the man Bereshit 324 Rabbi Lazar asked who drove whom out could it have been the Holy One blessed be he who expelled Adam because it was not written that Hashem drove man out just he drove out the man the particle et the before the man is reversed it should have been man drove out et in the words drove out et the particle et clearly indicates the Shechina Adam certainly did drive out et but the words are reversed. 313 Hence it was written before and Hashem sent him away from the Garden of Eden. Bereshit 323 Why was it written that he sent him away because Adam expelled E.T. which is the Shechina as we have said therefore Hashem sent him away from the Garden of Eden. It is then written just and he placed Bereshit 324 instead of and Hashem placed this is because it was Adam who placed the Kribim cherubs at this place he has brought about blocking the supernal paths and ways sustenance was withheld. Judgment was brought upon the world and curses have been upon the world ever since 314 and the flames of the ever turning sword Bereshit 324 refer to those who affect judgment in the world they keep leaping from one shape to another and from one manifestation to another they keep changing into many shapes so as to make the world pay its due sometimes they manifest as men other times as women at times they are scorching fires and at times they are spirits and no one can control them. They preserve the way of the tree of life as it was in the beginning and prevent them from doing more damage. 315 The flames of the sword are all those who blaze fire and severe punishment upon the heads of the wicked and the sinners. The shapes change themselves into several kinds of judgments according to the actions of the humans. They are called flames as it is written and he burned them in the next day. Malachi 319 316 They are called swords as it is written. The sword of Hashem is filled with blood. Yeshayah 346 Rabbi Yehuda said that the flames of the sword are the avengers below in this world who change from one shape to another. They are given charge of harming and accusing the wicked who transgress their master's commands. 317 Come and see once man sinned he drew upon himself a number of evil and punitive spirits and judges and judgments of which he was terrified and could not subdue. Solomon was versed in supernal wisdom and the Holy One blessed be he. Crowned
Angel of death has taken the soul and has defiled the body. Permission is granted for all sorts of defilement to settle on that body. The body has been defiled by the side of the evil serpent that has taken possession of it because death comes from him. Hence wherever that evil serpent dwells is made unclean. 321 Come and behold when people sleep on their beds at night and when night spreads its wings upon the world they taste the taste of death because they do the spirit of defilement roams around the world and defiles it. It settles upon a man's head and he is made unclean. 322 And when he wakes from his sleep and his soul is returned to him all that he touches with his hands is made unclean because the spirit of uncleanliness is upon those hands. One should not receive his clothes from the hands of another who has not washed his hands because in so doing he will draw upon himself the spirit of defilement and become unclean. The spirit of defilement then receives permission to Dwell anywhere that his mark can be found. 323 Hence one should not receive the vessel for washing his hands from another who has not washed his hands already and has drawn upon himself the spirit of uncleanliness and the spirit of defilement has permission to settle upon he who receives water from such a person. Hence one should be very careful in whichever way he turns and beware of the side of the evil serpent so that it does not gain control of him in the future. The Holy One blessed be. He will remove the spirit of uncleanliness from this world and the world to come. Hence it is written I will cause the spirit of uncleanliness to pass out of the earth. Zechariah 132 And it is also written and death will be abolished forever. Yeshua 258 Section 60 And man knew the path we choose for ourselves is the path that is automatically laid out for our children. The secret is found within the story of Cain murdering his brother Abel Cain's. Father Adam chose the spiritual path of good and evil Cain followed in his father's footsteps becoming vulnerable to the evil inclinations that are inherent in this reality by scanning these passages we become always mindful of our children when making choices in life and we draw positive spiritual influences into the lives of our children 324 and Adam knew Chabba his wife there she 41 Rabbi Abba opened his discourse and asked who knows of the spirit of man if it goes upward and if it spirit of the Chaya goes down to the earth Kahila 321 this verse has many interpretations and so it is with the words of Torah each and every word has many interpretations and all are true 325 the entire Torah can be interpreted in 70 different ways corresponding to the 70 sides and 70 aspects of Zeir and the 7 sides lower Sfirat of Zeir and have 10 Sfirat each adding up to 70 sides and 70 aspects corresponding to the 7 Sfirat in the head of Zeir and which each have 10 Sfirat so each topic in Torah and whatever is derived from each topic has many interpretations explained in all directions 326 come and behold when a man follows the path of truth he keeps to the right and only attracts to himself a holy spirit from above the spirit serves him as a holy desire to unite with the upper and to cleave onto the supernal sanctity so that it will never leave him 327 however when man walks on a path of evil and veers off the right path he draws upon himself from the left side a spirit of uncleanliness the spirit defiles him and he becomes unclean because of it hence it is written and you shall not make yourselves unclean with them nor be defiled by them vayikra 1143 because he who defiles himself is led further into defilement 328 furthermore come and behold when a man walks along the path of truth and attracts a spirit of holiness from above to himself and cleaves to it he also draws a spirit of holiness from above to the sun that is born to him you will be sanctified with his master's holiness as it is written and you will sanctify yourselves and be holy. Vayikra 11 44 329 And when a man follows the path of evil and veers off the path of truth he draws upon himself a spirit of defilement from the left which defile and makes him unclean he draws that spirit of uncleanliness to his son and his son is defiled by that side. 330 This is what was meant by the verse who knows the spirit of the sons of man for when a man cleaves to the right the light he draws from below ascends upward and when a man is bound to the left the left side which is the spirit of defilement he descends and draws light downward from above it resides with that man and never leaves him the child born to him while he is so defiled is considered the child of the unclean spirit. 331 Adam clove to the unclean spirit the serpent and his wife Shabbat clung to it first and took and received defilement from it he begot a son that son was it. Son of the impure spirit, thus there were two sons, one from the unclean spirit who was kind, and another who was born after Adam had repented, who was Hebel, hence one was born of the side of impurity, namely kind, and one of the side of purity, namely Hebel. 332 Rabbi Lazar said when the serpent injected his impurity into Shabbat, she absorbed it, meaning that she was made pregnant by IT, and when Adam had intercourse with her, she gave birth to two sons, one from the impure side, and that was kind, and the other from the side of Adam, and that was Hebel. Hebel resembled the upper image, and kind the lower, consequently their paths parted. 333 It was evident that kind was the son of the impure spirit, which is the evil serpent, because he originated from the side of the angel of death, he killed his brother, therefore the murder of Hebel is identical to the sin of eating from the tree of knowledge, and both were incited by the serpent, and as in the affair of the tree of knowledge in which the Angel of death gained control of the world here too he gained control taking over the soul of Hebel Kain comes from the side of the angel of death and all the evil habitations demons and harmful spirits come to the world from him 334 Rabbi Yossi said the name Kain indicates a nest have of the evil habitations that come to the world from the impure side afterward they brought sacrifices each from his own side so it is written and it came to pass at the end of days that Kain brought of the fruit of the earth Beersheet 43 Rabbi Shimon said it is written at the end of days what is the end of days it is the end of all flesh what is the end of all flesh it is the angel of death indicating that the sacrifice Kain brought was from the side of impurity 335 Kain brought his offering from this end of days to be exact the text uses the word Yom days and not Yemen right hence it is written of Daniel and you go your way till the end and rest and hence stand at your Destiny Daniel 1213 Daniel asked the Holy One blessed be he the end of Yemen or Yemen for Yemen is an evil clip and he replied at the end of days Yemen but Kain brought his offering from the end of Yemen which is the side of the angel of death because he brought his offering from his side 336 Kain brought of the fruit of the earth these words are parallel to the fruit of the tree Beersheet 33 as the tree of knowledge is a representation of the evil serpent so here he brought his offering from the evil serpent Rabbi Lazar said the fruit of the earth is similar to woe to the wicked it shall be bad with them for according to the deserving fruit of his hands shall be done to him Yeshayah 311 for the deserving fruit of his hands refers to the angel of death who is the deserving fruit of the hands of the wicked because if it was not for the sin he would not have come to the world shall be done to him means that he is drawn to and cleaves to them killing and Defiling them hence the words the fruit of the earth indicate that Cain's offering came from his side which meant it came from the serpent and the angel of death 337 and Hebel also brought of the first lings bear she 44 the function of the word also I asked to strengthen the upper side the part from the chest upward that is the holy side that is why Hashem turned to Hebel and his offering because it was from the side of holiness but to Cain and his offering he did not turn. Bear she 46 the holy one blessed be he did not accept Cain's sacrifice because it was from the unclean side hence Cain was very angry and his countenance fell because his countenance meaning that the offering from his side was not accepted but Hebel's offering was 338 hence it is written and it came to pass when they were in the field bear she 48 the word field here refers to a woman as it was in for he found her in the field Devarim 2227 in which field also referred to a Woman the field in the former verse also alludes to a woman kind was jealous of the additional twin female born with Hebel as it is written and she continued to give birth to his brother E.T. Jehebel bear she 42 this double use of the particle E.T. before Jehebel is a reference to the two females born with Hebel section 61 if you do well there shall be an uplifting if a person does not constantly elevate himself during his spiritual journey he actually begins regressing as if we were standing still on a downward escalator making no effort forward allows us to be carried backwards in these passages we receive the light that will help us always strive for greater heights 339 if you do well there shall be an uplifting bear she 47 these words have already been explained the word uplifting means as Rabbi Abba explained that you will ascend toward the upper rather than descend this means that you should return the lights from below Upward and stop drawing them downward
Manifested in the cosmos through the story of Cain's repentance for the murder of his brother Adam is truly amazed at this unique force and phenomenon when he sees God except Cain's repentance. The spiritual forces associated with the Hebrew letters that compose the story are the actual instruments by which repentance became a force that we can apply in our world. Our understanding of the importance of repentance is the power by which we activate it in our own lives. Reading these words awakens. Our desire to repent for our negative actions. 341 Rabbi Yitzhak said, Come and behold, when Cain killed Hebel, he did not know how his soul could leave him. That is, that by his actions he could in effect extract the soul from Hebel and kill him, and he was biting him with his teeth as a serpent. At that instant, the Holy One blessed be he cursed Cain. He wandered in every direction, but no place accepted him until he hit himself upon the head and repented before his master than the earth received. Him in one of the lower level compartments because his repentance was not complete and therefore not accepted in this world. 342 Rabbi Yossi said that the earth herself accepted him so that he could walk upon her as it is written. Hashem set aside upon Kain Beershi 415. This interpretation is that the Holy One blessed be he accepted Kain's repentance and thus gave him permission to remain upon the earth according to Rabbi Yitzhak. However, the earth only accepted Kain to a level. Beneath her as it is written, you have driven me this day from the face of the earth. Beershi 414. He was driven from the face of the earth but not from underneath that he was taken in by the lower compartment underneath. Thus Rabbi Yitzhak disagreed with Rabbi Yossi's interpretation. Rabbi Yitzhak's position was that Kain was admitted to the lower level only why because his repentance was incomplete. 343. He asks and into which place was he taken and he says into Arca which is one of the Seven physical levels of earth of all who reside there it is written these shall perish from the earth and from beneath the heavens. Yermeo 1011 there he established his place of living this place is referred to in the words and he dwelt in the land of Nod east of Eden. Beershi 416 this alludes to the lower compartment called ARK. This compartment is also called Nod Sway because the residents have two heads and sway from one side of darkness to the other side of light. This effect of 344 kind said my punishment is greater than I can bear. Beershi 413 meaning that after he confessed and repented the Holy One blessed be he withdrew one half of his punishment in the original punishment he stated you shall be a fugitive NA and a vagabond Nad on the earth. Beershi 412 but now he was permitted to stay in Nod and so it is written and kind left the presence of Hashem and dwelt in the land of Nod. Beershi 416 meaning that he left the presence of Hashem to be a vagabond. But not a fugitive on the earth because half his punishment had been withdrawn. 345 they THERABB eyes further said that when Kain left the presence of Hashem Adam asked him, My son, what was done with your sentence? Kain replied, Father, I was already given the good news that the Holy One blessed be he has forgiven me and that I can reside in not alone. Adam then asked him, How did you merit that? And Kain answered, Because I repented and confessed before him. Adam said the strength of repentance is so great and powerful, and I did not know that he began to say praises to his master and to confess before him. He started reciting a song for the day of Shabbat. It is good to thank Hashem Tehillim 921, for it is good to praise, repent, and confess before the Holy One blessed be he and of his Adam 346 Rabbi Yitzhak said that from the time that Kain killed Hebel, Adam separated from his wife, two female spirits used to come and mate with him, and he bore from them spirits. And demons that roam around the world. The reason there were two spirits is because prostitution is a clip of the right on which side they laugh and are joyful. Yet eventually the spirits punish people and make them suffer, which is the jurisdiction of the left. Hence there were two spirits. One was a clip of shell of the right and the other a clip of shell of the left. 347. This need not be difficult to accept because even when a man is dreaming, female spirits often come seduce him, conceive from him, and eventually give birth. These offspring are called the plagues of mankind and take only the shape of humans. They have no hair on their heads because these offspring come from the clip of the right and hair is connected to the left end of the Solomon said, and I shall chastise them with the whip of men and with the plagues of the sons of man. Two Samuel 74. Similarly, there are male spirits that visit women in their dreams. Those women conceive from them, give birth to spirits, and all are. Called the plagues of mankind. 348 After 130 years, Adam felt jealousy for his wife, had intercourse with her, and begot a son whom he called Shit. This is the secret of the ordering of the last two letters within the 22 letters of the Hebrew alphabet. This is unique and different from all other orderings of the alphabet, which do not end with these same two letters, namely Shin and Toph. Rabbi Yehuda said that the name Shet symbolizes the secret of the lost spirit, namely that of Hebel, which was clothed in the earthly body of Shet. Hence it is written, Elohim has replaced Shet for me another seed instead of Hebel. Beershi 425. 349 Rabbi Yehuda continued by saying, and he begot in his own likeness after his own image. Beershi 53. This indicates that his other sons, Kain and Hebel, were not after his likeness, but Shit was in his own likeness and after his image, both physically and spiritually, as Rabbi Shimon said in the name of Rabbi Yebisaba, the elder Adam's other sons had been. Produced in defilement through attachment to the serpent and its rider who is a male hence they bore no resemblance to Adam even though Hebel unlike Cain was from the side of purity and not from the side of the serpent neither had the form of the image of Adam they both lacked the central column which is the form of man Hebel was from the right side and Cain from the left hence they were not created in the likeness of Adam 350 Rabbi Yossi brings further proof to strengthen the case that Hebel was not complete he says it is written Adam knew his wife Shabbat and she conceived and gave birth to Cain Beershi 41 but it is not written that Adam begot Cain this was not written of Hebel either instead it is written and she further gave birth to his brother Hebel Beershi 42 and here lies the concealed truth that even Hebel was not in the image or likeness of Adam but of shit it is written and he begot in his own likeness after his image thus he is related to Adam 351 Rabbi Shimon said that for 130 years Adam refrained from his wife and during that time he begot in the world spirits and demons from the force of impurity that was sucked from him and when that impurity was exhausted he turned and became jealous of his wife and begot a son it then is written and he begot in his likeness after his own image 352 come and behold when a man veers to the left and defile his ways he draws upon himself all kinds of impure spirits and the spirit of defilement clings to him and does not leave him the spirit only links to the man who drew it and not to another hence they only cleave to those who cleave to them happy are the righteous who walk in the straight path and who are the truly righteous their sons are righteous in the world of them it is written for the upright shall dwell in the earth Mishlei 221 353 Rabbi Shia quotes and the sister of Tubal Kain was Nabah Beershi 422 why do the scriptures mention her name? Nabah tender it is because people were seduced by her overwhelming beauty and tenderness and spirits and demons lusted after her. Rabbi Yitzhak said that the sons of Elohim Azah and Azel were seduced by her because of those seductions. She was named Nabah 354. Rabbi Shimon said that she was the mother of demons being of the side of Kain and that along with Lilith she is responsible for the epileptic death of babies. Rabbi Abba said to him but Sir Rabbi Shimon Nabah was charged with seducing men in their sleep while they dream placing her to the right of the clip killing children however is from the left aspect he responded that this is precisely correct because she seduced men and bore spirits into the world she still persists in her seductive work in the world but Rabbi Shimon said she cooperates with Lilith and the death comes from the side of Lilith not that of Nabah 355. Rabbi Abba asked him but since those demons die like human beings how can you say that Nabah? Has survived to this day, he said to him that this is true that demons die as humans do. Yet Lilith and Nama and Agarit, the daughter of Makalah, who originated from their side, will continue to live until the Holy One blessed be he burns the spirit of uncleanliness from earth. This is as it is written, I will cause the unclean spirit to pass out of the land. Zechariah 132 356 Rabbi Shimon said, Woe to the sons of man, for they are not aware and do not take heed nor search for knowledge. They are all blindfolded and do not know how full the world is with strange and invisible creatures and things. If permission were to be given to the eye to see, people would wonder greatly as to how is it possible to survive in this world. 357 Come and behold, this Nama is the mother of demons from her side.
revealed to Adam the images of the souls of all the generations destined to come into the world and of all the sages and kings of the world destined to rule over Israel. When he saw David, king of Israel, who was born and then died because he had no days in his life, he said to the Holy One, Blessed be he, I will give him seventy years of my life expectancy. And seventy years were taken from Adam and the Holy One, Blessed be he, gave them to David three hundred and fifty nine. It was for this that David said the praise for. You have made me glad, Hashem, by your actions. I will be joyous in the work of your hands. Tehillim 925, who caused me to be happy and live in the world. It was Adam who caused me to be happy. He was the handiwork of the Holy One, blessed be he, and not of flesh and blood. He was not born to any man because he was made by the Holy One, blessed be he. Thus, those seventy years were deducted from Adam's thousand year life expectancy. 360, the Holy One, blessed be he, showed him all the sages of each and every generation until he reached the generation of Rabbi Kiba. He saw his Torah and was happy. He saw his death by the hands of evil and was saddened. Adam said, How precious in my eyes are your companions. El, how mighty are their chiefs. Tehillim 13,917, 361. It is written, This is a book of the generations of Adam, and there literally is a book we have already explained that when Adam was in the Garden of Eden, the Holy One, blessed be he, sent a book down to him with Raziel, the Holy Angel, who is in. Charge of the supernal sacred secrets in the book were supernal inscriptions referring to the rules governing the elevation of Malchut to Bina and 72 branches of sacred wisdom which is revealed at the time of maturity. This is a concealed reference to 72 avenues of wisdom alluding only to Bina who has reverted to being Chakma but not to Chakma itself. She is transformed into 670 inscriptions of the supernal secrets of Zeir Anpin and the Mukba Zeir Anpin which is the secret of Chisid Bura. Typhur at Netzach Yezid and Malchut receive 600 from Chisid Bura. Typhur at Netzach Hot and Yezid of Bina which is numbered by the hundreds into her seven Sphira. The Mukba receives Chisid Bura. Typhur at Netzach Hot Yezid and Malchut she receives only 70 because every sphere is counted in tens being received from Zeir Anpin who is numbered in tens 362. In the middle of the book there is an engraving of wisdom which is the hidden meaning of the central point, the full structure of which is not. Achieved until the final correction it is prepared to receive at the time of final correction the 1,500 keys that were not delivered to the supernal holy ones for the last 6,000 years all those secrets were concealed in the book before it came to the hands of Adam and when he received it holy angels used to congregate around him so as to know and hear of them they used to say be exalted Elohim above the heavens let your glory be above your Tehillim 5,712 363 at that point the holy angel Adarniel hinted to him and said Adam Adam conceal the glory of your master and do not reveal it to the angels for permission was given you alone and not even to the supernal angels to know the glory of your master therefore he concealed it with him until he left the garden of Eden 364 in the beginning he used to study and use the secrets of his master daily supernal secrets that none of the supernal angels knew were revealed to him when however he transgressed the commands of his master. By eating of the tree of knowledge the book flew away from him Adam used to beat upon his head and weep he went into the waters of the river Jishan up to his neck because he repented and mortified himself until his body became wrinkled and porous and his radiance changed 365 at that point the holy one blessed be he signaled to the angel revile to return the book to Adam Adam occupied himself with it he left it to his sonship and to all the generations after him until Abraham came along. Abraham knew how to use the book to examine his master's glory this has already been explained this book was also given to Shonak and through it he perceived the supernal glory section 64 male and female he created them lack of fulfillment and joy in the world is rooted in the disunity between the supernal male and female forces that permeate existence this is exemplified in the separation between man and woman through relations between husband and wife. We can influence and ignite a bonding in the upper worlds provided this is our spiritual intent each time this occurs we remove an aspect of evil from our midst relationships that lack this spiritual foundation cannot affect any positive change on either a supernal or a physical level the Kabbalists teach us that this lack of spiritual understanding is the primary source for the darkness that governs our world we can become aware that the quality of a marriage affects the universe and that there is spiritual meaning and purpose in every union 366 male and female he created them Vershid 128 Rabbi Shimon said that supernal secrets have been revealed by the two verses this is a book and male and female he created them the latter verse comes to teach us the supernal glory of the secret of faith by which secret man was created this is the secret of supernal Zeir and the Mukba called heavens and earth 367 in the same concealed matter in which the heavens end. Earth were created signifying the supernal male and female so man was created of the heavens and the earth it is written those are the generations of the heavens and earth. Bereshit 24 of man this is the book of the generations of Adam of the heavens when they were created and of Adam in the day when he was created. Bereshit 52 the two are equal as they were created by the same secret 368 from the words male and female he created them we learn that any figure not comprised of both male and female is not a supernal figure we have explained this with the secrets of Mishnah 369 come and behold the Holy One blessed be he cannot reside in a place where male and female are not found together blessings can be found only in a place where male and female are together as it is written and he blessed them and called their name Adam man on the day they were created. Bereshit 52 it was not said that he blessed him and called him Adam man this teaches us that he was not. Called by the name of Adam man except as a male and female combined 370 Rabbi Yehuda said that ever since the destruction of the temple blessings cannot be found on earth and are lost every day as it is written the righteous have perished Yeshayah 571 what is the meaning of perished it is that the blessings that used to dwell in the righteous perished as in the words blessings on the head of the righteous Mishlei 106 it also says truth has perished Yermeah 728 meaning the Mukba which received the Izzet of Zeir and from the righteous which is the secret of the male similarly at the time of completion it is written and Elohim blessed them and called them Adam because they were whole 371 it is to shit that all the generations of earth and all the truly righteous of the world trace their descent Rabbi Yossi said that those two final letters of Torah Shin and Toph were left intact even after Adam had transgressed against all the letters of Torah because the sin of the tree of knowledge affected the whole Torah and when he repented before his master he cleaved to those two letters Shin and Toph which had remained whole and at that point the original letters returned in the reverse order of Toph Shin Reshkoff and so on 372 he then called the son he begot in his own form and image in a name composed of the last two letters of the Olapet and the only two letters with which he was left the order of the letters was not fully corrected that is properly ordered until Israel stood at Mount Sinai then the letters returned to their correct form form they had when the heavens and earth were created the order in which they appeared before the sin of eating of the tree of knowledge then the world was sweetened and more securely established 373 Rabbi Abba said that on the day that Adam transgressed his master's commands the heavens and earth requested to be uprooted from their places why because they can only exist upon the covenant as it is written if my covenant be not day and night it were as if I had not appointed the ordinances of heaven and earth here may 3325 Adam broke the covenant as it is written they are like Adam man they transgressed the covenant Hashia 67 hence they lost their foundation and asked to be uprooted 374 were it not for the fact that it was clear to the holy one blessed be he that Israel would stand at Mount Sinai to keep the covenant the world would not have survived the sin of eating of it tree of knowledge Rabbi Shizkiah said that the holy one blessed be he forgives and pardons the iniquities of he who confesses his sins hence contrary to what Rabbi Abba said it is because Adam confessed his sins and repented that the world survived and he does not want to say that the reason is that it was clear to the holy one blessed be he that Israel would stand at Mount Sinai 375 come and behold when the holy one blessed be he created the world which is the secret of the Mukvahi. Made the covenant which is Yezid of Zeir and he established the world upon it as the Mukba receives her sustenance from Zeir and from where do we know that from the word Bear Sheet which is a combination of Barah created and Sheet 6 Sheet is the covenant upon which the world rests the Sheet which stands for Yezid is the place from where all blessings are drawn into the world and by it the world was created
Letter Ben, which is the secret of the covenant. This is the bed of Bereshit. It was inserted between the two letters that remained after the sin of the eating of the tree of knowledge, namely between Shin and Toph, creating the word Shabbat, and the Shabbat was given to Israel. And when the letter Ben, which is the secret of the covenant, was inserted between the two letters Shin and Toph, they became Shabbat as it is written, and hence the children of Israel should keep the Shabbat to make of it. Shabbat for all their generations and eternal covenant Shema 3116 for they deserve to receive the Shabbat perpetually for all their generations as in the beginning of the world the lineage of all future generations was determined by those two letters so by the insertion of the letter bet those two letters perpetually enlightened the generations Shin and Toph were in suspension until the world was adequately completed and with the giving of Torah the world was fully completed and the holy covenant came in between the letters and they became Shabbat 378 Rabbi Yossi said that because those two letters were fully completed by the letter bet they are now unable to receive direct light at the giving of Torah those letters began falling into their proper order on the day that Shin was born not to receive light from above downward but to draw only from below upward this has remained the case in each and every generation which is the light of Nefesh until Israel reached Mount. Sinai then the letters fully corrected because the letter bed illuminated them from above downward and they became the Shabbat 379 Rabbi Yehuda said they started to radiate again from above downward which is the light of Rash thus he disagreed with Rabbi Yosi who maintained that they only shone from below upward which is the light of Nefesh before Torah was given and in each and every generation before the giving of Torah the world was manipulating those two letters and they could not settle in their appropriate place only when Torah was given to Israel was everything corrected Rabbi Lazar said that at the time of Enosh people were skilled in magic and divination and in the wisdom of controlling the heavenly forces so that these forces should not have affected the world when Adam left the garden of Eden and brought out with him the wisdom of the fig leaves which is witchcraft there was no one to use this knowledge because Adam his wife and all those born from them until Anosh came stayed clear of this knowledge and did not use IT 380 and when Anosh came he saw those fig leaves and how advantageous they could be in altering the heavenly course of holiness then people once again practiced magic and sorcery and they shared their knowledge with others this wisdom spread widely in the generation of the flood when magic and sorcery were practiced for evil purposes 381 the people defied Noach with this wisdom when he warned them of the impending flood they said that no judgment could ever be executed upon them because they could avoid by use of this knowledge any execution of judgment from the time of Anosh onward everyone began practicing these skills thus it was written then was the name of Hashem called upon profanely Beershi 426 the word profanely means that they made the use of the name of Hashem a profanation through the wisdom of sorcery they employed 382 Rabbi Yitzhak said that all those righteous people who lived after that Generation of Anosh such as Yerbeth Ashalash and Shadok tried hard to rebuke them but were unsuccessful the world became full of sinners who rebelled against their master saying what is Hashem that we should worship him? Eov 1915 he asked how could they have been so foolish as to say who is Hashem that we should serve him? He answered that this was because they had vast wisdom and knew and had faith in the ministers in charge of ruling the world they had faith in their wisdom and believed that by means of oaths they could bind those ministers and protect themselves so that no harm could befall them and the Holy One blessed be he restored the world to its original state through the flood of water in its original state as on the second day of creation the world was water upon water this was before the dry land was created after the flood he restored the world to its previous state and not all was destroyed by the flood because he treated them with mercy as indicated by the fact that it is written Hashem sat at the flood Tehillim 2910 the word Hashem signifies the virtue of mercy whereas the word Elohim would have signified judgment because he judged them with mercy not all was destroyed by the flood 384 in the days of Anosh even children were acquainted with the supernal wisdom which they learned and observed Rabbi Yesus said that if this is so they were stupid because they did not know that the Holy One blessed be he was bound to bring the waters of the flood upon them and they would die 385 Rabbi Yitzhak said that although they knew foolishness grabbed hold of their hearts they thought that by knowing the name of the angel in charge of fire and the angel in charge of the waters they could prevent them from executing judgment upon them hence they had no fear of punishment but what they did not know was that the Holy One blessed be he controlled the earth and from there in judgment would come upon the world 386 they only saw that the world was entrusted to those ministers and that all worldly matters depended upon them thus they took no notice of the Holy One blessed be he nor did they observe his works until the earth was demolished and the Holy Spirit proclaimed upon them every day let sinners be wiped out of the earth and let the wicked be no more Tehillim 10435 387 and the Holy One blessed be he waited for them while those righteous men like your Metashalash and Shonak lived and when they passed from the world the Holy One blessed be he then released judgment upon the wicked and they perished as it is said they were blotted out from the earth Beersheet 723 section 65 and Shonak walked with Elohim the following section has the power to instill fear at the sudden prospect of falling into negativity we become aware of the evil forces that stand ready to sabotage our spiritual efforts at the first sign of an opening 388 and Shonak walked with Elohim and he was not for Elohim took him. Beersheet 524 Rabbi Yossi said while the king was still feasting by spikenard sent forth its fragrance. Sure Hasherim 112 this verse has been expounded on yet come and behold it is the way of the Holy One. Blessed be he that when a man cleaves to him he in turn sets his Chechena upon the man and when he knows that this man will sin he acts preemptively plucks away his good fragrance and removes him from the world. 389 the king mentioned above is the Holy One. Blessed be he is feasting is the man who cleaves to him and follows in his path. The spikenard that gives fragrance consists of all the man's good deeds in honor of which he is taken away from this world. Prematurely this prevents him from corrupting his deeds. 390 King Solomon said of this there is strangeness upon the earth because there are righteous men who receive judgment like the wicked. Kahilat 814 there are righteous people who are rewarded as if they were wicked as we. Have explained for because of their good deeds the Holy One blessed be he removes them from the world prematurely and inflicts judgment upon them so they will not corrupt their ways and there are wicked people who receive benefits as if they were righteous for the Holy One blessed be he gives them a respite and is patient with them as in the days of the flood and all this is as we have explained so that they should not sin and corrupt their ways hence they receive judgment as if they were wicked Hashem waits for others and treats them as righteous so that they may repent or because good children are expected to come from them therefore he waits for them and holds back his anger hence they receive reward as if they were righteous 391 come and see Chanak was a righteous man the Holy One blessed be he saw that he was eventually bound to degenerate and took him before he sinned this is what is meant by the gathering of lilies sure Hasherim 62 this means that because of their good sent the Holy One blessed be he gathers them before they become corrupt similar is the verse and he was not for Elohim took him and he was not means that he was not to live a long life as did his contemporaries because the Holy One blessed be he took him away before his time 392 Rabbi Lazar said that the Holy One blessed be he removed Shonak from the earth elevated him to the highest heavens and handed him all supernal treasures as well as 45 keys to the concealed engravings used by supernal angels they were all delivered to him this has been already explained section 66 and Hashem saw the wickedness of man when a man wastes the life force and seed used for procreation negative forces immediately attach themselves to him he has destroyed the unborn souls that exist in a state of potential within the seed meditating upon these verses removes negative sexual thoughts our intense sexual desires are positively Channel towards our spouse bringing a renewed sense of passion and fire to our relations 393 and Hashem saw that the wickedness of man was very great upon the earth and the thought in man's heart was continuously only evil. Beersheet 65 of the verse for you are not ill who pleasures in wickedness evil will not sojourn with you. Tehillim 55 Rabbi Yehuda said this verse has been discussed and explained yet come and behold he who cleaves to and is led by the evil inclination is defiled and will be led further into defilement as we have learned 394 the wickedness of man was very great because men committed all sorts of sins and their guilt was not complete until they spilled blood in vain upon the ground this refers to those who pollute their ways upon the earth that is they
latter would have indicated that he had already done so thus even though he had not yet hit him the scripture calls him wicked 396 yet only he who corrupts his ways thereby defiling himself and the earth gives strength and power to the spirit of defilement called ra as it is written only evil all day such a person will not enter the palace of hashem nor gaze upon the shechina because the sin causes the shechina to depart from the world 397 from where do we know that the Shechina leaves because of the sin from Yaakov, for when the Shechina left him he concluded that there was a defect in his sons as a result of their indulgence in the above mentioned sin because of the sin he concluded the spirit of defilement was strengthened in the world and the light of the moon which is the Mukbab Zeir and was impaired and rendered defective for this reason the Shechina was gone from him one might wonder why he thought so it is because the sin defiled the temple. And hence the Shechina left Yaakov even though he himself did not sin one who actually defiles his ways and himself gives all the more strength to the unclean spirit consequently when he is defiled he is called R.A. Evil 398 come and behold when a man is defiled by the above mentioned sin he is not remembered by the Holy One for merit and he is constantly remembered by the spirit of defilement called evil for evil hence the Shechina leaves him as soon as he is visited by the spirit of Defilement thus it is said he who sleeps sated will not be visited by evil Mishlei 1423 meaning that he who follows the right path and does not fall prey to the above mentioned sin will not be visited by evil thus it is written only evil all day and also evil shall not sojourn with you Tehillim 55 and they are called evil and not wicked also it is written even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death I shall not fear evil for you are with me Tehillim 234 this is because it also works the other way if the Sheshanah is accompanying a man he need not fear the spirit of defilement as it is written I shall not fear evil for you are with me just as the Sheshanah flees defilement so defilement flees from the Sheshanah section 67 it grieved him to his heart evil forces lull us into a blinding complacency as they strategically maneuver their way into our consciousness the Zohar gives us the power to perceive these forces by Removing destructive influences complacency is replaced by inspiration toward change and spiritual development 399 and Hashem regretted that he made man on the earth and it grieved him to his heart. Bear sheet 66 Rabbi Yossi said upon this verse woe unto them who draw iniquity with the worthless cords and sin as it were with card rope. Yeshayah 518 those who draw iniquity are the men who sin every day before the Holy One blessed be he and they regard their sins as worthless cord because they think that the actions they engage in and their iniquities are of no consequence and that the Holy One blessed be he does not watch them they thus transform all of their sins into one big powerful scene as the card rope which is strong and thick and cannot be destroyed 400 come and behold when the Holy One blessed be he executes judgment upon the wicked of the world even though they transgress before him and anger him all day he still has no desire to destroy them and when he reviews their he is consoled by the fact that they are his handiwork and he has patience with them in this world 401 and because they are the work of his hands he is consoled gives them respite and has mercy on them and when he wants to execute judgment he is saddened as it were because they are the work of his hands and he is grieved by them as it is written and neither was a table brought to him Daniel 619 402 it is written honor and majesty are before him strength and joy in his place. Tehillim 966 Rabbi Yossi said come and behold it is written and it grieved him to his heart indicating that he was saddened to his heart and not to another place the words his heart function here in the same manner as in the verse according to that which is in my heart and in my desire I shmuel 235 Rabbi Yitzhak said that the words Hashem regretted are similar to and Hashem regretted the evil which he had said he would do to his people Shema 3214 thus the verse and Hashem regretted. Having made man teaches us that he did not want to punish them and when the time came to execute judgment he was saddened to his heart 403 Rabbi Yesa said of the passage and he regretted that it was said for good but Rabbi Shizkiah said that it was said for bad Rabbi Yesa explained further by saying that it is for good because the Holy One blessed be he regretted that those were the work of his hands and pitied them the words and he regretted teach us that the Holy One blessed be he had pity on men because he made him and he is his handiwork and it grieved him means that it saddened him that they had sinned before him 404 Rabbi Shizkiah said it was all said for lack of merit because when the Holy One blessed be he wants to destroy the wicked people of the world he is consoled for their loss like a person who resigns himself to the loss of something and once he is resigned judgment takes its course and repentance is of no avail 405 so when is repentance Effective only up to the point when he becomes resigned and once he has become resigned repentance is of no avail and judgment is carried out the Holy One blessed be he adds judgment upon judgment and he gives strength to the place of judgment so it will carry out the verdict the Nukba carries out the verdict and the sinners are completely destroyed all this we see in the passages Hashem regretted and he was grieved to his heart he gave strength to the place of judgment so that it could carry out the verdict the secret of the Nukba is his heart which is the place of judgment by grieved it is meant that he gave the Nukba extra strength 406 Rabbi Shia said that the verse says and Hashem regretted also consoled that he had made man because he received consolation and joy when the Holy One blessed be he created man upon the earth he was in the supernal image the angels of heaven praised the Holy One blessed be he and when they saw his supernal shape they said you have Made him slightly lower than Elohim and have crowned him with glory and honor. Tehillim 86 407 Later when Adam sinned the Holy One blessed be he was saddened because Adam had now justified what the ministering angels asked him when he wanted to create man. What is this man that you are mindful of him and the son of man that you visit him? Tehillim 85 Hence the verse and Hashem regretted means that he was comforted by the angels rejoiced before the sin and grieved after the sin 408. Rabbi Yehuda said that he was grieved to his heart because he had to execute judgment upon them as it is written as they went out before the army praise Hashem for his mercy is everlasting to Debrahim 2021 Rabbi Yitzhak asked why it was not written give praise to Hashem for he is good he answered because he was destroying the work of his hands for the sake of Israel 409 Similarly on the night when Israel crossed the sea the supernal angels came along to sing before the holy. One blessed be he said to them behold the work of my hands are drowning and you are singing thus it is written and one did not come near the other all night Shema 1420 the same applies here for whenever the wicked are taken out of this world he is greatly saddened 410 Rabbi Abba said that the holy one blessed be he was grieved when Adam sinned before him and transgressed his commands he said to him Adam woe to you that you have weakened the heavenly power at that moment the light of the Nukba was extinguished and forthwith he banished him from the garden of Eden 411 he said to him I placed you in the garden of Eden to offer sacrifices dash by unifying the holy one blessed be he and his Shechina and you have impaired the altar which is the Nukba so much that offerings cannot be brought to it anymore henceforth go away and work the land and he sentenced him to death taking pity on him however the holy one blessed be he buried him when he died close to the garden in the cave of Machpelah where the entrance to the Garden of Eden is located 412 Adam made a cave the cave of Machpelah and both he and his wife hid in it how did he know to choose this place because he saw a faint ray of light emanating from the Garden of Eden that reached to the cave his desire was awakened to be buried there close to the entrance to the Garden of Eden 413 come and behold no one leaves this world without seeing Adam Adam asks him for what reason he left this world and how his soul departed each person replies woe to you that because of you I had to die because it was as a consequence of the sin of the tree of knowledge that death was decreed upon the world Adam then replies my son I have transgressed one commandment and have been punished because of it yet look at yourself how many sins and how many transgressions on the precepts of your master have you committed 414 Rabbi she has said that until this very day Adam continues to face the forefathers and confesses since twice a day he shows them the very location in the Garden of Eden where he resided in supernal glory before he sinned he also goes and looks at all the pious and righteous people among his descendants who have inherited the supernal glory he had in the Garden of Eden before he sinned the patriarchs praise and say how precious is your kindness Hashem the children of man Adam take refuge under the shadow of your wings Tehillim 368 415 Rabbi Yesa said the reason Adam appears to each person at the moment of their departure from this world is to testify that this person is d
The open he said, Why are they committing this sin openly if not to provoke their master's anger? He stared at them and they were thrown into the sea and drowned. 418 Come and behold, any sin that is committed publicly repels the Shechinah from the earth and causes her to remove her residence from the world. Those in the generation of the flood walked defiantly with their heads high without shame. They sinned openly and repelled the Shechinah from the world until the Holy One blessed be he was. Repelled by them and removed them from his presence as it is written, Take away the impurity from the silver and there shall come forth a vessel for the smith. Take away the wicked from the presence of the king and his throne shall be established in righteousness. Mishlei 254 to 5, section 68. My spirit shall not strive with man. Our world mirrors the upper world actions performed in this physical realm. Ignite spiritual forces in the worlds above reading this. Section gives us the ability to positively influence and affect the upper world in ways that benefit our lives. 419 And Hashem said, My spirit shall not strive with man forever, for he is also flesh. Bear sheet 63 Rabbi Lazar said, Come and behold, when the Holy One blessed be he created the world, he made the world which is Malchut to be used as the supernal world which is Bina. This means that all the lights shining in Bina should also shine in Malchut, the secret of this world now when people are righteous and follow the correct path. The Holy One blessed be he reveals the spirit of life which are the Mokin of above from Bina until this life reaches the place where Yaakov abides, namely Zeir and Pen, because from Bina the Mokin flow through Zeir and Pen. 420 From their life flows until the spirit of life reaches this world, the Mok, the place where King David resides. Hence all the blessings flow to all the lower world inhabitants in Briah, Yetzirah, and Asiyah, the supernal spirit. Spreads downward, enabling the lower worlds to maintain their existence. 421 Hence, it is written, His kindness, have Shashtu is everlasting. Shashtu is spelled with the Bob, the world of King David, namely the Mukta, is nurtured by the Bob which draws life to it. Hence, it is written, My spirit shall not strive with man forever, have Eliolam without the Bob, because when that spirit is drawn into the world, blessings and life are released from it to sustain all yet now in the generation of the flood. When people sin by drawing life from above to below, disrupting the central column and attaching themselves to the left column, everything left this world, thus the spirit of life ceased flowing into this world for the pleasure and sustenance of the lower. Hence, forever was written without a Bob, which is the central column and the spirit of life, because they defiled it and attached themselves to the left. 422 For he is also flesh, therefore the spirit of life will not be drawn into the world. The reason is to prevent the serpent called flesh the lowest of all levels from increasing in power through the spirit of holiness. It is also to assure that the Holy Spirit will not have to mix with the spirit of defilement of the serpent. The verse for he is also flesh teaches us that the primeval serpent is also flesh and might also be blessed by the spirit of life. Hence the serpent is called flesh as it is written the end of all flesh came before me. Bear sheet 613 Rabbi Shimon said that the primal serpent called flesh is the angel of death. The words his days will be 120 years means the gift of an attached tower. Section 69 The Nephilim were on the earth. Many negative angels enter our realm and take on human form. We can protect ourselves from these negative angels as well as from people who connect themselves to the dark forces. 423 The Nephilim were on the earth. Bear sheet 64 Rabbi Yossi taught that those called Nephilim were Azza. And Azel, and as we have learned, they were so called because the Holy One blessed be he dropped Hephel them from the upper sanctity. How you may well ask, can they subsist in this world? Rabbi Shia said that they are among those referred to as birds which fly upon the earth. Bear sheet 120. And these, as we have discussed, appear to men in the form of human beings. And how you may ask, do they transform themselves from the shape of an angel to that of human beings? As we have learned, they can transform themselves into all kinds of shapes. And when they come down into this world, they clothe themselves with the garments of Earth's atmosphere and take on human form. 424. Azel and Azel, who rebelled above and whom the Holy One blessed be he caused to fall from heaven, were forced to put on and to live with the garments of the earth. They could not divest themselves of these garments and could not return to their former residence with the rest of the angels. They remained forever on earth. Subsequently, they were seduced by earthly women. They exist to this day, teaching sorcery to people. They begot sons whom they called mighty and giants. The Nephilim are referred to as sons of Elohim, as has already been explained. Section 70 I shall wipe out man. God always gives ample warning before great judgments and catastrophes brought on by the negative actions of man. Sadly, in most cases, we fail to heed the warnings. The Zohar empowers us to see the signs of warning when they appear. 425 And Hashem said, I shall wipe out man whom I have created from the face of the earth. Bear sheet 67 Rabbi Yussi quotes, For my thoughts are not your thoughts. Yeshayah 558 Come and behold, when a man wants to take vengeance on another, he keeps quiet and tells him nothing because if he discloses his intentions, his opponent will be on guard and hard to overpower. 426 Yet the Holy One blessed be he does not act in this matter, he does not execute judgment. On the world before he declares and informs it of his intentions once, twice, and three times, then no one may reproach him and ask, What are you doing? Nor can one guard against him or stand up to him. 427 And Hashem said, I shall wipe out man whom I have created from the face of the earth. He announced these words through Noch and he warned them several times, but they did not listen. Eventually he executed judgment and exterminated them. 428 Come and behold what was said of Noch and he called his name Noch, saying, He shall comfort us yet a communion from our work. Bear she 529 How did he know that he would comfort him as soon as he was born? It says that when the Holy One blessed be, he cursed the world, saying, The land will be cursed because of you. Adam said to him, Sovereign of the universe, until when will the world be subject to this curse? The Holy One blessed be, he replied, Until you beget a son who is born circumcised like yourself. 429 And they waited until Noch was born and when he was born Adam saw that he was circumcised and transcribed with a sacred sign and when he saw that the Shechinah embraced the baby IT then became clear to him that the curse would be cancelled during his lifetime and so he named him in anticipation of what would transpire 430 in the beginning they did not know how to sow reap or plow and they worked the earth with their hands but Noch came along and manufactured tools needed for working the ground so that it would bear fruit thus it was written this one will comfort us from our work and from the toil of our hands that Hashem has cursed Noch liberated the earth from its curse before he came the people used to sow wheat and reap thorns and thistles hence he was called a man of the ground Bear sheet 920 431 Rabbi Yehuda said a man of the ground often means that he was considered the husband of the ground as it says Naomi's man wrote 13 this is because he was called righteous and nullified the earth Cursed by means of the sacrifices he offered, hence it is written, I will not again curse the ground because of man. Bear sheet 821 for this reason, Noch was called a man of the ground, and hence he was called Noch comfort because of what would one day occur. Section 71 Who made desolations on the earth? A person's name establishes a profound link to his soul and essence. The letters that compose a name and still a particular set of attributes that comprise a person's nature. The section of the Zohar helps us strengthen the bond to our name so that we can awaken its positive influences within our soul. 432 Rabbi Yehuda expounded upon the verse, Go behold the works of Hashem who had made desolation have Shamat on the earth. Tehillim 469 He said that this text has been explained, but if the world would have been created by Yehavah, hey, a name indicative of mercy, then it would have given earth a firm structure, but since it was created by the works of Elohim, which is judgment, a desolation, a wasteland was made of earth. 433 Rabbi Shia said to him, Although you believe that desolation have Shemot signifies a wasteland, I see it differently because both the names Yudi Havah and Elohim indicate benevolence. I tend to agree with the friends in saying that he had placed Shemot and holy names on the earth. Shemot alludes to actual holy names on the earth. 434 Rabbi Yitzhak said that both interpretations are true, and even the one put forward by Rabbi Yehuda is good for if the world was created in the name of mercy, then the world would have been resilient. Yet because the world was created by judgment and is founded upon judgment, he put holy names in the world to protect IT, and this is very true because had he not done so, the world would not have been able to survive the consequences of people since 435. Come and behold, when Noach was born, he was given that name because it conn
ways and occupied himself with serving his master you may well ask with what did he occupy himself he studied the books of Adam and Shadok and he struggled to learn from those books how to worship his master 437 come and behold he indeed studied the books of Adam and Shadok because otherwise how would Noach have known how to offer sacrifices to his master he found wisdom relating to the maintenance of the world in the books of Adam and Shadok and from these books he learned that the world exists for the sake of sacrifices were it not for the sacrifices neither the upper nor lower would have existed hence he offered a sacrifice 438 Rabbi Shimon was on his way accompanied by Rabbi Lazar his son Rabbi Yuzi and Rabbi Shia as they were going Rabbi Lazar said to his father the road is clear before us and we would like to hear words of Torah 439 Rabbi Shimon began to speak of the words even when a fool walks on his way his heart is lacking Kahila 103 when a man wants to make his ways agreeable to the Holy One blessed be he he should before he proceeds consult him and pray to him so that he should ensure his journey this is as we have learned regarding the verse righteousness goes before him and he shall set his feet on his way Tehillim 13514 meaning that he should pray that the Shechina called righteousness should not part from him only after he has prayed should he go on his way 440 of he who has no faith in his master it is written even when a fool walks on his way his heart is lacking Rabbi Shimon asked what is his heart and he replied it is the Holy One blessed be he who Shechina who rests in the heart of the righteous that does not accompany him on his way thus his heart is lacking the inspiration of the Shechina and lacking his aid along the way this is all because this man who does not trust in his master who is called a fool because one does not sin unless the spirit of foolishness attaches itself to him does not seek help from his master before he starts his journey 441 and even when he is on his way he is not occupied with the study of Torah and thus his heart is lacking because he does not follow his master his master is not found on his way the verse continues and he proclaims to all that he is foolish Kahilat 103 meaning that even when he hears a word of true faith in his master he says that it is foolish to pay attention to it 442 similarly there was a man who asked about the sign of the holy covenant imprinted upon the human flesh and he said that it was not an article of faith Rabbi Yebisabba the elder heard looked upon him and transformed him into a pile of bones and we are upon this path with the help of the holy one blessed be he hence we should recite words of Torah 443 he started a discourse by commenting on the verse teach me Hashem your ways I will walk in your truth unite my heart to fear your name Tehillim 1362 this is a difficult verse because we Learn that everything except becoming a righteous person or becoming wicked is in the hands of the Holy One. Blessed be he as it is written, all is in the hands of the heavens except for the fear of the heavens. Why then did David ask the Holy One, blessed be he to be given that 444? David said, Teach me your ways. He asked the Holy One, blessed be he to open his eyes and show him the right path. Then he would walk in your truth. He himself would walk the right path and not waver to the right or the left. He also said, Unite my heart, heart as in the strength of my heart and my lot. Tehillim 12,326, meaning the Shechinah clothed by the heart and called strength of heart, for this is what he craved. All this I entreat, David said, in order to fear your name and keep to the right path. To fear your name refers to David's lot, namely Malchut, David's portion in which fear of him dwells. For Malchut is the secret of fear and is called fear as is known. 445, come and behold faith dwells with he who fears the Holy One, blessed be he, for he is wholeheartedly in his master's service, yet faith is not with he who is not constantly in fear of his master, and he does not deserve to have a part of the world to come. 446 He then opened a discourse on the verse, the path of the righteous is as the shining light that shines more and more unto the perfect day. Mishlei 418 Happy are the righteous in this world and in the world to come, because the Holy One, blessed be he, desires their glory come, and behold, it is written that the path of the righteous is as the shining light. What is the shining light? It is like the illuminating light that the Holy One, blessed be he, made during the works of creation. This is the light that he stored away for the righteous in the world to come. The words that shines more and more indicate that the righteous person's light is ever increasing and never lacking. 447 Yet of the wicked it is written, the way of the wicked is as darkness. They do not know on what they stumble. Mishlei 419. How is it they do not know what makes them stumble? The wicked follow a crooked path in this world. They do not want to see that the Holy One, blessed be He, will judge them in the world of truth and bring them to be judged. In Gehenom, in Gehenom, they shout, Woe to us that we did not listen to His commandments while we were in the world, and they repeat this lament each and every day. 448. Come and behold, the Holy One, blessed be He, will shine upon the righteous in the world to come and will give them their destined reward in a place that no eye has ever beheld. It is as it is written, No eye has seen apart from you, Elohim, what shall be performed for those who wait for you. Yeshua 643. And also, and they shall go forth and look upon the carcasses of the men who have transgressed against me. Yeshua 6624. And also, and you shall tread down the wicked, for they shall be ashes under the soles of your feet. Malachi 321. Joyful are they. Righteous in this world and the world to come of them it is written the righteous shall forever inherit the earth Yeshayah 11,021 and verily the righteous shall praise your name the upright shall dwell in your presence Tehillim 14,014 blessed be Hashem forever Amen and Amen